All right, friends, I have a $150 donation here from Eric S. No comment, just generosity. Thank you so much for your donation to NAMI. We are still doing some setup here, but that run of Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne is definitely on deck. I would love to see in the chat if y'all have been around this week, if you have been watching some of the runs. I'd love to know what some of your favorites have been from the week. As you all may or may not know, I am on a night owl schedule, so I tend to miss those daytime runs. I've just been seeing all kinds of uh, notes about them. I haven't had time to uh, catch up on any VODs or anything. So yeah, please, please tell me what your favorite runs have been from the marathon this week. Oh, I'm seeing uh, Dragon Quest Eleven. Yeah, nice. I like that. Yeah, I, I like that Loom run too. Loom is always a fun watch. Loom is a great, I love those old, old style point and click adventures. Monomon, I'm not even familiar with that game. The Final Fantasy X AI task was mind blowing. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to watch that Fellowship of the Ring. It was special. What do you mean special? <laughs> Final Fantasy Adventure. I played that one back in the day, so I'd love to see that. Rick. Cat Quest Two. Oh my gosh, I haven't even heard of it. Cat Quest. Please tell me about Cat Quest. Monomon. Oh man. Okay, two votes for Monomon. Audio only Pokemon. <laughs> oh, Monomon. Oh. Oh, Mono, that's why it's called Monomon? Because it's audio only? Yeah, let's go for nine hours of Shin Megami Tensei. Hype! There were so many good runs. I keep telling me. I mean, Secret of Mana, that's one of my favorites. Secret of Mana is one of my favorites. It's a quest starring a cat. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> the Final Fantasy X Tass, Golden Sun. You know, back in the day, I wanted to try Golden Sun, and I didn't like sitting out in the sun <laughs> playing video games. Super Neptunia. So many votes for Monomon. I'm gonna have to check it out. Oh, we got Dragon Quest Eleven again. It's written by Vision Impaired People for Vision Impaired People. That's so cool. That's so cool. Oh, Hylix 2. That was a run that I was looking forward to. It's during the time that I'm asleep. But yeah, Hylix is always a trip and a half. If y'all have not seen Hylix 2 before and um, and and you want to be taken on a ride, woo! Hylix, that's a that is a game. All right, Golden Sun, Kachuria, a blind runner play to while listening to the audio. Oh, that sounds really cool. We've got Super Neptunia, Super Neptunia, Dragon Warrior one and two. Nice. I would love. I would love to. Um, I would love to see somebody. I always love to see somebody wreck. Dragon Warrior, is that one, that one? <laughs> Hylix is the most normal video game. <laughs> LK yelling every time the main character's face melted. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, the donations are just pouring in here. I have a $25 donation here from Deniable Credibility. What an amazing name. It says, came back to my getting my dinner and Piplup was telling me to donate. Who am I to argue? Um, I'm Piplup now and I embrace it. <laughs> Thank you. I have a $25 donation here from Peldragora who says, here's a donation to see my favorite Final Fantasy creature supporting the cause of mental health. Thank you, Mandragora. Nice, nice. And I have a one hundred dollar donation here from heavy metal mage who says been waiting for this run all week can't wait to hear shiner yell my monkey if wukong gets killed in battle <laughs> all right well i'm looking forward to that too now i'm definitely i'm definitely looking forward to that too now i'm getting called out in the chat by jason larose <laughs> you know it's one of my favorite memories too <laughs> thank you all thank you all so much for your generosity all of these nice donations coming in all right so i am getting word that our runners 
are ready to go. So I hope y'all are hype. It is Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne Normal Any Percent Co-op with Freedom Pulse and Shiner CCC. Yo, we're live. We're here at RPG Limit Break. We're here at the, the largest possible stage we could do this run. It's a dream come true. I'm Shiner CCC, and I'm doing the first half of this uh, co-op relay run. And coming in at the second half, I am Freedom Pulse, repping our boy Mothman here. Remember, we have an incentive to use him for the final boss. He's great. We all love Mothman. He's basically the mascot of the SMT speedrunning community. It's true. I'm saying it here, so it's true. Uh, and so please, please donate to the wonderful incentives we have. We really want Shiner to do Puzzle Boy. It's a rather infamous uh, mini game for people that have played the game, so it'd be awesome to see it beaten in under yes. 10 minutes. Please give me a real boss fight at the end <laughs> of my leg of the run. And then we would love to see our boy Mothman. And with that- In the final we, battle. Yeah. With that, if we're uh, all ready to go, let's get started with the run. Time will uh, start on- when I confirm a difficulty. Yeah, selecting difficulty. We're just so. showing off that menu memory is on on config. We're allowed to set that up beforehand. Yeah. So uh, Shiner, since he's starting off the run, will be counting us off. So whenever you're ready, my dude. Yeah, I'll just count us in from five and uh, we'll get right to it. Uh, five, four, three, two, one, go. Let's go. <laughs> Here we go, yep. This uh, good old standard Atlas disclaimer at the start. This was the first uh, Shin Megami Tensei game to officially come out in North America. Uh, Persona Revelations, and I think Persona 2 came out on PS1, but this was the first game to have Shin Megami Tensei in the title. Uh, the series started out with um, uh, Megami Tensei on the Famicom, actually, and Shin Megami Tensei, meaning a uh, true resurrection of the goddess, came out on the Super Famicom, but those were Japan only for a long time, so. There is one game that you're forgetting that's very important. All right, and so. That is we actually Jack get, Bros. Oh yeah, that's true, for Virtual Boy. Uh, so we have uh, a government name here, a last name and a first name. So we actually do get to enter uh, our top three names. I believe Renoko was our second place name. Oops. Yeah, so uh, those need to be closed and uh, we need to get the names, but uh, Shiner, peep them beforehand unless there was a snipe, oh. in which case let us know. Oh, true, what if there was a snipe? Sure thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I am checking those out right now. I'm just gonna do one last refresh here to make sure. All right, and we're wanting the main character. It's it's looking it's looking like the first the nickname is Kalas. Yeah. The first name is Renoko, and the last name is Jerkbird. All awesome. right, perfect, <laughs> great. Top three names, great. Good job, donators. <laughs> you know, uh, Renoko Jerkbird. AKA we, also, we also get to name our next party member here, uh, our teacher. Jerkbird. Uh, the, oh, the teacher. Well, I am so I thrilled our... to say the winner is Onizuka. Yeah, great. and our second place name was Flutter, right? Yes, second place name was Flutter. Okay. And then, yeah, Onizuka. Great teacher, Onizuka. If you have not oh, right. read the, the manga, seen the anime, or watched the live action, they're all great. Oh, uh, okay. Now I, <laughs> I was like, I don't, what is so, yeah, name? We're, we're mashing through text by holding triangle and flicking uh, cross and circle uh, to get through it quicker. Uh, just to explain what happened here, we start. it starts with a dream sequence with uh, uh, this woman who turns out to be our teacher saying, uh, a world that loses its power will fade away into nothingness, as recorded in it, but I uh, must return it to its mother's womb. Uh, she says like some really creepy stuff alluding to the end of the world, but she wants to help us uh, survive such an event. So um, we also like enter in some names as a result. Uh, we're also gonna name uh, our classmates. Their last name never appears in the script ever. Uh, I believe uh, Null was first place, hashtag Null. Uh, I actually tested this on PS2 to make sure it wouldn't crash the game. Yeah, so so fun. <laughs> the Tildy character crashes wait, 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 the game. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Did you name them already? I'm sorry. There's we one more student coming up. The second place will be uh, the okay, next student. Okay, okay, because we had a we had a snipe. Oh. Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> we had a, we had a snipe. That's what why. Is, all right. What are we? I what? went and, I went and checked it as you were as you were naming them. So actually, our first place was Chi Chi Unki. Oh, oh perfect. Chi -unki. perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. And then uh, second place was still null, right? Is second place null? Second place was still null, Great. yes. Okay, okay, awesome. we're on track. I thought hashtag null is an appropriate name for, for that guy anyway. So yeah, we uh, we fell asleep on the subway train. And it on did say to... the top two names would be used. It didn't say what order they would be used in, so we're good. Yeah, yeah. we, we, we did didn't quite perfect. plan that far ahead, but... Uh... We, we, did, we did a great job. <laughs> yeah, we got this, we got this. So yeah, we're in the real world. We uh, got off Yoyogi Park Station to go to Yoyogi Park. We were supposed to meet our classmates. Uh, what we're doing here is we're trying to 
talk to our teacher. We're, we're presumably uh, an 18-year-old high schooler here about to graduate, and uh, we want to talk to our, our teacher, who we're close to, to get some advice. Uh, she was apparently in the hospital in the Shinjuku Medical Center, and we were going to meet her. We were supposed to meet up at Yogi Park, but there was, you know, we, were, we fell asleep on the train and we're late, but also some kind of incident happened here. Yeah, we also meet this, uh, this gentleman who is in a, uh, who is in a uh, fish scale skin suit, because that's stylish. You'll, know, you'll notice the style in this game is very, very top tier. Oh yeah, the fashion's great. Yeah, here we go, Cheon Ki Kong. That's a name I keep entering on my stream. The last member of the DK crew, patron saint of strength. So strong, she can make a Kremlin cry, mummy. Yeah, so, so this guy here introduces himself as Hijiri. We don't get to name him, so obviously he won't be important. Uh, or will he? And mm -hmm. he's like, hey, uh, so I'm a reporter, and there was a lot of murders that happened here, so you should probably go away. Oh, by the way, I'm actually a reporter for an occult magazine, and you're going to the medical center, right? Well, apparently the medical center is associated with the occult. Here, I just wrote an article about it. You should read it. Really. Yeah, he gives us a, an advanced copy of the next issue. Fun fact, there's a little tripwire here for this cutscene. Instead of walking at an angle to talk to Chionki Kong here, I can go straight ahead and I'm teleported into this cutscene and save a few steps. Yeah, so uh, so here we have Chionki Kong, also known as Miss Denim. Uh, got the denim dress, the denim yep. skirt, the denim belt. Her jutes, the, her yeah. job. Yeah, the denim boots with the uh, denim jerk. leg warmers. Yeah, she has like some, they look like big bandages to me. We were, like, <laughs> some extra socks for her socks. They were really styling in the year 2003, I'll tell you what. Yeah, yeah, this, this game came out in yeah, 2004, as you see on the overlay. It might have been 2003 in Japan, but Not we are, we're are we playing uh, the English version. Well, technically we're playing on PlayStation 3. Uh, I, think, I think the cheapest way to get this game is to get the digital PlayStation 3 store version, which is only available in English. Yes, all of the uh, PS2, SMT, and Persona games are on the PlayStation 3 store for $10 each, so... If you have any inclination to play these games, definitely would recommend it. This is one of my favorite, art, one of if not my favorite RPG series of all time. So really excited to be showing this <laughs> What a this deal, off. though! Like seriously. Yeah, especially since that's so good. Physical copies of these games can can run from depending on the game. <laughs> nice, can run <laughs> anywhere <laughs> from from like you know thirty to I think Rido Two is like a hundred something, two hundred something. So. I gotta say, for an RPG series, this these these games are surprisingly affordable because Atlas. Uh, I think they're just still selling copies like PS2 discs on Amazon. And the HD yeah. remake just came out last year, too. Yeah. So here we have our friend, uh, hashtag Null. Uh, he has a hat. He really likes his hat. He adjusts his hat like four individual times in that cutscene. He also, also got some cowboy shoes. Yeah. Which if you're skipping cutscene, uh, skipping text like we're doing, it looks really weird because he's like, oh, uh, hi. Uh, how are you oh, doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. I left uh, the elevator. I, I don't know where I'm going. Started mashing too soon here. Okay, back oh, to the first floor. Step ruined. <laughs> no, we're, we're, it's not that precise. It, it, the time of day changes after taking 16 steps. Yeah. Uh, you don't know it yet. The, the clock is ticking right now, but the, the time of day is not displayed on the UI yet. Yeah, so there, we are on a little bit of a step count. The, eventually, once we, once we get into the game proper, there will be like a, a time of day system that is advancing, even though we don't see it. So we're trying our best to keep our movement as precise as possible. There is something later on in the first dungeon that's going to require us to kind of be, to loop back around to a save point at a certain time, which hopefully we won't have to do anyway, but we'll, uh, yeah. we'll get there. So we, we walk around this hospital. There's no one here at all, which is kind of weird. We don't even find our teacher who we're supposed to be meeting. So uh, Isamu happens to walk around. He finds a security card uh -oh. key. Okay, we're, we're live, we're live. <laughs> He finds a security card key that opens a door in the basement, and uh, he's a little too scared to uh, to check it out. So he makes us go down here and and check out the underground facility. Yeah, Asamu's like, I, I checked everywhere, even the men's room. Couldn't find our teacher. Oh, thanks, Asamu. But he, he did find the key card there. There is no like men's room we can go to anywhere in the game, though. So Asamu went out of bounds so the video game could start. Yeah, Vortex World doesn't believe in restrooms. There is no rest yeah, in no, a in a world of chaos. No, no reason of rest. All right, so here we find a uh, super hardcore gamer dude, Hikawa. He's got like six monitors plugged into his uh, hardcore router here. Yeah, great big GPU with, that spins for air cooling. And, uh, you know, this dude, maximum amount of chill. We just walk in and he's like, who dares stir the silence? And he uh, decides that we don't get to live anymore. So he summons a shady figure in the background, uh, as, we'll, as we'll see here. Nice little Baphomet there. Ooh. Gonna cast Makakaja, buff its own magic, and then, yeah. Maybe Maragion later on. Yeah. Three turns later. Oh, 
Someone yells stop, a woman's voice. Oh, look who it is, it's Miss Flutter. Yeah, she intervenes yeah. and uh, saves us from getting killed by this demon. You know, he's like, oh, even a pebble cast in water creates ripples. He's, always, he's so poetic, he's so edgy, I love Hikawa. And she, but she says, if you kill him, I'll stop cooperating with you. And he's like, fine, leave me alone and let me enjoy the end of the world and solitude. Classiest man to ever wear a polka dot suit. Yeah, oh, I could have done the little chair spin <laughs> like he did. <laughs> But maybe the headset cord would I was thinking about like how much I love the character design in this game and then you're just like classiest man ever wear a polka dot suit. He's so classy. He's, he, his widow's peak is so big. It's like a widow's mountain. Yeah, dude has a widow's Everest <laughs> going on. <laughs> oh. So here Thank we are. Uh, for that polka dot suit. <laughs> here we uh, find this, this small boy and an old lady. Uh, just kind of, you know, teleporting around, you know, as all small children do. But, uh... Yeah, they seem to have an interest in us, but they're busy. I don't know what they're so busy doing at the end of the world, though. Yeah, so the teacher tells us to meet her on the roof, and she, she says this very, this very vague and foreboding thing about, hey, if the world ends, I'll find you, and I'll explain everything then, but, you know, I believe that you can, that you can make this work, or... All yeah. this stuff that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I brought you here to make sure you would survive this. So we're going to have a beautiful, unskippable cutscene uh, depicting the end of the world. Um, host, I dare you to bring us some messages without laughing while I play the automaton when the organ comes in. Yes, we, uh, we'll have an <laughs> impromptu musical concert here. So uh, enjoy as the, uh, the world ends to the melodious sounds of Shiner's automaton. I wanted to ask y'all to tell us a little bit more about the incentives that folks can donate towards that we're, we're looking to meet for your run. Yeah, absolutely. So like the Fuse Mothman or the Puzzle Boy minigame, which we have, we have a ways to go. We've actually, we've made some progress. We're now sitting at $130 out of the $750 oh. we need, but we still have a ways to go. And I know a more that Puzzle Boy minigame is, is near to, oh my gosh, I refreshed actually. Let me change that, $180. $180, but we're looking for $750. And tell us all about that Puzzle Boy minigame. <laughs> we'll get on that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> I need priorities. Harmonizing? So there we uh, we <laughs> that witnessed, was sharp. I'm sorry. We witnessed the prototype to uh, to the start of Inception, uh, as the conception occurs and the world comes to an end. So here, yep, this, all our party members were named. They're probably toast. Yeah. So here we hear this mysterious voice in the sky that's like, "Show me your heart." Like we're in some Kingdom Hearts crossover or something. Uh, and then he tells us we have no personality, and so we should go like learn about ourselves, which yeah. is kind of rude. <laughs> not not even a hint of a reason with a capital R. Brutal. Without explaining what that is. We'll find out much later about yeah. that. So, uh, by the way, minor uh, minor sensitive visual warning. Uh, we're gonna get a bug fed to us, which uh, a delicious gummy worm. Yeah, which might look a little uh, little off. So, if you have a sensitive stomach, maybe avert your eyes for like the next thirty seconds. But uh, the the young child is gonna turn us into a demon by feeding us a, a little uh, worm here. But uh, to to talk and about now the I incentives. want gummy worms. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, yeah, please yeah. talk about the incentives. Yes, so at about halfway through the run, right at the end of Shiner's segment, there, there's a little mini game that uh, people who have played this game know, know something about. It's a, a block pushing mini game called Puzzle Boy. Uh, the reward for it is a, a Magatama that's generally considered like the worst Magatama in the game. It's named Geese. Uh, so yeah. we'll be sure to be honking when we get that. But uh, <laughs> it's a rather, it's a really difficult mini game. Uh, I know people that have taken like upwards of three to six hours to solve it the first time casually. Uh, YouTube videos of solving it can like take up to like 15, 20 minutes. Uh, <laughs> but Shiner will be able to do it in about 10 minutes. So we'd love to see that, love to show it off. Also, even though I just trash talked, uh, trash talked geese a little bit, uh, you can start skipping text. Oh, your controller die oh. again. Yeah, uh, I think if I hit this button, there we'll be go. good. There we go. <laughs> I'm used to doing the pose. I run on PS2, which is, you know, hardwired and usually works good. So yeah, we're, like the child said, we're a demon now. We got a RGB lighting strips all over. We got a, a hollow, like a little demon horn on the back of the neck. I like to think it's a hollow cone where the gummy worm lives now. 
Here we go. We're, we're ready to start the actual game. The UI's uh, got everything on it now. We got a compass in the bottom right, which will uh, change colors to indicate aggro for encounters, but there aren't any yet. Uh, we got the time of day in the top left. Well, it's not really day. It's more like the, the moon phase. We might call it the moon phase. We'll, we'll find out what it actually is by the time we get out of this first place. So yeah, you want to see crazy hard puzzle game done like very, very quickly. Which uh, will, it actually will make the final dungeon a little bit safer too. That'll yeah. make Freedom happy. Yeah, which will, it'll be very nice for me. So definitely donate for that. Also the other, in, we have a donation bid war between two of the endings. We'll, we'll kind of learn more about what those endings are about as we go. But uh, between the Shijima ending, which is a world of stillness and Musubi, which is kind of a world of isolation and individuality, uh, you can donate between those two. Or if uh, uh, neither of those tickle right? your fancy, yeah, fail one. Uh, if neither of those tickle <laughs> Which your I, fancy, I, I would like to say that Shijima is in the lead currently. Oh, okay. At uh, one hundred twenty-one dollars and eleven cents, and then Musubi, uh, you know, it wouldn't take too much to catch up. It's at seventy-seven dollars and fifty cents. Okay, and for reference, oh, wow. the any percent speedrun usually goes for Musubi. Uh, it's the fastest uh, fighting because you get to skip one boss that's kind of slow. So, Shijima, you get to see a boss you normally don't get to see in the speedrun, but uh, Musubi is faster, so pick your poison there. Yeah, this game has six different endings, actually, and one of them uh, features a lot of extra content, and uh, maybe another year where this would be, excuse me, the, the last run of the marathon, switching to that would add, like, four hours, but I'd, I would also have to come up with some kind of dynamic route that could switch to it early on. Uh, but yeah, we're, Puzzle Boy may already add enough to the estimate yeah. as it is. Shijima yeah. and Musubi are close enough. But if neither of those tickle your fancy, you can always bet on our boy Mothman to be used in the final boss fight. We yes. love Mothman. He's great. It's a beautiful, beautiful cryptid Look that uh, is really fun to use against Represented the final. on Freedom's yeah. shirt right now. Rep represented on my shirt. And uh, I'm, I'm wearing a Marvel vs. Capcom 3 shirt uh, because uh, this game may be responsible for a certain meme sticker that says, Featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. And this shirt is to remind everyone that our main character of this game, who we will call Demi Fiend sometimes, has a Ryu number of two. This is kind of like the Kevin Bacon number of gaming, where like, how many games removed is any given video game character from Ryu? And if you go from this game to Devil May Cry 2 to Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, it means that Demi Fiend has a Ryu number of two. Yeah. So here we have our tutorial fight. Uh, first, we fought some Will-O-Wisps who were saying something about wanting Magatsuhi. Here we have uh, a Preda, and this isn't any Preda, by the way. This Preda is in the top 10% of all Predas, yep. and by that I mean he's actually like two levels higher than Preda normally is. Uh, in hard really? mode, that is like actually one of the first big run killers, because uh, if you miss or if he rolls a critical hit, then you just kind of die sometimes, which is fun. Yeah, I actually got killed by that Preda when we were rehearsing, even on normal mode. Yeah. Because uh, I missed twice, and uh, he also got a critical Feral Claw to take an extra turn. Yeah, so Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, nowhere is safe, not yeah. even the tutorial. SMT gonna SMT. Yeah, we are playing on normal mode. I did submit hard any percent, but... Uh, you know, Freedom and I have kind of been dreaming of doing this uh, normal co-op run for a while. It's it's a route we both know and uh, have run a few times. And um, normal mode also uh, much more reliable and comfy. On hard mode, you take twice as much damage. Uh, back attacks are likely to lead to free critical hits from the enemy, and vendor prices are tripled. It's and and your chance to run away from battles is zero percent unless all your enemies are incapacitated by things like sleep or shock or stone or bind. Uh, there's a lot of different status effects in this game, actually. Yeah, we'll get we'll get into some of them as we as we go through. But here we're we're pulled into this weird like netherworld like place, this weird sewer netherworld place, and this old man in a wheelchair is like, ah, yes, you're powerful, but uh, you have other things to do, basically, and uh, warps us out. So we uh, we I would say we'll find out more about that, but really we we kind of won't. That's uh, that tutorial was added in for this version of the game that introduce the true demon ending. We're only gonna see the old blonde guy one more time in the entire run. Yes. So here we find a pixie. She's, uh, she says she's looking, uh, trying to get out of the medical center, trying to meet up with other fairies. Trying to get home to Yoyogi Park. Yes, and currently the uh, the exit is blocked by a very, very angry uh, manta ray by the name of Forneus, and she's by herself isn't strong enough to beat him, so we, we team up. Uh, but we need to get a pass to open the door and uh, also, we don't speak Preda, but Pixie does, so. Oh, no, I forgot to heal. Uh, <laughs> Good thing it's normal fine. mode. 
Yeah, they're only hitting for two or three. These Predos are in the bottom 10% of Predos. They're really weak. Oh, they're getting a bonus, bonus turn because of the critical hit. Uh, I want to talk about the press turn system a little bit that I'm going to exploit for... What the? Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, I fat fingered left on the D-pad <laughs> instead of using Zeo. Whatever, I got this. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'll just use a medicine and then summon Pixie next turn. So... Well, well, Shiner uh, repairs the situation. You see up in the corner, there's currently three, like, worm skull icon things that are actually on the uh, prizes for uh, that we have uh, during this run. That uh, Basically, those are the number of turns that you have in each round of combat. Uh, there's one for every single participant in that side. Uh, it's basically one action is one turn. However, if you get a critical hit or you hit a weakness, which we'll see here when uh, Pixie does Zeo, uh, that turn, that glowy turn icon starts like flashing at you, which basically just means you generate an extra turn. Some people call it a half turn, or you can pass to uh, you spend half the turn. Yes, and basically that's kind of the crux of all the ga of a lot of SMT gameplay is just exploiting enemy weaknesses, uh, as well as if you miss or hit something in an enemy nulls or flex or drains you will uh, lose turns depending on the severity of what you just uh, of what you hit. So a lot of the, the planning around in these games is, is having stuff to cover what enemies can use, uh, as well as hitting weaknesses to maximize your turn economy and minimize the enemies. Uh, so here as we're going through, another thing that's pretty unique to SM, well, not a unique to SMT, but it's like one of the staples of the series is demon recruitment. So you can actually talk to the, uh, to the enemies that you fight here and uh, get them to join your party. So there's a couple demons we need to recruit while we're going here. We need to recruit Kodama, who is that little, like, dup dip da guy we saw earlier. Yeah, the little green guy, the third yeah. battle in the uh, Grapefruit Juice Tunnel. Yeah, we need to recruit him. We need to recruit Shikigami, who's kind of like this uh, this papery boy. We'll see him much later. We need a Huapo, who we'll see her later as well. And we need either a Will-O-Wisp or a Preda. Uh, preferably, we'll see a Will-O-Wisp, because it's faster uh, if we get it, but the... Shiner came up with like an alternate route that works if uh, we don't get a Will-O-Wisp because uh, what we were talking about earlier about our step count kind of mattering is that Will-O-Wisp is a special kind of demon that is hard to recruit, that you can't recruit normally. If you talk to them, they'll just go like, rrr, rrr, and you can't really converse like that. Yeah, they're just kind of a mindless undead spirit. And so in order to actually recruit them, you need one of three things to happen. One, they can just show up and talk to you. Uh, and if you give them, and if you talk to them, then they might just join your party if you just give them an item. Uh, secondly, you can get them to critical HP. So will o -Wisp here, he has 10 HP. If you get him down to, uh, if you get him down to two or one HP, uh, there is a 5% chance that any other action that targets him, like analyze, which we just learned, will cause him to beg for his life. In which case he'll be like, no friend for free. Uh, yeah, so I actually went for the, I went for the mercy there by attacking with Pixie for four plus four. Will O Wisp has resist physical, and Pixie's a little weaker, so her physical attack will almost always do four damage. Yes, and the kind of third way, which we would really rather not see. Ideally, we would see one of the first two on our way there, preferably just the them talking to us when they show up. Uh, is when we get back to the next save point, we can kind of set up. A, we can do a setup to get an encounter with one of the two we're looking for on a full Kagatsuchi, which is the the meter in the up left top left corner. Uh, some people call it Moon Phase because that's what it is in other SMT games. But uh, at full, the the rules of demon negotiation behave a little bit differently. Uh, uh, rare for enemies to go first on normal. Yeah, some uh, most demons just don't talk to you on full. They're they're so dazzled by the light of Kagatsuchi that they just don't want to talk to you, or they're filled with like bloodlust. So most of them don't want to talk to you. However, the special kind of demon that Preda, Willy, Will Wisp, as well as Wilders, will uh, actually be willing to talk to you at full. Something about like going crazy makes the the things that can't talk be able to speak English. So that's what we're going to try to set up for if we don't actually get a uh, get a recruit by the time we get uh, by the time we get back down to the save point. We'll we'll open up a shortcut to get us back to where uh, Hijiri was. Uh oh. I guess I got to analyze again. Yeah, I'm going for analyze here. Preda's on 20%. Yeah, no dice. It's about a 5% chance of working. I have nothing yeah. else to spend the Demi Fiend's MP on, but... Yeah, so you'll notice for level ups, we should get into this briefly because I'm sure there's a lot of uh, a lot of people who've played these games that are very confused about what level up Shiner went for. 
Uh, for this run, we'll be going for Magic. Magic is amazing in this game, and it's just the best build to go for if you're going for any ending that is not the true demon ending. Uh, for a myriad of reasons, uh, you need to go Fizz if you're going for the true demon ending, uh, mostly just because there's a skill called Pierce that doesn't work with, doesn't work normally with, uh, with Magic. And, uh, but for anything else, Magic is just way better. You get just much bigger damage a lot earlier with Magic, and you get better spells a lot earlier. The first good Fizz spell you get is at level 42 with Divine Shot, whereas we're going to learn a skill called Tornado at level 17 uh, that we're going to use for the entire run. It's that good. Yeah, our main strat for the entire run is just Tornado Gober. Yeah, here we're, we're going to try to uh, analyze this Will-O-Wisp uh, into Intimidation. He's very scared of us analyzing him, like staring at him ominously. Uh, hopefully that's the case at least. We'll, we'll, we'll try to burn through our MP, or if he uses Death Touch. Yeah, if he uses Death Touch, I'll kill him, because yeah. he's only going to heal one, and there's no way I could do only two damage. Yeah, the annoying thing about trying uh, to get Will-O-Wisp is he does have a Drain move, which will uh, damage us and heal him. So if he uses it, which he is, unless he unless he misses here, which he does. I don't think well, I've uh, never seen him miss it. We can, uh, we unfortunately uh, yeah. will not be able to get him. So Again, analyzes the longer shot, but this is a marathon. Uh, I'm kind of going in the name of the show must go on and uh, doing whatever I can to get Will-O-Wisp or Prada, either one. Yeah. Again, preferably Will-O-Wisp because that's what the fast, that's the what the actual route uses that is the faster of the two. Yeah. But uh, we do have a, a strat for Prada because sometimes this can take a really long time. I've had this like go for upwards of like, I hit the 35 minute mark in the run and uh, still didn't get a Will-O-Wisp. Yeah. And this... at that point you just kind of are like, well, I guess we're not doing this. I mean, Nocturne has a reputation for being a brutal game and people say, Shiner, how can you run this? Isn't this game RNG ridiculous? It's, isn't it very unforgiving and all that? No, I, I run Dragon Warrior 4. That game is uh, much more unforgiving. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a lot of a lot of the difficulty in this game. Oh, nice. This could be good. A lot of the difficulty in this game comes from. Uh, yeah. Let's go. Oh, we got oh. Willy. Wow, we are not at the mercy of RNG anymore. Yeah. This this is the only really random thing in the whole run, and the, yeah. the main reason why uh, I'm running the early game and Freedom is, and Freedom <laughs> hates trying to recruit an undead demon. Yeah, uh, I am rather notorious for my absolutely awful luck at this first part of the game. The first probably three, four hours, I'm rather infamous for just the game not liking me very much. So to prevent that, Shiner's doing it because the game likes him a little bit more here. It, it really does. The game really does like me a lot. I mean, I I actually have never played another SMT game. I just like this game because it's a good RPG. Whereas Freedom has Freedom runs uh, at least like five other SMT games, and the the same 3D models end up in the other games in this series. But they all the demons have different immunities and weaknesses in all the other games. I you know I I know all these different routes for Nocturne, but I think Freedom has a much harder job memorizing all the different weaknesses of these same looking enemies in different games. Yeah, both have their challenges and their. Uh and their uh, niceties. But uh, here we're just running to the medical center. There's a couple items that are really nice to pick up that we'll be using later. We do need two more recruits. Uh, Shikigami is level four, which we're already at, so we'll be able to get him. Uh, are you level, level five? five. Yeah, oh, nice. I just I just hit level five. Usually I don't even get those. If I only get the I only get those if I need more experience yeah. for level five, but I'm a little ahead of schedule. Hey, oh, there's our paper boy. The nice thing is uh, before the first boss is dead, we have 100% recruit success. So. Yeah. So one of the one of the big things about this game that can be a little irritating is that recruits in this game are infamously very very random. Uh, the game kind of decides as you're doing the recruit before you even finish the recruit whether it's going to succeed or not. Uh, and really all you can do is make that chance lower uh, by not giving demons items that they request. But uh, be, the game kind of takes pity on you during this first dungeon. And like Shiner said, there's a flag that's set where if you are able to talk to a demon, woo, uh, if you're able to talk to a demon, they will, uh, as long as you know you give them items. Oh, nice. If they there's will multiple demons, always uh, recruit. If there's multiple demons, they like to interrupt you and not let you talk. Yeah, that was but really I'm good. Very lucky for me there. So we need to recruit Huopo. Uh, sometimes you're not level five by this point, so that can be a little more difficult. But we got that level early enough I that want, we can do that. I want Willie to hit level three earlier if I can. Yeah, that way you can kick him out for the for the level. Well, I want him to hit level four from the boss. Yeah. So getting to three first will ensure that. Whoa. Uh, Moragi on turn one. Um, Okay. Yeah, we're fine. This is so. Will-O-Wisp, he resists Fizz. Uh, this game 
kind of rightfully so, because resist fizz is great. Oh, wow. Uh, this game very, very highly values fizz resistance, and so usually it comes with some sort of ridiculous drawback. Uh, in this case, will o uh, resists fizz, but uh, is weak to all forms of magic, which... Uh, that's Wee. a really big liability. A little painful, yeah. So we don't want Will-O-Wisp in our party as much as possible. However, we do need him to get a couple levels. Will-O-Wisp learns, learns a couple very important skills. Uh, the first up is something called Rebarama, which just increases the encounter rate, which is nice for grinding. Uh, the other skill that we really, really want him to learn is Makakaja, which is a magic buff. Uh, all the spells in this game have weird names. You have the four elements, Agi being fire, Bufu being ice, Zan being force slash wind and Zeo being electricity. Uh, the buffs follow a similar but different naming scheme where Makakaja is like a magic buff. Uh, Tarukaja is a physical attack buff. Rakukaja is a defense buff. Sukukaja is an accuracy buff with uh, debuffs being the same prefix but with Unda at the end of it instead. So we really want Makakaja because we're going magic build so we want to do lots of magic damage. Yeah, that was the the challenge for routing Prado was not having Makakaja early. I found another. I found how to get it the other earliest possible way, and even reconnect with the the same any percent route. Like I could have this completely different early game and then hand the controller back to Freedom and go, here you go, you're back on where you should be. So here we have this very majestic Stingray just floating through the air. Uh, apparently there was another human in the medical center that escaped, so he's kind of upset about that. Uh, so he's like. Oh, another another person trying to escape my medical center, huh? Well, uh, I'm gonna kill you now. So you know we can't have that. That's kind of rude. So uh, he's weak to electricity, and there is a condition in this game called shock. If you get hit with an electric attack, there is a chance that you will become shocked, and every hit against you will be a critical hit. So the plan here is to hit him with electric skills, which is his weakness. Try to try to beat up on him. Uh, a lot of a number of bosses in this game have a slumping state when they get below a certain amount of HP. Uh, I believe it's 25 or 20. Yeah, I think 25 uh, percent. That will uh, he's currently in that state because he uses icy death uh, when he's in that state as well. Uh, that indicates a low health. Once it gets to low health, we want to swap in our Will O Wisp. Uh, like we said, using Willy in our party is a huge liability. Uh, so there's a couple bosses that we're actually going to swap him into our party so that he can soak up some EXP without actually having to be used in combat. Lunge! Let's go, Lunge! <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Lunge is awful. Uh, just prefacing this, Lunge is the best skill in the game, <laughs> but it's oh, really it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, the maybe the flashiest. Yeah, so Lunge has only a slightly higher... Uh, oh, nice strength. strength. One. Nice. Uh, Lunge has only a slightly higher base power than our basic attack, but it has a lower accuracy. And it costs HP, because physical moves in this game cost your HP. Uh, magic costs MP. It's a cool little touch that this game has. Uh, so Lunge is really bad, but it's also really exciting to use it to uh, to actually kill things. So uh, anytime Shiner gets the opportunity to use Lunge and it actually does something useful, we'll, uh, we'll get very excited about it. Yeah, I just... All right, how y'all feeling about some donations at this moment in time? Would love to hear some. I'm yeah. just on my way out of here after I talk to the spirit in the hall. Yeah. To go for All it. right, well, Elamotas sent in $25 and says, As promised, my donation for miscasts in Loom, plus a little extra help out the Blue Lions. And some Diener sent in $50, says, I pledged this donation during my run, so I have to follow through during Nocturne. Good luck and have fun. Put this towards Puzzle Boy. Nice. Looking forward to my We have some fight. more. Do we have time for some more? Yeah, yep. we're just gonna be we're just gonna be leaving the medical center and watching some cutscenes, so. All right, well, Gorg Express sent in $100 and said simply, Mothman. Mothman! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We also have $10 here from Maki Rose, who says, Just because puzzles are fun. Now, I want to update y'all on our incentives because people put those towards the incentives. Thank you so much. So now we are on our way. We are at $190 out of the $750. We need to unlock the Puzzle Boy mini game, And we are up to $175 out of the $750. We need to fuse Mothman. You want to tell everyone how long they have to donate to unlock that Puzzle Boy minigame? How sure. long would you say? We'll have till about uh, 421 and 9 seconds on the timer when I reach the city of Asakusa. It's right before I hand off the controller to freedom pretty much, but uh, Mothman is actually kind of a high-level demon and we'll be fusing Mothman right before the end of the game just to use Mothman for the final battle. 
So all right, I guess so that a little more Boy's time on Mothman. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So get those donors in for who's Puzzle that? Boy. Yeah, who, who's yeah. this mysterious man? I don't know. So, someone in the real world mentioned something about a really tall foreigner in red with a cool-looking sword, but uh, didn't know who he was. Yeah, uh, I wonder if he's featured for many video games. Seems seems kind of like that might be uh, something. I don't know. Featured from some other series. Oh, I wish. Let's see. I think I already healed everyone. I'm about to drop off Pixie and Yoyogi Park, so I'll use Pixie's MP to heal my guys. So, uh, yeah, those of you who have played this game, uh, we're sorry, but we're going to say goodbye to Pixie. It's... We get 2,000 Maka for free, pretty much. She gives yeah. us the Magatama Onk. Yeah, so uh, so normally people like to keep Pixie, you know, as, you know, our first friend. And she she evolves into High Pixie, who's a really powerful demon early on. Uh, also has the benefit of, uh, well, benefit of if you go for the, the true demon ending, there's a, there's a door that if you take Pixie or whatever you fused her into, uh, to that door, you can open it and fuse it into a regular pixie with like Megi Doleon and a bunch of other high level skills. Uh, which, and also the ability to open up a ton of doors uh, in that area. Uh, but since we're not going into the Labyrinth of Amala, and even if we did, we wouldn't get her anyway. Uh, ah, scammed. We, uh, we won't be doing that. We also do, uh, if we ditch pixie, the game kind of like takes some sort of pity on you again. Is like, okay, well, you lose that free demon, but. Uh, as a consolation, you do get uh, the Magatama Ankh, which normally we would have to wait until after the next boss and into a dungeon a little bit to buy. Uh, Ankh is very important. It has a lot of really good skills. Uh, it has a healing skill that we're going to be using the whole game. It has the fast retreat skill, which will let us run away from all fights with basically a 90 to 95% success rate. Feels like 99% to yeah, me. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Even without fast retreat, our odds to run away feel like 80% to me. Something. They're, they're pretty good. Uh, I like so how the game threw so many pixies at you too. Like as soon as you got rid of pixie, it was like here you you made a mistake here. Yeah, so <laughs> here, yeah. here in your pixie. <laughs> pixie's the only thing that shows up here. Yeah, so pixie's the only thing that shows up. So we're actually recruiting another pixie because we do need her for fusion material. Uh, we just wanted Ankh. so we're we're getting pixie. Well, fusion material and because she has uh, Rekunda, which is a, uh, or she will learn Rekunda, which is a defense debuff that we will need for a couple bosses. Yeah, so we, we do need, need Pixie, but we want Ankh more. So oh, I'm going to get here right on time. I want to enter the city around Rising 6. Hey, let's go. Oh, we're going to see Jen. It's Jen! This is Jen. He's Wilder. Uh, he is the RPG jerk bird of the, of the game. Well, there's another one. Oh, there, there's a jerkier bird, for yeah. sure. Jen is the jerk bird of the series. Uh, anytime Jen shows up in an SMT game, usually it's going to be to the uh, displeasure of the player. Uh, people who have played SMT5, uh, generally their first, like, whenever I've seen people play SMT5 and talk about their experience, usually when they get to Gen, uh, I find out about it very quickly because Gen can be rude. Uh, generally a bad time. Yeah, am I generally right? a bad time. Uh, so, I was wondering what that Jerkbird reference was, as I'm, I'm kind of steeped in Undertale and Deltarune, and so I was like, wait, there's a Birdly reference? <laughs> They're all talking about the Jerkbird? Yeah, so Different RPGs jerk bird. generally tend Different to have a, bird. a bird enemy that's awful to fight. Uh, so Jen has an ability <laughs> called Warcry. What the heck is going on? Uh, Jen has an ability called Warcry, which is uh, two stages of an attack and magic debuff, which is awful. So, uh... <laughs> That's why Jen's obnoxious, because if Jen goes first and casts Warcry, then we're stuck either having to run away or fight it while doing no damage at all, even with its weakness. And it's nice, breath. So, uh, the way we learn skills in this game, we should talk about a little bit. Uh, you get the the like little gummy worms that we turned us into a demon. Those are called uh, Magatama. We uh, get several of them throughout the game, and each one has a set list of skills that when we level up with the Magatama, if we are a high enough level to learn a requisite skill from it, we will learn said skill. So the first skill, we got the Magatama Wadatsumi from beating Fornius, and the first skill on that is Ice Breath, which is going to be our first magic skill for, for this part of the game, and it's quite good. It's, uh, the game didn't, the devs didn't really want to give Demi Fiend any, uh, Proper magic. Any proper magic. So he gets all like the weird multi-hit stuff, which actually ends up playing in our favor a lot later on. But uh, so Ice Breath, it's uh, light ice damage, but it's random targeting. So it'll hit multiple enemies, but it can also hit multiple enemies multiple times. 
Uh, in some formations, even hitting things up to three times. What is this follow-up rate? Are we sure we don't have Rebarama active right now? It triples your chance of reinforcements, too. Yeah. I don't believe... I don't think so. Do... I used it at Falling Half in Yogi Park, right? Yeah, yeah and you let it... Yeah, it's, it's run out for sure. Uh, so we do need to be fighting things here in Shibuya. Uh, we need to learn a couple skills. Uh, specifically, we needed to learn Ice Breath, which you just did. We also need to learn Dia off of Ankh. As well as Pixie needs to level up enough to learn Rekunda. Shikigami needs to learn Sukunda, which is an accuracy debuff. Both of those will be very important for the next boss. Uh, so we do need to be fighting things in here. Uh, reinforcements are uh, both nice and a little ridiculous uh, at this point. Probably shouldn't take this fight. Uh, Morio is weak to expel, which is not an element I have access to. Yeah. For the highest level thing in here. Nice dodge. Yeah. Yeah, physical skills are less accurate in this game. You kind of want to use uh, Sekunda or Sand Attack or Sukukaja, which is like double team. There's a. I, I like to describe this game as edgy Pokemon, but your trainer has to fight on the front line, and if he dies, it's game over. It doesn't matter how many demons you have deployed, doesn't matter if they have Recarm to potentially revive someone. Um, this is an encounter. That's the only way to get a game over, is your main character dies. Well, that was, uh, I think Kodama has 20 HP. Oh yeah, and there was random targets, I only hit two. Yeah, so in, in groups of like five or six like this, you could potentially hit like upwards of five or six times. Uh, the the math for how many times a thing hits kind of depends on number of targets. It's weird and a little beyond the scope of this run, but yeah, only hitting two things when you have like a group of six targets is kind of unfortunate. All right, there's Pixie level Ankh. four, which gives her Rekunda. And yeah, we'll, we'll be swapping over to Ankh here. Uh, each Magatama along with teaching you skills also gives you different affinities as far as your weaknesses. Uh, along with boosting different stats by a different amount. Yeah, like the wiki says, it's weapon, armor, and spellbook, all in one. Uh, this is a weird encounter, uh, and you've run again. into it a bunch of times. Uh, I'll pester one of the... I'll pester the last outside Oh, yeah, that's off. a good idea. So, uh... Not only can Demifiend talk, his demons also can. Uh, and there's different kinds of talk skills that we'll run into throughout the game. Uh... Pixie has an ability called Seduce, which is, in most cases, a normal talk skill. But if uh, if a female demon uses it to talk to to talk to a male demon, then there's like a 50 or 65 percent chance of an instant recruit. Uh, Huapo has a special ability uh, called Pester, which, uh, as you saw there, basically a child demon asks adult demons for uh, for items. And so there we got a disc stun, and then Huapo just gave us another one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the demons have different personalities, and uh, that's why Ba is uh, an old woman who's like, oh, even a child has to beg to survive these days. Here's a present from Granny. Also, She gave you a free disc stun. Hee-haw, everyone. Oh, look at that. Junkie Kong survived the conception. Hee-haw. Yeah, this is Club Inferno, uh, kind of a nice hangout to get information. Shibuya is kind of a, a neutral city. Well, Freedom, look at the <laughs> look at the stream overlay. They brought us a sticker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, that's that's on the the European <laughs> cover for the game called Lucifer's Call. <laughs> yeah, RPGs have come a long way. You know, I commentated Dragon Warrior Two last night where they. <laughs> They, they replaced all the crucifixes with five-pointed stars and removed as many religious references as possible. And now here we have this uh, beautifully blasphemous game where the world ends and we're recruiting demons to help us now that we're a half-demon. Yeah. So so there Chionki is uh, like, hey, uh, so what actually happened? We're like, oh, so the, the world ended, by the way. And she's like, oh, well, I don't know where uh, hashtag null is, but... Uh, you know, I'll, I'll go look around because I'm worried about our friend and I'm worried about our teacher. You know, seems like a very nice, reasonable person. Uh, I'm sure that will persist through, throughout this entire uh, throughout this entire run. Uh, but so, so we part ways and we're we're gonna look around the city a little more, see if we can find any leads on our own about what's what's happening. It seems like demons aren't as aggressive towards attacking humans. Uh, so Chiaki has been has been able to sneak around because of that. Uh, also worth noting, if you talk to a demon while you have that same demon in your stock or in your party, uh, they'll just leave. They'll be like, oh, that's my friend that you have with you. Uh, <laughs> unless that happens. Yeah, that's another example. Uh, Pixie is also a young girl, and she's like, hey, I'm a young girl too. You, you can't beg me for help. We're both broke. So she got mad and started fighting me. 
Yeah, lots of lots of fun in, uh, fun fusion interactions in this era. Not fusion interactions, recruitment interactions in this game. Yeah. If you talk to the last. I see demon a in question. Fight, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. The oh, I got a revival bead. Nice. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, if you talk I to the I see a last question in the chat portion. about the about the ending being Musubi, and uh, I just wanted to remind everybody that we actually have an incentive where you can vote on the ending. So yeah, the ending is a bid war. Yeah, so normally, like like I said previously, normally the any percent speedrun goes for Musubi because it's the fastest ending. In fact, the category used to be called normal Musubi. Uh, however, then we realized you can get like you can very easily accidentally get Shijima, and it'd be weird to invalidate the run because of that. Uh, so we changed it to normal any percent, especially because it's just more inclusive. Yeah, it's an easier to understand name. Like, what's yeah. Musubi? Well, yeah. it's any percent. We're doing whatever we can to see the credits. Yeah. Oh yeah, I actually drew some little triangles on my mask to try to look like Jack Frost. But, uh, I don't think they showed up very well. And Shijima is in the lead. Oh, hee ho. <laughs> Hee-haw. Can we get some hee-haws in the chat? Yeah, can we get some surprises in chat? Yeah. Some hee-haws or some uh, some Frito. If uh, there's any subs to my channel in chat, we uh, can get some Frito 52 loves or some Frito 52 dabs. Uh, we'd love to fill the chat with some uh, some dabbing hee-haws. But uh, there, the Jack Frost there is a shopkeeper. He he's wants to go on an adventure and is kind of raising funds for it. So we, uh, we fund his adventure by buying a couple more Magatama. And here we meet Mido and the Cathedral of Shadows, which will be basically where the other big mechanic of this game comes into play. Uh, we, you can take one demon, uh, you can take one demon and another demon, kind of smash them together and get a different demon. Uh, the result is determined by the the family, clan, race, whichever term you prefer. The game, the games yeah. kind of shuffle between them. You, uh, I think the official term in this game is family. You can sort the compendium by family. We'll talk about the compendium much yeah. later once we have it. Yeah, but you, you combine two demons and you get a third one. Uh, we're not going to do that right now because we don't really have very many demons with us. Uh, like I said, recruits after you have beaten Fornius can be kind of awful. So we try to do as much as we can without uh, without recruiting. We only have one more recruit left in the entire run, actually. Yeah, we... And yes, we have one more thing we recruit normally. And then uh, I mentioned demons have talk skills and I mentioned uh, specifically Pixie's uh, seduce ability. Uh, there's another one that Shikigami has called Beseech. We'll, we'll get into it a bit more later, but essentially because recruits can be really bad, one yeah. uh, skills like Beseech, which have an, a, a condition that leads to an auto recruit without having to give demons any items or go through the annoying conversation trees are very useful. So we'll see Beseech one time later. Yeah, you saw me get scammed in Yoyogi Park earlier. People have probably seen that meme of like, incoming trade offer. I receive one Revivial bead, 420 Maka, one Revivial bead. You receive nothing, bye. <laughs> yeah, I gave, I gave Pixie some Maka and some items and then she said, oh, sorry, I have something to do today. Make do with this and gave me a, a life stone and left. Yeah. So as we were uh, looking around in Shibuya, we, we stopped by the save room and uh, Hijiri was here, apparently. How did he get here before us? Yeah. We walked the whole way. And so he's like, oh, hey, uh, fancy seeing you here. Well, uh, I by studying this drum, I found out that we can that I can actually use it to teleport between these, uh, between these waypoints or these Amala drums here. Uh, and so, you know, I heard this information that there is a group operating in Ginza and their leader is a human which is kind of weird because from what we've been told, all of the humans have kind of, that were not in the hospital when the world ended are dead. So the only, as far as we know, the only surviving humans are like, well, we're not really human anymore because we're demi-fiend, uh, are like Chionki, Noel, and uh, our teacher presumably, and that strange, uh, that strange Hikawa person that, uh, that we met, also Hijiri. And Hijiri's like, yeah, I was looking for Hikawa, you know, earlier, and, you know, there's this group called the Assembly of Nihilo that's kind of fighting for control of the Vortex world, which is what this place is called. And I've heard their leader is a human. Uh, I imagine that's Hikawa, but, uh, you know, I can't really do any fighting, so can you go ahead to Ginza to check it out? I'll warp you there. And, uh, you know, as we're warping, we, uh, you know, we're traveling through the, uh, the fiber optics of the demon world or whatever. Uh, and we kind of just fall out into the Matrix, uh, also known as the uh, Amala, Amala Network. Network. Thank you. I almost said the Labyrinth of Amala. That's not right. That's coming up, kind of. Yeah. And so we're, we're in this nice little mazy, mazy place. Uh, we see 
uh, little red squigglies kind of flowing through the floor. That's uh, the Magatsuhi stuff that a lot of the, the demons early on were like, oh, I want Magatsuhi. Uh, basically, it's kind of headcanon is that it's like the explanation for EXP in this game. Demons consume uh, Magatsuhi to become stronger. It also serves a different purpose that's much more important that we'll get into much later in the game. Uh, basically, everyone wants Magatsuhi for for one reason or another, and uh, a lot of it kind of travels here through the Amala network. Uh, so we're stuck here. We're trying to find a way out. Basically, uh, it feels like something is trying to keep us trapped in here, but Hijiri has kind of figured out the basics of how to manipulate the network. So we have to find these rooms with good cell reception so that we can uh, have him open the doors for us. I'm how do y'all feel about some donations right now? Please do. I'm yeah. saving the game and... Uh... Let's hear some donations instead of me grinding my teeth. All over right, it. all right. Orochi X sent in five dollars, and they say first time donator, long time watcher, loving what you guys are doing, and please keep it up. Also, maybe five dollar train. I would love to see a five dollar train to unlock that puzzle boy incentive for sure. I have a hundred dollar donation here from Catling, who says this run is a glacial blast. Also, not donating towards an ending because I'm Chiaki's biggest fan, and thus Yosuga, <laughs> do or die. Oh, that's, that's an extremely rare fan base. Uh, yeah. Shout some, out to some, that. Yeah, some so, strong feelings. So we should explain why Yosuga is not an option or why Demon or Freedom ending isn't an option, uh, despite someone named Freedom being the one getting the ending. Yeah, freedom can't go for freedom ending. Yeah, How yeah. unfortunate. Uh, basically, the reason why we chose Masubi or Shijima is kind of the bosses you fight at the end of the game vary depending on which ending you choose. Uh, and if you go for Masubi ending, you skip fighting a boss called Noah uh, that is really annoying to fight. Uh, it like is a basically a barrier shift boss that can be kind of slow to fight. That's why Musubi is the fastest ending. Shijima, you skip fighting another boss called Araman, so you still skip a fight, but it's still a little slower because Araman's faster to fight than Noah. However, uh, every other ending makes you fight Noah and Araman, and you don't get to skip any fights. In fact, uh, both the Demon and Freedom ending add another fight on top of that. Uh, well, Demon Ending cuts out the final boss fight, so that's kind of lame. That's why we're not doing that one. Uh, basically, just too many fights are added, too much uh, extra time in the run. Uh, so just to, we just picked the endings that are too close this time, again, being Shijima and Musubi. Yeah, Freedom Ending would be... I, I've done it in a marathon before, and so has uh, Pink Pajamas, another prolific runner and router of this game. Uh, but that ending adds... Uh, a particularly nasty boss that's rarely seen in runs of this game. Who will be our best friend? Well, he will be a friend if would we be, go Shijima. It would be our best friend if, uh, if he was a little 80 Or if we're doing hard any percent. I actually, hard, uh, Shijima is actually the fastest ending for hard any percent. Uh, I think Musubi could be possible, but you'd have to do like some expensive uh, fusion shenanigans to use Yadagarasu for the, anyway, <laughs> yeah. So here as we're going through the mall network, we'll be running into these elements uh, and we're gonna try to try to uh, pester them for items and money. The big thing we're looking for here as we're going through is a Megiddo rock. Uh, I mentioned there was different types of magic. One I didn't bring up was Almighty. Uh, Almighty magic is special because it pierces magic shields and nothing except for two bosses resist Almighty. Uh, and because of that, the next upcoming boss who resists magic, we can use a Megiddo rock to, to wipe the boss in two turns when normally we'd have to go through this whole rigmarole. Oh no. Returns. Oh, they're not dangerous on normal yeah, mode. Yeah, it's fine. I, I also went with uh, Eomonte here. I actually, I forgot to do that and kind of got a little punished. Uh, Demi King got targeted by uh, Pudinpa ah. to inflict panic status, and they they would have ended their turn because I would have voided the mind type attack. Yeah, so we want, uh, we want a, uh, a Megiddo Rock from Pestering if we can get it. If not, then it's fine. We just do a different strat for the boss. Uh, so here, we haven't talked about these yet. This is something called a mystical chest. Basically, it's uh, they're chests that have really good items in them, but whether or not you get said good item depends on your uh, Kagatsuchi phase. You're guaranteed to get the good contents of the chest at full. Uh, outside of full, your odds of getting the good contents is basically you see like 7, 8, 6, 8. That's the fraction of how likely you are to get the item. At new, you have a 0% chance and you just get a lifestone instead. Yeah, it's either a lifestone or a really good item. Uh, the B-Chain is a, a good item. It's a full HP restore for your entire party. 
sounds like a great thing to use in battle for like efficient uses or press turns, but uh, it's actually way more efficient to just sell it to a vendor for 5,000 Maka. You've probably seen we get very little Maka for winning fights, and even when I'm pestering these elements, uh, you know, I give them money and then they give me more money back. There's just a, a sale on money today, I guess. Yeah, early, early on in this run, money can be a, a little tight, so we do have to pick up these uh, these bead chains from chests. And we also, at the beginning of the game, we like talked to those vending machines and we got a Soma. Soma is a full HP and MP heal for uh, for whoever you use it on, but more importantly, it sells for 6k, which is how we were able to afford both Iomante and Shiranui earlier. Uh, so here we're going to be saving for our uh, for our next boss fight. Yeah. Ooh, it's... good time for more donations. We have all kinds of donations rolling in here. Uh, can, yeah. we, can we wait till after the boss fight so Freem can talk about it? Sure, yeah, yeah no problem. We have a problem. long cutscene after the boss fight. Yeah, you have all right. a lot yeah, of time sounds after. Good. So this is Spectre. He, uh, he is a, a denizen of the Amala network. And uh, he's like, oh, there's lots of you, and well, there's lots of me too, and summons a bunch of friends. So each, we'll be fighting Spectre a few times throughout the run. Each fight works a little bit differently. Uh, here, the, the Spectres will either use a fire skill or a basic attack against us. And after either three turns or if you kill two of them, uh, they will kind of mega merge together uh, into a stronger form. And the how strong this stronger form is is based on the number of uh, the number of materials that have been fused together. Oh, lucky. So, uh, so our goal here is to get rid of one of them because uh, if it, the the six material large specter is, is a little is a little nasty even a on normal tougher. mode. Yeah. So, so even getting rid of just one of the materials uh, makes the fight a lot easier. And then once he's once he's merged, we'll be able to uh, we'll just have one target and he'll alternate between again using fire skills or attacking or using an ability called foul havoc. Uh, so here they merge together. And basically what we're going to be doing here is now that they're merged together, we're going to be throwing up debuffs on him, both to make him less likely to hit us and also to decrease his uh, defense. Yeah, so here he, he hits pretty hard. He'd have almost like twice as much strength if he had the full six materials, I think. Imagine me taking double damage from all this on hard mode. Yeah, but this fight on hard mode, if you don't get the Megiddo Rock, can be really scary. And we even do like two fusions in hard mode to uh, make our demons a little beefier. So yeah, here we're just gonna be we're gonna be debuffing him, healing with MC. Uh, you already see the perk of going all in on magic. Ooh, nice. You already see the perk of going all in on magic on MC. He's healing for like max HP or more already, and that's gonna be the case throughout the run with like the low level healing skills. So just a couple more turns. We do, like I said, we we do need Will O Wisp to learn all of his skills, so we're gonna be swapping him in now. Uh, thankfully, he does prefer physical attacks. Uh, Foul Havoc counts as a physical attack. Nice, nice Gaishin. Uh, so we'll, uh, he prefers physical attacks. He does have Augie, but hopefully he just doesn't target will o -Wisp with it. Or misses with those two Secundas. Yeah, or misses. So now we're just gonna, now we're just gonna beat him up. We, uh, Pixie doesn't really need EXP. She has all the skills that she needs. And so we want Shikigami, Huapo, and Willy to all, to all get this EXP. And there we go, good fight. 600, nice big yeah. chunk at this early in the game. Had we gotten the Megiddo Rock, we would have just thrown the uh, thrown the Rakundas up in the first two turns and then just thrown the Megiddo Rock and blown them up. Uh, no, okay. <laughs> I was thinking about, I think a Zahn or Needle Rush would be the thing that changes. Yeah, so skills have a, when demons level up, there's two things that can happen. They'll either want to change a skill, which will change a, what is an unstable skill, which are generally skills that can be upgraded in some way. Uh, but not always. That would change uh, that change one skill to a skill that is a rank higher, though not necessarily of the same type. Uh, or they will ask to give you an item. Demon item gifts are always great. We love to see them. We'll want to see them as much as we can. Uh, we really don't want to see skill changes. Uh, you can, if you know enough about skill changes, you can theoretically just be like, gamble with them if yeah, it's a skill like, you don't care about. Should you allow skill changes in a speedrun? Short answer, no. Long answer, no. Only if you really know what you're doing. But in the time, it, like I wasted a second thinking about nothing, basically. It's, it's, it'll, it'll just be better to say no. Yeah. So we here want we, to count on like reliable skills to pass on. Here we uh, we fall even deeper into the into the rabbit hole into this place called the Labyrinth of Amala. This is the only time we'll see this place. But here there's this stage where uh, where the woman in black shows up again with the old man in the wheelchair and kind of tells us, hey, by the way, 
uh, here, take this candlestick. It'll make you stronger, because this place is uh, very, very important. It's where what humans call the netherworld. And there's great power to be found here for you, but you're not strong enough yet. So here, take this candlestick. It'll help make you stronger, which, uh, you know, that's not ominous at all. But uh, now is a great time for donations because we're just skipping through this. Yep. Awesome. Well, Moonblaze Wolf sent in $25 saying matching Motoss's loom donation. Also, hi, Sporadic. Hi, Moonblaze Wolf. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to admit I have never played a Shin Megami Tensei game, even though I love the later Persona games. This is going to be a treat. I agree. Yeah, it's all the I same have models. another $25 donation here from Zero Blade Edge who says, Hey, Freedom and Shiner, good luck on Nocturne. Love you both, and shout outs to all the runners and staff here. Keep up the good work. Put Love this you, towards Zero. fusing the best boy. Let's go. Oh, Thank you so much, Zero. Appreciate it. Do we have time for more? Yes. Yep. All right, and another $25. I love how we asked for like a $5 train and we kind of got like a $25 train. Y'all are amazing. Another $25 from Cinder who says, cheers to the late night crew, cheers. <laughs> and finally, Day Nava also sent in $25. It says, let's see that sub eight minute puzzle boy. Yeah, I got an 803 while practicing. I think it can be done. That's pretty awesome. I'd love to give an update on our incentives that everybody has been donating towards, by the way. Uh, yeah. yeah, real so, quick. Go ahead. I'm just yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Mothman is up to $300 out of the $750 we need, and the Puzzle Boy minigame is up to $240 out of the $750 we need. So I know everybody's real hyped for Mothman, but we have eight hours for that and four hours for Puzzle Boy. Please get those donos in for Puzzle Boy. Yeah, so absolutely. Again, Puzzle Boy, it's very very intimidating and difficult the first time you play it so it's it's very impressive it's, to see how quickly shiner can it's play 20 it. stages long and you have to do it all in one sitting to get the reward if you quit you'll have to start again from stage one so here we Check arrive off. in ginza Ooh, we're uh, we're told to to look around for some uh nice money uh we're told to look around for for clues so we're supposed to like go to a club that's run by a demon named nix and kind of get information that information that uh yes nice magic mirror that's, that's really good that's gonna be really good for the matador fight uh we're supposed to get information however we can just kind of go uh this game is really weird about plot flags most of the time if you know where you need to go you can kind of just go there uh with a few exceptions there's one really really bad plot flag that we'll, we'll bring up during my section of the run but since we we know we need to just go to this warehouse and go to the sewers so we can get to Ikebukuro. Basically, uh, you can go to the assembly of Nihilo, which is where we're where uh, Hijiri wants us to go. But if you go there, the 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 front door is locked, and so you actually can't get into Nihilo. Uh, so we find out that apparently there is a group that is opposing Nihilo called the Mantra, and they're based in Ikebukuro. The only way to get to Ikebukuro is through the uh, through the sewer system. So. Basically, we're going down here to uh, to access the underpass of Ginza in order to get to Ikebukuro. Uh, this is Fomorian. He's kind of rude. He's got 20% uh, physical resist. Yeah. yeah, so Fomorian, this game is weird sometimes with affinities. Uh, a lot of demons and such have hidden affinities. Uh, we'll run into, like, Blob and Slime later, where they are weak to one element, but they actually just take double damage from all magic anyway. Uh, Fomorian's weird. He doesn't resist Fizz, but he just takes 25% less damage from Fizz. Hi, Jean. 20% yeah, less. 20. Yeah, I, I should not have gone for the lunge. Fomorian's a little bit high level. I don't think there's any way to beat Fomorian one turn. Yeah, for reference, oh. Fomorian is like an enemy like three dungeons from now. Two, three dungeons from now. And yep. he just shows up on the overworld. I was going to say, uh, I should probably jump in and out of the warehouse to remove these encounters. Like the... Yeah, encounters on the overworld. Oh. Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh, encounters on the overworld aren't really great for EXP. Uh, we do need to get a couple of levels here. Our, our skill pathing through this next bit. Uh, Shiner just learned Tarundo, which is an attack debuff. We'll need that for uh, for a boss later on. Uh, we also need to need to learn fire breath. Or we learned fire breath. We need to learn fast retreat, which is uh, like we said, the ability that bakes it. So you're basically guaranteed to run from encounters unless you're on full Kagatsuchi, which is. Uh, drops your run rate significantly. Feels like 20%. Yeah. So you, we need to learn Fast Retreat so we can run from everything. We need to learn Turindo, which we did. And we also need to learn a Mana Bonus, which just gives us 10% more MP, which is really nice early on. It's like, why not? Well, the main yeah. reason, actually, uh, you have to learn all the skills off your Magatama in, in order. Oops, not that one. Controller's being a little bit haunted, but we're good. 
A uh, little bit haunted. Oop. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, so mana bonus is the first skill on Wadatsumi, so we have to get rid of that either way. Uh, and we got... Uh, you can learn that as soon as level 11. I don't think you can learn Faster Treat until 12. E, and uh, uh, we can only learn Secunda at 13, which uh, I'm actually going to keep this time. I, I, I thought about it and thought it would be more useful than Lunge versus Matador. Oh, that way you can get his Secundas down faster and MCs. Well, it means, yeah. That, yeah, it means I can use Shikigami's MP entirely on Tarukaja, which will actually add more damage than Lunge would. That right? makes sense, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, Every SMT game, or at least a lot of the newer ones, have a uh, have an infamous boss that a lot of people struggled with when they played through it the first time for one reason or another. Uh, and uh, we'll we'll be getting to uh, to the infamous boss here pretty soon. He's not the next boss, but he's the, the boss after that. So here are the uh, In about half an hour, I think. Yeah, here are the the blob slash slimes I was talking about earlier. Uh, blob is weak to ice, but he just takes double damage from all magic anyway. Uh, but they also do resist fizz which again like we said fizz resist fizz resist in this game comes at a very high cost like all the time nice hey, little ball yeah nice i was gonna buy one at the next shop but now i don't have to so uh here we see this strange looking man that's kind of a human but looks a little off yeah has, has two arms and two legs but uh big sleeves and a very weird posture hey he's a featherless biped therefore it's a man yeah Diogeny is about to come running into the Vortex world. Probably a level uh, 45 Fury. Probably. Oh, wait, that's, that's Dionysus. Yeah. So uh, making our way through the underpass, uh, we're going to bump into uh, bump into these strange people. Oh, it's Sudama. So, uh, you know, on the, the list of fearsome demons you run into in these games, you have, you know, literally giant skulls. You have, like, blobs of sentient ooze. You have demons from lore, and you have circles. Uh, geometry is the scariest, uh, the scariest threat uh, that one can encounter, truly. Yeah, they're, they're level 13. They, they actually get pretty good experience, and they can drop turquoises, uh, yeah. which are gems that I uh, can trade for nice things. <laughs> they also explode. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in our practice run, I actually got killed by them. They used Kamikaze on MC for 51 damage Yeah, if you, on if normal mode. There's a number of enemies in this dungeon. If you get them to low HP they, and don't kill them, they will, uh, they'll blow up, and uh, explosion-type damage really hurts. Yeah, it's it's not quite almighty. It's actually its own element. It's kind of similar in properties, but uh, there are some bosses in this game that null almighty, or uh, not that, but they, they null, null explosion. Yeah, they I call it yeehaw element, <laughs> and uh, it turns out uh, Dante is immune to that. Capcom made sure that uh, Dante would always look cool, and uh oh, might need to swap to my controller. My to. Suit. It's, it's being blinky. Why is it being blinky? Oh, wait, I think we're back. We're good? Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing through a, a really long extension cord, so that might have something to do with it. Yeah, oh, the lights are out again. Uh, they're back on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, batteries might be low if that happens. Like, again, we should get to a save and just swap controllers. Yeah. If. You will have, like, a backup controller there? Yeah, uh, we're using different controllers. I use a controller that has turbo on it because I have hand problems so having turbo is really nice uh but shiner doesn't like the d-pad on the controller because it is admittedly a little weird so he's using a, a dualshock 3 that we uh borrowed but uh, apparently forgot to charge so so we'll be swapping controllers mid run uh either way but might make puzzle boy a little more interesting with, uh, <laughs> with my weird d-pad i won't get the sub eight yeah but I, I did i did run through it on freedom's controller and i could still do it in under 10. Yeah, so here we find out that the uh, the humanoids we've been encountering are not, in fact, humans. They are mannequins, which are essentially mud people. That's pretty much the best way to describe them. They are very, in a very literal sense, mud people. They're yeah, you, you saw I was talking to some blue gas walls in the first area in Shinjuku Medical Center. Those are kind of human souls. Uh, mannequins are kind of like uh, soulless bodies. It's kind of... Uh, there, there aren't really any... The only humans here in the Vortex world, this kind of uh, infant world that was recreated in the ruins of the old one. You know, Tokyo kind of got uh, struck by lightning and the circle folded inwards, and the, that big glowing sphere in the center is Kagetsuchi, that's, which is like the moon. It's the, it's the source of light and is what is dictating uh, the time of day there in the top left. Yeah, basically the, the entity in charge of, uh, of guiding the recreation of the world. 
Uh, and so humans are an important part of that. We'll get more into that later. But now we're going to be going through through this underpass again. Uh, we're going to be, again, fighting in the water. All of the encounters that we will run into are a, uh, another type of stingray called Isora. Uh, Isora is a very angry and unpleasant stingray. Yeah. However, he gives the most experience that you can get at this point in the game uh, for fighting several of them consecutively. So we're going to get most of our experience here uh, while we're running through the water. Uh, so much so that we're turning Rebarama on for a little bit. We're at decreasing too, so we won't have the increased encounter rate for much, and you don't even get encounters out of the water in this area. Yeah, it's basically Ooh. a town, but uh, the the water ain't exactly clean. Yeah, they uh, they forgot to clear out the moat, so we're we're gonna be we're gonna be uh, cleansing the moat a little bit here. Uh, thing about Isora, they have a lot of attacks that can really hurt. However, they do have an AI quirk where if they're below. Uh, if they take more than 50 damage, and I believe they have 120 HP? 132. 132. Uh, if they take more than 50 damage, their AI will force them to use Media, which is uh, an area of effect healing skill. So even though we didn't kill him here, he'll just heal himself for a little bit. Uh, and we can just kind of kind of punch him down. Uh, at this point, we're, we can't really just auto them down entirely. But uh, in groups of one, you can very much just force them to get stuck in a healing loop. A lot of the scary part is if they go first and they use Venom Bite to crit you or use Ice Breath while you're not wearing Wadatsumi. Yeah, that can... Huapo is weak to Ice, so they could farm an extra turn off that, especially if they the random targeting Ice Breath doesn't hit MC to make them lose a turn. Instead, they'll gain an extra turn. I should use Doggy there. Oh, I, guess I did just enough. Yeah, that works. There we go. I'm level 11. Time to learn Mana Bonus. Oh, didn't get... Didn't get a free heal. Yeah, your Magatama can uh, float shake ball? sometimes. A third <laughs> float one. ball. Uh, we can't let Pixie transform here, however. Yeah, High Pixie would be nice. However, uh, like we said, the way fusion work is it's it's based on the the family that the demon belongs to, but also the base level of that demon in the family determines it. And uh, if Pixie evolves into High Pixie, uh, the thing that we want to fuse. Pixie into will no longer result in fusing a Preda, which is what we want to fuse. Yeah, there's only one way to make Preda, and it's fusing Pixie with Will-O-Wisp. And uh, yeah, Pixie transforms into High Pixie. Basically, when demons transform, they gain four levels. And uh, what ends up happening is our instead of level two Pixie, the game is seeing level 10 High Pixie, and then fusing that with level one Will-O-Wisp. You know, it, it, it combines their levels, divides in half, and then rounds up to the new, the next highest thing in that family. So, yeah, Pixie and Fowl makes a haunt, uh, but then uh, Prado's only level three. The next highest one is Corone Zone, is level eleven. So yeah, uh, ten plus one divided by two, still above three. So it rounds up to Corone Zone. Uh, that won't work for us. We are gonna fuse Corone Zone later another way, but yeah, we need that Prado because Prado starts with Sukukaja, and uh, the next two serious bosses in the early game here. Uh, we'll very aggressively use Dekunda, which is a, a debuff removing skill. You, the only way to beat them is to use buffs for your side. So it's a, it's a very serious speed bump in the early game. Uh, I did come up with a route for um, the HD version for PC. You're allowed to play the game with no DLC, so no Matador, no Dante, no Labyrinth of Amala, none of that extra side content. But yeah, not having Matador and Dante means you don't have those bosses with Dekunda. You just don't need Sukukaja and Rakukaja at all in the early game. You can just kind of run straight through here to the next town. So, uh, yeah, it's it's we need to get prey to either way because we need a source of Sukukaja. The only other way is the element demon Aquans, but Aquans is level 15. And that is just too high of a level to reach for yeah. on normal mode. It also requires to pick up a bunch of extra mystic chests, which means more step routing. Which, oh, that's true. Yeah, which, we have to get the mystical chest in Shibuya. Which is fine. It's just, you know, more work. And again, we're going to fight Matador at level 13, I believe. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. grinding the extra two levels just for Tsukikaj is not exactly something we want to be doing. As, as fun as it is to uh, to bully these stingrays, we probably uh, we we kind of do want to get on with our live and get to lives and get to Ikebukuro. Oof, I didn't check MC's TNL there. Oh yeah, when I say TNL, I mean two next level. The required experience needed to level up. Oof, that was close. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna use one of my chakra drops here, and I'm gonna trust that Ankh will heal MC. Ankh is very likely to heal MC when it quakes. 
Yeah, so, so something worth noting is uh, when you level up, we've seen it a couple of times, uh, Magatama have a good chance of, uh, it says basically that the Magatama is shaking or acting wildly. Uh, if you allow that to happen, you can get a number of different effects. Uh, some beneficial, some less beneficial. Uh, a lot, Most of the, the effects are just you get healed. Uh, either you or your party gets healed. Uh, there are some Magatama, like earlier we got a bonus point of strength from Marigera. Uh, that you can get random stat ups. Uh, some Magatama will curse you, which is a unique ailment that causes a lot of really bad things to happen. Uh, some will inflict other ailments such as poison or uh, stun. Uh, for the most part though, we know which Magatamas will curse us and which ones don't. Uh, and so for the most part, we'll be letting Magatama shake. There's one or two cases where we might not. Like earlier, he- Just the evil ones that can curse you. We're yeah. not gonna let those ones shake. Yeah, earlier he rejected a, a shake from Eomonte because Eomonte will either heal you or poison you. Yeah, it's a little more likely to poison you, but it, it could heal your entire party. Yeah. So in that case, it was because of where we were, it wasn't really worth risking the uh, the poison, but there will be times where we'll be really, really hoping for a, for a heal to uh, keep up our tempo going through dungeons. I think we can throw it to the host a little bit. I'm just going to splash around in this pool a bit longer. Um, and we're, we're going to talk to a, a guy on the way out. Maybe we can talk about the plot there. But I think we have a bit of host time available. That's cool, because uh, I'm here. I'm hosting. <laughs> Hi, I got all kinds of information for y'all. Uh, RPG Limit Break 2022 proudly supports the National Alliance on Mental Illness, a.k.a. NAMI. To get involved in the fight against mental illness and the stigmas it can bring, reach out to NAMI via their state organizations or on Facebook, where they can be found as NAMI, or on Instagram and Twitter as at NAMI Communicate. It's not a weakness to need help. Please reach out if you think you need help. Nice. Okay, I'm, I'm technically done uh, experience requirements, although I still would like to hit 13 on MC. I realize now I should have used the chakra drop on Huapo, not on MC. I got healed by my level up there. I think you did use it on Huapo. No, I used it on MC. I used one after. Oh, but okay. I, I mean in that, well, I don't know. I won the fight faster by getting fire breath in there. So it was it was okay. I think I can use Kodama to heal here next. Yeah, Kodama's got some MP. Uh, I'm kind of good for experience. I'm going to get out of the water here if I can. Uh, again, I might get reinforcements over and over and over and over, but uh, Isora is level 14. You're not allowed to fuse or recruit any demon that's a higher level than MC. However, we can use Huapo's Pester skill to... Uh... Oh, it's kind of happening again. I might have to become Freedom's Controller pretty soon. <laughs> Yeah, let's swap controllers after the next save, just so it doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so as soon as you warped again, the save and we'll swap. Yeah. Uh, oh, that, that could be that could be dangerous if I leave auto on. Uh, wow, this is... Oh, I wonder if it's, like, interference because it's touching the headset cord. No, that's no. not the theory either. I think it's just the battery's just dead. Yeah, it's kind of hard to charge the battery through this long extension cord. Yeah, I can use Huapo's Pester skill to uh, make the last Asora leave. Okay, and I'm going to spin around on land here, if I'm allowed. Here, let's just swap it now. <laughs> sure. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't want to run back into the water. Here, let me. So, real quick, don't unplug it yet. Okay. I, I don't have a PS3. I run this game on PlayStation 2. Uh, did that do it? Okay. One sec. Me. This be a good time for donation? Yes, please. Sure. We're just trying to get this working. Awesome. Chantilly Blaze. I hope I'm saying your name right. Chantilly Blaze. Blaze. Chantilly Blaze. Chantilly Blaze. Chantilly Blaze. All right. <laughs> Sent in $10. Says, I'm so happy I can watch Pulse again in the same event that made me go. to know him long ago and alongside Shiner. This is actually a duo you don't want to miss at all. Very happy I didn't miss this run, and even more because I didn't miss Matador. Lots of love, good vibe beans, and good luck on both uh, on the run to both of you. Also, Mothman. <laughs> Thank I you, Blaz. Lots I imagine of love. just like <laughs> staring like with heart eyes. Mothman. We love Mothman. We do love Mothman. 
A little a little update on that. We are still sitting at the $300 out of the $750 that we need to fuse Mothman. We are also still sitting at the $240 out of the $750 we need to unlock the Puzzle Boy minigame. And a reminder that your donations do not automatically go towards those incentives. You have to choose to click on them, so please do. All right, so as we were trying to make our way through the underpass, we uh, we ran into this guardian who, the mannequins have basically been harassed by this mantra group of demons. And so they they have a gatekeeper set up to be like, that's like, no, no way, I'm not allowed to let anyone through. So we, we come here and we talk to this collector mannequin who's like, yeah, I know that guy. Uh, if you uh, do me a favor, I'll, I'll write you a letter of recommendation so you can get through the gate. Yeah, he likes to collect objects that humans used to collect. And he hears about something called a bill. Uh, it's a, a piece of paper with a guy's face on it. Apparently humans valued it more than their lives. Uh, he doesn't know where to find one, maybe in a city. So uh, it turns out talking to him will uh, move a guard out of the way somewhere else. Yeah, uh, when I first so played, through, played this game when I was in high school, I uh, said, oh yes, I would like a bill. I thought he was talking about like a duck bill or something. <laughs> and like you had just had this conversation with the mannequins where like you found out they're kind of eccentric. And so I'm like, all right, yeah, you know, sure, whatever. This is, you know, Humans weird. valued it more than their lives. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, ducks are cool. Like, but no, he's talking about a uh, yen bill. So we'll, we'll, we'll be on our way back to go get that. Uh, if you if you were to go to Nix's uh, Nix's pub, uh, that's kind of meant as like a hint system throughout the game. If you go and talk to the patrons of the bar, uh, they'll give you various hints about where you should think about going. Uh, and there is a demon in the bar by the name of Loki, who uh, if you talk to him after this point, he's like, "Oh, Bill, oh, I don't have." You know, maybe I have one of those, maybe I don't, but I'm not going to let you have it or something. No, like, he says I'll sell it to you for one million mock. Right, that's what it is, which, uh, that's, uh, not exactly reasonable. But how cool would it be if you ran through the game with a duck bill for a while? That, <laughs> like that'd be pretty great. It. How cool would it be? <laughs> It'd be like, uh, getting the jerky in Chrono Trigger at the beginning of the game. Just to actually bring him one million mock oh, yeah. and see what he says. Well, now that I fast retreat and I have all the experience I need, I'm just going to peace out of here. It's still going to be a little annoying with Ribarama on. The encounter rate in the water here is very high. Yeah, the water actually has the highest encounter rate out of any area in the game. Most of the game has the same encounter rate throughout, which uh, keep that in mind when we get to a later dungeon. <laughs> uh, most of the game has the same encounter rate throughout, with the exception of when you're in when you're in the water there in Underpass, and later on as we're continuing through Underpass, actually has the highest encounter rate in the game. Uh, and there's like one or two other points where the encounter rate is intentionally lowered after you beat a boss fight so that the game doesn't immediately kill you. Uh, at least it attempts to not immediately kill you. So we're warping back to Ginza here. You don't actually have to talk to Loki. Uh, as soon as you, as soon as you talk to the, the collector, the, the guard that's stationed in front of Loki's treasure storage room, uh, just, I guess goes on break or something. Uh, so we, we get to uh, get to sneak in there. Uh, we did grab another bead chain to sell, and uh, it just so happens that our cycles are also lined up to pick up some nice goodies in Loki's treasure room as well. Oh, we hope. So we do have to Ooh, do one more. Nice. We'd have to do one more normal recruit uh, before we can get access to to beseeching things, since beseech only works uh, as an auto recruit if you're if the talker is ten levels below the demon you're trying to recruit. Uh, Heho is level twelve, I think. I'll give it to him. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, and easy Chiki, come, easy go. Yeah, Chikigami's base level four, so you, you can't recruit Jack Frost with that. So we have to talk to him normally. Uh, he can be a little temperamental, but hey, he joined no, us. He's not too bad. Yeah. Sometimes he just is like, yes. No, I, I don't I want Jack Frost. I lost the chakra drop while mashing, but it's okay. Yeah. I'll just buy another one when yeah, I That's fine. We got a free one trip. from uh, from Huapo, so. So sp get a chakra drop, spend a chakra drop. Yeah, we uh, we Jack Frost is the last like recruit that we have to yeah. brute force. We're uh, officially done with recruits. All other demons that we get on our team will be acquired through fusion. Oh wait, I'm actually lying. We do do a beseech recruit. Yeah. We're gonna recruit an Asora of our own once we're uh, a high enough level and uh, at a more convenient time. The Shikigami we Jack have Frost is very has leveled some up the... level eight. Jack Frost has some of the hardest hitting dialogue across these games. It, yeah. It's pretty great. Uh, he ha he has some very very fun recruitment lines that when they succeed it's just like oh all right. He also uh, in other games has a bit of a mascot complex which is fun. 
Yeah, he either does or doesn't want to be the mascot. Also tried becoming a, a SoundCloud rapper in Digital Devil Saga. Oh, yeah, true. All right, so this is Troll. <laughs> uh, Troll can be really scary. He has Mabufu Law, which does a lot of damage because it's a tier two spell. This guy's this extremely powerful, but has a crippling weakness. Yeah, he's a Quapo looking at him like this. Yeah, he's weak to mind, which just completely locks him down if you use sexy gaze on him. Uh, and so we're pretty much free to uh, to buff and debuff up and then uh, just kind of punch him. Here's a little preview of the power of buffs and debuffs in this oh. game. I'm yeah. just going to go for it. Yeah. So it's, it's worth noting, uh, if you're playing the HD remaster version of this game, which uh, I can get into a little bit later why we're playing the PS3 version and not the HD remaster uh, a little bit later. But worth noting, if you're playing the HD remaster, they changed how ailments work in this in the game, where it's supposed to work where temporary ailments will uh, basically re-roll at the end of your turn, whether or not they'll be removed, and the re-roll's partially affected by your luck stat. Uh, they changed that in HD so that after one turn, pretty much ailments are always removed, uh, the temporary ones at least. Uh, so it's funny because it makes the already kind of useless luck stat even more useless in uh, HD. But uh, this fight also gets really annoying in HD because you have to use sexy gaze on him every single turn. And Troll is pretty high level and you can dodge the sexy gaze. Uh, one Secunda was a little bit sketchy. Two Secunda makes it bulletproof. But, uh, you know, I, I'm speedrunning the game, so of course I was greedy. Yeah, so here we're actually going to do our first fusions. You know, we've been playing for, what, an hour and a half now, and we haven't interacted with the main mechanic of the game. So uh, we'll be doing some fusions here real soon. Uh, Part of the problem is, like, we can't make anything good until level 13. Yeah. We a are lot level of... 13, but we're not even going to make a level 13 demon just yet. Yeah. We're just going to be... We're just going to make what we need to get past Matador and then do some real fusion when we get to the next town and have access to the Compendium, which is like a Pokedex and cloning machine, which lets you repurchase any demon that's been on your team before for a pretty high Maka cost, but like we're speedrunners and we know what we're doing. Uh, it's fine, we can just use this one. I think it's the battery's just dead, so it would need to be charged. How yeah. do y'all feel about a donation right now? Go for it. Sure, I'm fighting a fusion boss next. All right, we have a $100 donation from Zetaos who says, <clears throat> Mothman, 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 Mothman. Mothman! Mothman. Mothman. <laughs> Mothman sounds like that. It's worth hearing him. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. That donation did, in fact, go towards the Fuse Mothman incentive. We are now sitting at $400 out of the $750 we need to unlock that. I would have laughed really hard if that actually went towards Puzzle Boy. <laughs> I would I would have been like really really hop, happy actually if it went towards Puzzle Boy because we haven't had any movement on that one it's still 240 out of 750 and I want to see it and it's happening first Come on, I we think all, we're we going to hit the Mothman, Mothman incentive well if Mothman well, gets get completed we'll have love. no choice but to donate toward Puzzle Boy yeah there you go right right but what's going to come first you know I, how much longer do we have for folks to get their donos in for the Puzzle Boy minigame? Uh, Just under three hours. Say? Yeah, a little under three hours. Just under three hours. Mm, please get those donations in, friends. I want to see it. All right, so fusions in this game. Uh, this game, the skills, you fuse a demon who has their skills, but they also inherit, uh, a, depending on how many skills the demons you're using for fusion have learned, a, a number of skills that are chosen randomly from a pool, from the... It's from actually, a pool of avail available skills. It's how skills. many times they've leveled up, but that's explaining oh, okay. hairs. Yeah, <laughs> so they they learn a number of skills from from an available skill pool uh, that are kind mostly random. There there's some elements to it, like some demons like learning skills of a certain type, and skills also have an individual rank to them as to how likely they are to pass infusion. Uh, so you saw there, Shiner was having to reroll. We needed. Uh, Dark Might, which is a skill that causes when you're on new Kagatsuchi, uh, every single hit will be a critical hit. Any uh, basic attack. Yeah. Uh, any basic attack, sorry. Any basic attack will be a critical hit that that demon uses. 
Uh, and then Sukukaja, which again, we, we really need for the next fight. Oh. Irashai! Oops, I left by mistake. I was paying attention to my headset cord there. <laughs> I like hiding behind my chair and doing that on my stream too. No wait, I gotta sell all three of these. Yeah, so he's so here is selling our, our beat chains to uh, to buy some more Magatama. This is the store that would have Onk in it if we uh, didn't get it for free. But we need Kamudo, which is a physical type Magatama, has some nice skills on it. Also Hifumi, which is uh, one of the most important Magatama in the entire game. Probably the best one. It's the single yeah. best Magatama. Yeah. Five, like four out of the five abilities on it are amazing. And we're gonna use, we're gonna learn three of them in this run. Uh, yeah, I think we need to push cycles a little bit more. Yeah, I gotta leave at a uh, rising seven. So I'll save the game again at a uh, rising six. Great. Or actually rising five, I guess. Something like that. Uh, if you go to the, the other door over there, the like I said, the, the encounter rate in the water is very high, but if we go back to the previous room that we walked here from, like from outside, uh, it grabs the lower encounter rate of that hallway and applies it to the water. So I hopefully yeah. won't get any encounters on the way to Matador that way. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're on our way to Matador. We'll talk about him when we get to him, but now we're just going to be retracing our steps a little bit, delivering the bill, and then getting through the door. So now would be an awesome time for we have anything we need to plug, uh, just because when we get to Matador, we'll need to be uh, explaining how that boss works. I mean, I definitely always have things to talk about, um, including the fact that one in five Americans live with a mental health condition. We at RPG Limit Break are proud to be raising money for NAMI. NAMI stands for National Alliance on Mental Illness, a charity works tirelessly towards cracking the code of mental illness through various means such as education, leadership, and increasing the availability of care. Please join RPG Limit Break in supporting such a worthy cause. And you know, it's fun to talk about incentives and things like that, but we're really here raising funds for the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And uh, so thank you all of you for your generosity. We have hit over $51,000 raised oh, for let's NAMI. go. Well done, everyone. Thank you so much for donating. I guess uh, we can start talking about Matador on the way and uh, why that magic mirror that I pestered Lilum for will be so helpful. Yes, so Matador is the uh, the boss we were alluding to earlier when he said he's kind of the... Uh, the wake-up call boss of every... S every SMT game has, like, a wake-up call boss of, like, how hard the game is supposed to be. Like yeah. Minotaur or Minotaur or Hydra or Matador of this game. Yeah, so he, he starts out the fight by using an ability called Red Capote, which basically just buffs up his... He gives him four stacks of Sukukaja, buffs up his agility to max, uh, if you do any sort of de if you decrease any of his stats to below one, uh, something worth explaining. Below buffs, neutral. Buffs and debuffs in this game to uh, stack uh, stack up to a, a total of four up or down. So uh, he he buffs up his agility all the way to all the way to four. If you put any of his stats into the negative, he'll use Dakunda. So we really need to use buffs in this fight. The the thing is, is that in order to hit him, we need to both lower his lower his uh, agility down to, to two, or uh, and also buff our own agility. Uh, part of the reason why a lot of people have issues with this boss, other than just you know not expecting to need to use buffs as much, is that uh, Sukukaja is a very difficult buff to get. We mentioned the only two sources of it before, lo at lo like by level 15. Prada and Aquans is the only Prada way. Prada and Aquans. You can't recruit Prada normally, and he's kind of awkward to fuse because you need another demon that you can't recruit normally. Pixie and Willy, the only way. Or you need to make an element or get an element via gems, which if you're playing through the game the first time, you might not know about mystic chests uh, or how they work. If you recruit Sudama, yeah. Sukukaja is the last thing it learns, but level 13, yeah. getting it to level like 17 or 18, it would take a long time. Yeah, so so because of that, this boss can be a, a problem if you've never played the game before. Something about these games is just that like a lot of the difficulty playing through these games comes from just lack of knowledge about them, which makes sense. Uh, so here he will use a mixture of physical attacks or Mazan, which is area of effect force damage. Uh, we got that extra magic mirror, which is kind of cool. Uh, and of course, he then proceeds to not use magic. Uh, if you can, magic mirrors basically just repel any magic attack uh, for one turn, or any non-mighty almighty, all, non-almighty magic attack for one turn. 
Uh, so there was a chance that we could uh, repel that back at him and end his turn immediately, but uh, unfortunately, he just decided he wanted to uh, to try to to attack our uh, our paper monster and our Loam. So didn't work out. Here we're we're buffing up our defense with Rakukaja as much as we can. Uh, again, up to four as long along with bringing his agility down to two and bumping our agility up to four, and then buffing our physical attack. We're just kind of gonna punch him to death uh, once we get all set up. Uh, he has 1,000 HP. Once he takes 500 damage, he will go into a second phase that changes his move set up a little bit. That's uh, rather unfortunate. We it's should. fine. We, we can do without him. Ooh. Uh, oh, right. We're, we're even. We're four on four, so yeah. I did miss. Oh, Lilum might die. Or No, it's uh, a range. Lilum's it's a range. fine. We're good. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to go for that again. I I still have Skunda on MC. I'll do. I'll just do it with one Tarukaja. Yeah. It'll this... be too hard to revive Shikigami to get him back in the fight. Yeah, uh, and because he won't have any, he won't have any defensive buffs. I, yeah. I have to use a revival bead. Like, yeah, talk about how reviving works for me, please. Yeah, so reviving in this game is a little awkward. Uh, basically, you use a healing item. Revival beads in this game only restore demons with like somewhere like from like one to ten HP. Uh, it so reviving them, they revive in your stock with not very much HP, and then you have to then summon them out, which in this game costs an entire turn. So reviving demons and bringing them in in this game can be very, very hard to do since you're basically spending an entire two turns to bring them in with very little, with almost no HP. So unless you're set up with another healer, you're in trouble. This might be awkward. Uh, so he has taunt. Taunt is an ability that buffs your physical attack by two, uh, but also lowers your defense by two stages. So okay, he's, he's got less than 250. He didn't spin. That that's like a slump animation. Oh, oh. Lilith's gone. Oh no. Uh, well, looks like we're one v one him. I can do it. He'll just keep using Mazan. Just watch. Come on, Mazan. All right. So we now have max attack. So he is nice getting lower. I think I'm nice. Nice. <laughs> Woo! Those demons don't need experience either. Yeah, that was uh, a little spooky, but we made it. Yeah, so Hifumi can give you a full heal or stun you. We're going to have to ward back to... to, to no, we, we don't. Oh, Remember we don't? all those revival beads I pestered from Datsui Ba? Right. I have four revival beads, I think. I can just revive my whole team. Yeah, so uh, Hifumi can heal you, but MC's basically capped out anyway, and it also has a high chance to stun you, which would, uh, would not be good uh, since we're kind of already... Uh, Limping our way, uh, limping our way out a little bit. So we we have no, a little fine. bit of we have a little bit of dungeon left to go. Uh, we just a need lot to... of dungeon left to go. It's yeah. a long walk from here. That's true. Uh, we need to take encounters so that we can learn ice bone. Uh, ice sorry, boost. Ice boost. Thank you. Uh, basically, boost skills uh, apply to the element that they the way we work with. So ice boost is with ice. Uh, they give every skill of that element a fifty percent increase in damage. So it's gonna make ice breath do a lot more damage once you have it learned, which will be very, very nice for uh, for a few fights. Uh, any SMT5 viewers watching may have noticed that uh, I accidentally missed the up input after getting the press turn with uh, Lilim, and uh, I instead passed instead of using Rakukaja at the bottom of Papo's move list. Um, and instead of gaining a press turn at the back of the list, it consumed the half press turn at the front of the list. SMT5 is... Very merciful, and y'all don't even know it. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> unique in that regard. Most games, if you pass when you have a blinking turn, it'll just consume the blinking turn. Yeah, so you, you want to pay attention to like the polarity of your bonus turns. Uh, you can get like I think of the game in terms of like oh I can get uh, two three one two turn order or like two four two four one three one three in terms of like uh, position. Uh, MC is always going to go last because we uh, don't level up his agility until the very end of the run, and we'll have him go third at the very end of the game. He's definitely uh, your typical black mage. That, that, uh, he, he does nuke really hard, but not until the end of the round. <laughs> yeah, agility in this game, uh, we didn't go through what the stats do much other than that luck is useless. Uh, basically, strength is your physical attack. That's self-explanatory. Magic is your magic attack, your magic accuracy, and your maximum uh, MP. Vitality is your maximum HP. Uh, agility determines your turn order and your physical accuracy. Uh, and then luck plays a little bit of a part in like the accuracy formula. But less for, than magic does. Yeah, less than magic. And then for <laughs> it physical raises accuracy, your magic accuracy, but less than raising your magic stat does. Yeah, and similarly with physical accuracy, it raises it, but less than your, uh, but less than agility does. So it's 
and then it affects ailment recovery rate, which if you're playing HD, doesn't matter anyway. So we're, we're going to be pumping magic pretty much this whole run. We will take a little bit of a pivot to, point to, to put some points into vitality for both survivability uh, and because there are certain skills in this game that are physical skills that instead of scaling off of your strength actually scale off of your maximum HP. Uh, and we'll be using uh, one of those skills because there's a couple bosses in this game that are completely immune to magic, and so we need an alternative. Uh, and then we'll be bumping some points into agility later on in the run to get MC to go third uh, for a better turn order because our, our main damage demon that we're going to be using is very fast. So we'll we'll want MC and him to kind of, like Shiner said, be like one, slots one and three with our other, uh, our other party members at two and four. Also, uh, agility also determines if you go first in battle or not, uh, though our agility won't get high enough that that will play too much, uh, come too much into play. Yeah, enemies going first happens, like, way less often in normal mode. Like, it feels like a, a third of the time compared to hard mode. Yeah, I don't know if that's, actually a, if that's actually a thing or not, or if it's just encounters are scarier in hard mode, so them going first is like, ah! Having run a lot of uh, both difficulties, it's definitely the case in yeah. hard, where enemies go first more often. I don't have any, like, hard numbers to back that up, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah here we're, uh, we're leaving underpass. Our cycle works out in such a way that we can grab that uh, beat chain there uh, that we grabbed earlier, and then as... If we just leave, there is a magic incense that we can pick up. Incenses are special items that raise uh, that raise the appropriate stat permanently by one, either for the main character or for your demons. Uh, in this case, that magic incense will be going on our main damage demon later on, uh, because of uh, basically there's a there's a level or a stat range that we want to hit for that demon, and that magic incense makes that range more favorable. Yeah, it's it's too hard to explain right now. Yeah, it we'll, we'll get way into later. It. We'll get into it. But basically, we're going to pick up a magic incense, and your first inclination would be to think that we would use it to make MC stronger. <laughs> oh, that encounter I ran again. from was still right there. Yeah, it's like, hey, we're still here. You're yeah. done running into that wall. We're, we're ready for you. Notice it's happened twice in a row where uh, I got to give props to Atlas for designing the geography of this game. Like, remember how we got the B chain in uh, Great Underpass City? and then walk straight to Troll's room. It was full of clock there, and then full of clock at the next batch of mystical chests. And same thing here, I pick up that mystical chest, and then uh, we're gonna have... Uh, oh, right, Shikigami has MP. I wanna take one more fight. But yeah, we're going from one mystical chest to another, and it's full of clock at both. Like, they're exactly the right distance apart. You know, if Atlas was careless, they could have... Oh, I just wasted a turn again. <laughs> anyway, yeah, if Atlas was careless, they could have made it like slightly farther away and made it so that it would be like falling seven or falling six by the time I get to the next one. But that I think they were explore. very aware of these distances. They, they okay. designed the territory just right. Uh, so Nozuchi here, the uh, the Kiwi elephant, uh, also explodes at low health. So I was a little worried there that it was going to use sacrifice and blow up, but uh, we're good. Yeah, I don't think I did very much damage to it. I just wanted to take one How do you all here. feel about a donation right now? Let's hear it. Go for it. All right, Wells sent in $50 and says, Mothman, 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 put this towards Puzzle Boy. 20 Mothmans? Nope. Let's go for Puzzle Boy. Thank you very so much. So that did indeed go towards the Puzzle Boy minigame. <laughs> we are now sitting at $301.10 out of the $750 we need to unlock that Puzzle Boy minigame. I do want to say we have one other donation. An anonymous donor sent in $10 and says, Silver senses regards and Mystic Mind is healthy for the community. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Silver. You're wrong, but thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so for whatever reason, there seems to be a weird overlap with the SMT speedrunning community and people that play Yu-Gi-Oh. So uh, I'm just going to go for it. So those of you that play Yu-Gi-Oh will, uh, will appreciate or revile that, uh, that donation comment, but we appreciate it. I think the overlap makes sense because Yu-Gi-Oh and SMT Nocturne are both games that have hundreds of monsters in them, and they can be combined in various ways to create larger value. Oh, there you go. 
Oh, I'll tell you what, I'm seeing a trend in the donations now, which is that people are making me say Mothman, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. donating towards incentives, Oof. and I, I <laughs> will say Mothman as many times as you want, as long as you donate for it, and you go to unlock that Puzzle Boy incentive. Excellent. And you can get behind this trend. All right, we have, a, we have a little more time before we get into town, so... Awesome. Well, Fritzkin sent in $33.30, says, Hi, Freedom. Hi, Shiner. Good luck. Have fun with the run. All hail, Mothman. Hi, Frit. Thank you very much. Yeah, we have enough time to grab this bead outside because, again, geography. Uh, we can get the mystical chest in Zoshigai Cemetery at full o'clock, and we want to enter Ikebukuro right around Rising 2 because there's another mystical chest in town that I would like to open at full o'clock. Yeah, so here we we arrive at Iki Ikebukuro, as I lovingly call it. Also, that Oni's hockey stick does have collision, and you have to wiggle left a little bit to yeah, go around. Yeah, it, it has a deceptively large hitbox. You, you, if you just if you run straight, you're just gonna run into a wall and be like, well, "What's going on?" Uh, there, Oof, there's one or two it. other cases of that. Okay, we're good. Yeah, that that walk can be one of the scarier walks in the game, uh, just because it's it's such a long stretch from from Matador to to here, and there is a save point that that you can opt to take, but for the step route that Shiner is going for to guarantee that magic incense, uh, it doesn't uh, work out to tag yeah. that save. I'm sure I made Freedom a little nervous. I walked past the, the small terminal to save at in Great Underpass there, because I, I knew that I had to go straight there to uh, to make the Zoshigai Cemetery just in time, although I was still a few steps short. All right, so our first order of business here is uh, is to to sell some things, of course. Uh, and then we're going to be doing fusion. So the big thing that happens when we get to Ikebukuro is that it unlocks what we were talking about earlier with the demon compendium, where again we can rebuy demons that we uh, that we have previously recruited or fused and use them again either in our party or for fusion. So we're going to be doing some more fusion here now that we have access to the compendium. We can really upgrade our party because uh, as fun as it, as fun as it is to use demons that we recruited in the first dungeon of the game. They're uh, unfortunately outliving their uh, their survivability a little bit. Yeah, uh, demons don't scale very well. Demifiend levels up way faster, and you know demons stop learning new abilities. Uh, and yeah, they just don't scale as well. It's better yeah. to make new things instead. Yeah, and they they get increasingly like much larger amounts of exp needed to level up. Uh, the game really does want you to be fusing uh, fusing frequently. There are some demons like uh, like uh, Mr. Long Dog here, Inugami. Yeah, I'm looking for Tarukaja. I should say what I'm looking for, because I'm just doing, uh, you know, XXOO, our favorite mini game, where I have to re-roll for skills. I was looking for Makakaja on Preda and Sukukaja Dark Might on uh, Lilim earlier. There I was looking for Tarukaja on Inugami. Yeah. And now I need uh, just Pixie and Willy. Yeah, so Inugami is a special Oops. kind of demon that will actually evolve. Oh, when right, it, uh... I have to make arrows to make room here. <laughs> Is a special kind of demon dark might. Perfect. that will uh, that will evolve when it learns all of its skills. Uh, Pixie was a, was like that earlier, and there's there's a couple other demons that we'll see when we get there. Uh, and because of that, Inugami into what he fuses into, which is Mikami, will actually be in our party for the well, not in our party, but in our stock the entire game. Uh, Great investment. Oh, right, still have that. So that's very useful, but for the most part, most demons don't function like that, and the game really wants you to be to be fusing is be fusing frequently and uh so we will we'll be making use of that again there, there's some demons that will definitely be be having much longer shelf lives than others here i'm looking for rakukaja but uh the the skills are not created equally here they uh some skills they have a hidden rank like needle rush and the talk needle rush is like level one i think the talk skills are pretty low rank as well i think rakukaja is level seven very seven unlikely eight. to pass yeah, so it took a couple tries there. Rolling for multiple buffs or anything plus Rakukaja can be a little annoying. That was actually very nice. Because Rakukaja is such a high level skill that rolling for, for multiple skills there can be obnoxious. Thankfully, in the HD remaster, they added the ability to choose your skill selection, which yeah. saves you a few seconds over the course of the run. Uh, but I guess we should, while we're, while we're walking through Ikebukuro, I can explain why we're running this and not HD. Uh, so the HD remaster version of this game does add a little bit of quality of life with uh, skill selection. It makes ailment recovery a little different, which for the most part ends up being in the player's favor. Uh, there's a, a couple of other minor things that are nice. However, uh, one thing that they added to the HD remaster that from a casual perspective is really cool is voice acting in all of the cutscenes. However, in order to do that, they had to retime all of the cutscenes to accommodate for it. And in all of those cases, it means it's that the cutscenes are slower 
So just from dialogue alone, there's also some additional weird menu lag and stuff, uh, along with the encounter radar being broken, which is fun. Uh, that basically cause you to lose somewhere between like 7 and 15 minutes over the course of a normal run, of an any percent run, and even more in a true demon ending run. So uh, it's uh, not ideal also just... Whoa, I got triple doubles! Let's go. That fight can be a, a little a little weird sometimes. It was, it was a little hard to tell things. with the frame rate drop, but I yeah, I think I hit both of them three times. Yeah, I saw it. So yeah, we get... Uh, oh yeah, I have time to go heal. Yeah. So yeah, we got the, the bead chain in that chest at full o'clock. Again, just to sell later. No, it wasn't a bead chain. It was a strength incense. Yeah. Uh, it only sells for a thousand. Uh, it's, I think we're going to be more likely to sell it. Or we could give we'll it to sell a demon it or, later. Yeah, use it on a demon later for a little bit of a damage buff. Yeah, Single the, points of strength aren't that big of a deal, but, you know, they can be nice. Yeah, uh, the, the normal route is... Please save before Thor, by the way. <laughs> oh, just save here? Yeah, please yeah, save yeah, here. Yeah, I, I, I think I'll have time. I, I didn't in the practice run. I, I'm concerned about uh, getting to our court date in time for new o'clock. Yeah, you have I a lot think of, I have, have a lot steps. of time, yeah. Yeah, it, I actually counted... We have time for donations? Sure. Okay, Edward Mallis sent in $15 and said, I've been looking forward to this Nocturne co-op run all week. Got up early to enjoy the fun. Shiner and Freedom, stay awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for one more? Yes. Sure. All right. Puzzle Boy sent in $10 and says... Puzzle boy, 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 puzzle boy. I almost said them all correctly. I started to lose it. Started to lose it. Held on to the end. Thank you, puzzle boy. Ten dollars. And I'm assuming went towards unlocking our Puzzle Boy minigame, which is now sitting at three hundred seventeen dollars and ten cents out of the seven hundred fifty dollars we need. Keep those donations rolling in. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. So here we finally find Disamu just as he gets uh, bonked by Thor here. Uh, and then, you know, Thor just kind of like reaches in and just pulls out uh, the Magatsuchi from Isamu. Oh, I thought that was a chewing gum. I mean, it might be chewing gum. Dude's uh, has some uh, some double bubble yeah, there. Yeah, you can't stay up without it. I guess it's uh, it's got caffeine in it either way. So... Uh, this is, fun fact, the only time in the game you see Isamu without his hat on. Uh, it literally had to get bonked off his head. But uh, here Thor absorbs his Magatsuhi and is like, I don't know who you are. You're an intruder. Lock him up. So we, we get arrested by these uh, very cuddly teddy bears that make seagull noises, but not in this game. Uh, and we are going to be subjected to a trial. And because this is the mantra, I guess the we should talk about the ideal the ideology behind the mantra is basically this uh, r might makes right They're sort kind of, of a situation. bunch of gangsters Yeah, so basically we have to In order to prove our innocence We have to uh, Fight a bunch of judges To prove that we are worthy to Be an Ikebukuro uh, And so the, the Pyrojack there uh, Opens up the door for us Bye and, Oni uh, Bye Oni, bye Oni Yeah, it takes 16 steps for Kagetsuchi To cycle uh, one step I guess I uh, lost two or three steps there, but I'll, I'll still have new o'clock for this entire uh, three three part trial here. It's a bit of a boss gauntlet. You can bribe that Oni, and he uh, gives you a hint that like, uh, okay, your your first opponent uses fire attacks, your second opponent uses wind attacks or force attacks, and your third opponent Thor. Oh, I have no idea what he uses. What do you think the God of Thunder uses, Shiner? Uh, ice, hundred percent. You're probably right. Yeah, so this is Orthrus opponent number one. So we have uh, Dark Might on two of our demons now. We don't have Lilum in the party right now. But uh, we have our a Fire Pupper here, and basically just going to be using using some Ice Breath and punching him. Uh, these fights can be a little rude. All all three of these fights have three phases to them. They start out using uh, using the weak version of every attack. Once you do some damage to them, they'll they'll swap swap I over. Out, I just found out why we don't use Corona Zone early. <laughs> <laughs> they'll swap over to the medium variant, like they used Augie Lau. Uh However, if you uh, do a more damage to them and don't kill them, they will use uh, the heavy attack version of their element. So Dine skills, which uh, 
are very strong because they're they're heavy skills. It's not gonna so. matter though because we're very well prepared. Yeah. So thankfully the uh, the magatama we were able to get access to. We have a void fire magatama and a void force magatama. Uh, intentionally, the game doesn't give you anything to protect you from uh, electricity, which is surprise Thor's element. Uh, but thankfully. Uh, we do have debuffs and buffs to, to help prevent that. Nice. Though that being said, we, we will be taking very deliberate steps with the for, with the Thor fight to, to try to avoid uh, his third phase and even his second phase. We'll, we'll get into that in a bit. For, for Yaxini, she uses four skills weak to elect, so just using Dark Might and... Uh, Dark Might uh, and elect skills and punching to basically get her... Uh, yeah, get her health low, then kill her before she gets into her. Arrows has phase. resist magic, so I, I don't need to heal our Mountain Dew elemental. Check this out. Uh, I'll just use a chakra drop after. I I want 70 MP on MC, but uh, actually I'll end up with less anyway because I'll be switching to a Magatama that gives me less magic. And your magic stat, every single point of magic gives you plus three max MP, and so changing to a Magatama with. Uh, Less magic will lower Demi Fiend's current MP as well as maximum MP, so I wouldn't have 70 anyway. Or actually, I don't, I don't need 70, I need 69. I need enough to use Tarunda three times, which costs 20, and uh, being able to use Dia three times sounds pretty good, which is three MP. I am Thor. Yeah, thankfully all the, uh, <laughs> thankfully all of the judges give you time to, uh, give you time to prepare between each fight, which is very helpful. Switching to Eomanta here because I would like to learn Rakunda when I level up. Ah! Oh, I thought Lilim gained agility, but she oh, Eros is further up magic. the list. Yeah. All right, so here basically Thor has 2,000 HP. At 1,000 HP, he changes into a second phase, and I believe at five uh, at 500 HP, he changes into his third. Uh, we really don't want to see those phase changes. When he goes into his second phase, he uses Diorama, which heals him for about 200 HP. Uh, he also uses Dakunda to remove all of his debuffs. So ideally, what we're going to do here is we're going to set up our set up all of our buffs and debuffs before we uh, and push him to as close to 1,000 HP as possible without going over, uh, and then we will attempt to OTK or one turn kill him uh, from there. Nice, that's a good target. So. Yep. This fight is, for the most part, pretty fine. Uh, if he does Zionga into basic attack on MC, it will more than likely kill us. Uh, so as long as that doesn't happen, we do have Lilum who nulls Alec and uh, nice Kaishin. I might push early because of that. We'll see. Uh, and we also have Eros who just resists magic. So we do have plenty of people to, uh, to eat his attacks, uh, thankfully, as long as he just doesn't focus fire MC. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty safe setup here. We got Void Alec on Lilim, and Eros has uh, resist magic. Oh, there we go. Another oh, wasted turn. Go. I get time to go in. All right, time to go for the kill. Nice. Dog bites God. Film at 11. Easy. Puppy power! Skip phase two. Easy every time. We don't need to ruin it anymore. But uh, I need Raccoon to just exclusively for the next fight. Sometimes you just need to throw raccoons at your enemies to lower their defense. What can I say? Even though I'm using a turbo controller, <laughs> I uh, didn't practice life using tip. it. <laughs> <I'm still laughs> Would be really mashing. effective, you know. Hey, people are not <laughs> going to have their guard up if there's a raccoon on them. Just saying. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. It's absolutely true. Where's Espe the lie? Especially it's... four stacks of raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Oh, festive. Excellent. Thor gives yeah. us the Magatama Narukami, which can grant Null Alec and Weak to Ice, uh, plus five strength and plus six magic. Uh, no other stats, so perfect for offense. Um, it's actually going to receive surprisingly little use in this route, though. Yeah, other other routes would learn one skill off of it, but uh, in this case, uh, not as much, because the, the level that we learned the, the useful skill from it, which is Shock, uh, is when we have a really tight leveling route, so we can't really afford to learn it as nice as it would be for the upcoming dungeon. I guess I'll fuse after, but yeah, I, I've say. already healed. I'll just one-time uh, Dante, no big deal. Yeah. It's the, the geography here is so weird. That escalator in the middle making a square 
is just so frustrating for me. Because <laughs> like, there is still a 1 in 256 chance of fusion accident, even... Like, it's it's 1 in 16 it's, during new o'clock yeah. and full o'clock. I think it's 1 in 64 otherwise. But. Uh, it feels less likely than that. Yeah. But I was going to say, when we fused our first thing, it was an unskippable cutscene. That can never be a fusion accident. But I have had the very next fusion for Lilum be a fusion accident before. Happened to me in a run one time. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so to explain fusion accidents, basically, when you when you do a fusion, there is a slight chance uh, it, that's increased on new and full that uh, there will be an error in your fusion and you won't get the demon you wanted to get and get a, uh, a different demon instead. Usually it's like a slime or something. It would pretty much be a run killer because uh, buying things from the compendium is so expensive and we might be losing uh, a demon that leveled up and learned a particular skill. Uh, do you see me as a beast? <laughs> that is fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there we were going for the auto recruit. Uh, when you try to beseech something that's 10 levels higher than you or more, you have a 65% chance that the demon will just be like, oh, you're a weakling, I'll help you out. And then they just join your party for free. However, uh, even if it doesn't give you a free recruit, the that seemed to work well means that it still had a positive effect on what you were trying to recruit, so their demands for what to give you or what they want you to give them uh, is still lowered. Yeah, all the mock-up prices are halved, and if they ask you a question, it's more likely to go in your favor. Yep. Uh, it's worth noting that when they ask you questions at the end of recruits, the answer you give actually does not matter for whether the recruit's going to work or not. The game has already decided at that point whether or not you're going to get the, uh, the recruit. It's just uh, it gives you points that essentially go into a tiebreaker. Uh, the way alignment works in this game, as far as what ending you get, there are, each alignment has like two major questions that result in you getting that alignment. And like Yosuga, for example, has one thing that if you answer it a specific way, you're locked into Yosuga. Uh, each, yeah, each alignment has very important questions. However, if you answer all of them in the affirmative, for ex or answer two in the, infer in the affirmative, for example, then uh, how the game determines which you actually get in a tie uh, is broken by the answers you give to demons. Uh, it will not come into play into this run because we'll be very intentional about which dialogue choices we choose for those uh, important instances. And uh, hmm, we seem to have triggered Shijima, a Shijima's bit got a big lead scene. right now. Oh, wow. Hmm. There you Mysterious are. Mysterious man. Oh, he's got white hair. He looks so cool. Let's see what you've got. Oh, he does have a cool sword on his back. Oh, man. Oh, he's going to jump off this building head first and land on his feet. He's so cool. Featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Glad to meet you, kid. <laughs> his Hope music is an same. absolute banger. Let's, let's see our jam emotes in chat. Yeah, so here we got Dante. This is another potentially difficult fight. We're going to, like before, we're going to start up by just buffing up as much as we possibly can. Uh, he has attacks that hit very hard. We thankfully do have a uh, a party with two two resist uh, physical demons and a resist physical MC. So with that, three of our three of our people do resist fizz. No, don't shoot our dog. Uh, we're gonna get all our buffs set up uh, again. If he detects a debuff on himself, he will use Dakunda, uh, with the exception of when we push him into phase two, we will be able to debuff him. But we're gonna get our accuracy and our defense and attack all the way to full. Uh, before we start pushing damage. Uh, Dante has a little over 2,000 HP. Once you do about 900 damage to him, he will shift into the second phase that we mentioned and the fight will change up a little bit. Uh, so we're, again, the goal is to push him to as close to 900 as possible, start throwing a couple debuffs on him, mostly uh, defense debuffs, uh, and then just try to kill him as fast as possible. Once he gets into his second phase, the fight can get really spooky if you stay in the second phase for too long. Yeah, he uses Provoke every turn, which is the same thing as Taunt, that skill that Matador used on me. Yeah, he also gets access to an ability, uh, an ability, I believe it's called uh, bullet, time. bullet Time in this version, that is a, an AoE physical attack that also can inflict panic. Panic is a very nasty ailment that we really don't want to be running into. So again, just going to try to... Yeah, the drawback of Kamado is it makes you weak to ailments, so MC will be likely to get panicked, and he won't be able to use a Sacred Water item to cure the panic status. So yeah, I'd like to do less than 900 damage, so I'm just going to do two, three... Uh, oh, Karun's a little weaker, but basically three so far. Uh, I'll do one Feral Bite for like 1.5 here. Yeah, 4.5, 5.5, 6.5, Okay, I have to do like one little, little wimpy one setup turn bomb. here. Yeah. Uh, 
Fuck. Yeah, Luckily, good. it wasn't a crit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would have been fun. All right, so so we're gonna just sit here for a turn because uh, he's like right at the precipice of, of phase. Oh, I should use the chakra drop on Blob. That's fine though, because I, I I took a Sukukaja is the mandatory skill to give to Blob, but um, Rakunda is a nice little bonus thing for this fight and for uh, a couple of mini boss fights later on. Yeah, and it's nice to, to fuse onto something later on as well. But uh, I can do without it though. Check this out. So yeah, uh, like I said, Dante aggressively uses Dekunda every single turn if you make his stats negative, but uh, in phase two, uh, using Provoke as his first press turn every turn takes priority. So he'll just be, have these three Rakundas on him and he won't bother getting rid of them. So I can rush through phase two as fast as possible. All right, so Rebellion is an interesting skill. It has a 50% crit rate and incredibly high accuracy. If you have four Sukukajas on yourself, it has roughly a 4% chance of missing, which uh, isn't particularly likely. It can happen, but not very frequently at all. So that's the skill we really don't want to be seeing, especially as we get further into phase two and he lowers our defense by two stages every round. So hopefully we'll be getting some crits and as long as we survive this round, we should have it fine. Yeah, I think I think it'll be dead next turn. I think I'm gonna pass to MC for the fourth Rakunda first and then go around and use physical skills with everyone. Okay, thankfully he targeted Karanzan with that. Uh, if he targets he can Inugami, take it twice. Yeah. if he targets Inugami with Rebellion and it crits, then we will unfortunately be uh, short of rush only costs friend. eleven, I think. So, Corona Zone should still be able to use it twice, and even if Corona Zone dies, it won't matter. Fun fact: I found out in testing, I used Blob's last resort skill to, uh, and I found out Dante is immune to last resort. Oh, Inugami has last resort, or uh, Needle Rush. That's kind of funny. All right, uh, he is uh, he is slumping now. Uh, he's, he's definitely toast this turn. Uh, oh, yeah. Crown Zone should survive this. Just don't crit. Okay. Yeah. Even if it crit, it would only do like 80. Yeah, it's just not wanting him to have the extra turn. He slump. Uh, let's have Blob do the honors. Bonk. There we go. Good fight. First try, Dante is very nice. Yeah, I saved before uh, recruiting Shikigami and fusing uh, the other thing too, so never punished. <laughs> lots, <laughs> of float balls. lots of float balls. We're floating real. Oh, I just looked over at him. <laughs> really sick. We're, we're not featuring Dante anymore. He's going to exit the video game. We, because we're doing any percent, we're... Oh, <laughs> look at the runners. <laughs> Duff. Oh, man. Good. Good, good. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, uh, so yeah, Dante Tech from Devil May Cry 2 is uh, leaving to find a better sequel to his video game. And yeah. uh, Good luck. Yeah, the, he has his Devil May Cry 2 outfit in this game. <laughs> so, uh, so now we're good to actually go into the Monster HQ. When we when we uh, passed our trial with Thor, he's like, by the way, you should meet with Gozu Tenno, our leader, too. Uh, I'm sure he, he would love to meet with the person that passed the trial of combat. So uh, after our little side quest to uh, to feature Dante from the Devil May Cry series, now we're uh, now we're gonna <laughs> climb the tower. <laughs> it's full of clocks, so I can't run away. I gotta fight my yeah. way through this one. Moment has got resist physical, but uh, I think he'll go down this turn. There we go. <laughs> Pointless level up for arrows. Let's go. I may have tweeted something about uh, Dante from the Devil May Cry. <laughs> Good, good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, which, by the way, friends, if you tweet anything about RPG Limit Break 2022, we do have a hashtag for you to use on Twitter, and that is RPGLB2022. I have to go to the shop again. I don't have enough money to buy Pixie and Prada for the next fusion I have to do. So, um... Oh yeah, in our, when I went to fuse Lilum, I mashed through some text from Mido and he was talking about sacrificial fusion. Um, uh, I'm just going to mention I'm looking to pass uh, Makakaja to both Lilum and then onto the Minakata I'm going to fuse after. And I would really like Zio to be the other skill for Minakata, but he really likes Elect skills, so that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, Freedom, please talk about sacrificial fusion while I'm fighting the fusion boss. Yes, so sacrificial fusion, basically you, you do a normal fusion, but then you add in a, on full specifically, you can add in a third ingredient to your fusion. And with the exception of like two or three specific demons, uh, it doesn't change the result. Rather, uh, that demon, the total amount of EXP that that demon has learned 
will be multiplied by 1.5 and then given to your resulting demon along with uh, the skills from the demon you're sacrificing being added into the skill pool. Uh, it's a very, very Perfect. useful tool to, to use to get some really powerful demons and to, to start off some of the demons with a, with a nice edge that they wouldn't normally have. Uh, we'll only be doing it once during this run. Uh, other other routes and other categories use sacrificial fusion more, but in this case, we'll be fusing this Minakata here, who will be fused into the demon that will eventually evolve into our main like damage and just our main demon that we'll be using throughout the whole rest of the run. So we really want Minakata to just be soaking up pretty much as much EXP as we can, uh, just to help beef up that uh, that demon a little bit more. I should probably be attacking with Minakata. Uh, yeah, Minakata's level 17, and so is MC. So yeah. Minakata would hit harder than anything I have, pretty much. Yeah. Worth noting here is Minakata is, uh, has Zionga, which is the, the first time we're seeing on uh, on in our party the Tier 2 uh, element skills. He has Zionga. That's really, really good. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, because the, the developers of this game are comedians, they decided that uh, that Minakata, who gets Zionga, uh, should have really bad magic. Uh, as a result of that, his magic accuracy is quite low. So, and he also just gets a ton of. He tends to bias towards strength and agility as his uh, stats of choice. So, uh, as much as we love Zionga, there will be definitely times where we'll just be opting to basic attack with him instead because uh, <laughs> because uh, he likes to miss a lot. Yeah, bad magic stat, bad luck stat. We need to help him out with uh, some Sukunda and Sukukaja in certain fights. But yeah, it's Minakata is extremely good. Uh, the only the only other way to get a tier two magic spell would be to fully level up my Blob, and the last skill it learns is Zanma. But Blob starts at level sixteen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you'd have to get Blob to twenty or twenty one to finally learn Zanma. But Minakata is very easy to fuse. Like I'm fusing, what it was Lilum and Shikigami. Like level eight Lilum and level four Shikigami makes the lowest level Kishin demon. Level seventeen Minakata. That's that's some insanely good value. Or sorry, <laughs> that's some very very good value. That's some. Uh, there's a lot of uh, good fusion recipes in the game like that where uh, you can kind of jump the track. Uh, it's actually, there'll be another one in the run like that. Uh, Karasu and Eros will make uh, Onkot because I think the next thing above Karasu uh, is also another uh, evolved demon that you, like you can't fuse those demons. The only way is to evolve their base form. Something like that, yeah. All right, so this is the RPG jerk bird of the run. This is yep. Babd Katha, also known as Battle Raven, also known as Bob Cathedral, uh, depending on uh, which nickname you you yep. prefer to use. Uh, it's less scary in this difficulty. In hard mode, these things are an absolute terror. They have very they resist fizz. They have very strong physical attacks. They also like spamming wing buffet, which is uh, an area the random target force skill. Uh, and in at this point in the game, a lot of the pretty good demons like Inugami, Karanzan, uh, are weak to force. So, and because Wing Buffet is a random target skill, even if you have Hifumi on MC to void force, uh, it's possible that that won't even matter, and it will hit. It will just decimate your party and not even worry about hitting MC. So uh, here we we get to Gozuteno's room, and we uh, we find the Oracle. And, uh, Heaven and earth shall tremble when the Almighty descends from above. God's coming echoes across the land. <laughs> Gotta be the wacky waving arm flailing inflatable priestess of Kozu Tenno, the, the big statue of strength. Yeah, so oh, I got off camera there. Whoops. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I this forgot. Is, I should have aimed for the middle. <laughs> yeah. So this is Gozuteno, the leader of the mantra. Oh, well, that would have been a good time to change controllers. <laughs> oh well. Good. So, uh, so here he's like, "Wow, you're very powerful. I would like to invite. I would like to give you a gift." And he gives us two extra slots into our demon stock, which is really nice. Uh, and then he's like, "Would you like to join us in our attack? Or would you like to join our ranks?" And uh, we just tell him, eh, "I'll think about it." And he's like, "Oh, that's okay. Whatever. We're gonna attack the uh, the Nihilo HQ. So just kind of feel free to tag along if you want." 
So uh, doing that is the plot flag too. We, we mentioned earlier if you had tried to go to the Nihilo HQ, which Maya, remind you, has been our goal this entire time. Nice freeze proc. Uh, yeah, after shocking it. We would uh, find out that the front door is locked. Well, now the uh, the mantra are going to break the front door right open. And we're going to have access to the assembly of Nihilo, which is uh, it's a dungeon <laughs> in this video game. It's uh, it's everyone's least favorite. Yeah, if you, if you <laughs> ask, tell mine. me how you really feel about it. Yeah, if you, if you ask <laughs> basically back. anyone who runs this game, or almost everyone who runs this game, and a lot of people that play this casually, uh, it is a lot of people's least favorite dungeon in the game. So uh, so that'll be that'll be fun. But uh, we also, when we leveled there, we we learned a skill called Tornado. Uh, I mentioned before that Wing Buffet was the uh, the equivalent skill to to Fire Breath and Ice Breath and Shock. Uh, so this game, the the types of skills that you, that MC and Demons can learn are kind of based on physical attributes. Uh, wing Buffet, uh, as it sounds like, is a skill where you know the the demon uses their wings to basically create like a storm that causes damage. Uh, you might have noticed that Demifiend doesn't have wings. Well, he, he almost does, with that kind of Nazca line design on his back. I've heard there might be an animation for Wing Buffet, but... Yeah, instead we just get Tornado at level 17. We get a skill that's as strong as Mazondine at level 17. No big deal. Yeah, so because... Uh, so they're like, yeah, well, we need to give Demifiend some way to attack with force. Uh, but there's no medium Look damage. Look how strong this is. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's no medium damage uh, random targeting for the force element. So, yeah, uh, Tornado. It costs a ton of MP at this point in the game, so we won't be using it that much right now. But what you see there is going to be, like, get used to seeing that Tornado animation because it's going to happen a lot throughout the game because it's a really strong skill. Uh, for reference, the equivalent skill to it, uh, Glacial Blast, uh, for the Ice <laughs> Element, you learn at level 53. 52. 52. And the electric element equivalent bolt storm you learn at level 63, I believe. I think it's 61. So Close enough. In the low 60s, and uh, they have uh, actually slightly lower strength than tornado does, because uh, ice and elect skills have the uh, ability to inflict shock and uh, freeze, which is a nice uh, benefit uh, of those elements. Looking for dark might raccoon to pair here. But uh, to, to kind of balance it out a little bit, Ice and Elect skills are actually slightly weaker than Force and Fire skills. So <laughs> for two skills that are this take. slightly weaker than... Uh, for two skills that are slightly weaker than Tornado, you don't learn them until uh, levels that we will not actually hit in this run. We'll be okay. finishing... <laughs> nice. We'll be finishing this run in like the mid-40s, mid-high 40s. And, uh, 48, uh, 49, yeah. Something about that. But... Uh, yeah, that's uh, definitely below 52. Or well, no, 49 on the long end. More like 47, 48, I think. Yeah, it, it really depends and, on... And Mothman's level 43, so we'll be uh, just just the right level to make him in time for the end of the game. Well, we have all kinds of donations rolling in. Is it okay if I read a few of those? Go, Go ahead. We have, a, we have a long walk and a cutscene and a bit more walking. Oh, excellent. All right. Well, Wells sent in $42 and said, Moth Boy, Moth Boy, Moth Boy, Moth Boy, Puzzle Moth, Puzzle Moth, Puzzle Moth, Puzzle Moth. <laughs> I, I think we might need that passive skill from the Satan Magatama to understand I, that I, one. <laughs> to be able to talk to those uh, we're, and yeah, we're, we're crossing uh, polarities there a little bit. Uh, Takaze sent in $50 and said, featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Thank you, Tukaze. Thank you, Tukaze. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sigmatic Saki sent in $10 and says, shout out to the tech slash overlay team for going the extra mile. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, I, I had no idea they and were so powerful. I'm intimidated now. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, it was definitely some, some impressive overlay action going on there. And finally, once again, Edward Malice sends in $15 and says, keep pushing for Puzzle Boy. Loved all the fun overlay jokes during the Dante fight. No one seeing that could forget that this game is featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Well, yeah, like Freedom said, we're on our way to the assembly of Nihilo. Uh, 
which controls the city of Ginza. They're, they're very much the opposite of Mantra. They, they like brawling, they like proving they're the strongest, but the Assembly of Nilo uh, believes in peace and solitude. They, they keep a, a tight control over Ginza, and people are like, yeah, they keep order, but they're a bit strict. Uh, Nocturne kind of tried to subvert the usual uh, law versus chaos dichotomy of the first two uh, Shin Megami Tensei games. They were actually, this is actually uh, the third game in the series, but for the Western release, they just took the three out of the title because no one would know there were two previous games. Kind of funny that they were on Nintendo consoles, but with such overt religious imagery, there was no way Nintendo of America was going to let them come out uh, on this continent. Yeah, so here we arrive at Nihilo, and the, the Monster Demons are all like, yeah, we totally whipped them, we won, yeah, we're great. Uh, and then we come into this room, which is supposed to be the core of the base. We, we find out that Nihilo has like a secret weapon that they're trying to deploy, and that's what they're trying to stop. And we run into Hijiri again. And he's like, oh, uh, so I found my way in here. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the mantra came in here, like stomped in like they own the place. Uh, but actually, uh, I think there's a, this isn't the, this is actually a decoy to, to trick the mantra. And uh, if you would go into the room that's kind of across the room we just entered, we'd see that there's actually a room that's spinning. And it, here, uh, basically, Hijiri's gonna be like, yeah, this room is, uh, was a red herring like the actual core is probably deeper into the base uh however i figured out how to stop the the uh the spinning room from from spinning so now we get to uh do a little solo inf infiltration yeah of th the this room is normally well. spinning like a turbine you have to talk to hijiri to be allowed to pass through this hallway I do want to point out to everybody that those donations did go towards unlocking our Puzzle Boy minigame. We're now sitting at $434.10 out of the $750 we're looking for. So we need just a little over $300 to unlock that incentive. How much time would you all say that we have to do that? Uh, about two hours. Two hours left. Two hours. $300 you guys, you guys in two are hours? That Puzzle Boy yeah, meter was yeah. only in the double digits when we started, and we're already past halfway. That's right. It was, it was, yeah, that's, that's right. If we keep going the same way we've been going, we'll definitely unlock it. And I really, really want to see it. So please do get those donations in. You want to remind any people who might have joined later what exactly the Puzzle Boy minigame entails? Yeah, so once we get to the town of Asakusa in about two hours, uh, it's kind of like a mannequin village. There will be a young boy mannequin that's playing an arcade game. Uh, that's the Puzzle Boy game. And it's, a requi it's required to beat in order to get all of the Magatamas. And this mini game is rather infamous for, for being quite difficult. It's a, it's a fairly typical looking block pushing mini game where you play as a jack for, uh, a pirate, pirate jack, jack to, jack to push around yeah. some blocks and get to, uh, to a goal point. Uh, however, the puzzles get very difficult uh, to the point that I know people that have taken upwards of like three to six hours to beat it their first time without a guide. Uh, it's very infamous for just being rather difficult and it's, some some would say unreasonable as a requirement for actually 100%ing the game. It's like 6 out of 10 in terms of like puzzle game difficulty. It's like a little too hard for an RPG puzzle mini game. Yeah. I, I really like it. You know, I love all the mini games in Super Mario RPG and this game has an awesome mini game, so you know it's a good RPG. Yeah. And so, you know, that three to you know, three to six hour mark that some people have taken. Uh Shiner's Shiner here uh, is able to beat it in about in under ten minutes. Reliably. Yeah, reliably in under ten minutes. So uh, if you, you know, have some bad memories of Puzzle Boy or you're curious what it's about or Whatever you really want to see, Shiner play. Shiner just completely obliterate this mini game. Uh, you, yeah, you for, do not I, I really want to see Shiner completely obliterate this mini game. For, I super want to see it. For those in the know, it's uh, it's based on a, an Atlas puzzle game for the Game Boy called Twerk, spelled K W I R K. And I actually do have a copy of it. I played it on stream once. And some of the puzzles in Quirk oh are gosh. directly in Puzzle Boy. It's some of the yeah, some of the puzzles in that were lifted straight out of that. So the the main there's kind of two main mechanics here in Nihilo. First of all, when we when we beat those uh, when we beat those two demons uh, in the main room, we got uh, the yellow Kila, which uh, you see there was that big pillar there that had like four lights around it. Basically, we need to go through this dungeon. We need to pick up four keys, and each of those keys is guarded in some way, shape, or form by a boss. And to navigate through the dungeon, we have these giant block mazes. We're pushing a pushing a switch will rotate or turn all of the uh, different blocks in various ways to allow us to progress. Uh, which, 
is actually a pretty cool, pretty cool puzzle mechanic. Uh, and those are interspersed with, you know, your typical RPG dungeon crawler mazes. So here, our first, uh, our first guardian here is Elagor. Uh, Elagor is a level 29 demon, which, uh, with fairly high evasion. So in order to actually do, uh, he's weak to electricity. As we mentioned before, Minakata has absolutely garbage accuracy. So oh. his we'll, agility is low, but it's the level differential her, that's right. the issue. Right, right, right. Uh, so we'll be. Oh. <laughs> wow! Again, level. My high magic stat, he dodged anyway. Level makes a really big difference. Level, there, level in all of these games is huge. Like, people who have played SMT5 and complained about the level scaling in that game, level scaling is a thing throughout all of these games. Uh, where basically, in order to reliably hit this Elagor, we do need a Sukukaja and a Sekunda on, uh, or Sukukaja and a Sekunda on him to, uh, to be able to better deal with this. Uh, once we get that, we can throw up some Rakundas to make this fight go go by a little faster. Yeah, this is this is the benefit of Rakunda Blob right here. Yeah. So we don't need more accuracy. I, I have like Blob and Karon Zone sitting next to each other. So I have to use either Sekunda or Sukukaja. Like it, whether, no matter how you pass, it's gonna, like uh, by having Rakunda, I can use Rakunda on Blob and then pass Karon Zone's turn. And also yeah. Blob and Karon Zone have null death, so they can, uh, Stone Gaze is a, a death element attack in this game, so uh, we're more likely to resist. And also, yeah, Elagor's Mudo attack is a instant kill kind of move, similar to the defeat spell that was used to great effect in the Dragon Quest II run earlier. Yeah, the uh, the big mechanic behind the he summons those ads, oh, so the dis. They they throw Stone Gaze out. They also throw out uh, Makajam, which uh, mutes you, which we saw. Very uh, low chance to activate, but it did. This yeah. is actually the second release of the game, by the way. Um, like I was, I was talking about the normal no DLC version of HD. Uh, there actually was a, a Japan-only first release of Nocturne that didn't have Dante or the extra or Matador, the extra Labyrinth of Amala content. And it's a it's a strange version of the game. It doesn't have normal and hard. It only has a single difficulty that I call normal plus. The damage values are exactly halfway between normal and hard. And uh, I find that the status ailment skills like Makajam are much more likely to activate in that version of the game. They got severely nerfed in this version, which I actually quite like. It just makes the game feel a little more fun. It's it's really frustrating getting muted all the time and stuff like that. Yeah, especially like mute, like status ailment removal items aren't in normal mode, aren't super expensive, but they're also like not really what you want to be spending your money on. So get, having to heal off ailments all the time, you just get kind of obnoxious. Nice sapphire. It's only going to be good if we get an extra one. Yeah. Oh boy, it's my favorite encounter in this dungeon. So Copa's kind of an interesting enemy. He doesn't have an elemental weakness. Uh, he does void force, but his weakness is actually to curse uh, ailment, which is basically just poison and uh, mute. mute. So he's weak to those things, but uh, there's one attack in this, or there's one attack in this game that's actually poison attribute, and that's uh, Toxic Cloud. Nozuchi has it. Yeah. I make great use of a sacrifice fused Nozuchi that's extremely high level for this place. Oh, Minakata can live this. Yeah, but these uh, these Copas really like to. Uh, uh, yep. This juice will be fine. Yeah. Now I win. Yeah, they, they really they help like, me win. Yeah, they really like to buff up their attack and then summon other Copas into the fight and then and then uh, inflict bind on you, which means uh, attacks that land on you are guaranteed crits, and then use Kamikaze to explode you. Yeah, physical skills are guaranteed crits, which includes Kamikaze. Yeehaw element is physical and increased by Tarukaja, which is another skill that Kopa has. Kopa, by far the most dangerous foe in here. Kopa can also use Wing Buffet, and remember, I have an Inugami that's weak to force. That's why I'm leveling Archangel here instead of Karon Zone. There's actually so much going on for uh, experience spread in here. The old route like to use Eros because Eros is fast and has Zeo. A lot of things in here are weak to Elect spells. Uh, Copa isn't, though, of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, so worth noting, EXP is very important throughout this area. Uh, every single level from here up through, like, level 25 matters. Uh, where we need to... <laughs> nice. Oops. Or we, we need to learn like specific skills at each level. So it's important our EXP is spent well. Also, Archangel is an interesting demon in the case that in in uh, random encounters, he's actually kind of terrible. However, he learns the skill Estoma. Estoma is very important because basically what it does is it stops enemies that are, I believe, six or seven levels lower than you from, from showing up. 
Uh, so whenever yeah. we revisit any area in the game that has lower level encounters, we can go around without getting into fights, which is very, very nice, because you've seen the encounter rate in this game can be it's very, very consistent. Yeah. You can, you can have times where it's like, you know, you have four consecutive encounters where you take like two steps and get a fight. Or you can walk for really long periods of time without any fights. So being able to, to kind of fix the lower end of that, or the the more uh, extreme end of that scale whenever you're doing backtracking is very nice. It also cancels out Rebarama as well, which doesn't come into play We're not in this run. Ever again. But, but in, in other runs, it's where you're like looking for a recruit, you would use Rebarama and then cancel it out with Ostoma. We're done all our recruits, and uh, we don't need to grind for anything. All the experience we need, we can get while on the road. Uh, Matador is the only thing we needed to quote unquote grind for, but uh, the amount of grinding I did was just activating Rebarama while splashing around in the lake earlier. And wow, I got a nice. miss on Elagor nice. again. I, I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah, that's pretty uncommon. Uh, again, your magic stat determines your magic accuracy, and MC's magic stat at this point is in the, into the realm of uh, absurdity. So I was supposed to gain a press turn by hitting uh, Yaka's... Actually, I'm going to pass with Minakata here because I want... Oh, wait, Blob doesn't have MP for Rakunda anyway. Oops. Okay, well, you know what I do got? <laughs> that works. Yeah, uh... Just gonna give another Secunda. Yeah, so Elagor resists Fizz. Uh, so that's that's why we're trying to use magic as much as possible and why Shiner opted to not use uh, not use Needle Rush there with Karanzan because it wouldn't have done I'm gonna get damage. an extra turn with Minakata because I removed Blob from my lineup. Oh, it's still not enough, though. Just don't attack MC. Oh, yeah. he's going to waste turn on Gathering. He cool. tends to favor summoning, summoning more Yakas um, over doing anything else, which is nice, because Yakas is weak to ice, so we can just kind of farm turns off of it. And all Yaka really does is just heal up Elagor. Okay. I'm really low on MP resources here. Oh, wait, how and how do you all feel about some channel? donations? We got uh, yeah, we got we we have some donations. You have time for donations. All right, awesome. Count zero, count zero, or excuse me, sent in ten dollars and says hi Dante, hi Dante. <laughs> <laughs> GE Nova sent in fifty dollars and says Irashai. <laughs> Yo, thank you so much. Nova. <laughs> And Wells, once again, thank you so much for your generosity, Wells. And in $15 says, let's get Puzzle Boy, featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Incentive met. <laughs> Wait, really? So, Already? No, yeah, saying... a lot of these, a lot of these have gone towards unlocking the Puzzle Boy minigame. Now we are sitting at $459.10 out of the $750 we need. So we're making our way there. Now it is less than $300, but we still have a ways to go. We can definitely get there. We have, again, we have just under two hours, so let's get those in. This is going to be a bit of a sketchy Barath fight. I spent a little too much MP with Inugami as well. I used a lot of Fire Breath when fighting groups of Copas. I wanted to save 48 on Inugami for four Rakundas to lower Barath's defense all the way, and now we only have enough for two. But I did use an entire Chakra Drop on MC. Uh, going down to one is uh, maybe a little dicey, but I think I'll be fine. Especially because uh, we won't need it in the next dungeon, Kabukicho Prison. Yeah. I don't think I can take this fight. There actually is. Uh, I'm going to get a huge amount of experience from this next fight. Uh, oh, I just saw Eros only has 9 MP. I should have been healing with items. No worries. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, also, we can't have Minakata out here. He's weak to fire. All right, this will be a bit interesting. <laughs> Yeah, please talk about the Barath fight for me while I mash my way through it. All right, so so here we have Barath. He's the the guardian of the second or of the third kilo, excuse me. Uh, basically, the way this fight works is he likes to use a lot of fire skills along with uh, area of effect uh, physical skills, and then the the two succubuses he has on either side of him like to spam sleep skills. Uh, sleep is an ailment that basically uh, locks you down for a turn. You do get a little bit of HP and MP back every turn that you're slept, but it's pretty minor overall. Uh, but when you're slept, you have a uh, you can't avoid attacks, and physical attacks have a much higher chance to crit you. Uh, so basically, they're going to try to lock you down with sleep skills while he uh, while he pummels you with fire and fizz. 
Yeah, and Barith has an AI routine where he will always uh, target whoever's asleep. So he's going to open by doing a normal attack on Kuron's zone. I guess I could use a Sacred Water to wake him up, but that's so much worse than not using my Ice Boosted Ice Breath with yeah. 21 base magic. Yeah, we really want to just get the damage in there. Uh, I also, Barith also gives a huge amount, uh, 2,000 experience for winning. Uh, it's yes. going to take a little longer. He's got resist physical. But because of the random targeting of Ice Breath, I'm a little worried yeah, here. I would like to, weird. I want to switch to different demons to cash in on the experience. In fact, I might just start switching here. Yeah, now that Eros' MP is spent, I'll just take him out right now. Yeah. We can bring an Archangel now. Yeah, uh, so we'll summon Minakata over Corona Zone at the end. Oh, yeah. right, this guy has Rakunda. We're saved. Let's go. The raccoons will rise again. And he crit. Uh huh. Oh yeah, I I would I do not want MC to fall asleep because uh, he has a very low luck stat and it will take him a metric forever to wake up. I might just win right here actually. So yeah, I'll probably just swap him and then pass over to. Uh... Uh, I can't get another turn with MC and no one is able to heal. Oh, uh, also he's gonna pass to himself no yeah because yeah, he's fastest. Oh well, that works. Nice. The the threat is removed. Hey, let's go. I was right about Barith being almost dead. Oh, wait, I actually went a level bit here to make my Heat Wave do slightly more damage. All right, so here we're going to learn Fire Boost over Ice Boost. It's really important here that we did not level up twice uh, because the next skill on Shiranui is an ability is Taunt, which we've seen a couple of times. We uh, don't want to learn. We will be learning that, but not until way later in the run, probably about three quarters level of the 37. way in. Yeah. So we really don't want to be learning that right now. So it's very important we only get one level. Also, like I said, all of our levels here matter. So the next level we get, we want to be learning. Uh, uh, we want to be learning a different skill on a different Magatama. Yeah, I, I believe the threshold is like 190 TNL at level 19, where you'll level up twice. So if you get Something too low, like you want to just level up with Commodore, or at least you can only level up once with Shiranui. And I'm going to have to load. Well. I forgot to switch. Okay, we're fighting Barith again. Yeah, it's we're fine. <laughs> fighting Barith a second time, because like I said, we need to not <laughs> learn taunt. I pushed my level pretty close there. Yeah, Nocturne's funny where you can win and have to load. Like, even when you win, you lose sometimes. Yeah. Thankfully, there's a very convenient reload option in the menu, so yeah. having to reload isn't too bad other than that we have to fight Barith a second time. Yeah, I already set up everything ahead of time before going in. All right, second verse, same as the first. Let's do this. Yeah. Uh, since we're since we're just refighting this again, now would be a great time for uh, any more messages yes. if they're there. Absolutely. Well, I did want to remind everybody that we do have oh. some really, really awesome prizes available for donators. You can be entered to win a Persona 25th anniversary bag for a $5 minimum donation. And for a $15 minimum donation, we have a Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne prize pack that was donated by Atlas West. You can head on over to our prize page if you want to see a picture of it. But that includes from the Atlas shop, a Shin Megami Tensei 3 Magatama pin, a Shin Megami Tensei 3 player pin, a player hat, a Demi Fiend mug, and this really, really awesome birth poster. Um, it's super, super cool. Again, you'll be entered for a chance to win those through the end of this run, basically. You have to get your donations in before the end of this Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne run to get a chance to be entered to win one of those two prizes. Both are really, really cool. So please do get those donations in. Told you I set up everything ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. We were just doing the uh, doing the swap out skip. It's fine. Yeah, I've never tried this before, actually. OK, yeah, let's go with Vit. Wow, look how fast this was without bothering to switch anybody. Yeah. I should point out Hellfire is actually like a slightly weaker and fire-based version of um, of Tornado. So it could have double hit Minakata and killed him there, actually. Reminder, swap Magatama. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You can level up in a single fight in this place. And I think these are all the demons I want getting experience uh, summoned right now. Yeah, I was talking about how there's a lot going on for uh, experience management. Not just for Demi Fiend, for like leveling up with the r and learning the right skills at the right time, but I'm trying to get Archangel to level up twice and learn a Stoma. I'm trying to get her own zone to learn Trophery on its next level up. And I'm trying to get Inugami down to 1200 TNL so it levels up and transforms at the next boss fight. Uh, the next boss fight is uh, the trio of Kaiwans, which are immune to all magic, so we still can't quite use our glorious Tornado Go Burr strats yet, but instead we'll be using Heat Wave. 
for reference, Trafery is an ability that lets you instantly escape from a fight. Uh, it's less important in normal mode because you can actually run from fights, but it's still very important because, as we mentioned, on, on full Kagetsuchi, you have a much lower chance of running away. And yeah, it's, it's not safe for Minakata to fight that boss. And uh, because we can't use MC's magic at all, uh, we can just go hog wild and spend all of Minakata's MP and all of MC's MP on our way uh, while we fight our way there, uh, gaining more levels. We're, uh, we're actually like kind of under leveled, I would say. Um, actually, no, we're going to learn Heat Wave right away, but yeah, we'd and like to learn Force Boost. Yeah. Uh, we learned Force Boost from Kylons. Oh, also, because we're fighting Hellbiker on purpose now, um, I'd like to push my level a bit higher. It'll just, uh, just because we'll be uh, sacrificing Minakata earlier than usual and we'll have to like manually level up Copa a little more. There's, yeah, that's that's also a complicated part of it. The, the ideal threshold for Minakata, we want to like feed all this nice boss experience to Minakata so that uh, our Copa Tengu gets a humongous head start and uh, levels up very quickly. Uh, Kopa will actually transform twice over the course of the run into Karasu Tengu and then Kurama Tengu. Uh, so all the experience I could give to Minakata will help jumpstart that. Uh, again, I'm going to level Vid a little bit. Heatwave is a physical skill that scales on max HP, so I get, I don't think it'll add that much damage. Oh, I got a magic nice. mirror. I could use that versus the Kaiwans, actually. That's basically my fourth Tetraja rock. Yeah, I'd say <laughs> save it for maybe Hellbiker. Oh yeah, I could uh, do some Tarukajas and uh, and keep them. That yeah, that's pretty Galaxy Brain. I like that. Yeah, uh, Hellbaker has this move called Hell Exhaust. That uh, it's a Force type spell, but it comes with a Dekaja effect. It removes all your Kajas, removes all your buffs. However, uh, if the target repels Force or just repels the attack somehow, they will keep their Kajas. Um, so I might actually get to keep some Tarukajas for a nice high damage turn. Yeah, so here's Kaiwan. Get a, I have a Kaiwan emote in my chat because my hard any percent route uh, actually fuses Kaiwan as my endgame damage dealer. But uh, he's also kind of an annoying fellow who's messing with the switches in this 12th basement here. Yeah. I get through very easily. I, oh, uh, no, you don't. I will let you pass here. Yeah, how's this? <laughs> yeah, there's a. Uh, I believe there's an interview with uh, some of the game designers when they were talking about this dungeon. Basically, they said that they had two goals when they were designing this dungeon, and that was to, as you're solving these puzzles, make you step on every single tile possible as goal number one. And then goal number two was that you hated Kaiwan by the end of it. Uh, and they succeeded in both of those goals for uh, the vast majority of people. <laughs> yeah, not just for like the annoyance of getting through this basement, but also the, the actual boss fight. Kaiwans use uh, death element magic. They, they throw out a lot of instant kills. Um, so we can use three demons that have null death, but uh, there's no way to give our MC null death. There was a, a, a cash cube I picked up in the very first room that had two Tetraja rocks, which is a... Uh, Tetraja is a spell that... Uh, it was featured in earlier SMT games as well, and it gives you uh, a shield against instant kill moves. Uh, it lasts until it's broken. Um, so I can just use that on turn one, and I won't have to refresh it until MC gets targeted with an instant kill. That was a really good dodge. <laughs> on, on both parts, I think. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that <laughs> that was the Incubus from the Matrix there, apparently, I guess. Oh, oops. Deese is going to absorb this. I'm going to lose all three of my turns. But yeah. uh, Fornius absorbs ice, so my only good move there was Tornado, which would be fine, because like I said, I can go hog wild with uh, spell usage. Oh, they're hitting it. Uh, Archangel's ice weakness and Minakata's fire weakness. And I think Minakata dies. Minakata's fine. Oh, right, right. This is normal mode. Haha. Uh -huh. Yeah, so once we once we get down here to, I believe this is the 13th floor, or 13th 12th. base, 12th, uh, the encounters start to actually be designed in a rather obnoxious way where it tends to be rather difficult to deal with, uh, to deal with everything without hitting something that someone else in the fight knows. Uh, really the only safe thing to use in pretty much any circumstance is electricity, and we don't have shock because you can only learn shock at level 21. We uh, wouldn't have like anything starting. good to remove. Yeah, we don't have anything good to remove, and all of our levels matter, so we really can't learn it here. So there's definitely points where it's like, like there, where it's like, oh, I can't use ice breath. Well, we don't have ice breath anymore anyway. But like, oh, Fornius, oh, yeah. Fornius drains ice, so I can't use that. Can't use fire breath because disc drains fire. Or oh, I can't use tornado because Copa's in this fight. 
There is an encounter uh, on this floor of a Fomorian, a Dis, and a Copa. Copa yeah. Fomorian Null's eyes, Dis drains fire, and Copa Null's force, and so it's just like, oh well. Alex, the only thing you yeah. can attack with there, and, and like feasibly use it on everything. Yeah. So it's uh, getting get pretty annoying to deal with uh, to deal with some of the encounters uh, on this floor. They. It's not very common that encounters in these games are designed to, to like actually dynamically cover all the weak. Hey, speaking Here of it is. Uh, speaking of which, uh, to cover each other's weaknesses in such a way. But this is definitely one of the dungeons where that's the case, which is kind of part of what adds to to both it being interesting, but also part of why people hate it so much. Yeah, this dungeon really feels like uh, Dragon Quest running, where like it really tests your knowledge of like how can I clear this encounter quickly. This is kind of the the camel breaker that. Uh, can make a time really good if you can just get through Assembly of Nilo Dungeon really quickly. Yeah, and if, you, if you're running around with uh, with Hifumi on like Shiner is right now, uh, and you're playing on hard mode, uh, this is Agilao does like 100 something. It would do like 190. Yeah, 190, which in hard mode you're pumping vitality so you have more health, but it's still almost a one shot, and it yeah, will one shot like Minakata, so. Yeah, it's like three quarters of MC's health. But uh, because Copa is still here using Wing Buffet, uh, Inugami hasn't transformed yet, I'm more likely to block Wing Buffet and steal a turn yeah. than Dees, like, targeting MC in particular. Oh, what was Inugami's TNL? Oh, it's still too high. Okay. Yeah, 400 more. Yeah. Uh, once once Inugami's under 1,200, I'll switch for Corona Zone. Corona Zone needs like 400 more. Oh, uh, no, it's actually a lot more than that. But it's fine. I can level. Corona Zone will be fine to level up uh, later on, I think. Yeah. I could use Corona Zone versus Ose. Uh, like Archangel's already leveled up. We. I thought we already did use Corona Zone for Ose. Yeah, we do. Well. In, in the old route, but I like using Archangel because it's faster. Uh -huh. It's it's less bulletproof, but you can have a demon die uh, if like Focus Heat Wave hits them, but uh, we still are going to have such monstrously huge damage output, we'll still clear the fight. Yeah, we have so much EXP on Archangel, we can probably use Crowns on Pora. Yeah, I think Archangel... Archangel's going to get 2,500 from Hellbiker, which is probably just... Oh, what do you want? Uh, no, I want your experience, Fornia. Sorry, you don't get to be part of the speedrun. No stingrays allowed, except for the one we already. Oh yeah, recruited. look at that. Archangel's at twenty-four already. Well, you're gonna you're gonna get it your way, Freedom. We'll fight Ose with uh, <laughs> Corona Zone. It'll be it'll work out perfectly that way, because Hellbiker is gonna give Archangel twenty-five hundred, and uh, I need twelve hundred. Uh, I think I need sixteen hundred on Corona Zone, so that'll, I'll get twelve hundred from Ose and like four hundred on the way there, pretty much. Uh, yeah, Archangel just needs 2540. It'll be easier to get the 40 outside on the, on the sand. <laughs> so let's just bring in Corona Zone now. Still have Hifumi on. That's the Magatama I want to level up with. Oh, nice Kaish. <laughs> yeah, Corona Zone's funny. Corona Zone has only one agility. Corona Zone's always going to go last. It's always really exciting when Corona Zone gets an agility level up because he doubles his agility. Yep. The speediest, uh, speediest ball of heads you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's actually uh, some funny demon animations when you're when they want to talk to you after leveling up, and uh, or like, if, they, if you deny them a skill change, uh, Corona Zone gets really mad and like all the faces on him shrink like he's a. My skill changes are too powerful for you, Debbie Feet. Okay, and now Corona Zone is in range. Good. That life drain was kind of annoying. <laughs> Uh, anyone? Oh yeah, as long as uh, Inugami has 48 for four Tarukajas. All oh, uh, right, we don't use Minakata for that fight. Never Blob, mind. Blob will bring. Uh, I do use Minakata on hard any percent for just for Dark Might. Yeah, but, but uh, yeah, Minakata's just gonna jump in and cash in on experience at the end. Goodness gracious! No. <laughs> this is the one that you were describing earlier, wasn't Whoa. it? The one that is quite the dungeon. Yep, this is the dungeon. <laughs> this is this is indeed a dungeon. Of all of the oh. dungeons that Atlas has ever designed in a video game, this is one of them. And this is one. Yeah. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, Corona Zone recovered from Charm. Wow. No, my MP! Oh, oh we kind of need that. Oh, I was hoping for multiple Corona Zone uh, Secundas, but oh well. Oh, wow. I should. Oh, I don't have enough MP for. Oh, our MP! Oh, one less no! Tarukaja now! <laughs> 
Wow, these, no. these guys really want to uh, be the star of the stream here. Oh, he's, he's healing too much from the <laughs> from the life drain. <laughs> wow, we okay. We're well, gonna have we, an exciting. Uh, we, uh, me, we're gonna have an exciting Kaiwan battle now. I was gonna say we did just save too, so uh, we don't need mana bonus anymore. Our magic stat is so huge that's where most of it comes from. Oh, uh, he for me. Why? I was hoping for the full party heal. Oh well. Okay. All right. So we open the 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 cube and it's empty. Uh, uh -oh. Why is there no green key law in the green treasure room? <laughs> I had a hard time in the storehouse. I'm Kaiwan. Sorry, but I will let you have the green key law. Ha ha ha! Kaiwan fled. Oh, I'm gonna get that miserable Kaiwan. Oh yeah, there's actually little trip wires for these cutscenes here. I should not have wiggled left here, because see how I spawn in the middle of the hallway now? So I'm just gonna hug this right wall to go straight ahead instead of uh, drawing an angle. Uh, oh, he's back. I don't have enough MP to win this cleanly. Like throwing a tornado would be great, but my boosted fire breath won't work. These will absorb it. So yeah, I, I walked to the right side of the hall, now I'm in the middle. I saved one step. Wow, amazing. Wow. Amazing like frame optimizations in my eight hour speedrun. This is this is how seriously I take this game. Speedrunning. Yeah. Yeah. Right here, right now. We're we're <laughs> gaming. <laughs> I should point out I do have world record in this category. I, I learned this game while in quarantine and before I knew it I it was a very happy day when I beat Pink pajamas at a run. I never thought that would happen. Uh, all right, let's get set up here. Yeah, just need all the Null Death crew. Uh, I'll just s stick with he for me. I could use Onk for more Vit, but that leaves me weak to death, and I would hate for that to happen if uh, I, MC gets double targeted. Yeah, so this fight can get a little spooky. Uh, like we said, Kaiwan nulls all magic, and uh, they like to use death skills. Uh, thankfully, like three fourths of our party nulls death, except for you know the one person who, if they die, it's a game over. Uh, so we have these Tetraja Rocks to protect us from two instances of death attacks, uh, which, again, is hopefully going to be enough. It's possible they just decide to focus MC with death attacks, in which case things can get a little spooky. Uh, that shouldn't, or well, again, that hopefully will not happen. We'll be fine. We have three Tetraja Rocks. Oh, we got an extra I got one nice. as a demon gift. Very nice. So here we're going to be wanting to buff up as much as possible. Unfortunately, that's not going to be as much as we'd like because of the... Uh... It's fine because now Inugami can start yeah. using Feral Bite. Ooh, nice crits. Yeah, Boar's Orc, let's go! Yeah, due to our unfortunate run with the uh, with the Incubus, we uh, won't be able to do as much buffing and debuffing, but we we will be able to do damage with our other demons. Yeah, I think I no, I'll, I'll spread out the damage a little bit, but I do want to swap Minakata over Blob before I win. Give that twelve hundred. Yeah, Heat Wave has a pretty high crit rate, by the way. Remember that later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Nice. Uh, let's increase our evasion here. I this hope he might be lives. a little interesting. Okay, Kaiwans fine. very rarely do damage attacks. Okay, Minakata should be near the top of the list. We'll pass Minakata's turn because he didn't get those two Tarukajas. I'll get more damage just using Triangle. Oh. There we go. Oh, wow. Minakata did as much damage as Kuronzon with two Tarukajas. We told you you had that good strength. Solid fight. All right, so here uh, our, uh, our our long Odago will Gotta now transform. evolve into the great, the marvelous Diet Doggo. I'm Mikami of the Avatar Clan. <laughs> Oops. Oh, Dino Rush upgraded. Let's go. <laughs> I, I do want to heal here because when uh, Demi Fiend's health is in the red, like on the bottom 20%, uh, he walks around with a belly ache and literally moves slower. So <laughs> I need to make sure to heal him. Okay, Moon Clock looks good here. Uh, falling one, that's about what I want it to be. Uh, on our way to the next boss, Ose, we're gonna walk down like a really, really long drill and stop by a mystical chest that has a bomb of rising in it. Uh, it's a better revival bead. Instead of reviving with one or five HP, it'll revive a demon at full HP, but this is normal mode and things are quite forgiving. We probably won't need it. Maybe we'll sell it for 1200 if we really, really, really need. Um, just a, a nice little uh, safety item for freedom to enjoy in his yeah. leg of the run. Yeah, our revival count is thankfully actually pretty good. It's pretty likely because you only have like one or two guaranteed revival beads. It's fairly likely that you can have runs where those are the only ones you get. And so things can get a little scary if demons start dying. Uh, thankfully, at this point, we've been getting pretty lucky with the revival bead counts. but. It is still nice to nice to have a full revive because, like we mentioned, 
bringing demons in mid-fight after reviving them can be a little scary because you're bringing them in at like single digit HP. So having, having that as an option is always very good. So, so here we're going to, to finally use the Kilas that, we, that we've been collecting to, uh, to lower the, uh, the stairway of doom, sadness, misery, pain, and suffering that thankfully isn't that bad in normal mode. So that's good. That, that, might that actually sounds be great. I want to go there. <laughs> what a name. There's a, there is a, a soul in the Amala network who says that Megatsuhi is a, a byproduct of negative human emotion or something like that. All those things that Freedom just described. And this does seem to be a, a funnel that's bringing Megatsuhi lower into the, the real basement of the Assembly of Nilo's base. Uh, I think we can throw it to the host for a bit while we're going down this really, really long spiral staircase here. All right, well, I did want to remind everybody that while we have the special limited prizes available for donating during this run, we also do have a grand prize that's available. If your donation total is $100, you'll be entered. Oh my gosh, I'm on the wrong screen. <laughs> you'll be entered to win that PlayStation 5 with the Final Fantasy VII Remake and the Tales of Arise. It's really, really cool. Again, it's cumulative. You don't have to donate that $100 all at once, just over the course of the marathon. Uh, PS5, y'all. Yeah, you can... Uh... Very, very nice. And then I have a kind of unusual announcement to make, which is that tonight, it's the peak of the Orionid meteor shower. So if you enjoy meteor showers, it's now. Oh. <laughs> or, you know, whatever, whatever the time zone you're in. But... Uh... Uh, yeah, 10 to 20 meteors an hour. You can see them now. Wow, Pretty very cool. nice. Keep one eye on the Nocturne and one eye on the sky. The Nocturne meteor <laughs> shower. All right, so... Say, uh, thanks to everyone in the crowd here in the building joining us for Nocturnal Nocturne. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. The best time to play <laughs> Nocturne. Yeah, I can agree. I played Nocturne at all hours of the day. There's definitely... Uh, some of my VODs of PBs where you can see it's daylight outside and it's completely dark out when I finish. Yeah, or, or the, the fun ones where you're doing hard TDE where it's daylight outside when you start, it goes into nighttime, and by the time you finish the run, it's daylight again. Okay, so, I'm going to spin around fun. near the terminal here. You can see my uh, aggro radar in the corner there. It takes the same amount of steps. It starts at yellow. It takes the same amount of steps to get to orange as it does to change to red as it does to get the actual encounter. So I'm just going to use, and but uh, the, the aggro re-rolls whenever you step outside of a terminal room. So I'm just kind of hanging around near here to uh, remove encounters. By the way, Freedom, I lied. I forgot that uh, Corona Zone gets the 1200 from the Kaiwan's fight itself. So I am going to use Archangel to kill, uh, to kill Osei sooner. And if I die, I will donate $10. <laughs> All right. I've, I've been an advocate for this strat. I, I went through the trouble of giving Archangel Dark Might, not just for this fight, but it's uh, very much a necessity to defeat the next uh, spooky skeleton fiend Hellbiker. Uh, the old route uh, used to say, you have like a 60% chance to just run from Hellbiker. You don't have to fight Hellbiker if you don't want, uh, but you know, it's you're at the mercy of RNG if you do so. Um, but I found out that um, we can fight him on purpose. All we need is two demons with Dark Might. Well, actually, uh, one demon with Dark Might. I would like Copa to have Dark Might, but it is not a guarantee. Uh, we can still beat Hellbiker with only one Dark Might. But yeah, instead of uh, having to deal with like, oh, uh, Hellbiker caught up with us, we have to hit reset and then sit through the, uh, you know, the warning screen and the Atlas logos and then load the game again. Uh, we can just fight Hellbiker on purpose and. Uh, I, I'm very proud to have developed this strategy, and now I can show it off on the largest possible stage I could show it off on. Looks like we're on a pretty good pace here. We got a like sub three hour talking yeah. to Hikawa again. That's really good. With the, with the do over on Barith too. Yeah. So we finally catch up with Hikawa here, and he uh, he explains some stuff for us. He explains that Magatsui is more than just an essence that gives demons power. It's actually the uh, the ingredient to uh, power the remaking of the world. That the entire reason. Hikawa, you know, caused the world to end to begin with is so that he can remake it in whatever image he wants to. Uh, but, you know, after telling that, he's like, but I've told you too much. Now I'm going to show you my secret weapon. So the, the weapon that the Monter were trying to stop was the, uh, the nightmare system, 
which uh, we'll see here is basically a giant uh, a giant Magatsuhi vacuum that's going to drain all of the Magatsuhi and therefore the life energy out of all of the demons in Ikebukuro, therefore basically just defeating the mantra in, in uh, one attack. Any chance you could change the controller back while we're in this cutscene? Yeah. All right. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, we're just going to watch Hikawa fire the golden eye or whatever at a Ikebukuro and take all the Magatsuhi away. So I guess if I press the button, it'll come alive. Uh, oh, we oh. got lights. It's alive! Okay. Yay, I'm back on the stock controller that I borrowed from Lisa Rocks. Thank you so much. Like Are you worried about here. Onizuka? She is the maiden of creation. Yeah, she. it turns out her teacher is still in cahoots with Hikawa. Apparently she is uh, necessary to his plan that involves uh, controlling the flow of Magatsuhi here in the, the, the larval vortex world that is set to become a new world. If only, he does explain, yeah, if we can, whoever can gather enough Magatsuhi can petition uh, Kagatsuchi to create a new world. All right. And then he sends one of the Cheetah Men to try to kill us. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Kawa's fun. theme is an F minor, and so is the Cheetah Men song. So yeah, so I'll say here, he's the, kind of the introduction to Karn abilities. You saw that, that magic mirror we used against uh, Matador earlier. Uh, in spell form, that's Tetrakarn for attack reflection and Makarakarn for magic reflection. Uh, his thing is he also likes using Takunda, which is annoying. Uh, his thing is that he will occasionally throw up uh, Tetrakarn and Makarakarn, and you need to not crash into those barriers. Uh, he also shows off the ability Focus, which buffs your next physical attack by 2.5 times. However, there is a quirk with Focus with AoE skills where it actually only picks one target to... Uh, to hit with the 2.5 times multiplier. So basically what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be throwing up as many debuffs on him as possible, hoping he doesn't Dakunda. The Dark Might is there to help us generate extra turns uh, as long as, along with doing some damage when he uses Makara Karn. This is going to be like the first real fight where we're going to see just how powerful Tornado is once we get our Makakajas oh. all the way up. And here's how Focus works with group physical skills. Yeah, so you see there that like MC got a critical hit that only did 37, but Mikami took like 100 and three from a not critical hit. That's because it shows Mikami to get the uh, the 2.5 times damage. Here's how good Tornado is with force boost and four Makakajas now, by the way. Yeah, and worth noting, Tornado can also double hit, so you can be doing 1,600 damage uh, an attack, you know, at level uh, 23, 24, so. This is the Max Recruiter. Oh, clutch dubs, one on turn yeah. three. That is uh, that is a very, uh, very deceased kitty cat uh, controller still being. Might still be haunted. Okay, we're going to learn focus over life, life boost. We're going to use focus for only one fight, I guess. Okay, it, it should be fine. Controllers being up. extremely on brand oh. for this <laughs> game about demons. Indeed. Okay, we're going to go over here. We're going to go back into Ginza at Rising 3. This will set up our clock for what we're doing next. Actually, no, I'm, I'm going to go Rising 5 because I'm going to sack fuse uh, Copa right now. So that we uh, have a good minion for Hellbiker. Hellbiker attacks with, uh, well, Hell Exhaust is Force Element, and uh, in Phase 2, he'll start using a, a fire magic attack called Hellburner. We'll have Mikami with Null Fire to answer that. So that will free up. Uh, oh, wait, I won't get to use Kamado on MC for Resist Physical. Okay. We'll be using Hifumi for. Uh, yeah, Null to Force. learn Warcry. Because I, I will hit level 24. Hellbiker gives a humongous 2,500 experience. Normally, we'd have to take fights in Kabukicho Prison on our way to the next boss, and then kind of stress over like having enough MP recovery items to set up for that. Uh, but Hellbiker's just gonna give me 2,500 up front and then we heal after that and then we're good to go. So we're kind of like front loading our next grind. Yeah, so so now that we, we got kicked out of the Nihilo base by Osei, we, uh, we're basically just going back to Ikebukuro to kind of check up. Uh, just try unplugging the controller and pressing the, uh, the PS button to see it. No, don't, like just keep it unplugged. Oh, just to make it go wireless mode? I yeah, you can just do wireless mode because I think a lot. I think the problem is actually with the connection. True, we're on a very, very long extension cable. Okay, we just have to buy Isora from the Compendium. I'm just going to use that uh, Eros that I never bothered leveling up for Anti Mine because we would rather have a nice, clean chance of adding uh, a Zionga skill and hopefully Dark Might. No, well, we need, Maka we need Maka Maka Kaja. is our number one priority. Makakaja and Dark Might. Uh, can you? Try one more time for okay. a Zio. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we also want a Zio skill for a, a much later boss fight. Yeah, there's there's a boss fight that's a pain in the butt if you don't have a, a second person with a Zio skill. So we're requesting, we're we're rolling. Oh, there we oh, go. Oh, that's it. That's the three. Let's up. go. We, it's only Zio, but you know, getting it's, three it's out of three. It's a skill. Yeah, that's the. Uh, 
Okay, let's try wireless. Just, just mode. unplug it. And, and okay. And up. there you go. Oh yeah, there's a cool animation for sack fusion. There we go. All right, and it shouldn't have connection, but I think it was with the cord, so it should be good. Okay. Yeah, we got got gremlins in the cord, I guess. Actually, gremlin is not a demon in this game, but don't worry about it. Ah! Is gremlin a demon in SMT4? There's yeah, it's, it's the one that, that screams "da" really loudly that we like joking about. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, either way, so now we have Copa. Copa is step one in the three step uh, three step process of getting an absolutely insane demon that will kind of carry us a good bit through the run. Uh, uh, a very very uh, dank demon. How about that? Yeah, he's, he's got a big conch at, and will blow green smoke out of it. Yeah, so so Copa, so he evolves into Karasu and then into Karama. We'll see Karama a lot throughout the run. He will be our main damage dealer. Uh, First up, we see uh, we see Chionki Kong here, who has uh, made her way to Ikebukuro a little too late to uh, to join the mantra. But well, she tells us, you know, that that voice from the heavens told me to find my reason, and you know, I've been thinking about it a lot. And she goes into this this whole this whole process. Also, note that she's floating like a centimeter off the ground during this cutscene. Yeah, look at her tiny shoes, and Demi Fiend's got a. Oh, that was earlier. He has like really big Sora-sized shoes. But yeah, uh, she uh, she basically says, you know, I think that, you know, if I'm going to recreate the world, I basically want to create a world that uh, has no stagnation, that's constantly progressing. Uh, so a world where basically the strong will rule and continue to, to progress society uh, is what she believes uh, to be, you know, the reason that she has found. Uh, and that being the reason of Yosuga. So here she she tells us about this and asks if we agree with her. We're, we're kind of going to just be like, I don't know what to say. Cause... Yeah, she's the first person who uh, names a reason. You know, uh, actually, no, I think Hikawa does say Shijima. Hikawa might say Katsuma. Shijima, but he hasn't told us what it necessarily means other than like the vague idea of what, Shiji, of what the Nihilo have been doing. So here she's like, you know, I hope you'll hope you'll come along to what I have to say, but uh, you know, I'm going to go look for like basically try to recruit people to to join or recruit demons to kind of join my side. Well, if they're going first, I don't we think have some donations it. rolling in. Is it okay to read them? Absolutely, sure. we're on a long walk. Sure, the neon caster sent in fifteen dollars and said everybody loves Mothman. I mean, I think it's true. Everybody oh, does. Man. But Mothman. Nope. And speaking of true things, True Crawler 21 sent in $50, says, Hee ho, my boy Freedom and Shiner CCC, did I miss Matador? Anyways, good luck and make sure to drink water and eat, please. Sorry, Cooler, you just missed him. Yep, you used Red Capote and you missed. Really, uh, really good reminder, though. I hope everybody has had something to drink and had something to eat. That reminds Whatever me. Whatever time I... zone you happen to be in. I do have drinks close at hand, it is true. But uh, I'm gaming pretty and hard right now. those donations <laughs> did go towards the Mothman incentive, the Fuse Mothman, which is now at $495.10 out of the $750 we need. However, we haven't seen any movement in the incentive that is near and dear to my heart. The Puzzle Boy minigame is still sitting at $459.10 out of the $750 we need. And we are rapidly running out of time to meet that incentive. How much time would you all say we have left? Uh, just a little over an hour. Yep. A so. little over an hour, and we have to make $300 in order to unlock that. Now, uh, every single donation counts. And so if you can only make a small donation, it will, they'll all pile up. That's why people ask for those $5 donation trains. And for just $5, you will be entered to win the Persona 25th anniversary bag. It's just a $5 minimum donation to be entered to win that. And a $15 minimum donation to be entered to win the Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne prize pack. Both of those are really, really awesome. That merch is pretty sweet. You definitely, if you it, if you can spare yeah. the money, definitely want to donate for that. And hey, if you donate for the prize pack, put it towards Puzzle Boy. We really want to want to send Shiner's part, portion of the run off with with a bang because we'll be swapping out shortly after that. So we really want to really yeah. want to give Shiner that that big hurrah. To, after uh, after Hellbiker, <laughs> I fight a wimpy boss and then have a really long walk. And if there's no Puzzle Boy, I just kind of go, here you go, Freepy, here's the controller. With no Puzzle Boy, I don't have a real boss fight at the end of my leg of the relay. I've practiced Puzzle Boy You don't so want to make Shiner sad. Nobody wants to make Shiner sad, especially not with how awesome this run has been so far. Please get those donations in. 
I, I really want to see. I really want to see this puzzle boy. I really want to see it. Yeah. So here, uh, because the Magatsu is being completely drained from Ikebukuro, uh, Gozu Tenno just kind of falls apart. He's like, I will not die, but I will be back when I find one who shares my ideals. Uh, he also admits that the uh, the mantra were kind of misled because they were just kind of going around bullying people instead of actually like. Well, that's what Thor says, yeah. right? When we go outside. Oh, here. right. Yeah. So here we're gonna we're gonna go outside and we're gonna see that uh, that our friend Thor survived. Uh, and yeah, he mentions <laughs> the right, mantra Mike. were uh, the mantra were misled because they were just kind of bullying people instead of actually looking to like forward their ideals and you know find that uh, that way to create the world. But, so he's gonna he's gonna go off on a little adventure, and I'm sure we'll never see him again. Oh, let's go, Copa. Yes, I'm in kind of an awkward spot at the moment, though, because uh, I fused away my arrows, so I don't have a bench healer right now. I would have to. I'm also I have to go straight from this building to the Hellbiker fight, so I'm trying to carefully manage MP. I would like to keep as much on Mikami as possible, uh, but MC I can be uh, a little more. Ambitious. I can just. Yeah, he yeah. only needs to use media and focus, which have pretty low MP costs, especially with how massive uh, Colossus' MP pool is. Actually, I think I'll go through the inside of the building here so I don't have to. Don't have to heal up. Yeah. Oops, oh. I picked the same room. <laughs> oh, I can't skip that cutscene by pressing circle. Fun story, actually. Um, one of my, my actual first try to speedrun Nocturne, I did not play on a DualShock 2 or even a DualShock 3. I played on a red octane dance pad, and uh, I didn't know that you could press circle to skip these elevator cutscenes. Um, so <laughs> I'm like, all right, 45 second break. I'm just gonna sit cross-legged on the pad, and the circle button is on the top right of the pad over there, and my knee sits on it, and then I look up and I'm like, huh, I'm at the top already? What happened? So that's how I found out about it. I, I do I did go back and complete a dance pad run of Nocturne, by the way. I don't have it on my YouTube yet, but it is in my Twitch stream highlights. It was normal any percent, and I finished in a little over 11 hours. Oh, oh, maybe I should have gone. I should have uh, jumped off the top. Yeah. It's already full o'clock. Um, yeah, let's go for the beat of life first. I'll, I guess. I'll have to get it on Falling 7. Uh, yeah, I'll just lose more time if I go save at the small terminal. Let's just go for it on Falling 7, because we're gamers. You got the one in eight chance of just getting a life stone instead of, okay, a, thing, right. <laughs> instead of a thing that I would sell for... Uh, actually, I might... No, I might miss my appointment with Hellbiker now. Oh, I didn't realize... Uh, okay, so I have an announcement. The, the, the donations have rolled in here. We have a $25 donation from Anonymous that just says Puzzle Boy. We have a $100 donation from Fireless that says Puzzle Boy Gang. And I went and I checked the bids and oh my gosh, we made it. <laughs> we're sitting Yo! at 884 dollars oh. out of the 750 dollars that we need y'all did it we got some we got some donations and we must have had some donors that like uh, oh here it is here's the donor that i was looking for oh my gosh all right it wasn't showing up true cooler 21 coming through with a 300 dollars shiner ccc don't mess up puzzle boy percent that's what did it Yo, thank you thank you cooler you're the i best. mean i mean the truth is, is it was everybody's donations together. Yes. So thank you so, so much, all of you, for your uh, generosity. I'm skipping the save because I'll miss new o'clock. Otherwise, eh, I'm going to beat Hellbiker. We have met Don't that incentive. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's and, you know, Freedom was joking about the reward for Puzzle Boy being not very good. But honestly, for the marathon, it'll give us uh, more consistency in the final dungeon. Okay. I'm uh, so hyped. Can I make it to the traffic I'm so lights? hyped. Now y'all can y'all can donate for that Mothman incentive all you want. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We do all love Mothman. Let's go Mothman. Uh, check my agility ties here. Uh, no, I do want Mikami second. Okay, it's new o'clock. Perfect. All right. Oh, I almost missed it. It's probably gonna say rising one, like one pixel one after. Step after, yeah. So so cycles do advance a lot faster when you're on the overworld than uh, than when you're just walking around which is really nice for if you're trying to get to a specific time uh, and your destination is, you know, a predictable amount away. Also, the, the, uh, the revving of the motorcycle is really, really loud for some reason in this game, and I have no idea why, but it's like, yeah, it's fine. I, you know, didn't want to hear myself think over the sound of a motorcycle. Be a good boy, and I'll take you to a world without limits! It's a world of calculus. Don't go. It's <laughs> yeah. too dangerous. No speed limits either. This guy sounds like Skeletor <laughs> in this version when he uses uh, Hell Exhaust. 
Or in Hellspin. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, in Nocturne HD, the, the single best thing about Nocturne HD is that Patrick Seitz did, like, a Macho Man Randy Savage voice for this guy. It, like, to the point that he's, like, even going, like, yeehaw when he does his basic attacks. It's pretty fantastic. Uh, World Without Limits is great, too, but... Uh... This is the only fight we're going to use focus in. Get hype, uh, strength. It's the world of calculus. Yeah. <laughs> world Without Limits. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna do the thing. We're doing the thing. Yeah, so we got the free magic mirror. Might as well use <laughs> it here to try to get some buffs on ourselves. Normally during this fight, you do not want to be buffing at all because uh, uh, the hell exhaust skill, like we mentioned before, will remove all of your buffs. However, if you know you just repel it back at him, you don't yes! have to worry about it. Okay, here we go. Boy, we're gonna boy, we're gonna boy, OTK boy. him. We have focus ready on MC. Raccoon is more powerful than Tarukaja, but it's okay. Uh, just go attack. Punch. Okay, maybe not an OTK, but he's pretty close to death though. So Health Throttle gives him three extra press turns, uh, which is or three half press turns, and he hell exhausts, so he loses some of those. We do lose our buffs, but that's whatever. Yeah, yeah if he Health Throttles, he either uh, alternates magic or just attack and hell spin. So we lost the Tarukajas, but it's okay. Oh, oops, I suppose he's focused there. Oh, never mind, he's dead on turn, what, three nice. or four? Nice, we uh, have defeated the Bell Hiker. <laughs> okay, we're also going to work on getting um, getting our vid up here just for a little more consistency for the next Keep boss. Me. Uh, Keep Dark Might, I guess. Oh, yeah, and here's our big Copa level up. No, I, I like Makatora, my favorite skill in this game, probably. <laughs> Don't need Kamikaze for this route. Cool. And yeah, uh, this is the best place to start using a Stoma. Some of the encounters out here are pretty weak. Uh, I am going to use a Disc Stun just in case. There are still some encounters I can get. Mostly Babkatha. Yeah. We'll we'll keep Hifa me on in case because of Babkatha's uh, uh, Wing Buffet skill. We got, yeah, Null Force on MC, Null Force on Copa. Um, I don't think anything here can attack with Ice. Uh, uh, no, because it's just Angels and... And babbed. Yeah. Oh, maybe Ankh is the, the safest option then. <laughs> Overthinking it, though. Yeah. Again, uh, Angel can use Hama, which could instant kill MC, and then we'll have to do all of that again. Wait, no, a Stoma will keep Angel away, yeah, so Stoma that actually isn't Angel a concern. Away. Yeah, and I don't Archangel even have to open the menu to change Magatama yet. Uh, I will switch to Narukami a moment later, though, uh, for the next dungeon where there's a lot of Vilak attackers. Yeah, so here we have Kabukicho Prison, which is my personal favorite dungeon in this entire game. Uh, I think the, mecha the mechanics behind it are a little nightmarish the first time you play through the game, but on repeated playthroughs, it's really cool. Oh, yeah, and we'll uh, save again. We're going to, oh, yeah, I'm going to be uh, reloading a bunch for muscle drink strats. Could you explain that for me, Freedom? Yes, so uh, muscle drinks are a very unique item in this game. When you use them, they will, like, restore your HP or MP by a pretty large amount, but they do have a side effect of, in of inflicting one of three ailments, uh, either stun, poison, or mute on the person that you use it on. Uh, this game has a has a kind of a tier system with its ailments where basically it's it's a little more complicated than this but essentially all you need to know is First that try. nice is that permanent ailments will take priority over temporary ones uh, we mentioned earlier that confusion or panic is a really scary ailment that we never want to see uh, it'd be inflicted with so the next boss that we're gonna fight uh, big Mizuchi has uh, has a skill called Mirage that's uh, a mind element attack that has a very high chance of landing confuse. We will thankfully have a party full of people that null mind except for Copa. Uh, and Copa's really, really speedy, so Copa getting confused or Copa getting panicked is really bad. So, in order to prevent that, you can do one of two things. You can either level up Eros a little bit more than we did to learn anti mind, which basically just gives you resistance to mind skills but not immunity to the ailments. Or you can do what we're doing here and throw a muscle drink on Copa to uh, either stun or poison him to uh, make sure he'll never get confused. Yeah, mute won't work because we want to use Copa's abilities. It's not worth to have him just attack all day. Yeah, poison's a little annoying because you do take damage every single round, every single like action that he gets. So you, it does up the uh, healing maintenance a little bit. It's but... less damage in that if he's stunned, you can't dodge Glacial Blast at all. Yeah. Well, there won't be a dodge anyway. We won't be uh, raising agility in that fight. Yeah. As for Fusing Unicorn there, I was looking for a Makakaja and only Makakaja. Uh, Fire Breath would be a nice uh, backup option too. 
Uh, I won't get any use out of Feral Bite or Tyrukaja, though. Unicorn doesn't ha has a pretty small role to play in the run. The main use is that Unicorn has Null Mind, but also starts with Media and Rakukaja, which are great defensive skills, as we've seen so far in the run. You know, I, I couldn't beat Hellbiker without extremely powerful Media on MC to uh, offset. Uh... Oh, I forgot to summon a third guy. Let's get Copa in here. Yeah, so so here's Naga. Uh, he's one. He's just a normal enemy from this dungeon. Uh, we're gonna oh. we're gonna beat him up and steal his keys. <laughs> yep. Because uh, if you check the classic we, prison scenario. If you would check that wall, uh, that like special wall he went into, you'd see that you couldn't get through. But uh, after we beat him, we're gonna get an item called the Amugi Stone, uh, and this will allow us to interact with these special walls that will allow us to uh, enter into the mirage that is uh, being created by the jailer. Yeah, the Mirage is pretty cool. It's basically an inversion matrix. It multiplies the entire building by like a, a vertical flip factor. So we'll be, see that sign on the ceiling? And now the sign is on the floor along with the, the light fixtures. We're kind of walking on the ceiling and the ladders that would take us up are gonna take us down. Yeah, and so that that's the cool thing about this dungeon is that basically as we navigate through it will be, uh, there will be like barricades of like random objects thrown along the floor that you can't walk past but if you're walking on the ceiling you can just go over them or there will be like holes in the ceiling that you can't really do anything with when you're on the ground but when you're uh when you're walking around the ceiling you can jump through them or or there are obstructions when you're on the ceiling and you can walk past them on the floor so it's this whole thing about basically navigating your way through through uh whether you need to be uh, on the ceiling or on the floor and uh, it's really, really cool. And just like the entire like atmosphere of when you're walking around in the Mirage is very neat. Yeah, lots of things in here are weak to fire. I do need to, I need just another 300 more experience on Mikami, but I will be judicious about what I fight then. Oh, also there's Jack Shibuya. Frost who's on his adventure. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, it's Hiho-kun from the shop, the junk shop in Shibuya. He's uh, trying to meet the great king and isn't quite sure where to look. All right, so uh, so we're gonna talk to this uh, talk to this, yeah, this uh, prison prisoner. No, my spoon broke. Yeah, we broke his concentration while he was digging a hole in the floor with a spoon. So he's like, "Go find me a spoon." And uh, of course, the collector mannequin from the Great Underpass Village is here. He probably has a spoon, so we're gonna try to find him. Uh, another thing about this place, I was gonna say. Um, Most yeah, of the encounters of here are pretty tame. There is one enemy specifically that's walking around here that's an instant we uh, will run away as soon as possible when we see them. It'll be big trouble before I have no mind on Mikami, honestly. Yeah, so uh, Yaxini, who is a level 43 demon, will be uh, is kind of just patrolling the halls and that we can run into her as a random encounter. Uh, oh, no. The intended level for this area is like high 20s, low 30s. So even casually, it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you run into Yaxini and she just kind of ruins your day. So uh, if we run into her, we'll be we'll be running away very uh, expeditiously in fear. But uh, otherwise, the, the things here are pretty simple. Uh, Pisaka can be a little obnoxious because it has life drain. So if it targets the the wrong person with that, that can be a little uh, little inconvenient yeah. for us. And Sonic Wave, which can inflict panic status, but uh, that, it's a pretty low proc chance. And now that Mikami has Null Mind, we'll uh, take away a press turn from them if that happens. Yeah, main main thing to be afraid of is Yakshini, due to uh, Yakshini can also use uh, Dragon Eye when alone, which uh, turns or turns a press turn into four flashing press turns, which could include multiple uses of Tentarafu, uh, a mind type attack that does a lot of damage and can, of course, inflict panic status. Uh, she also has Guillotine and Binding Cry. Guillotine is a pretty powerful physical move that can inflict stun status, and Binding Cry just. Uh, tries to inflict bind on everybody, which is a, a nerve type of status. We never mentioned nerve. There is, there is a lot of ailments in this game, and there there's three different types of them as well. Nerve is probably the most obscure one. That's what Oni's weakness is, and Oni is a bit of a, a annoyance for sure with resist physical and lots of HP. Level 25, uh, which is pretty high level for when you first get to Ikebukuro. Yeah. I did give up uh, Shibabu on Copa, which is, again, tries to inflict bind on a single target. Snacks. I'm trying to uh, hit level 25 on MC here. Just so, like one uh, more point of bit for some safety. So here we have ordinary Mizuchi. Uh, Mizuchi's actually pretty crazy, uh, pretty yeah, yeah, intense. Yeah, very it very can, good uh, demon. Yeah, because it level nulls 34. ice and also drains electricity, is weak to fire. 
but overall like very good for for this point in the game and overall is very good uh if the uh mothman incentive uh, does not get met mizuchi will actually be one of our final party members that's how good they are yeah mizuchi is a, a fixture of every nocturne route even the merciful any percent and true demon ending categories mizuchi is involved in some way yeah mizuchi is very good so so we found a spoon and uh apparently this is one powerful spoon uh so powerful that like in three seconds this mannequin digs a hole in the floor or ceiling yeah and jumps in and goes up uh probably gonna join the nba oh uh i think i needed that fight yeah i need one more okay okay uh, oh, I should actually be watching the radar. I should be giving this experience to Copa. Our, our experience is going to be really distorted now. Yeah, the Copa's got 5,000 5, yeah. TNL. Whee. I think I have enough uh, recovery items. Okay, we'll, we'll watch the radar here. It looks like, okay, it took a while to turn orange. Uh, I could be counting steps here. So yeah, the, the mannequin that just escaped realized that they're still stuck in the mirage. Uh, and that the in order to actually get out of the mirage, they the, they need to defeat the jailer. I'm gonna try to win right here before Copa has to take another turn. Easy, nice. Oh, reinforcements! Uh, reinforcements have arrived. Well, I can hit Raiju's weakness with Wing Buffet here. Uh, Copa has a skill called Makatora, which will allow me to transfer 10 MP at a time to everyone else. And Copa only needs. Uh, I think 33 MP while poisoned for this next fight. So, Something like that. Yeah. I am low on MP recovery items, but I think with uh, Copa's Makatoro will be good. Oh, Copa's only 38 something. Okay, we're not going to learn Shock. We don't need it. Ah. Uh, 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 Narukami can shake and deal uh, either stunned MC or um, a full party heal. About the same odds as Heat yeah. me, which would be nice. Actually, it, I think it would cure Copa's poison status. And yeah, if it was be... a full heal, it'd be, <laughs> that'd be a problem. So there is a uh, small terminal available in the prison for a safety save, but uh, I'm gonna gonna make Freedom upset again and skip it because I want to get to the boss's room at full o'clock because there's four mystical chests in there and I want the prizes in all of them. The magic number is 48, by the way, for Copa. Uh, for Makakaja. Oh really? Uh, no, one of the, some of the Makakaja comes from Unicorn. So we only need two from Copa. We, oh, yeah. we pass first with Copa, and he does one Makakaja on the second lap on the right. first few turns. Or maybe I'll be doing Rakakaja with Unicorn for extra, extra safety. Like I did in our rehearsal. That's kind of my strat yeah. in hard any percent, actually, is doing two War Cries and two Rakakajas on turn one. Because uh, Big Mizuchi is uh, the usual inversion, where uh, usually bosses change forms and get stronger as the fight goes on. But actually, this fight instead is... Uh, he starts out really strong and becomes weaker later. Uh, can I get by with 81? I think I can. Okay, I already did Iomante. Let's just go in. So uh, we saw Ordinary Mizuchi earlier. This is Extraordinary Mizuchi. I'll tear you apart! So yeah, because we poisoned Copa, uh, he can't get panicked. Permanent status ailments are a higher priority. Uh, he's going to be low on HP, though. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I guess I'll be healing with Unicorn as well. Let's do the Makakaja first, though, so that uh, Unicorn's Media can heal a larger amount. With two War Cries, I think Mabufudine will deal about 100 or 120. Something like that. Yeah, that's good enough. It should be fine. Two war cries. Glacier, if it's glacial blast, that can double hit like tornado. Uh oh, who's getting it? Okay, no dubs. No one, okay. We're good. Yeah, glacial blast can be really scary. Uh, thankfully, it did not double hit. Okay, so I don't have fire breath on unicorn, so we'll just uh, get in our makakajas this way. We'll do one of MC's boosted fire breaths to gain an extra turn. And now with these extra heads, Copa can actually do a move instead of just passing turn all the time. We can sneak in a Rakunda with Mikami, or or gain a turn here. No, I'll do the Rakunda, and we'll heal with Unicorn, and just do a Tornado with MC. Because oh wait, I don't I don't even get that far. Okay, fine, we can conserve some MP. We want to move through the phases quickly. If we stay in a phase too long, then Big Mizuchi will use Rakunda, and that'll be a bit of a setback. Luckily, Makakaja will stay on my side no matter what. 
Yeah, the poison is maybe a little annoying to deal with, but if we can just get out of phase one, it won't matter anymore. Because of those two war cries, uh, Mizuchi's attacks will be too weak to matter. Okay, and there's our... Oops, oh, I reached. I can't count! Haha! <laughs> oh, I should have done Rakunda here, maybe. Actually, no, now I get to go to MC. Yeah, Unicorn can heal. And then we just throw a tornado and we should be out of phase one. Yeah. I've got enough MP for one fire breath. Okay, now he's gonna use Mirage again. Always Mirage when the phase changes. Huh, are you getting bigger? Nah, it's maybe by imagination. Okay, let's go Rakunda here. I feel like my damage output is not large enough. Uh, haven't, like I said, I haven't got a good move to do with, with Unicorn. I don't have 10 MP to transfer to MC, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, oh, I have the Mazan Rock from hey, uh, there go. Labyrinth. This should, uh, I, Force Boost works with this, too. This should do, oh, 350, more than I Not thought. Bad. Phase three again. I'm getting smaller. Uh, okay, I have a plan. We need someone with a fire skill to help us finish the job. Physical attacks are weaker. Uh, oh, MC's next? Yeah, so so a quirk of poison is that your physical <laughs> oh, attacks go. actually decrease in strength. Demi punch for lethal. Oh, and curls up. He doubles agility! agility. <laughs> <laughs> and learned stone gaze. Oh, brilliant. All right, so, there, so there's three uh, gems in these chests, and then there's one vitality incense that we'll be throwing on MC immediately. Yeah, that's true. We want uh, nine base agility, or not agility, nine base vitality for two reasons. Uh, for scaling the damage of Heat Wave uh, to have enough to uh, kill a certain boss quickly, and also to have enough HP to survive a different boss's attack in a, a edge case scenario. So I forgot, so we actually forgot to mention this entirely. The entire reason we came here was because, uh, so Isamu got left out, or let out, when the mantra got defeated. Yeah, he actually lived. He just got thrown in uh, Mantra's prison. You can go talk to him there, but we're not going to bother in the speed run. And, he, yeah. and he's mad because we didn't rescue him. And then he's like, I hear there's a prophet among the mannequins that can tell us where their teacher is. Uh, and then he gets captured. And then we find him here. You know, we just saved everyone in the prison, but you're like, you didn't save me. I saved myself because the mirage ended and because Isamu's not a very smart person. Uh, and he starts pouting. And so he's like, I can go into the the Amala drum and it's calling me and yeah, bye, I don't like you. And so he just leaves. Yeah, he gets pretty mopey after Thor takes away his Magatsuhi. He really liked that chewing gum. Yeah. That was his favorite gum. He's going to become hashtag null. Hashtag null has become disappeared. Going to become an entity of the Amala network. This will be the last time we ever see hashtag null in uh, the Vortex world. Uh, so here, Fudo Mimi has gathered the mannequins together, and he's going to take them take them somewhere else where they can live peacefully. But to, to thank us, he will prophesy our future, and he tells us that there's a man in Ginza who is uh, wanting to meet with us. I wonder who that could be. Yeah, a little more plot to talk about, and then we'll have a long walk ahead of us. I'm just going to go straight to Ginza, like Fudo Mimi suggested, and then uh, mash through some dialogue with our pal, the reporter, Hijiri. It's very important that we do actually go to Ginza because we can actually access the next dungeon we're supposed to go to uh, already. But if we go through the entire dungeon without seeing this cutscene here, we'll actually get to the other side and the door will be locked to where we're supposed to be. That's so cruel. They should just lock the front entrance of Ikebukuro Tunnel. But that would be nice in this is Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. True. <laughs> this is an Atlas game. So, so here, Hijiri is like, I want to find more info on the nightmare system and how we can deactivate it, because while it's activating, no one can oppose Hikawa at all. Uh, but all of the the terminals are currently being monitored by the mon or by the Nihilo because they basically took over the vortex world. Yeah, they eliminated the mantra. They're the the one ruling power that's left. So it's kind of up to us to oppose them at this point. Yeah. But he did find out that uh, the mannequins have all vacated to Asakusa, which is previously kind of un uncharted territory as far as the, the vor people, inhabitants of the Vortex world. So he is imagining that there will probably be a uh, an unmonitored drum there that we can uh, that we can make use of to gather information. So he asks us to uh, 
since he doesn't know how to access terminals that we haven't really interfaced with to to go and open up the way for him. Here we're gonna we're gonna fuse an Earthus. Uh, we had elements a little bit earlier. Earthus' first skill that he learns is Rakukaja, which again is a defense buff. It'll be very important to to put on a couple of demons uh, later on. So we need to need to funnel some EXP into Earthus. Thankfully, since he's such a low level, uh, he'll learn his stuff in like one or two fights. Uh, about yeah, or two, two or three. Or, yeah, two or three. Only need, only needs like I think six eighty TNL. Something like that. Yeah, I think the old route suggested doing this later, but I like doing it now because I'm I'm fighting on the road anyway. Yeah, you might as well. You're it's, fighting either either way. It's so it's it's basically up to preference whether you whether you do it now or later. Uh, doing it now does right, well, have this, the uh, oh sorry go ahead. Doing it now does have the side effect of like uh, the the stock menu that you have in your in your menu lists demons by order that you acquire them. So it can make uh, menuing to Archangel's Estoma a little bit, take a little longer, but that's like a, such a minor thing. That, yeah, Archangel's uh, at the bottom. It should be nice and quick. But, uh, but I'm already doing it. Well, Earthus is summoned. That's why yeah. he's at the bottom. But uh, other than that, it's not really a big deal. But uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can. can. we're going to be going through this bit of filler, or I mean uh, tunnel, so. Yeah, the early part of this tunnel has no encounters. <laughs> and, uh, I was going to say, is this that long walk y'all were talking about? Yeah, is it a good so time for donations? You have to go through three of these tunnels over the course of the game, and they're very much kind of scream of like, oh, well, we need to uh, figure out a way for them to get to new areas, so let's just make them run through a dark tunnel for however yeah. long. So It's rock tunnel, and I don't have flash. I'm going to find my way through in the dark, but there won't be much to look at. So Yeah, so uh, plenty of time for donations. Take it uh, away, sporadic. Oh, also jump scare Oni there, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, excellent. Well, Bruce sent in $100, says no comment besides keep doing what y'all do at RPG Limit Break. Thank you so much, Bruce, for your generosity. We're going to keep on keeping on through this tunnel. All right, Viola sent in $100 as well. Says, so happy to see Limit Break back. Shin Megami Tensei is my favorite RPG series and it rarely gets run for various reasons. Here's to a great pause. Thank you both so much. Of course, that great cause they're talking about is NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. That's where all of your donations are going today. And for the rest of the week. Mothman! I have a $50. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Mothman. <laughs> No, Mothman got shocked. He's gonna die. Sorry. Oh no! I want to kill Mothman because he drops opals. That's a, a very good gem to get. He's also level forty-three, so he has a lot of EXP. <laughs> yeah, pretty. Well, we had a fifty-dollar donation from an anonymous donor. It just says, "Hi, I hope you're all having a great day today," and it's very relevant because that went towards our Mothman incentive, hey. our Fuse Mothman for the final battle, because we're now sitting at five hundred forty-five dollars and ten cents out of the 750 dollars we need to unlock that so we're just a little over 200 dollars away from fusing mothman at the end of the game do i have time for one more yeah sure. All right, well, Kiana Lookalike sent in $25, says, Good luck, Freedom of Shiner, with the Pain Peco of Nocturne featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Also, heck, that snowman. <laughs> and then they dabbed. They, they dabbed at the end. <laughs> a dab. Ooh. I think Earth has dabbed on Nui there. Got a crit for 38 damage. Thank you for the donation, Kiana. Appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Earth has almost leveled up twice. Oh, as a present for me? A Mamadou Rock. That's completely useless. Thank you, Orphus. Wow, Since we're talking about nice. incentives just a little bit, I do want to remind everyone that there is one that is open for the ending choice going on all the way to the end, of course. Currently, Shijima is still in the lead at $132 now in 21 cents, and Musubi second place with $77.50. So if you feel strongly about that Musubi ending, which is the one that saves more time, right? Yes, That's Musubi ending saver. is about five minutes faster, give or take a little All bit. All right. The uh, the true speedrunners will donate for the Musubi ending. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> let's go Zio on Mothman. Mothman kind of likely to dodge though. I can't go fire, <laughs> I Mothman's wasn't ready got, for the... uh, Immunity to Double fire, meow. Uh, maybe Rakunda would have been better. Oh, I didn't get uh, Mazio and Unicorn this time. Not to worry, I have Tornado. Oh, nice dubs on hey. Mothman there. And this one was softened up by Zio. Okay, good stuff. Can finish off Black Ooze, who takes double damage from magic with 
Akami's Fire Breath into maybe Unicorn's Mabufu will get there. It's pretty weak, though. Yeah. Mm. Oh, well, Black Ooze is pretty harmless anyway. <laughs> I like how they sound on PS2 with that. Oh, oh it's new o'clock, of course! <laughs> when the might is dark. Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, we're at... Yeah, there you go. We'll get our... Get our uh, yeah, vitality all the way up. We're going to give up Fire Boost. Mind's Eye has a passive skill that will reduce our chance of getting back attacked. By how much? I don't know, 1%. It, it, it reduces it. We, it reduces it. Yeah, that... that. <laughs> For all we know, it could be bugged and do nothing, but, uh, you know, it, 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 it reduces it, and it makes us feel better about ourselves, so yeah, that, it's cool. Yeah, we're not quite done our grind here. The other favor I have to do for Freepy before I hand the controller over is, uh, well, actually, Freepy might have to do it. Uh, we want Copa to level up and transform into a better Karasu thank you. Uh, I didn't check uh, Copa's TNL. I feel like we're close, though. Other thing is to try to get MC closer to level 27, but without hitting it. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going wireless mode. Yeah, the power of technology. I'm going to go wing buffet here, actually. This should finish off both of them. Yeah, nice. Because nice. of dubs. And, oh, 265. We're about one fight away to go. Cool. And we're going to get it in, while we're in here. Wow, we didn't see a single Sardahiko. That's quite a That's blessing. That's pleasant. <laughs> yeah, Sardahiko is pretty scary. Yeah, Level 35, about 350 HP, has counter, can use focus, uh, health thrust, berserk. Yeah, everyone's favorite demons are the ones that look like just some dude. <laughs> uh, and Sardahiko is very much just some dude. Absolutely a dude. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's really scary because, yeah, like Shiner said, when he's by himself, he does Dragon Eye into, like, yeah. focus into really strong attacks into into stealing your lunch money. Mm. Goodbye, yeah. Shibabu. Uh, no, keep Dark Might and Zeo, please. Yeah, Dark Might can turn into Might, which instead of being guaranteed criticals at a certain Kagetsuchi phase... Just boosts your critical rate yeah, on basic attacks overall. Boosts your natural critical rate from 5% to 15%, which might as well do absolutely nothing. Woo! Okay, we're almost out of Ikebukuro Tunnel. Uh, I'm not going to take that encounter. There's still more encounters awaiting us in Asakusa. And thank you so much to all our donators who have put one more boss fight before me and a nice present for freedom to make the final dungeon safer. We'll get to do Puzzle Boy and get a, a weird bug thing as a reward. So before I move a single step, though, I'm going to switch to I'm so hyped. We get to acquire geese and honk our, uh, honk our expel problems away. Yep. All right, so since we're in Asakusa and we're about to switch to me, I'm actually going to step out for a second. So, uh, oh yeah, can... just make sure you're physically ready. There's a lot of walking around. Uh, Freedom will be back in time to see me crush yeah, Puzzle Boy. Step out. Can you mute my mic? Okay, let's heal now that we've made it here. And we'll save in Asakusa after that very long walk. I didn't save at the start of Ikebukuro Tunnel either. Gotta save those 15 seconds. Got to hit that estimate. Yeah, Hijiri has made it to Asakusa anyway. He somehow got here first. He found his way through in the Amala network, I guess. He's wearing a hat for some reason, but the weather in Asakusa is hot, so he's like, oh, no, I'm going to get my hand sweaty. No, wait, I'm going to get my right hand sweaty. Okay, fine, I'll hold it in my left hand, but at, the, but at the edge. So, yeah, he's explaining, yeah, the mannequins have made it to Asakusa here, and they're renovating the city, so why don't you explore and see what's up? So, yeah, we're going to do that. He's just basically saying, hey, there's two cutscene triggers you have to go hit. Please go do that. So, uh, by the way, I have a nice uh, little Easter egg to show chat. I'll do my best while moving around with one hand here. So the thing about the Puzzle Boy minigame is that uh, every motion you do makes a sound. So when I arrived at the venue here at RPG Limit Break, I wrote out... Uh, oh, this is too bright to show, I guess. But uh, I, I filled the back of this page with uh, chicken scratch uh, <laughs> diagrams on a pen, just showing uh, the full solutions, like left five, down two, right one, basically uh, just trying to memorize a whole sequence of moves to do Puzzle Boy blindfolded, but there was not enough time for me to learn it. There's there's 20 stages and they're, they're very long. The next thing I tried was uh, like drawing diagrams of like the motions that you would make. Oh, I forgot to use a stoma. Our lame little level 13 Sudama is still here. Uh, there's no... Oh. <laughs> Classic! Use a stoma on falling one, take one step. The effect of repel wore off. And here, we're going to meet a new friend. We're going to meet the renegade mannequin, Sakahagi, who uh, is collecting faces. 
He's a uh, gathering Magatsuhi himself, and he's like, Oh, you're a demon too. You're probably thirsty for Magatsuhi right now. Yeah, I am. I think you and I will get along just fine. And then the cutscene ends. I guess I've been mashing really quickly, but like usually after talking, you know, I talked to Chiaki and Club Inferno at the start, and there's a little Atlas like meme arrow that says Chiaki left. You know, the little, the little arrow they always use for narration. Okay, let's see if Karasu's stronger now that he's got Wing Buffet. Yeah, not really. Uh, what should I do with the Unicorn? Oh, let's let's see how reliable Counter is. Oh yeah, that's not very dangerous on normal mode. Oh, maybe I should have gone Fire Breath for an extra press turn here. Nah, I actually don't like doing that. I want to make sure Sardahiko is toast. Trotty's a useless skill. Ooh, plus one agility. I'll have to warn Freedom about that. Uh, Mikami and Archangel both start at seven agility, and we're kind of counting. Uh, actually, we're kind of expecting Mikami to go first. I think that'll be a benefit. Uh, okay. I was yeah. not expecting all those faces. That was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's quite, that's quite the thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll meet Sakahagi uh, a fair bit later. Um, what else? Yeah, I mentioned how I'm not taking a single step outside without Ankh, because uh, a high level, a level 28 divine demon called Principality can show up and use Hamaon, which is the upgraded version of Hama. There's two flavors of instant kill in this game. There's uh, Expel and Death. You know, we saw the Death type instant kills from Kaiwan, but Expel is like card capture Sakura. Uh, a bunch of seals come out and banish the target in a beam of light. So I uh, got to make sure we're not going to get wiped out by that. So yeah, it's full of clock and my chance to run away is very low. I'm going to summon Corone Zone and use Trophery for a guaranteed escape. Are we winning? We're about to start Puzzle Boy. Mikami leveled up and gained a point of agility, by the way, and has eight agility. Definitely faster than Archangel. Okay. All right, here we go. Timer says 3.42.33. I'll try to estimate my Puzzle Boy time that way. All right, so this, this is the Puzzle Boy minigame. It's, uh, again, 3D block pushing maze where we are uh, we are our favorite Pyro Jack. Just, uh, also with flippers. Yeah, with flippers. Yeah. Solving puzzles to a, a nice remix of Kichi Joji 1990X. Uh, shout outs to that song from SMT1. Gotta get this thing out of the way. And this thing out of the way. There we go. A little bit of text to mash through every five stages. Day Nava is really good at Puzzle Boy, by the way. Oh, uh, no, I wanna be on this side. There we go. <laughs> Oh, right. It's <laughs> a little barrier there. You can yeah. see why this would take hours and hours casually. Oh my gosh. Remember, you These have to are the easy the, ones, too. You have to do the whole thing in one sitting to get the reward. If you give up, you have to start over from the beginning, which oh. I actually did the first time. I did like up to stage 16, and I was like, I'm sleepy. I'm going to bed. And then did it all Brutal. again the next day. Also, thanks, Atlas, for letting us How many stages are there total? 20. Oh. You can see why I would have struggled to learn to do this blindfolded, like just trying to remember all these moves with just from memory. Oh, wait, get that later. Uh, I'm maybe not getting sub eight, sorry, Day. You can move while the lights are turning on, so uh, it's important to remember uh, which way to go at the start of the puzzles. That can save you like a second each time. This one, we gotta build a big bridge to the end. Not uh, like quite at the edge there, but like one away from the edge. Uh, hold on. Yeah, I don't think I'm getting the sub eight. Sorry, Day. Uh, I gotta prime this too. There we go, so we can move down through here in order to make this fit. It's getting tough for you, huh? Now's the time to quit. Yeah, the, the mannequin kid really starts out like taunting you a lot, but we're gonna prove who the real puzzle master is. Uh, oh yeah, we gotta go like this. We gotta send this along the bottom, but we have to set things up a little bit first. Okay, stage 12, I think is, no, not this one. This one's the revolver. I hate this one. This one, you have to make a stack and then just kind of Towers of Hanoi, move them around and around and around. You gotta get this two to the bottom. So we'll just move this and move it up to make room for the other one. Move it away just a little bit. Now we can fill the bridge. 
this one? Nope. This one. We gotta put this one out in the hallway here, and then we can move that back into place so that we have room to. Oops. Oops, I changed the viewing angle. Haha. -ha. There we go. Yeah. Just need enough room to move this out of the way so that we can grab this thing and go around it and push it down to get it down through the bottom to fill in this hole. Move this out of the way so that we can get underneath this taller piece to fill in the gap, and we're out. This one's the chip's challenge level. It's just put the thing where it goes. Put the block in the only gap it can fit in. But there's also some holes in the floor that just make the movement annoying. Uh, this one, this one, this one, you can tell where this long skinny column goes, of course. You can tell where the wide column goes. You can tell where the 2x2 two two goes. Thanks again, Lisa Rocks, for getting me a stock DualShock 3 that doesn't have the, you know, has the, the, the neutral zone in the center of the D-pad so I can move around well, I say, as I waste waste tiles and go too far along the one side. Of, okay, now this one's cool. This one's uh, has a big 3x3, three three, and you think, oh, I'll just put that in there and make a bridge right away. But uh, no, it's not quite that simple. You actually have to grab that one last. Because see the, see those? That's two 2x1s. Uh, two now we have to be able to get to, we have to be able to access each of them. So that's why that one has to go last. Because if you just make a, a skinny bridge, then you can't touch the, the ones on either side. You can only activate, you can only uh, interact with the middle one. And that's not going to work. And it takes a surprising amount of work to set all this up. Because we need this out of the way as well. And this thing primed so we can, no wait, we don't need that thing primed. Wasted movement again. I'm so sorry, Day. We're not getting sub eight at RPG limit break. Mash through some text. This one's really short, thankfully. Uh, just gonna set up like that, and never mind. Doing a little too much. Oops. Okay, this one we just go straight to the right. This one's also nice and short. There's only one block in it, so it's more interaction with flippers. Just gotta get it down here towards uh, the gap we need to fill in. Don't have to go around. We can just go. Uh, do a little loop to get through that. Get stuck in a little thing. Stage 18 is also tiny. Um, oh, oops. Sorry, we just have to get some stuff out of the way. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. And then uh, I think I have to go like that. Just have to be able to go in a little loop. Just need to make a, a passage to shove that out of the way. This is the longest puzzle. There's a lot of holes to fill in. I, this is my favorite one, though. There's a lot of like tiny holes that need to be filled in, but you have to make sure you fill in the right ones. Uh, there's also a couple other repairs we have to make to this area in order to do stuff. Uh, we got to fill in that thing because we have to mess with this longo piece. Uh, I think I can do that. Yeah, I'll still have access to everything. Move that out of the way. Just got to grab this thing and interact with flippers. Oh, I guess we're going around. Sure. <laughs> As long as it's out of the way. I need this corner filled in. I need this thing primed. Uh, we'll go like this. Oh, that, huh. I never did it that way. That's a nice, efficient way to do it. Okay, one more block I have to grab. Move the slipper out of the way. Oops, wasted movement. Oh, my heart's just machine gunning right now. This is a truly a worthy boss fight for my leg of the relay. All right, here's the last stage. Beat it if you can. This one is really annoying because it's one of these like uh, like movement is kind of delicate and uh, hmm, yeah, no kidding. I think I'll move this up and then back down. It's just hard to get started, but once you once you get the first block out of the way, it's all fine. Uh, wait, I think I have to. S oh, right, right. I have to leave that there. I'm actually grabbing that one. Yeah, I have to get this thing out of the way. This, this level's taking too long. Oops. Okay, move it like that. There we go, we're getting one out finally. Uh, next one. Uh, I think I can come at it like this. The thing is to just get at it from the right so we can move through this little thingy. Uh, let's just move these down and grab that one next. It doesn't really matter which order I get them in, as long as I get them all. It's kind of annoying to do the little lap on that T-block. Uh, we'll get this one next. Uh, oh wait, I can go through the top to get it. 
One left. Um, I can still mess with that flipper. I'll move these out of the way. Like this. And we're almost done. Okay, 342, 33 is where I started. And, okay, 351 flat. Let's go. That's like an 827, right? Oh, <laughs> I tried my best. Yeah, like, like we said, that is not easy to even do it all, let alone as fast as Shiner just did it, so. There's a magic mirror off to the right, but we don't need it. No, that was super amazing to watch. Huge, huge thanks to everybody who donated so we could watch that Puzzle Boy uh, mini game incentive because that was, uh, wow, that was amazing. Thank you. That was fantastic. We got the nice reward. Uh, it'll make a, a couple other fights uh, fun. Like the fights where we would use Ankh, uh, we get to use Gage instead, which provides some nice extra bonus stats. Uh, I'm just about ready to hand, well, wait, hand the controller? More like Freedom is gonna plug in his turbo controller. Um, and then we'll, uh, oh, do I have Anathema on still? Yeah, okay. Yeah, actually, funny thing, uh, the very first thing Freedom's gonna do is uh, he fights a mini boss on, on the way to the next area. <laughs> so uh, we, yes. we end with the Puzzle Boy boss and then begin with a uh, optional mini boss worth 212 experience, which we'll be able to handle. You know, no one's going to get over leveled because of that or anything. Uh, the reward is a ruby, which will be cashed in much later. Yeah, after uh, one little... Uh, I'm going to talk to Fudomimi in Mifunashiro, which is kind of the very center of Asakusa here. Yeah, so Mifunashiro so is the uh, basically the birthplace of uh, of the mannequins. It's where they kind of climbed out of the, uh, the out of river. the mud. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Fidomimi is gonna say, even though you're my bro and you saved me, I cannot allow you to enter our holy land any further. Now I'm going to go in here and meditate. Also, watch out for that renegade mannequin Sakahagi. He's uh, not to be trusted. He's a bit of a murderer. So with our two cutscene triggers out of the way, we go back to the Asakusa terminal and Hijiri will have the new scoop for us. He'll have the, the lore update. Uh, and then it'll be my turn to uh, slither away for a bio break and then I'll be back to do uh, what Freedom's been doing for me. Uh, just checking for like a... There we go. Full null mind and... This be a good time for a donation? Mind. Yes. Since we'll just be we'll be swapping here while uh, he, well Hijiri's kind of giving us yeah the, as uh, soon as he says a uh, picture's worth a thousand words so why don't I just show you and then we'll be racing down the tunnel into the Amala network I'll leave the controller on the table here in case you have to turn it off or whatever sorcery is needed for a PlayStation Three yeah I'll need to do that so here take a look all right I'll be right back so I'll just be shutting all off right that we'll controller. Champion Beef sent in $50 and said, Mothman, 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 Mothman. That was all the Mothmans. <laughs> well, thank you very, very much for that donation. I'm just going to check here really quick. And it did go to the Fuse Mothman incentive, which is now sitting at $595.10 out of the $750 that we need to unlock that Mothman fusion. And with that, I do believe that that is the end of my time hosting, actually. It has been an absolute pleasure. Don't worry, though, y'all. I am leaving you in the extremely capable hands of Catling Gun, and I will be back again tomorrow night around the same bat time <laughs> to host for the Final Fantasy III 3D remake. I'm looking forward to that very much. And of course, there's still plenty of time left in this run. Don't go anywhere. Thank you very much for the for the awesome hosting job, Sporadic. Really appreciate it. So so here we're going to be stopping in. Uh, this is Rags. He has a jewelry store where we can trade the gems we've been picking up for items that are very helpful. So here we're going to be picking up. All right, let me get that. Let me get the Flamus first. So here we're going to be grabbing the Elemental Flamus. Uh, in some routes, you would use him to learn Makakaja. We don't really need that in this case. I'm going to be grabbing a Smoke Ball for the free run. How many can we grab? I can grab. One, which is fine. Uh, I'm also going to be grabbing these chakra pots. There we go. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So just grabbing some items from him. Uh, basically, the cutscene we had there with uh, with Ujiri, he was just telling us that he's located where the nightmare system is being activated from. It's being activated from an obelisk that we can access through the back door of the assembly of Nihilo. 
So we're going to be making our way over there right now. We're, we're going to be doing some walking. I'm also going to take a detour to pick up a Soma Droplet since our, uh, since our healing item count, or specifically our MP healing item count, is pretty low. I'm going to be making this a detour over here. Let me double check Archangel is... Yes, okay. I'm going to be just running over here. So... There's a Soma Droplet over here. Again, restores a good bit of uh, HP and MP. And your repel wore off. Just over here. And then we're gonna we're gonna make a little trek over here. We uh, When we made our way to the warehouse before, there was this on-ramp that we could take. And actually, you can use it as a little bit of a peninsula of power uh, for people that have played like the original Final Fantasy games to, uh, to grind on some higher level enemies. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, there's a lot of divine enemies that like using Hama skills, and it can be kind of obnoxious to use them for grinding in an actual run, especially since the walk over here takes a while, and with how limited your resources are early on, it doesn't work out very well in a speedrun for grinding. But here we're just gonna cross over the Rainbow Bridge and lose my repel again because, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm back, I'm hydrated, my oil's changed, I'm ready to enjoy listening to the sound of my own voice and doing all the commentary and explanations while Freedom does the hard work of concentrating on what to do. All right, so as soon as I get off this on-ramp, the encounter rates, or the encounters yeah, are gonna change, go. so I'm gonna run around on, the, uh, on that on-ramp there to cancel an encounter before I go over here. And we're gonna fight this uh, optional fight here. I'm gonna swap my Magatama over to a Null Mind Magatama. And we are going to fight this random succubus here because she drops a ruby. And that's why I wanted full Null Mind. Uh, something kind of spooky about succubus is, and we'll run into this later, she'll be an enemy that uh, we encounter through the next dungeon, uh, is that she likes to use Dormina to try to put the party to sleep. And then she will follow that up with uh, an ability called Eternal Rest. Uh, is what it's called in this game, nice where uh, any character that is currently asleep will be immediately killed, which is not uh, something we want to be seeing. So, Iomante for that fight, just so we don't get murderinated, is very nice. And conveniently, it's what we want while walking through uh, the secondary path through the Assembly of Nilo's headquarters. So, fun fact, after you beat Ose, uh, the Assembly of Nilo's base closes down. You can't go in through the front door anymore. So, if you wanted to go back and recruit Copa, uh, too bad, you can't. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you can find Copa in any random encounters anywhere. Yeah, most of the Nihilo enemies either move here or get moved somewhere else in the world map. Copa is the only exception of just like, well, uh, sorry about your bad luck. But uh, uh, I don't think you can find Fornius either. Fornius starts with Rebar oh, yeah. too, but you could also go to the Labyrinth and buy the, the Pizza Princess. Yeah. Pizza Chan. All right, don't need to re-up the <laughs> repel here. So uh, we're going we're gonna to make a little bit of a, of a stroll here through an area with no encounters. Uh, so this room is a room I lovingly refer to as the Final Fantasy 13 room. Yeah, it's, it's, a, a, it's uh, a big hallway. It's a 40-second uh, long straight hallway. So uh, still in a dream. Stake it up. So yeah, we're uh, <laughs> making our way through uh, love and life. Sorry, Jens, did I hear you say hallway? You did, in fact. Wonderful. Mind if I take the helm for a little bit? Absolutely. Our new host has arrived. I have arrived. Hi, everyone. Catling Gun here to bring you the donations. I literally begged to host this run, so it just goes to show, does not pay to be dignified. And I have a question for you. Are you ready? I uh, am ready. I am ready. <laughs> we'll, we'll hear that again in yeah. Yogi Park, maybe. Yeah. Are you ready? Let's just... Oh. Well, we were ready for that, at least. Oh, yeah, I never Absolutely. explained. I, I, I keep turning auto on during the enemy turn because it actually trims a few frames in between their actions. Uh, just, I don't know how many or is, right? It was like 500. Uh, yeah, yeah, you I'm can handle gonna, winning. I'm just going to crowns on him. Yeah, crowns on... Frothry costs 25 MP, which is a fair bit. But we still have um, Makatora on Karasu, so... If Karonzo never runs out, we can just borrow some from Karasu. All right, so this is the like the most important terminal in the entire game to grab. <laughs> True. Uh, so the dungeon we're about to go into, Obelisk, doesn't actually have a unique large terminal of its own for reasons we'll get into or we'll see later. Uh, and because of that, uh, all of the Obelisk terminals warp back to this terminal here at Maranochi. Uh, one Obelisk is probably the longest dungeon in the game that isn't the final dungeon. 
So uh, once we get to the top of Obelisk and beat the boss, we're going to need to use a small terminal to warp out. And so if we forget to grab that terminal, it means we're in for a bit of a walk, which we would not want to have happen. I'm going to just uh, honk. Yeah, we got Geesh. Uh, Principality can show up here as well and use Hamaon, which is a expel instant kill move with a higher chance of success. Oh, don't bother with Repel. It doesn't do anything here. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, the, the encounters are like, uh, yeah, Bob Kaha is level 20, 23 or 28. Like, even though we're level 26, that's not enough to repel by the Kaha. Uh, yeah, Power is level 33. This guy can use uh, Guillotine and Berserk. He hits pretty hard. Oh, and there's our Battle Raven. Battle Raven. Get your RPG jerk birds in chat. Oh, oh what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the advice that we mashed through. Very valuable intel. I'm sure it will. Uh, I will keep it in my uh, my heart wow. and mind forever. That's the wrong button. And now we will soon feel the touch of the icy hand of Obelisk. Yeah. So this is Obelisk, uh, lovingly referred to uh, in some circles as Obelisk the Tormentor. Uh, it's actually in this run pretty pretty fine. It's a uh, it's a nice comfy stroll. Uh, oh, switch to Wadatsumi. Oh, thank you. In the uh, oh good because of this guy. Yep. He might open with Mabufula. Uh, we haven't got any weak to ice, but... Yeah. Oh, right, he's going last. He's the slowest. Okay, it didn't even matter then. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. would only matter if there's more than one. Or alone. I think alone or Ahabaki can use Dragon Eye as well. Yeah, so in the uh, in the hard mode run of this game, this is probably, like, the scariest uh, stretch of... Uh, one of the scariest stretches of the, the entire run. Yeah, this is... But since we can run from encounters and I'm good on EXP, we can just kind of get away from everything. Yeah, the encounters here are much tougher. The experience is big, but uh, on normal, we're uh, like in hard, we'd be level 28 or maybe even 29 or 30, kind of depending on the route. But um, yeah, normal. Uh, oh, lovely. Oh, another full o'clock encounter. All right. Well. We could talk. No, wait, we can't talk away the crosses because no, it's, it's full, full o'clock. Uh, oh, Jesus. Yeah, the smoke ball is faster than summoning Corona Zone. If you see it coming, like if you see you're about to get an encounter on full, it's faster to summon Corona Zone in the menu first. Goodness. Speaking of. Yeah. We don't have to worry about our MP costs either because there's actually a fountain of life uh, more than halfway up Obelisk. So we'll be able to use Karasu's Nakatoro to recharge Corona Zone and then uh, have that ready. There's a. And yeah, Obelisk, like I said, has a lot of very different varying encounters throughout every floor yeah um, it, throughout this game it's usually pretty common to like each dungeon tends to favor one specific attribute of things or like one or two attributes uh this dungeon is rather unique in the fact that uh throughout obelisk you can be subjected to every single form of damage possible except for expel yeah, so got... that can be a little uh, that can be a little hard to manage as far as uh, coverage for elements so we, we try to do our best. We have Mikami here for fire and mind. <laughs> Karasu is weak to curse. Uh, we have MC for uh, for protection from from ice. Ice right now. Uh, we don't really see a lek much at this point in the dungeon. I'm just gonna leave him muted. Uh, uh, we don't. We might have to cure that though if another encounter at full is coming up. We forgot to use Makatoro on Karonzo. Oh, uh, true. We can leave him muted, though, because he can't get muted again. Yeah. We're okay. carrying plenty of dismutes. I think I grabbed the extra one in Nilo as well. Ah, uh, you did, yes. Because you had to use the... Four should uh, be more one. than enough for the entire game. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Freedom's uh, mashing through text faster than I can with the turbo controller. Yeah, so <laughs> the runs of this game allow for turbo, which is really nice. Uh, I tend to have yeah, risk problems, so have, being able to just hold a button to mash their text quickly is really nice. I don't think the leaderboard even has like a checkbox for turbo. I don't think it makes enough of a difference. Uh, no, it's just a lot by default since we uh, tend to have a lot of crossover with the uh, with the Japanese speedrunning community, and they just kind of always allow for turbo. We just figured at some point early on that we were just we just allowed if people wanted to use it. Yeah, like this. I liked how, how you mash text in this game, and I have no problem with it. I can do it all day. So I, I'm fine with sharing a leaderboard with Turbo. Uh, so friendly reminder, when I mentioned before that most areas in the game have the exact same encounter rate, Obelisk is no exception. It it does have the same encounter formula as everywhere else in the game. Believe it or not, from what you're seeing right now. It uh, just feels like you're in trouble all the time. Yeah, I'm going to hit the save because of how this has been going so far. And also it helps me reset aggro because I just hit yellow or hit orange there. So. There we go. There we go. Obelisk B. There's 
There's five terminals in here. There's one on the ground floor for some reason. Yeah. But uh, yeah, saving it each one is probably worth. Maybe even on normal mode. Yeah, we'll be ta we'll be tagging uh, B, D, and E. We'll be skipping C because it's not it's a little really out of the way. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, it happened. Oh, we don't have the smoke ball either. <sighs> Corona Zone's not ready. I would just tornado these guys. Yeah. Use good Rakunda or oh yeah, we can mob food to hit their weakness too. You know, what? I'm just gonna risk it. Never punish. <laughs> yeah, Barath can appear here. The boss that I had to fight twice in Nilo HQ. Um, yeah, the sacred water that will. Probably won't need it, but uh, the more important thing to grab is the Dekaja Rock that's straight ahead. Yes. This is a, a backup strat for a later boss that I uh, developed. And we only have two attack mirrors, so I might need it. Oh, yeah, you did the shopping for uh, at, uh, rags already. I, yep. I think we only got one opal. Uh, I don't think we got any bonus turquoises either. I know there was a bonus onyx, but it doesn't matter with no, uh, no extra opal. And the extra attack mirror doesn't really get us anything. Hey guys, do you have a minute to talk about our Lord and Savior Mothman? Absolutely, we sure always do. have time to talk about Mothman. I'm just going to refresh the tracker just a little bit because we do have a donation incentive going on to fuse Mothman for the final battle. And right now we are at 620 out of 750. So we are so close to seeing our adorable little friend. I would love it if you could help us make it possible. Speaking of people helping us make it possible, we have $25 from Oreo Snow that just says Mothman. And we have $50 from the legend Sporadic Erratic. All I have to say is Mothman, 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 Mothman. And then an adorable winky face. Mothman. Mothman. So something that I, sh I should mention, because it's come up once, and we'll see it throughout Obelisk, and then we can go back to uh, back to donations and other uh, other spiels, is that the the mechanic for this area is that we have these little light puzzles that basically work with the cycles of Kagatsuchi. Uh, whenever we we touch one of the light orbs, it'll reset our cycle back to new, and then we'll be stepping on these panels that each correspond to a number of uh, number of cycles that will pass, and you see the the large blocks that are placed in our way so for example we'll step on this one and it'll go to one eighth and we want to get to that top one that has eight so which corresponds to full so one we plus step three plus on four, this and we're through and eight and we solve the puzzle and that's that's like the big thing through obelisk it's a pretty simple puzzle but it's really cool the uh the one problem with this puzzle that uh makes it a little bit of an issue for <laughs> for encounters is okay so i'm gonna get rid of this now yeah let's get our corona zone ready to run uh, so the issue we run into is a lot of these puzzles have the solution be full, uh, be it full Kagatsuchi. And so because of that, we end up in a lot of these situations. Okay, we're good. We end up in a lot of these situations where, uh, where we get encounters on full because we're on full for a lot longer than we're on anything else. And so it's something I have to... Yeah. Keep track of every time I solve all one the of these puzzle puzzles. solutions. All the puzzle solutions. When we're trying to get through here as fast as possible, and all the puzzle solutions are set for full o'clock. Yeah, they're either at full or one of the uh, increasing or decreasing half, but most of them are, are full. So there's a uh, optional 8,000 Maka cube to the right that we could maybe get. Yeah, I'm gonna get it. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, we should because we're fusing Mothman. Yeah. So we'll have a higher budget at the end. Yeah, since uh, since that eight that really Ooh, wow, those three steps. Since that eight thousand will uh, will fund one of the two flamuses that we need. So the nice thing about our MC having huge magic stat, uh, if you go to the skill menu, it all goes to uh, Kalas right away, and the only skill Kalas can use outside of battle is Media. So you just kind of. I think you could probably turbo X and just heal your whole party instantly. Uh, I do have to press down once to, to get to the skill menu, but yes, I yeah, just, exactly. from there, turbo X. Always Montan. <laughs> Always Montan. Yeah, so the solution is the solution's the same either way. It's kind of like middle, corner, end, corner, end. It doesn't matter if you're going right or left. That's the solution to get through here. Yeah, the, the encounters in Obelisk are, are quite varied. We're past all the Elagors, which will just always use Rakukaja while they're at full HP. Uh, Arahabaki can still appear and hit everyone with ice with Mabufala. Uh, Baphomet will almost always just use Makakaja. It won't start using Miragion until turn three, usually. So we'll usually be out of there by just running away on turn one. Uh, 
I, I think Succubus can appear in this room, which again, we'll use uh, Dormina to try to put everyone to sleep. Uh, Succubus can appear throughout the entire obelisk, I'm pretty sure. Okay. It just I'm, feels like because when things are added, it's contracted. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, because it'll be full o'clock when we come through here. So yeah, uh, we have Mikami and Unicorn for Null Mind. Uh, Succubus can also use Sexy Gaze, which is a mind skill that hits a single target. Um, I'm an advocate of using Corone Zone and Flamus in kind of these middle floors where Barith can show up and use the random targeting Hellfire skill that we saw in my Barith rematch. Uh, we'll have Absorb Fire on Flamus, Absorb Fire on Corone Zone, and Null Mind on Mikami. Or sorry, yeah, well, Mikami does have Void Mind as a passive skill that we learned uh, as its first level up. But Mikami has uh, Null Fire and Repel Expel with no weaknesses. Um, uh, uh, Flamus I is mean, weak I... to ice, but I think Flamus will just always survive because uh, it's normal mode. And I think we still have Wadatsumi on MC just for that uh, yes. ice coverage. I'll have Wadatsumi on until we hit floor 97. Yeah, 97 is where the, the encounter groups change yet again, and they change drastically. Um, maybe I'll talk about... I guess we have time to talk about them here. So before we do, something worth noting that's very unique about Obelisk is it's one of two dungeons in the game that's actually so long that the devs kind of took mercy on us and actually put a Cathedral of Shadows midway through the dungeon, which works out for us because the money that we just picked up is going to help uh, help fund our uh, our fusion route here. Yeah, I spent our money making Earth this early, so... But luckily, there's the 10,000 cube outside and the optional 8,000 cube uh, on the previous room. So we can use the Cathedral of Shadows here to fuse two more things that we need. All right, and so we'll be doing a couple of fusions here. Unfortunately, our I need to move some cycles. Yeah, Un fusion accident, higher chance of one in 16 during full o'clock. Unfortunately, our good friend Bob the Blob is about to be uh, about to be fused away. So he has served us well, oh. but. There's actually two recipes that can make Taraka here. I like doing Asora and Shikigami to pass Beseech, which will save like four seconds on a level up. But the other option is uh, involves Blob. You have to try to pass. Rakunda. Yeah, so I'm gonna pass Rakunda. It's it makes one of the uh, one of the fights later on uh, safer, and we can also actually kill the fight a turn early if we get lucky. Of course, that means I have. Oh, whoops. Ah, we're still in the fusion boss. Yeah, it un unfortunately, it can be kind of easy sometimes if you're like just trying to get if you're trying to mash through the uh, through the fusion menu very quickly while like lancing for skills to uh, accidentally muscle memory out of the menu when you get the right skills. Uh, thankfully, Raccoon is not that high level of a skill, so it wasn't too bad there. Uh, there's uh, definitely higher level fusions that you do in some other routes that can uh, lose you a lot of time. We need Kaja. We need Kaja, Thank you. It's possible if Lilim gets overleveled, you can fuse a blob with three skills, and I usually get Tsukukaja, Rakunda, and Dark Might. And Dark Might on Raiju is actually relevant for just a single fight. All right. Or maybe we could use Raiju versus Ashi, it'll make it relevant for two fights. All right, so here we have our Thunder Pupper here, Raiju. He uh, drains a lek, which is really good. Yeah, technically not needed for Obelisk, but uh, provides a nice measure of defense uh, for the next section. Yeah, once we uh, once we hit floor 97, like we mentioned, the encounters are going to change. We're going to start being able to encounter Phantom. Uh, Phantom has access to Mazeodyne, which uh, can be rather scary. So right. having it's Mazionga and Zeodyne, uh, but right. Yeah, so having someone in our party who can actually just drain a like and end the turn immediately will be very very nice. Yeah, and then Raiju will be needed in the next boss fight just to soak up uh, the massive experience points from it. Uh, Raiju does have a long role to play in the run. Uh, Raiju starts with Zionga, just like Minakata had, but the last skill that Raiju learns is Elec Boost, and we've seen how good the, the passive magic boosts are, an extra 50% damage on, on that type of element. Uh, there's a boss later in the run that can only be damaged with Elec. Uh, the only other viable strat is to go with uh, Tarukaja and Kamikaze, you know, go with the Captain Yeehaw strats. Um, those are the only two things that can damage Moat. Oh, something else worth noting. If anyone wants to snipe the uh, the bid for the ending, that's coming up pretty soon. We're going to be closing that as soon as oh, I yeah, beat the yeah. next boss. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess it, or I guess it could be at Spectre 2. I, I kept saying it was after Obelisk, but uh, I realize now it would actually be the boss after. Yeah. Where we talk to hashtag null and then talk to Hikawa right after. Oh, what do you want, Phantom? Bead? Oh, we do have bead. Oh, well, he can leave. 
Speaking of the ending donation incentive, right now Shijima is in the lead with $132.21. Musubi is pulling up the rear with $77.50. So if you hate the horrible hair, man, donate. Get, make your voice heard. If you like the kid in the hat, this is your chance. If you like Yosuga better and have donated to express this, tell me in a donation, I will happily read it to support our Queen Chiaki. <laughs> yeah. Okay, of the reason endings, I prefer Yosuga as well, but it is just unfortunately uh, so much slower than... Uh, yeah, we did not set up the, the infrastructure two. for it, having to fight our... Yeah, you don't... Well, you skip Thor too, but... No, Thor... you, you have to fight Thor too. Oh, you do? Yeah, the only, <laughs> the only fight you skip is technically fighting Fudamimi instead of the Seraphs. I see. Yeah, I guess we oh, gotta go fast. How would we do that on normal? Ugh. Ugh. It would be it'd be similar to the A seal situation where you just kind of sit there and be sad. Except I guess tornado would do pretty good damage, but it would it would tax our budget more. We'd have to buy like ten more chakra drops. Yeah. Alright. And yeah, so for this other thing the other things that can appear in this section of obelisk are uh Onkot, my favorite little monkey. Uh, who can use Brutal Slash, but we're on normal mode, so that's like having Kamado ingested automatically, taking half damage compared to what I would expect to see. Uh, so I, I like having Anathema on MC, which can... We've seen Pazuzu a bunch of times. I mean, we've never hovered the cursor over... Uh, Pazuzu is that big lion guy with the with the hairy chest. Uh, Pazuzu can use Hell Gaze, which is... Uh, it's the, I think it's the most accurate or like highest success rate instant kill uh, death type spell in the game. Yep. So, you know, doesn't matter if it's normal or hard, that's equally likely to kill MC. So I would rather uh, patch that up. Or you oh. could just punch me in the face. That also works. All right, this is the last room of Obelisk. All right, rem uh, we're gonna watch MC's MP here. Yep. We should be healing with the Unicorn or just with our items. Uh, but there, we did get two chakra drops in the early floors and the soma droplet across Tsukishima Bridge uh, while Freedom was outside. And there's another soma droplet in this room itself. And combined with Karasu's Makatora to set up MP, we should be able to get through this this gauntlet here, where the, those three those three sisters that taunted us uh, when we first came in are going to present us with a, an intellectually stimulating uh, Kagetsuchi phase puzzle and uh, a riddle. They're, they are indeed the Moirai sisters from Greek mythology who weave the thread of fate, and in order to solve their puzzle, you have to defeat them in order from youngest to oldest. And that will also give us a preview of uh, their, their fighting strategy. Monkey. Yeah. Farewell, monkey. Oh yeah, I, was, uh, I should have asked, did you buy a Bomb of Rising in Ginza? I did not. Okay, good, because uh, we'll be able to spend those pearls on uh, getting another Flamus later on to uh, save some money w if we can fuse Mothman at the end. Okay, so uh, you just right. go hard, Freedom. I'll talk about uh, the boss gauntlet here and uh, their puzzle. So first we're going to fight uh, Clotho by going to the right, uh, adding one plus three. Uh, Mikami should be matters, first with eight but... agility. Yeah, uh, Yeah. we want Archangel and Unicorn, and we need Null Expel. Clotho can attack with Bahama, uh, a group expel attack. Very low rate of success, but... We just, we're just going to cover up that possibility and not worry about any instant kills. Our our MC is immune to expel, and so are all three of our demons, which uh, have been useful throughout the run, right? We have the Archangel with Rakunda, we have the Unicorn with Makakaja, we have the Mikami with Dog Breath. To, uh, yeah, for some reason, these solo sisters are the level that they would be at if you fused them, which is in the, the high 60s or something. And as we were, you know, like we saw with uh, Minakata trying to land a hit on Eligor, um, it's the only person who can land a hit is uh, Kalas, pretty much, with uh, that really high magic stat. And we even need Mikami's Fog Breath to help with that. Now, we can get in two more Tornadoes here. Uh, these Solo Sisters, the first two anyway, just only have 2,000 HP, and then they'll run away after taking that much damage. So we get that 2-4-2-4 two, four, two, four turn order. Just uh, Archangel in the middle, adding more Rakunda for more damage. Uh, I believe Rakunda is more potent than Makakaja, actually. Uh, I think that would do it. Oh no, it's like 500. I think you just win with auto. Oh, not with that Diorama. No, it's Maybe fine. one more Tornado. Yeah, just one more Rakunda. One more Rakunda, one more Tornado, and then I'll punch her. Yeah. Oh. There we go, especially with that double. <laughs> that was overkill. Maybe we should have just gone Fire Breath. <laughs> not to worry, we have recovery items to, to patch this up. More Tornado than planned, but 
Uh, we can use a Soma Droplet for a nice... It's a, more potent than a Chakra Drop, and Archangel will just get unsummoned. I think we'll use Unicorn true. instead. Unicorn's got more MP left. Yep. And, and we can go with Flamus next for uh, because of the Moon Puzzle. Uh, it will force uh, full o'clock, which means we can take advantage of the Bright Might that our stock Flamus starts with. It's like you expect. It's the opposite of Dark Might. Your basic attacks are a guaranteed critical hit during full o'clock. So next we're going to fight Lachesis, who is the support of the Three Sisters. Uh, she likes using uh, uh, buff spells and debuff spells, and also Tetrakarn and Makarakarn. Also very important. And also... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She sounds like she's smoking a pack a day in HD. Okay, so uh, Unicorn and Archangel should be tied at 7 agility, so you kind of uh, summon whoever went third versus uh, Clotho for this part. Warcry. Yeah. And Rakunda with Mikami. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's enough backseating for me. Yeah, Alexis um, also likes to attack. On hard mode, she's uh, especially dangerous. Oh, there's Makarakarn. Watch out for that. That will indeed reflect Tornado for the full damage on MC because we don't have Heath and me, Magatama, to be immune to force. It's a mark of a true Nocturne runner if you've uh, crashed into Makarakarn with Tornado at least once. Yep. <laughs> indeed. Not much else we can do. Probably just attack. We yeah. don't really have the MP resources to try to like, war cry. Uh, I don't think there's a useful item we could use either. I got rid of Focus a long time ago. Well, MC would have to get two turns to take advantage of Focus anyway. So again, we're just, we have our, our buff demon in the middle. Uh, Flamus gets free hits as long as there's no Tetrakarn. Oh, nice dubs. I think we're gonna win next turn. Uh, if this double I think hits, that's nice out. win. Oh, true. Oh, that might be fine anyway. No. Nice. I guess we just, I, don't, I wasn't counting damage. I think with Flamus' Bright Might. I think we're fine. Yeah, with, oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, with oh, passing, oh, oh, oh. you can get two crits in. It's hard to make the demon who goes third go twice, even with Bright Might. You can think of Bright Might as like passing, but with free damage. Uh, so now we get yeah, exactly hey. enough. Yeah, we can use Karasu's Makatora to set up MP here. We just need, uh, exactly. I wrote down the Yeah, announce. he has enough. He's 72 on Mikami. That's all yep. I know right now. And uh, our demons are just uh, conveniently the ones that are three syllables long. Makami, Taraka, Karasu. <laughs> ones that can be spelled easily with Katakana. And our solution here is a uh, one plus two plus one to go down to falling half to make the oldest sister, Atropos, appear. Atropos is the black mage of the sisters. She exclusively uses a uh, tier two attack magic all the time. And she, uh, yeah, solo version is 3000 HP. Where uh, we don't have all our elements covered here. Taraka is weak to ice and we didn't bother switching to Miasma for Null Ice on MC, even though it's plus five magic. We're just greedy. Just gonna save time by not menuing, get that plus eight magic from Anathema. We're just gonna use Fog Breath twice. If someone dodges, that's like covering all the elements anyway. And it's normal mode. We don't have to respect Atropos' damage. Thanks to the free damage, Bay 99 reflected off our Repel Force Karasu. Karasu's gonna contribute some Makakaja here to set up big damage. Uh, Mikami heals just in case damage does get in. Uh, now we're using Taunt. Uh, it does lower the enemy's defense two stages, so now Atropos is on minimum defense, and it's a, it gives her two stacks of Tarukaja. So that only raises her physical attack, but she never ever physical attacks, so really we're just hitting her with Super Rakunda that costs 20 MP instead of 24. Or doing, it's like doing two Rakundas in a single press turn. Uh, again, I wasn't looking at all the damage. I didn't get any double hits. So okay. I need to do this that. should be enough with the attacks yeah. from Akami. Uh, I would just go use one of those chakra pots on MC. Yep. Or maybe maybe just use both on. Yeah, I'll just use both yeah. on them. That way. You just got to use Makatora once on Taraka. There's no other planned use for the chakra pots in the route. We got one of them. Uh, we got yeah. You can buy them for two sapphires at Rags Jewelry. We got one from uh, Troll's Room. Uh, several hours ago, and we got one from Big Mizuchi's room, so that's one guaranteed chakra pot. We got a sapphire as a gift, and I, I'm Shout not sure... to this room on the PS3 version. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't chug like this on PS2. I don't know why. There's a lot of particle effects in this room, and the PS3 hates particle effects with the Nocturne engine. I see. Spin, measure, and snip your fate! So yeah, now they're gonna fight us together. And we have exactly what we need. We're just gonna use the same comp. Uh, we're gonna stick with Anathema so that MC learns Mana Drain for winning. Uh, just gonna use Fog Breath to make sure that uh, Afterpost never gets an extra turn by hitting uh, Ice. 
Nice. And we're going to Tornado here because if we don't, then uh, Clotho can use Marin Garin, which would not be good. Yeah, that would be a bit of a disaster if someone got Charm because there's no way to cure Charm except the item Discharm, and we have zero of those. Ah, uh, thanks again, Atropos. Atropos uh, helping us out. Yep, so now Mikami can heal us. This rocket does the second taunt, and MC keeps going in with Tornado so long as there's no Makara Karn. Which there is not. She is Makakaja. Yeah, so we got two Makakajas, and they're on minimum defense. One of them could die on turn two if uh, there's a double hit on one of them. Oh, here's yeah. Makara Karn. All right, yeah. I, guess, I guess we use Heat Wave or War Cry instead. Still need two more Makakajas from Karasu. That and then I'll just work right. Yeah, unless <laughs> what are the chances Atropos uses uh, Mazanma a third time? Like the War Cry will make her reflect less damage, but I don't think a hundred matters when we're hitting Tornado for about a thousand. Yeah. Yep, there it is. Ah! All right, hitting. Oh wow, hitting Taraka's weakness for an extra Meteorama, undoing a quarter of a Tornado of damage. That's fine. We Unfortunately, we are about to win with the power of Fire Breath. Spicy Doggo, get them! And there, there's a feature in this game called Auto Memory, which uh, we might turn on later. Uh, it, it works the same way as in Digital Devil Saga, where, where when you press triangle to go auto, instead of the Persona wall-up button where everyone just does a normal attack, uh, they will there repeat we whatever action they did last. And that uh, can save a little bit of time. Just go all magic. We yep. got our vid already. All right, Mana Drain Fire Breath. Yep. So now with that humongous magic stat. Oh, yeah, we don't let Anathema shake. Yeah, so Anathema is one of the Magatamas that uh, is dark affinity. So uh, it will uh, has the potential to All curse right. us. We did it. We made it to the top of Obelisk and saved Flutter. We <laughs> saved our teacher, Ms. Flutter. Onizuka Flutter. Onizuka Flutter. See, so, yeah, here we find out that... Uh, that uh, our teacher wasn't necess was cooperating with Hikawa, but not necessarily uh, of her own free will. He's just been kind of using her as a as a double A battery to power the uh, to power the nightmare system. So we're gonna kind of release her from that. And uh, we have a nice cutscene break here. If we have uh, anything to plug from the host. You know, I was just thinking that all this talk about the threat of fates reminded me that rpg limit break is proud to once again partner with the yeti to bring you eight amazing t-shirts and a hoodie now available plus pins although i couldn't tie that to the game head over to the yeti.com rpglb take a look at the designs pick up the ones you want and know that five dollars from every t-shirt purchased will be donated to nami remember yeti is spelled y-e-t-e-e -E, the yeti.com rpglb I ordered some, and I can't wait. Let's see. We have got a $50 donation from Oreo Snow that says, We're so close. Come on, guys. For best boo, Mothman. Let's go, Mothman. Mothman. And we have another 65 from Oreo Snow that says, Would you like to talk about our Lord and Savior, Mothman? And I am pretty sure if I know how to do math, and I'll be the first to admit that I don't, we've just met the Mothman incentive, everybody. Oh, Let's go! Only halfway through, right. Mothman is already committed. Best Boy is going to be helping us in the final battle. I cannot wait. Excellent. There are still exciting donation incentives, though, especially if you really want to stick it to the hair man for what he did to Flutter. Yeah, we uh, we want to uh, make sure that instead of a world of uh, of severe widow's peak, that we have a world of hats to uh, to hide whatever our hair our hair may be. <laughs> yeah, and world cool work. shirts. So what happened here was uh, our teacher admitted that. Oh wow, I said I was going to be your strength, and instead you saved me. Well, thank you. I, I don't want to cooperate with Hikawa anymore. I want to get involved in creation now, but I I don't know what kind of reason I want. Well, luckily, while out here, I found out about an unknown god that not even Hikawa knows about. Surely she will give me the reason. And that's why that crazy uh, Rorschach pattern appeared on her face. And yeah, Aradia is the uh, name of the forgotten god. She kind of uh, ate our teacher's face. Uh, but right then she here. got better. Yep. Then she got better. But uh, they warped away. Uh, Aradia did give us two more demon slots, which is pretty neat. Big fan of, uh, of more demon slots. Doesn't really come into play here. But uh, in other uh, other categories, uh, every single demon slot you can have it definitely is a welcome. I'm gonna cap up my HP there. 
So, fun fact, after that cutscene plays and you're walking out here in, uh, out of Obelisk here, the game actually does... Nice guy, Shin. The game does actually change the encounter rate to... Uh, hey, money. Does actually change the encounter rate to the lowest possible value, which uh, is really funny because when we were doing our practice run the other night, I definitely got like a three-step encounter after that cutscene was over, so that was cool. That was um, a good deal on the lifestone there. You saw a while ago I vendored all our beads for 250 each, and that guy just bought... Oh, excuse me, one life stone for 300 Maka. And we never need these life stones. We have an, an, an epic healing machine on Kallus already. We're just one one down arrow and one turbo press away from fully healing our active team. Yeah, so now that uh, we're done Obelisk, we can just go straight back to Asakusa and not even leave the terminal room. Uh, we're going to get a lore update from Hijiri. Um, he's been doing some digging in the Amala network, and he's learned what we just learned about how... Uh, you know, demons are competing for Magatsuhi so they can bring a capital R reason into being. So in order to create a new world, you don't you not only need a lot of Magatsuhi, but you need um, a clear single vision that is like the basis of this new world. Uh, so Chiaki was kind of alluding to that a while ago with the reason of Yosuga, where, where the strong uh, compete and rule over everyone else. Uh, Hikawa alluded to the reason of Shijima when we fought Ose in the basement of Nilo HQ, but uh, didn't explain what the reason of Shijima is. Uh, and now, uh, Hijiri is like, hey, I met this guy named Hashtag Null. Do you know him? And you can answer, like, yes, no, maybe. It doesn't matter, but he says, uh, well, go talk to him. He's, he's living in the Amala network full time now, and he's kind of weird. So we're going to get another lore update in here. We didn't even need to stop to heal, though, because... Uh, we can heal for free in here, just like the first time we were in the Amala network. And as long as we have an Athema on MC, that's uh, the only thing we have to worry about, really. Uh, especially on normal mode. Uh, there is an encounter, uh, the Lords of Grammar, you could call them. Uh, there's some special demons in this game called Mitamas, which I'm sure I'll talk about soon enough. I'll probably have time while we're walking all the way to this boss. Uh, oh yeah, and Hijiri checks in, he's like, did you find hashtag null? And whether you say yes or no, he's like, well, get out of there, the terminal's, you know, the network's acting weird. And we, his signal breaks up. Yeah, so uh, on those lower floors, if we have a stoma on, we actually don't get any encounters. Yeah, uh, most of the encounters here are actually very low level, and it's really helpful to have a stoma this early. Uh, there is one route that I run for hard true demon ending that doesn't have it yet, so you just have to use a repulse bell if you've got one. Um, but yeah, the things that can show up is, yeah, the Lords of Grammar, the Mitamas, they look like uh, floating commas and apostrophes with faces on them. Uh, Saki Mitama can use Mazionga or Mazanma, uh, a group hitting Elek or Force spell. We've got Raiju with Absorb Elek and Karasu with Repel Force. Uh, it doesn't really matter, though, because uh, Saki Mitama goes last in that encounter group. Uh, the main thing to watch out for is Legion, which looks like uh, Karone Zone with handles, basically. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Legion can use Mamaduone and Hellgaze, those death-type uh, instant kills. So Raiju has Null Death and MC has Null Death, so we have nothing at all to worry about. Oh yeah, and Phantom can show up, so we definitely need uh, Raiju summoned for that. Uh, these mazes here, if you go the wrong way, then walls appear and you have to, you know, make your way out and start over. But we're speedrunners and clairvoyant. We know exactly where to go. We also do need this magic mirror. This is going to be needed uh, three and a half hours from now for the second last boss fight of the entire run. Uh, don't worry about it. There's also a second magic mirror if you go left, but we're definitely going to skip that. We're almost at the boss of this area. And guess what? It's going to be new o'clock. I told you this game has the best geometry ever. We, we had to fight the sisters at uh, Falling 3, right? Because we had to fight Atropos at Falling Half to complete the puzzle. Walk up their elevator and back, it's Falling 3. And then by the time you walk back through Obelisk and then all the way through Amala Network 2, it's New O'Clock. And uh, we have a Karasu with Dark Might, so instead of passing, we just get to get some free damage. Note that as soon as I kill this boss, we will need to close that incentive. The, uh, yeah, the ending war. incentive is locked in after this boss. This is your last chance to donation bomb Musubi. Snipe it. It is the faster category for speedrunning. But yeah, that means it's also the one for, we see more often. Balls. Oh, he's back. I was waiting. I finally found you. So Spectre is going to show up again and use Gathering and summon five friends. Lots of me, me, me. So Spectre had resist magic before. This time Spectre has no magic. Luckily... Karasu, well, started out as a Copa, and Copa just starts with Tarukaja. Didn't have to worry about passing that or anything. 
Um, we didn't get the Megiddo Rock as a rare pester reward. I didn't see that many elements. Uh, so it's kind of funny to go like, I learned new magic! I'm gonna get you with Megiddo this time! Oh, MP Gatari Knight. What's the happening? I got no power. This is also, by the way, that's probably the best case of comedic timing in this entire game. Just that, like, awkward silence after he tries using his Megiddo and nothing happened. And you're just like, uh, what? Yeah, Megiddo costs 30 MP and all these specters start with 29 MP. So your way to play around it is to just show up with zero MP on everyone. Or what we're going to do is uh, crank up our evasion to hopefully dodge the mana drains. Uh, Warcry will actually make their extremely powerful non-elemental Megiddo spell hit for only 40 damage. Alternatively, you could also mana drain away the uh, the specters, but we don't really need to do that here. In other in yeah. other categories, you would do that. Though, this is normal mode. We, we got to be more aggressive. We got our four Tarukajas up, so we'll be ready to start attacking pretty soon. Uh, we're gonna have to get lucky a little bit here. Uh, I think five has enough mana to do it. Oh wait, that's their last head. Okay, okay, Raiju lives. We're gonna heal on turn three, and of course, uh, Kalas is an epic wizard, and we'll just full heal our entire team. All oh, right, we can uh, Dark Might with Karasu. No big deal, though. We're gonna use Taunt with All Taraka. Right. Uh, it'll raise their physical attack back up to neutral by the time we get the second one in, but that's fine. Uh, they're it's still not that not that hurdy. And we got our Sukukaja maxed out, so hopefully we'll stop getting mana drained, or even if more Megidos happen, we'll get dodges to take away more turns. Okay, good stuff. Megido's gonna hit for only 40. Yeah, <laughs> just hit only Taraka, no big deal. Yeah. So yeah, Cross is gonna go around the, the Rosie here. Uh, just split the damage up here. The other thing about these Spectres is that when there's four left, they will use Dekunda, which only costs 10 MP, so they probably have enough to do it. Um, Oh, and one extra war cry just for less physical damage. Uh, so we're going to try to soften them all up equally, and then once we're fully set up, we'll just use Heat Wave to wipe them all out simultaneously. It'll be super easy thanks to Karasu's Dark Might giving us free damage. Normally Karasu would have to pass all of his turns. But uh, yeah, I, shout out to Freedom for making me re-roll for Zeo and getting Dark Might anyway. We got all three nice bonus skills we wanted. Or, well, Makakaja is ran, uh, mandatory, of course. We need our... We need this Karasu, who's our best magic attacker, to be able to raise his magic attack for the team. And yeah, here comes Heat Wave with that high crit rate. See if we get a bonus turn. Hey nice. Yo. And Karasu will light up our last press turn. Okay, one down. And two down. Okay, we got to take him out this turn, ideally, or just live with Dekunda. Okay, that's fine. Oh, and if you got to Let's go! Let's go! They spent too much! I have no power. <laughs> Got no power. All right, we get a ton of the XP for that, by the way. Oh yeah, twelve thousand. Your party fully recovered. Thank yes. you, Geish. Thanks to the donators who got us Puzzle Boy. Right. Uh, uh, give uh, over Wing Buffet. Yeah, we don't need Wing Buffet. Definitely don't need Connection. Yeah, we're done recruiting. Connection's a passive that uh, increases your recruit chance. Uh, if you're talking to this a demon of the same family. So if we were trying to Light recruit blow. another Yoma, if we're you know trying to. Uh, Go on a casting call for an episode of Sailor Moon. Ooh, an extra pearl. Nice. Cool. So that's another Flamus in the bank. Um, and that'll... Or we could get a... Bomb All right, what ending are we getting, by the way? Yeah, That needs to it. be closed now. Yep. And despite a valiant effort from Masubi, we are going with the Shijima ending. All right. Shijima So it is. we are... We are supporting Hikawa and his vision. We will be killing the whale. Semi, all right? Yeah, we do we do get Sammy. So that that is a benefit. Well, we don't use Sammy at all, but we we get to have Sammy uh, in our party. We theoretically could, cute. but we we can't afford it. Yeah. Uh the <laughs> There is a I mean, this is a good tip for casual players too, I guess. Samile starts with Prominence, the strongest fire spell, and you combine that with a uh, Nigi Mitama to add fire boost. Uh, you combine Samile with Pixie to fuse Kaiwan, who starts with 19 magic. So give Kaiwan a magic incense for 20 magic. Uh, Kaiwan's level 47. We'd be high enough level to go with that, but we don't need Kaiwan. We, we're going to have Kurama Tengu. We're going to huff and puff and blow away all the end game bosses with our wind magic. All right. So here, I Isamu has been spending a little bit, a uh, little bit of time in the Amala network, and he, he doesn't he have was, his shoes anymore. He was, he was really tired of all of the, all the lady demons uh, checking him out and telling them, "Excuse me, my face is up here." So he put faces all over his body. Uh, you know, as one does. Looks like, looks like someone could stand to go to the yeti.com slash rpglb. All right. I so, so, so dudes, like, don't you think everyone should have their own world? And we're like, no, dude. And he's like, oh well. 
Yeah. Oops. And then he leaves. Yeah, so now a third reason has entered the race for creation here. Isamu p shows us uh, the reason of Musubi. I really like what he says here. He says, like, when you're, you know, when you're out there, nobody cares about you, and I don't care about them either. But that's not bad or sad. Everyone should just be able to make their own world. So, yeah, that's the... Musubi, I guess, could be considered the more neutral reason compared to the other two. But, uh, you know, if you want to see how that ending goes, uh, just watch Freedom's PB or mine. Everyone's Watch Shiner's gone. PB. My PB is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, some jerk named Shiner CCC took world record with a 707.46. And last time I ran to practice this, I had a little bit of green in my splits. There's been a fair bit of development in this route, so it might be possible to lower that to 705 or lower. I would very much like to try. So yeah, we made it through Amala Network the second time, and Hijiri's like, oh, uh, don't worry about Asamu, I'll go after him. Um, but in the meantime, uh, you know, there's more... Oh, I don't need to do this. We already have yeah. Earthus. We already have Earthus leveled up. Um, yeah, so the mannequins are still working to renovate Asakusa so they can live there. Uh, uh, but Hijiri is trying to tell us, uh, actually, there's some cutscene triggers you have to hit once again. Yeah, so you know how earlier in the run I mentioned the fact that this game is actually really, really good about plot flags being not, like, you can you generally go where you need to go and don't need to, like, trip any weird, arbitrary, dumb uh, plot flags. Well, this is the one exception to that. Yeah, you have to talk to a, a random huapo in a hallway in a new section of Asakusa that's been opened where she... Tells you about a rumor of like, I heard things are heating up in Ikebukuro. I saw Hikawa on the Mantra Building stairs. So that is that is actually the trigger that makes him appear there to have our, uh, have a conversation with you where he explains what the reason of Shijima is. Uh, we just have to walk there first is all. Oh, another encounter on full o'clock. That's fine, I need to kill things anyway. Oh yeah, that's right, we have to hit level 32. Yeah, I, th I should talk about Mitamas next actually. Um, so element demons are very nice. When you uh, fuse an element to another demon, you get a demon of the same family, but either the next, the next one higher or lower in level. Uh, and what happens if you fuse two elements together? You get a special kind of demon called a Mitama. Uh, Mitamas, uh, you can fuse them to a demon and the result is the same demon, but with higher stats. And if there's empty skill slots open, you can add one of the, uh, however, I think two at a time. Actually, no, you can add up to three at a time of the skills that the Mitama has. So we haven't had Rakukaja in a little while. Well, Taraka just learned it from uh, the last two boss fights, actually. Uh, but we need Rakukaja from more places than that. Honestly, Taraka is more in charge of uh, damage with uh, Taunt and Heat Wave later on. Mm, this is kind of annoying. Excuse for Kunda. Yeah, oh, return. Nice, one down. Tornado should clean this up. Yep. So yeah, we haven't had Rakukaja since our uh, fully leveled up Wapo had it, I need to switch which made its way onto Corone out. Zone. But Corone Zone is too weak to be fighting in battles at this point of the game. So we're gonna get Rakukaja back in the ecosystem here. By this is why we leveled up that Earthus. Uh, to learn Rakukaja. We're gonna fuse that with the Flamus we just picked up for free from Rags Jewelry in Ginza. When you put uh, Earthus and Flamus together, you get a Kusi Mitama, uh, which is level 32. So that's why we gotta hit level 32. And also, we have to go a little farther than that though, because uh, we'll be setting up, um, yeah, we need to get to level 36 with 2000 TNL, uh, experience needed to level up. Uh, that will set us up so that we hit level 37 uh, two boss fights later and be good for our last big batch of fusion to prepare uh, most of uh, the rest of the demons we need for the rest of the run. All right, world's most important Huapo right there. Doing yep. so has has shifted the uh, the rules of the universe to spawn Ikawa in, uh, in Ikabukuro. Yeah, that's, that's like an NES game kind of trigger. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, this game's usually really good uh, about, like, weird NES oh, you have game dark triggers. Race. Oh, right, yeah. But uh, that's, like, the one exception of just, like, weird... Uh... Well, I guess, like, talking to the collector to move Troll out of the way is also a little bit weird. Yeah. yeah. That one's a little less out of the way, though. So, like, I mean, your only tip that you're supposed to go oh, here is... switch the... to Miasma. I, I did, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta remove Wild Dance. Uh... It's just a useless skill, but the important thing is the next skill on Miasma is Void Ice, which we can't learn until level 45, and it's actually going to be the last skill we learn. 
Um, there was kind of like room for one free uh, meme skill in the, la the second last fight of the game. Uh, I like to learn counter just so I can like actually punch God's Disco Ball. Uh, but it only does 150 damage, and it's just kind of a wasteful animation of like one or two seconds. Uh, so instead, we're going to learn Void Ice. And this is actually relevant in the context of a marathon run, because instead of using Mizuchi with Null Ice and Absorb Elect, we will have a Mothman with Null Fire and Weak Elect. We lose our... Uh, we create a pocket uh, for Kagetsuchi to hit us with Ice. So All right. <laughs> the Void Ice will be secure. Oh yeah. So here we meet with Ikawa, and, he's, and he realizes he's like... Ah, I just realized you are the demi fiend who I who I read about in basically the the books that he read to find out about the conception and everything. He found he found that there would be uh, someone called the demi fiend who would basically be the one that would lead the reason uh, the reason holder of their choice to victory. So here he's like, hey, maybe I was wrong about you. Here, let me tell you about my my dreams of a world of of serenity and and everyone living in harmony with the universe. Doesn't that sound great? And look at all these uh, look at all these cylinders. Aren't they fantastic? And we're like, yeah, that sounds good. And so he's yeah. like, awesome. Well, I'll see you later. Doesn't mean he's not going to still try to kill us, but at least, you know, he's, he's like, yeah, he's pretty neat. Yeah, this guy who tried to kill us twice, uh, I think we're just going to team up with him after all. Our, you know, our high schooler friends and our teacher, they're all lamers. We're going to team up with the, the guy with the best fashion. Oh yeah, and here's a, another lovely cutscene we need to advance the plot. We get to go back to Mifunashiro to get more mannequin lore. We got to see how their uh, city is progressing, and Fudomimi is having a, a little sermon here in the holy ground. He's gathered a couple mannequins, and uh, we'll be able to actually read these first two text boxes. Everyone, listen carefully to what I'm about to say. What, what I'm, I'm about, about to, to say, say is critical to our future. future. <laughs> and also, <laughs> okay, bye. I'm gonna go meditate some more. Uh, what did he say? I think he said, blessed are the cheese makers. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, he, he mentions there's some kind of evil power that's about to form in Yoyogi Park. And we're like, oh, we know where that is. But when we were there the first time, uh, the souls say like, oh, the fairies live here in Yoyogi Park, but they, they lock the construction site and nobody can go in. And if we go back there, that is still the case. There is no magical plot trigger that opens it up. Uh, but Hijiri says, uh, oh yeah, those mannequins are still up to something. Go see what they're up to. But we, we did our cutscene triggers, come on! Well, you've probably seen there's that door on the left on the second screen of Askusa that I've walked past, uh, and Freedom has walked past. We kept leaving it alone. It's a caved-in tunnel, but at long last, after all these cutscene triggers, the mannequins have finished renovating that part of Asakusa, and we can finally walk through it. And it turns out it's a yet another dark tunnel, a really long pathway that leads to the east entrance of Yoyogi Park, which you we might have caught a glimpse of that on the world map, actually. Uh, yeah, we can finally go through there. Also, shouts to how fast healing is with Turbo. It's always fun to just be like, Bee. yeah. Brrr. It's a good time. Oh, nice, another triple Oros. Uh, Orthrus encounter. These uh, these bad puppers oh, haven't nice. been house trained nice yet. <laughs> yeah, Orthrus is level 34. That's a higher level than we are, so nice amount of experience. And you can't count on Tornado hitting all three since it's random targets. So what I usually do is just like do a 2-4-2-4 two, four, two, four turn order, so even if the first Tornado doesn't clean them up, then the second one definitely will. Nice. Don't really need Wing Buffet on Karasu. We don't really need 80 damage when uh, Kalas has this well in hand. Oh, the Collector Mannequin finally opened his own shop, and he's got some pretty nice stuff here. Not we have nothing to sell. We're just going to buy some muscle drinks and some chakra drops. Uh, like That's 13. all we need. And then I'll get like four or five. So I heard we had a long tunnel coming up. We do, in fact. Yeah, and the lights will be on this time. Our, our Raiju uh, starts with Lytoma. Didn't need to pass it or anything, so we will be able to have the lights on, but it is a oh, long thanks, walk. Thanks, Raiju. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to uh, share a bit more, then absolutely is a great time to I do that. I would love to. I have so much to share. We have an anonymous one hundred dollar donation with no comment. Thank you so much. We have five dollars from Kyos that says, "So proud of my boy Freedom. Here to cheer you on and pray for you not to get MS SMT'd." Yo, thank you so much, Kyos. I appreciate it. <laughs> And we have $100 from Hubert with no comment. Thank you all so much. Your donations just reminding you, go to NAMI. The National Alliance on Mental Illness's current work is informed by more than 40 years of inspiring conversation, support, 
and action that ultimately strengthens the fabric of communities and promotes opportunities to thrive for anyone touched by mental illness. NAMI draw on their past accomplishments, the wisdom of lived experience, and current scientific understanding of mental health to help those suffering. So it means a ton to us that you donate and help us help NAMI help people. Yeah, and once again, the tunnels are a great place to grind. Uh, the enemies here are a little bit higher level and yet also very easy to defeat. Yeah, Ikus is like actually a surprisingly high level. He's like mid 43 40. yeah, or 44. And yeah, now that it's new o'clock, this is the right time to turn the lights on. Yep. It's, it's usually like uh, falling to or like uh, close to new o'clock in here. So don't be, don't be too frisky to turn the lights on. Not like Raj is going to run out of MP or anything. Uh, over here is uh, another bonus 8k Maka cube that uh, I know I didn't get this in my world record run, but because we're fusing Mothman, we may have a, a little more of budget requirements, and it'll just be nice to, you know, have that, uh, what's it called, a, like a, a float? <laughs> budget yeah, cushion. fusing Mothman puts us out about uh, about 16k, so the 8k here and the 8k in Obelisk well, basically cover that. We got an extra pearl. I'm actually not sure how many corals we have. Also, you can use a float ball here. We got so many. Yep. No, maybe we don't have that many. Because well, <laughs> the the second one we would be getting if we're on Musubi ending. Uh, oh, yeah. Whoops, I thought we... Oh, I guess I can't do math. Oh, right, I wasted the other one going through uh, <laughs> Ikebukuro Tunnel just to walk over, like, one damage tile. And then it wore off, like... Well, I guess my, uh, my Estoma wore off at the same time. So I guess I really didn't eat an extra text box. But now I feel bad. <laughs> no, it's fine. I can... Uh... <laughs> We I'll could, just save that uh, one for two, okay. I, I don't think we're going shopping anywhere ever else. I don't think I don't think we can buy them. Oh, we can buy it before Spectre 3. They're sold in Ike Bukuro. Yeah, it's you fine. Can buy I can one just, more there. I can just save the one that I have for two, okay. Maybe we'll get another oh, wait, one as a gift. Yeah. Who knows, maybe Orthrus will just learn Leftoma from uh from Babcat. Oh yeah, that's true. That could be a thing too. Yeah. It's fine. If nothing else, I'll just take the uh take the damage tiles in TOK3. Yeah, I like Dark Might as the you know the the bonus secondary skill, uh, but we're we're just just need to roll for taunt. We'll take what we can get. I wasn't paying attention. What's my? Well, I'll see what my TNL is after this. Uh, I, I need to pass and Rakunda, get in two tornadoes. Uh, I'm gonna Suku Kaja so that Makami can't miss. Oh yeah, uh, Nagas are pretty slow. Yeah, the Snake Clan is a great clan for demons. They they tend to be low in agility though. And also, we can now that MC has Mana Drain, we can uh, maintain our MP by just using Mana Drain on the road. Uh, and healing in this game works kind of like Final Fantasy Legend, or the, the Saga games, the collection that just came out on Switch, uh, where it's one okay, Maka for good. missing HP. Cool, we're done. We're under 2,000 TNL. Uh, yeah, it's one Maka for missing HP and 2.5 Maka for missing MP. But uh, I don't, really don't think that'll like, save time, especially well. with... Uh, oh, nice. The uh, football effect is still going. It... it uh, the, the damage floors do basically no damage on normal mode, but there is an animation where Demi Fiend cringes and goes like, Psh. Yeah, it's, it's more obnoxious than anything else, so we want to cut out that animation as we uh, are able to. Yeah, there's a longer uh, stretch of red in the, the final section of the final dungeon. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not, survivability is not the concern, it's just saving time while moving around. So we're almost through the tunnel. Um, we're going to Yoyogi Park East. We get, we're at level 32. We can make Kusumitama. We'll have to have someone to talk to when we get there. Uh, this time we go right down the train tracks. Uh, and yeah, the station. There's still the same encounters here with like uh, Shikome. Oh, hey, there's Sarjiko. Like I said, some dude. He's a, yeah. If you have Uzume on your party, uh, there's actually some special dialogue with the demons in this game where like cer if a certain demon talks to a certain other demon, uh, there's just like no delay. They just like launch into a particular once per game conversation and give you a nice reward at the end, like a gem. Yeah, so you can get a you can get a free emerald, which is a pot of death. Nice, you got you got the trifecta there. If you uh, if you talk to uh, Tsardiko with Uzume, since uh, in Japanese mythology they are married. Yeah, we don't really. Pot of death is a cool item. It's kind of like a enhanced smoke ball. It reduces all enemies' HP to one. 
and it's it's almighty. It's a uh, an unavoidable kind of effect, but we don't need it on normal mode. Pot of Death is usually pretty useful for uh, like winning one battle in the final dungeon to get like uh, one or two thousand experience, but we'll have more than enough experience, I think, with this route that we're on. You don't need to take a fight that late. Um, we already got one Pot of Death. We got an Emerald from Troll's Room. I keep saying Troll's Room. It's Loki's Room. Troll is guarding it, but it really does feel like Troll's Room. Oh, I never made my joke where, like, oh, we rescued Pokemaniac Bill and got Pokemon Pearl, Pokemon Emerald, Pokemon Sapphire, because those are, those are the gems in that room. So uh, here, uh, our teacher is really sad because she came here to get the the pure... There's an item called the Emotsu Himorogi, or it's just a yeah, small Yeah, no Himorogi, yeah, Thank yeah. Thank you. Uh, that is a... Uh, basically, it's an object that just contains a very large amount of Magatsui, so she was going to get it so that uh, possibly Aradia would give her a reason... Uh, not realizing that it's the human that's supposed to come out, come up with the reason that summons the god and not the other way around. Uh, but she wanted to uh, get the Magatsuhi, or she wanted to get the pyramid because she believed that would come nice summon a reason. By the way. And then she's like, yeah, and you can have all the Magatsuhi in the uh, in the pyramid if you want it. So we uh, we agree to, to go get it because it's been it's been stolen by uh, Sakahagi. Yeah, so. there's been there's been some kind of ruckus here in the construction site yeah, here at Yogi Yo Park. Okay, I think I didn't these. run into Mudo. We can get these life stones. All right, warping back because we need to fuse our Mitama. Mitamas are uh, actually Mitama, yeah. yeah. Mitamas are actually pretty nice to use as party members as well because true. they naturally resist all magic, uh, along with uh, nulling light and dark and all ailments. So because of that, using uh, we'll fuse this Kusi Mitama here that we'll be using to fight uh, the next boss, along with uh, using it to march through this next dungeon. Yeah, because uh, there's a good amount of ailments and magic being thrown around here, and having coverage for that's very helpful. My healing, oh, it's whatever. Now we spent some MP in the tunnel. It's worth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's there's actually a, a fair bit of stuff going on with this next section. So, I, I'm sure casual players must think it's weird that we're going to actually use a Mitama, but no, Freedom is 100% correct. The the Mitamas are quite underrated to use. Nice, we got Bright Might. That's a fun secondary skill to have. Uh, we won't, well, we don't need that for Mothman. It might end up on Orthrus. Pretty That's long possible. odds, though. Because yeah. it would have to be a three for three. Yeah, you've noticed uh, Kushimitama starts with Sukukaja and Dekaja and Analyze. Uh, Dekaja is like the opposite of Dekunda. It strips away all buffs from the enemy side, which is, uh, and I would call it an almost useless skill because we have these powerful debuff skills that remove, uh, like that lower two stages in a single press turn. So, how could it be that those moves should be more efficient than Dikaja? Like, how did you let the enemy buff up so much? And there aren't even that many enemies that use buff skills anyway. There's no uh, luster candy in this game, so... Uh, yeah, <laughs> Dikaja... There, well, we did get a Dikaja rock, which will actually have a use for a, a certain boss, perhaps. Yeah, um, and there, there's an op there's an optional boss uh, that's available, like, pretty much post-game that you would want, you'd possibly want Dekaja for, because it opens up with using, like, four Makakajas into, like, Megidoleon. Yeah, it would be handy for Tune 2 there. <laughs> yeah. Deal with follow-up. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I mean. Like, Dekaja's only useful if their stats have gotten to Are plus you ready? three. Oh. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Freedom. I didn't, I didn't put an anti-mind on Karasu. That's fine. One possible effect of panic status is... Uh, I swear I got to rearrange just... my party anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. We want to march with a uh, Cushion Unicorn uh, for, for more null mind action. Oh, there, yeah. There's Titania and uh, Kelpie using Pudingpa, single target uh, null mind skills. Uh, so running through this dungeon, you're probably going to be really confused as to why I'm doing the pathing choices that I am. Uh, so the mechanic of this dungeon is basically, you see all these bridges that we're kind of running under or avoiding. Basically, there are fairies hiding under these bridges that if you run under one of the bridges that the fairy, that a fairy is guarding, you'll actually get warped to a different location. Uh, and just because we know where the fairies are, we will just be avoiding those. There's one fairy near the end of the dungeon that we'll actually take because the place where it warps us is closer to the destination, uh, at the end of the dungeon that we're going to. But uh, otherwise, 
you'll just kind of see me taking really weird path uh, paths through this area, and that's just to avoid the uh, the underpasses with the fairies. Bomber rising on the right if you want it, but let's take the other path and try for the luck incense. I think it'll be falling seven. Uh, how far out of the way is it? It's the exact same amount of time I tested with my super nocturne cart uh, split. So go straight. No, not here. Uh, uh, not here. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't go know. The, where go, the thing the, is. go the usual way. All right. Um, yeah, go straight, and then instead of going straight again, you go left. Yeah, go left and go under this bridge, and you'll get warped. Then do a 180 and go through the door, and there'll be a mystical chest right in front of you with a uh, luck incense in it. You know, luck being the most useless stat. <laughs> and it's a lifestone. <laughs> I mean, it basically serves. Okay, now where the heck am I? Now go, yeah, go ahead and to the right. Through here? Not under here. Uh oh, where are we now? <laughs> All right. Well, not doing that again. Oh, uh, oh, we're we're just back where we were. Go through the door again. Now go to the right. Oh yeah, just under this, and then. Then work. under this, and now you're where you think you should be. Cool. Yeah, well, that was a fun little adventure we just <laughs> went on. Yeah, we got our luck incense. It's for good luck. I mean, the lifestone and life luck incense are basically the same value as far as usage because of how useless luck is. Yeah, it's it's basically a fancy bead, but you can't use it in battle. Oh right, and I think we yeah I'm gonna we already used it. the stoma on Archangel here, so I yep, think we're all so set. I have someone to get. Yeah, use Karasu Makatora yep. first, then save. Yep. And again, we're setting up Muscle Drink. The boss of this area likes to use Panic Voice. So once again, we're we're gonna fight with Unicorn, Null Mind. We have Kushimitama with Null Ailments. We'll have Iomante on Kalas for Null Mind, and we do want to use Karasu for Makakaja. Uh, oh yeah, the the soul that uh, Freedom almost talked to when I led him astray uh, tells us that the. Sakahagi's guardian of this area repels physical attacks. Uh, I can't do that. So you didn't get MP back from that, so I can just remove it. Oh yeah, uh, we're looking for poison or stun. That's probably a load. Yeah, it's a load. Yeah, we might have to reload. I got lucky and got it first try. Sometimes it can take a few tries to get poison or stun status so that we can protect our Karasu from. There we go. Ah, very nice. Uh, so the unfortunate thing about stun is that it means that Karasu won't be able to do damage during this fight, but that's fine. I can just mock a Tora MC to keep uh, MC's tornado battery going. Yeah. So yeah, we got uh, stun status. Uh, again, the older version of this route, I was like managing my experience all over the place and ended up getting more than I needed. Uh, the old route just used Eros in Assembly of Nilo and leveled it up two more times to learn Anti-Mind, passive skill to reduce chance of mind status, but... I like the, the guaranteed nature of muscle drinks and not having to bother with using arrows at all. Yeah, so here the, the pixies are actually moving around as far as where they will and won't stop us. That's why I did that like weird little loop that kind of ended up in the same spot. Yeah, they're in, they're in like a little eight seg display. And so the, every time you get past them, they switch polarity between the orthogonal directions or the diagonal directions. Uh, it's actually pretty easy to slip by them if you just know that simple solution. There are also these observation towers here in the construction site, which you can climb, and there'll be these glowing lights showing where the fairies are. But for the last one, uh, Shrek here trashed the platform, so... Oh, what are we gonna do? We don't know where the fairies are! It's like we've never played this game before and already know where they are anyway. Uh, I don't know if you'd be able to get a good view even if the observation tower was there. Are you ready? Oh, there we go. We got the Null Ice. Glacial Blast hitting everybody. Titania's level 57, by the way. <laughs> So. Yep, she is the highest level fairy. She's also like an amazing demon, just overall. She resists all magic, knows light and dark, and learns oh. prayer, which is Remember to mana drain. Because you use Oh. Yeah, it's fine. You'll you'll want max MP going into the boss fight. Alright, so here we're actually gonna gonna cause this pixie to warp us. Go somewhere else, because it actually warps us closer to where we're going. Yeah, there's two paths through this section and I tested and they're the exact same amount of seconds. There's basically like three doors. Um, so you can go through like the middle, 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 left, left door, or you go right, right, and that pixie warped us uh, one forward and into the middle. So it's, yeah, right, right, left, left. Those are, those are the two ways through. Uh, I think we can use Unicorn to heal. Unicorn doesn't need a lot of MP for this fight. Unicorn just needs enough to use Rakakaja four times and Media a few times. If that actually no, uh, Medea not as much because it's uh, MC I, can heal instead. Yeah. You want the two four two four turn polarity to get more Makakajas in with Karasu. Yeah. Also, Karasu isn't poisoned, which is usually where a lot of the healing comes from. Yeah, that's true. You get the that like two three four two turn order. Ah, whatever. The Makatora will keep us topped up. Yeah, it's not that big a deal. It's twelve MP. All right. We so just I'm gotta just switch. Yep. 
Nakami out for Unicron. Our planet no devouring uh, Megatron. Well, Demi Fiend could. All right, so here, uh, here we meet up with Sakahagi, and uh, he mentions that there was a uh, that he ran into a girl and taught her a painful lesson, uh, but uh, that he he's sure like he's confident that he's never going to get used by demons again. And to demonstrate that, uh, he's going to uh, sick a giant elephant on us. Yeah, apparently he already took the Magatsuhi from the Yahiro no Himarogi there. My friend tells me that Yahiro no Himarogi translates to holy object of great importance. It is just literally a plot MacGuffin. And yeah, this, this cutscene looks exactly the same in HD, by the way. Yeah, so in HD, Somewhere. a lot of the pre-rendered cutscenes are still in 4x3, so you'll like jump into 4x3 and the lighting will change. They just put like some blurry smartphone borders on the sides and keep it in 4x3. And it just looks... It's a bit jarring. It just looks like PS2 for a little bit. All right, so oh, it's your HD. boy Gary. Yep, so here comes Tsukukaja, pass Rakukaja. Yep. The I do old, have the script written down. <laughs> the old 1 3 1 3 1 3 turn order. So, yeah, the other thing about Giri Mikala is uh, Giri Mikala, just like Matador and Dante, hates being debuffed. If you make any of his stats negative, you'll instantly use Beast Eye to gain two more turns, Dekunda to remove the debuff, a random Kaja to go plus one in something, and then attack you. But again, we can uh, just buff up our side. Woo! Let's go to. Two Tsukukaja is all we need. I'm going to actually heal here. Yeah, fair. Uh, sometimes you can just use Beast Eye on a random turn. and right, That'll be four Tsukukajas, and then... We're just one Rakukaja away from Max. Yeah. Uh, we could have uh, Kusi do it, I guess. Yeah, I was going to have Kusi do it, so the Unicorn can start working on, uh, on Makarkajas. Oh, true. Or save it for... No, we don't need to save it. Yeah, I'll do, do Makakaja, Makakaja, heal. Oh, yeah, good idea. Yeah, this game's turn order is... Uh, you can get, like, some custom turn order stuff going on when you have, like, duplicated moves on multiple demons. And you can consider, like, whose MP is important to spend. And, yeah, we got Panic Boy's quite useless here, right? Three of our demons, Nolan and Karasu, cannot be panicked Three, because four. stun status is more important. And now we can start tornadoing. Uh, yep. Friendly reminder, do not punch the elephant, he repels biz. Like I just like did. <laughs> it's fine, he didn't need that turn anyway. Yeah, we, we ended our turn early. We can start the next turn cycle. Oh, no! Dodges on Blight? Unreal. That's unfortunate. Four Sugukajas needed. Alright, um... I'm just gonna start my Katoring MC. I'm gonna remove this poison, though. Oh. Mm. I'm gonna take a second. I'm gonna heal, and then I'm gonna remove this poison off of MC, because otherwise it's gonna get really annoying. Yeah, it's kind of a long animation to watch the poison tick. Our last one. We can buy more when we... Uh... Yeah, I'll buy more before uh, before temples. Oh, wait. Uh, we'll buy it in Asakusa... When? When are we going to Asakusa? That might be uh, after a Mala Temple. But well, we stopped by Shibuya to do fusions before temples. No, we're going so. to Ginza to buy the Megiddo Rock with uh, our Ruby. Right. Right, I'm actually going to do this. I love using Makatora in battle. <laughs> Maybe not the most efficient, but that stun status is keeping us protected. And Kalos is going to have enough for five tornadoes eventually, but I think five will be overkill. Giri Makala goes down. Oh, look at all these dubs. I don't know how much HP Giri Makala has, but with this many dubs, uh, we'll probably take him down next turn. And, oh, can't dodge. Nice Kaishin, buddy. Okay. Just, you have nothing else to do. Alright, I think this will kill. Oh. oh. Hmm. Well. And there we go. Gary McCall is down. But wait, a new enemy appeared! It's Sakahagi! We got reinforcements in our boss battles, too. Yeah, the important thing here is to mana drain. Sakahagi has all four types of tier two attack spells. Uh, he'll always try Mazionga when out of MP, though. Uh, we also, we're gonna get 14,000 experience from this fight. Uh, Kusumitama and Unicorn definitely don't need it. Oh, okay, whoa. dude. Dang, wanted to be the star of the show here. So we're gonna summon some other guys. We're gonna summon Raiju and Taraka over Kusi and Unicorn, respectively. 
Well, actually, the order doesn't really matter. Uh, because Kalos is going fourth, uh, there's no way to summon a demon and then have MC go again, even if you pass as hard as you can. Um, for some reason, uh, whoever gets summoned wants to go again. It, it ends up being like a two, four... Like, even you, it actually kind of... Uh, sometimes the turn order can change while you're trying to do this. There can be some really strange shenanigans with uh, changing yeah. turn order. Generally, if you've made your way through the loop, uh, it'll just have whoever went then go next, which uh, yeah, can see. lead to stuff like demons passing to themselves, which is always fun. Yeah, uh, if you summon a demon who's so fast that they're going first again, they will pass and then go again. Or uh, they can take two actions in a row if you have enough press turns remaining. Right. Sakahagi is uh, pretty weak, actually. He usually dies in little more than one tornado. Maybe this is... Uh, oh, right. We, yeah, two tornadoes is lethal for sure. I've seen him dodge the Younga before, so just to be safe, I'll do that. Yeah, he is a little bit slippery, and Raiju has a decent magic stat, but not the best agility. No. Ah, poison again! We don't have a disc poison left. That's fine. Luckily, we can uh, hold the circle button to control the camera, and that'll keep it uh, behind us. And even though our, you know, Kalos is going to be uh, walking around with a belly ache, uh, if we hold circle, we should still move around at a, a normal speed. So yeah, Raiju and Taraka are fully leveled up, and they got uh, the skills they need. Can learn over uh, Pester. No, I right, know Isaiah. I was thinking, uh, I don't. Uh, uh, Taraka's gonna get fused uh, in two steps to end up making Orthrus, and Pester will probably get discarded along the way. I find Orthrus really likes learning talking skills because uh, I guess he's a dog and likes barking. Okay. So yeah, we can there. I, was, I mentioned a while ago how different skills have a, a hidden rank. I think, like, Analyze and Talk skills are more lower rank. Uh, so we want to learn our new skills. Analyze rank one. Yeah, we want to learn our new skills over those. Any demon in the game can learn Analyze, so it can be a pretty frustrating skill when trying to fuse stuff. And uh, apologies is... for the red flashes, by the way. Yeah. They, they won't last uh, too much longer. We don't have any demon with close to Moody to get rid of it, and uh, we don't have any disc poisons left, and I would say our muscle drinks are more important. To <laughs> we want to save them for one more boss fight that involves uh, panic status, so we'll need, need them to block that out. In fact, uh, all of our demons will... I think... I don't think there's anyone with Null Mind for the, the Mada fight. Uh, correct. So, well, MC will have the Amante. Right, but... But no, no, All of our demons, demons yeah. the, the important one especially, will be Onkot to protect from that. That's that's future stuff, though. Yeah. We, we did it. We beat Sakahage. We got 14,000 experience. Uh, unfortunately, the pyramid was drained of all of its Magatsuhi by uh, Sakahage summoning the giant elephant. So, uh, so here is a, an important conversation if you're wanting to go for one of the two neutral endings in this game, being demon and freedom ending. Uh, you're, here, Arati is going to ask us two questions. Basically, do you fear... Yeah. Basically, Fool who bears the name Freedom. Oh, don't take it personally. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. She calls you Fool who, the, who bears the name Freedom, which, uh, you know, is kind of rude. But, yeah, she asks if we fear suffering and humiliation and uh, or if we fear deceit and torment. Uh, the default answer is yes, which locks you into demon ending if you are neutral in your alignments. Uh, you'd have to answer no if you want to get Freedom ending. Uh, but because we're actually going for uh, going for a reason, it doesn't matter. Yeah, Aradia's kind of on the same train of thought as before where uh, in Obelisk, uh, her and both like the old woman and the child kind of explain, uh, you know, all these reasons are competing. Don't just stand by and watch. You have to decide which one you want to compete with. And so Aradia, this uh, ro wandering goddess, uh, seems to be a champion of uh, freedom or like okay. having the freedom to choose. But uh, this very spooky warning she gives us saying like, you know, if you if you choose freedom, no one no one will like you. Everyone everyone will hate you for this. You have to make a firm decision in in Nocturne. So, but that is how you get the the freedom ending. It is possible to restore the old world, which uh, I don't know. It seems a little boring to me when you have an opportunity like this. But uh, and yet it's I think it's one of the most satisfying endings in the game. It's got a yeah. It's the only one that actually shows the world and has dialogue other than the reason representative like monologuing for uh, for a little bit. Yeah, all the reason endings are just kind of like, good job, champ, and then nothing happens. Like you the, did the thing. Good You job. just have to imagine what the world you created is like. 
But in the in the freedom ending, you can see Demi Fiend has a like a gaming PC <laughs> and a, a bookshelf, and uh, and the music is uh, nice and bittersweet. It's probably is the the second most satisfying ending. So here we did hear Sakahagi mention that he that he came across a girl and taught her a painful lesson. So we haven't actually seen uh, Chionki Kong in a while. So we're uh, we're gonna pay a visit to to her who is uh, conveniently conveniently. Uh, all the way up in Gozu Tenno's chamber, so that's where I'm going right now. Yeah, the Mantra building uh, is usually locked uh, for a while. Uh, you can't go back in here, but suddenly the door is open again, even though the whole building is pretty much abandoned. Only Baibukaha is still here on the roof. But luckily we're a high enough level for Estoma to do its thing, and we won't see any. Uh, we're going to have a, a little cutscene where we, we do meet up with Gozu Tenno and Chiaki. So Gozu Tenno kind of gave a... a cryptic little prophecy saying that he would return even though he was a big statue that blew up yeah so uh so we found out that the uh, painful lesson were that was being talked about is that uh sakahagi actually cut off uh, chionki's arm yeah I, I actually didn't notice for the longest time after running this game many many times that the angle uh makes it not very obvious but fortunately here gozu tenno is actually going to be a pal and he's going to give chionki a hand yay Yeah, <laughs> gonna give Chiaki a hand. Yeah, they're kind of conversing here. Chiaki's very bitter about losing to Sakahagi because she wanted to create this world where the strong rule, but it turns out she is not very strong. She is, in fact, a spoiled high schooler brat from the human world who is probably not very good at fighting demons. It's okay, because Gozu Tenno's about to arm her for success. Yeah. So yeah, Gozu Tenno has the power, but uh, he's not. A, demons are not allowed to create a reason. They have to be created by humans. So uh, Gozu Tenno wants a human champion to imbue with his reason of Yosuka, which happens to be the same one that Chiaki likes. So their powers are about to combine. Uh, thanks for the hand, big guy. Oh, wait, wait, too big. It's turning into an entire tree. I am a tree. I think we've uh, explained what's happening well enough. I think we can throw it to the host once again. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to take a minute to talk about fabulous prizes. If you donate a minimum of $15 until the end of this run, you can get a, sorry, a SMT3 Nocturne prize pack from Atlas West. It includes a Magatama pin, a player pin, a player hat, little demi fiend mug and a birth poster which i love very much just a shot of one of the most gorgeous scenes in the game there is also a persona 25th anniversary bag which for a five dollar minimum donation you could be taking that home so just because we've met all our incentives does not mean we can afford to slow down everyone there are incentives for the rest of the marathon Yes, yes, Chianki, you are beautiful. Yeah, she does say that. Beauty and strength are one and the same, aren't they? Well, she yeah. still still has the joke fit. No more jacket, but uh, still has the jop and the jerk and the jutes. All denim, She's everything. She's a beautiful princess. Yeah, exactly. Can't forget the jag warmers. Yeah. <laughs> jag warmers, jar warmers. Yeah. All right, so yeah, there's a there's an angel, a uh, uh, dominion of the divine clan floating here now. We've changed the mantra HQ to a cool ranch colored, and uh, uh, the encounters here have all changed. The stoma will prevent all of them except for the one that's uh, three dominions. And uh, in a kind of a funny twist, uh, the divine clan is aligning with the reason of Yosuga. Uh, to me, it kind of makes sense. They they follow the biggest strongest guy. Why wouldn't they join up with the reason of Yosuga? Yeah, so it's important to save. Well, important. Well, it's kind of a little more optimal to save here first, because uh, we're heading straight into yet another boss fight. Uh, we're gonna warp to Asakusa and have another uh, conversation with Hijiri, and immediately after, uh, well, we're in the terminal room, but we just kind of get asked a yes or no question, so it's faster to just mash yes. If you say no, then you save the game, and then it asks you again. There is a terminal. You want to go pursue Hijiri? 
So yeah, I guess a little spoiler here. Here he is uh, hugging the cylinder. He really loves these cylinders because he can learn everything he wants about the Vortex world with his journalism powers. He's going to give us the lore update with uh, some slow text boxes that we uh, can't even skip. There'll be enough time to read them and we can learn everything that's going on and including things we don't know. Like Hikawa's on his way to the Diet Building, the Japanese Parliament Building, searching for Megatsu. Some girl named Chunky has inherited the power of Gozuteno, something that happened one minute ago. There's an abandoned temple where a ton of Megatsuhi lies forgotten. Mannequins are gathered in Mifunashiro, their holy ground, demanding their own reason. And that's about all you need to know right now. See? I know everything! I should be the one to create the new world! Not you, not even your teacher! I know everything! I'm the smartest human there is! And then Suddenly, the terminal acts up. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag Null has something to say about that. What? He's blowing me in! Whoa! There's like a really cool effect on his uh, vo English voice in <laughs> HD there. That sounds like getting into an encounter in Zelda 2. So yeah, we're gonna use this terminal and pursue, it's still active. We're gonna pursue Hijiri into the Amala network once again with this unskippable cutscene that still looks pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, he went a little crazy with power, but you know, he's still our pro. He's helped us out through this. We better uh, try, to, try to break him out of this. Who amongst us hasn't gone a little crazy with power now and again? I mean, we sure have. Look, look how many tornadoes have been thrown here. We're going full SimCity mm -hmm. strats. We go, to, we go to the Cathedral of Shadows, and Mito says, You cannot cut funding. You will regret this. We're bringing all the Maka to keep using the compendium. And it's working out great for us. Hashtag Noel disappeared. Right, set up. Yep, so yeah, he's there to meet us right away. And uh, he says, Oh, I found this uh, Amala temple. It's directly ahead. Instead of yet another annoying Lost Woods maze where we have to go the right way to avoid getting sent back, we're just right at the exit. Perfect. Yeah, I sure oh. hope something doesn't happen again that happened the last two times we were in here. Uh -oh. oh no, it's Vector again. Again. I was waiting. I figured it out. You are like me. Kill all who get in my way. This time for my happiness. Die! And again, he summons the five minions. And uh, the null magic has been upgraded to repel magic. We are definitely not going to oh, be able annoying. to. It's fine. Oh, the eight agility Makami has it done something here. No, Taraka is not supposed to be faster than Makami. Oh, uh, Taraka has six agility. Taraka gained agility twice. Apparently. And when there when there's a tie, uh, whoever appears higher in the list goes ahead of them. Uh, you can't unsummon your main character, so uh, he'll always win a tie. But yeah, unfortunately, Taraka gained agility twice to catch up with our Makami, who gained agility once. Okay, so yeah, the, the strat this time is, I just kill you, that's all I do. We're gonna use last resort, and again, it's, last resort is Yeehaw element, which uh, Spectre 3 also nulls. And then uh, instead of taking the rest of their turn, they just taunt you and say, even if I die, I won't die. Woo! So they're gonna try to summon more maybe, or just mindlessly attack. You know. The key here is to, you know, not attack them. If you attack them, when their HP gets low enough, they'll use more last resort and then summon new ones, making your debuffs uh, a lot less effective. So, uh, and again, with the same strategy. And if you, I think if you uh, take out too many of them, they'll use Dekaja. So again, we're just going to set up leisurely as long as we need to, and then uh, destroy them with not just Kalis's Heat Wave, but our fully leveled Taraka also has Heat Wave. So we'll have enough uh, physical attack power to just completely annihilate them in a single turn, nice. as long as we have sufficient setup. We got the, you know, we we're supposed to get two Fog Breaths and two War Cries on turn one to reduce the damage of that initial uh, last resort. Ah, oh, nice Kaishin. So we got an extra turn. Uh, Mikami's got the last Rakunda. We didn't even use Taunt here to lower them. Didn't even need to. There's the. This is the fight that Freedom was alluding to about um, using Rakunda instead of Taunt to make this a little more reliable. Oh, I, actually, this is kind of awesome having Taraka go second. You get that nice waffle, that nice 2 4 2 4 turn order. That is nice, with, yeah. With bonus attacks if there's any crits. So right. our, our magic stat is getting close to maxed out. And we don't need Heat Wave anymore. Yep, you can finally learn Taunt. And uh, we don't need anti-fire. <laughs> like, we we know where the fire attacks are coming from. Oh, and we can learn this over Tarakajag. No, wait, that's for Ashiel. I uh, guess it's, it's either Watchful or Makatora. Your call, boss. Yeah, Watchful is a passive skill that um, will make that demon uh, gain 50% experience while benched. Uh, it's kind of funny, though, because there is only a single fight in the entire rest of the run that Kurama is not present in. So 
by keeping watchful, we can avoid having to use a pot of death to uh, win an encounter in the final dungeon or something. Uh, I like having Makatora to move MP around, but um, it's also kind of cluttering the move list. Yeah, my biggest issue with Makatora is that it looks very similar to Makakaja, and they tend to be right next to each other. So at a glance, it's just faster to uh, get rid of... Uh... All right. We have at least one Dark Might, so unfortunately we'll have to spin around outside a little more. Out here, you either want Hifumi or Ankh, but I don't think it'll matter. It's normal mode. We don't get surprised very often. Yeah, so we got level 37 MC. That's the level we need to be to uh, fuse our next important demon. What am I spinning until? Uh, falling one or falling two. So basically a full day. You can go in and out of the temple to remove encounters. I probably yeah. would. Yeah. So uh, uh, anything from the host maybe while we're just kind of spinning in circles for about 60 seconds? I would love to. I would love to talk a little bit more about NAMI. NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, is the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization. NAMI provides advocacy, education, support, and public awareness to improve the lives of all individuals and families affected by mental illness. NAMI exists to ensure that yeah. no one is alone on their mental health journey, which is just, it's fantastic. Like I said, we have met our incentives for this run, but there are plenty more incentives coming up for future runs. There are wonderful prizes, and most importantly, you're doing this to help people. So thanks to everyone who's donated so far. You're all fantastic. Oh, I, should have, I, I forgot we're going to Ginza and the Rags Jewelry is farther away. We should, <laughs> we should have gone in even earlier. Oh well, we, we may have another spin in our future. Sorry, this, this is like a more recent strat. There's a, a little more fine tuning that. Well, I would have to reinstall it. Well, that still won't be enough, but whatever. That's fine. Or maybe. No, maybe we could go to Ginza after a, after a Mala Temple. Hey? Yeah, I'll just do that, honestly. Come on. Yeah, our, our since I, I'll, I'll probably less. need to kill cycles going into Mifinasha Row as well, so. Yeah, a little bit. Like, usually, I think we get there. Uh, we got the diamond on the way out. Uh, I think it was like a little little tight for timing though. Oh well. Yeah, we not, did have to if, come here to buy more disc poisons too. If nothing else, I can just kill cycles and go in at the time I was originally planning on going in. So yeah, this is where we're gonna fuse some important stuff. First, there's a kind of a three-step fusion here. So uh, I was talking about fusing with elements earlier. We're gonna combine uh, Earthus and Shikigami, two very cheap demons, to just fuse uh, Momonofu with anything. Um, you know, level 8 and level 4 demon, you get a level 20 demon. Good deal. Now we're going to fuse Momonofu with our fully leveled Taraka. Seems like a bit of a waste to not sacrifice Taraka with all that experience, but unfortunately we just need Taraka as an ingredient here to pass on her taunt to Baibukaha. Uh, whoa. That was a Zolchol. Yeah, uh, eating my inputs, it's fine. There we go. I <laughs> What's more annoying is that I've seen, uh, is that wow. I saw a Taunt get passed to, uh, to Zocho like every time I selected it. <laughs> taunt and Rakukaja. That's kind of interesting. I wonder, that'd be amazing if Taunt and Rakukaja come along early. Then we could just do Sukukaja Bright Might on the Mitama fusion at this step. So yeah, now we combine Baibukaha and Eros. Taunt Dark Might! Hell yeah! <laughs> I can say that. This game is blasphemous. Cool. Yeah, we're just saying yeah to hell. <laughs> Right, and then with the Kusi for Rakukaja, Sukukaja. We are going to destroy the Great Will's instrument of creation. Wow, oh, first, try. first try. Very nice. Very good. Hey, we could use that for Scotty, too. We don't have to use the Dekaja Rock. Oh, yeah, true. Uh, we well, well, Orthrus has to use Rakukaja as well, so Orthrus is going second. It would be a 2-4, two, 2-4 four, two, four turn order. That's fine. So you could... Oh, yeah, and the Earthquake is coming anyway, so you could actually go like Rakukaja, Tornado, Dekaja, Tornado get a huge lead on damage. Other thing we're going to make here, um, Karasu is... Um, now that Karasu transformed into Karama, you can't have more than one copy of any demon on your team. Uh, so we will use an Eros to element fuse Karasu the Yoma to the next highest Yoma, which is Onkot, um, a Southeast Asian monkey god. What's we're this? looking for Makakaja here, and Dark Might, and... Wow, and Bufu. Interesting. That's an awesome three for three. Oh, and one more little upgrade we're going to do here. Um, we're going to upgrade Corona Zone to something with more than 50 MP. Uh, not so much for multiple shots of Trophery, but the actual reason 
is that uh, Baphomet here, this minion that uh, Hikawa was going to summon on us in the intro, actually, uh, has Repel Death. So remember, when something gets repelled, uh, it takes away the opponent's entire turn. And this will be relevant for a, a very late boss fight. And that's it. Get some more Dis poison. Yeah. Good job on the fusion bosses, Reapy. All right, kill. And we can heal after Spectre 3. So yeah, now we're headed to the abandoned temple where the Magatsu he lies forgotten. Which, uh, rather amusing. I'll just say that. So, uh, if you looked in the sky when we were in uh, Yoyogi Park, you could see very prominently uh, the Amala temples from there. It's a very obvious landmark that the devs put into the uh, the sky box. And the, the pixies that can fly and all the divine demons that can fly, I, I think all the divines can fly, actually. Yeah. None of them found this temple. I, I don't know how. Not only that, but the second to last dungeon of this game is literally right next to the Amala temples. It's just like up, a, up like down a hill. <laughs> yeah, if we could only bring a toboggan to the vortex world, we could like save probably an hour. <laughs> so yeah, so a perception 100 moment on like literally everyone in this game except for Hijiri and Isamu and these random demons that are here just looking for the Magatsui. Yeah, so hashtag Null explains to us with his disembodied voice. He's, yeah, he's, he seems to be hiding in this floating pyramid here. He explains that there's, there's three yeah, sub-temples right. uh, attached to this courtyard here. Oh yeah, we gotta summon... Uh, One second, turn off turbo. Uh, and then I'm going to use the magic incense on you and string. Yeah, it looks good. So, oh, wow, we have triple Dark Knight for Ashil. This is going to be awesome. Um, yeah, there's three sub-temples here attached to this courtyard, and there's three powerful demons in each one guarding the, the stash of Magatsuhi stored below. So, Nash Technol says, can you get rid of them for me? You know, the guy who wants to establish a world of solitude where nobody needs the help of anyone else is, uh, can you please help me? I can't get this Magatsuhi by myself. So we can fight these bosses in any order, technically, but uh, we're definitely going to do Black Temple last uh, because uh, this this Onkot Demon we fused, uh, this is the fastest way to get uh, the Tetrakarn skill, which we saw Osei and Lachesis using earlier. Uh, a temporary uh, physical repel shield that lasts for the enemy's next turn. Uh, this is, we also learned taunt on MC at the same time, and this is every SMT player's favorite strategy of Tauntrakarn, as it's called. Uh, you use taunt to lower the enemy's defense, uh, and you also raise their physical attack, and then use Tetrakarn to just fling their massively powerful physical attacks back at them, and their lowered defense becomes a factor in how much is reflected as well. Uh, Onkotz has natural uh, resist physical, unfortunately, so we'll be reflecting half as much damage. And also the fact that we're on normal mode. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, forgot to uh, re-up the there, uh, there are some very rare uh, weak encounters in these temples. Oh, they have resist magic and lived! Uh, let's go fire breath. They all have like about 100 HP each. And I can just bonk you. Bonk. What?! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Arrow sure. Sword. Okay. <laughs> Good choice, Arrows. Good job. The Mountain Dew Elemental lives to fight another day. Oh, yeah. The music in here is cool. Yes, this is my favorite area theme in the entire game. And here we got another teleport maze. Thanks, Atlas. Uh, there's kind of four sections here, and we're going to go in a certain order. There's also a well-hidden uh, bonus item here called the Blessed Fan. It's an item that has infinite uses, and it just casts Mahama in battle which is pretty funny because MC is the only character who can use items. There's no healing know-how in this game. And uh, by, like, we're level 37, which is also the same level that you could fuse Daisojo. If only we had a Death Stone, but we couldn't go to the Labyrinth of Amala. It's a big waste of time. Lots of long cut scenes and gummy ship tunnels you gotta fly down. But so we're just gonna sell that yeah. fan for 50K. Yeah, more importantly, it sells for a lot of money, which will uh, be very nice. Yeah, Desojo starts with Mahama Own and the Meditation skill, which is an extra powerful life drain to restore his own MP. So how's that for infinite expel instant kills? <laughs> so yeah, that, that 50k is going to help a lot. Um, we'll need a lot of money right before uh, heading to the last area of the game, and the Blessed Fan will pay for about half of it by itself. So we're coming up to uh, one of my favorite bosses in this game. It's basically Kulex from Super Mario RPG. It's a... Uh, 
Albion, so one big guy who will immediately summon four little crystals called Zoas, or little pieces of candy, as one of my stream viewers calls them. Um, Albion will go first and always uses physical attacks, so that's where Taunt and Tetrakarn will come together for great results. And then each of the little Zoas uh, repel one element and are weak to the opposite. Now, if you kill Albion first, the Zoas will revive Albion at full HP. If you kill all the Zoas, Albion will revive all the Zoas. So we have to lay up a little bit uh, to kill them simultaneously on turn three. We're gonna line up the fleet. Time for some heat. This guy is based on the Serena Atlas the giant. Time for some heat. Based on an actual landmark in the UK. So we planned this well in advance here. We got Zanma and Kurama to single target down the yellow one. Monkey we got Makakaja to weave uh, some magic improvement in between our turns. Our fully leveled Raiju is going to do his thing. Zion going to let boost to chip away the green one, which will be repelling our tornadoes. MC has Taunt, which we learned just in time at level 37. And yeah, keep whittling away these. Just do it all again. Uh, for MC's turn last, we're going to use one attack mirror. I picked up one for us in Ikebukuro Tunnel. We got a guaranteed turquoise from Fornius, the very first boss. So seeing one Opal, which can drop from Deese or Mothman, is the other thing we need to trade in at Rags Jewelry to get a second attack mirror. Two attack mirrors is exactly what we want to see. Uh, if we get really unlucky and don't get an Opal, then it's fine. We can just use Warcry or an extra magic mirror. And then uh, the black one will go second and use Mabufudine or Bufudine. Uh, or maybe they'll just attack. But uh, yeah, we got two attack mirrors, so we're completely golden here. We got our maxed out Makakaja. We got Bufu on the monkey to get bonus turns on the red one as well. Uh, Tornado is going to be how we kill them, but because Tornado is random red. targets, uh, right, sometimes that that's get unlucky. Oh, that's great. There's a free 420 plus, plus more. There we go. Bufu on red. We're going to have like seven turns, basically. Raiju can do either Shock or Zionga as needed. Tornado should clean this up for sure. Oh, nice shock, so. Nice shock on your reason. I guess we don't even need that. Oh, <laughs> or oh, just baby. one tornado cleans them up. The Zoas have about 1,300 or 1,400 HP each, and Albion has, uh, I don't even know, probably close to 3,000, plus or yeah. minus a couple hundred. Is that actually not that durable. Nice magic mirror. Yeah, that fight's the fight that suffers the most from the fact that Tornado is random target, because you can just lose that fight without any fault of your own if Tornado just decides to not hit the right things. Yeah, the ruby we got from the Tokyo Tower Succubus earlier uh, for the Megiddo Rock can be pretty useful there because it's almighty. It's like a non-elemental magic. It would just hit all of the Zoas for about a thousand damage. But uh, we actually have a better place to use the Megiddo Rock coming up a bit later. So <laughs> there we go. Uh, first Amala Temple boss down. We got 7,336 experience from that. Our Onkot needs uh, something like 12,773 to level up, and uh, the next boss gives 5,000. So if you if you crunch the math on it, it's like less than 400 experience that Onkot needs to level up once and learn Tetrakarn. I still need like one more fight, but oh, the the one uh, the one Oberon didn't get there. No, not quite. Okay, yeah, I, I figured it was like one fight, but okay, this will give like 800. This will be plenty. see. And yeah, we can uh, use Mana Drain on MC while on the road to max out his MP, but I don't there think he'll even need max MP. We're more concerned about... We're actually like pretty pretty lean for MP requirements overall. Um, we just need enough to do like a few torn... Oh, what did my notes say, actually? We just need to do... So the mechanic for this Akaja, area, uh, each of these temples is a different mechanic to it. The one for this one is uh, don't touch... Is if you touch a shadow then Scotty, who's the boss of this area, will uh, reach from the shadows and pull you into, like, the red dimension. Yeah, it looks like this place. This, the, the jelly where, town. Uh, where it's the, the areas get some damage floors that are added and you're unable to progress through uh, elevators. Uh, and so, basically, we, we will try to avoid the shadows as much as possible. We do actually have to step into one uh, on the second floor. But for this one, we can just uh, navigate our way without having to, to uh, touch any of the shadows. Yeah, this place is kind of annoying to navigate through if you don't know where to go. You have to get, take the fourth door in that passage. And uh, luckily there's a small terminal we can save at. Uh, the Scotty fight is uh, can be a little bit inconsistent. Scotty's an interesting boss. Um, yet another boss that has absorbed physical, but the bosses in this game that are immune to physical have much lower max HP. Scotty only has 4,000 HP. After taking 2,000 damage, she will, uh, you know, shoot freezing waves out of her fingers, just like Zoma the Archfiend. It's Dekaja and Dekunda in the same turn. Just reset everybody back to neutral. And red. Yep, here we are in the Jelly Realm. 
And yeah, so Scotty has a kind of a varied move set. Most of her moves are kind of weak, especially on normal mode, but she's pretty unpredictable. Uh, she can use uh, Makajamon, which has a chance to mute your whole team. So we're going to use our Jed Magatama that we got from the sisters at the top of Obelisk to give our Kalos Null Curse. So that will... Uh, she can use Dragon Eye and do all this stuff too, by the way. So uh, Jed will take away an extra turn if that happens. Uh, she likes to use Mazandine sometime, but we have a Karama with Absorb Force, so that will take away her entire turn, even if it's a Dragon Eye. And sometimes she just likes to attack. Most importantly, though, uh, she has a two-turn attack pattern. If she uses Tarukaja twice, this is telegraphing that next turn she will use Earthquake and then Rakukaja. And Earthquake is a uh, extremely powerful physical attack. Uh, because we want to kill Scotty quickly and try to lay up less than 2,000 damage to avoid the Dekaja Dekunda uh, reset button, uh, we'll just let her. We're going to open with Taunt to lower her defense two stages, and we just don't care if her first move is going to be the double Tarukaja to say that Earthquake is coming. She's got plus four Tarukajas. No way we're going to survive it, right? Nope, this is the one fight where Dekaja is good. We'll just remove all four of those Tarukajas in a single turn, and one Rakukaja from Orthrus will be all we need. For everyone to survive the Earthquake, take about 270 damage. This is why we needed 9 base vitality on Kalos. Okay, here's Mazandine. Wow, I'm so scared. All right, we'll have to heal if Earthquake does come up, but it's no big deal. Um, unfortunately, MC is kind of the only one who can attack Scotty. She has extremely high agility. Uh, you would basically need Fog Breath, or uh, which we don't have here. We'd have to use uh, probably two Sukukajas. Well, that reset okay. the fight. Well, let's just push as deep as we can with what we got. Uh, let's see. She's only got 800 HP left. We, I wonder if we can still get there with like... Uh... Yeah, so I'm going to do uh, Fast Makakaja, Sukukaja, and I'm just going to go for it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, Karama's Tornado could help. Yep. Uh, I don't know if this will do 800, but it'll be pretty good. Oh, yeah, well, nice dubs. There you go. Turn three lethal anyway. No Dekaja necessary. Simply be good at the video game. All right, that's all the magic that we need for the rest of the run. Yeah, we just need 34 because our preferred Magatamas will be giving us plus six magic. Uh, wow. wow. Great chakra. Very handy. Uh, we could either sell it for 7,000 or uh, we'll definitely cover our uh, MP restoring needs in the final gauntlet. That's a uh, restores MP to your entire team. There is actually um, when I was going through the second part of Great Underpass right after Matador, there's a, a mystical chest off to the side that has a diamond in it, which you can trade in at Rags Jewelry for a great chakra. But I I skipped past it to be fast. I just uh, <laughs> Freedom preferred to have it for Obelisk to just like have a one button like all right I'm ready for sisters, but I like going fast. Just getting that magic incense that was used on Karama already. Uh, do I? Oh, no, we're fine. Uh, looks like it'll be close. Oh, getting the encounter on full? No, uh, getting to Al uh, ACL in time. Oh, for new o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think we have it from here, if it's falling seven. Black Temple is not very big. The gimmick in Black Temple is that the lights are off, and uh, the adherents of Musubi are already gathering in Amala Temple, and they're, they're very shy, quiet people. They're just like, I like this temple. I like it when it's dark in here. And that's kind of a hint that uh, you actually cannot solve the puzzle when the lights are on. What you have to do is uh, jump into a pit. And for some reason, when when the lights are off, like when Lytoma is not active, the floor is cracked and you can smash through it to actually get into the basement where the boss lives. That's gonna be close. Oh, should be fine. Yeah, we can, I'll, I'll count steps for you. Uh-oh, we might be trading pet rocks here. Okay, war cry, no big deal. No. Oh, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> hey. Aww. We like liquor, so he gave us a life stone. <laughs> Thanks, Jose. Very so cool. yeah, we can we can keep using MC to heal here. Uh, I'd like to talk about the Ashiel fight a little more, if that's okay. Yeah. So this next fight is my first is what is in my opinion the worst programmed fight in the entire game. It's just not a well done boss fight. So. Uh, China can explain why. Yeah, Ashil has 8,000 HP and is a, kind of a meathead. He likes to use Tempest, which is a strong uh, physical attack that hits all targets. So we think, oh, great, Taunt Tetrakarn, free win, right? Well, sometimes Ashil goes Dragon Eye and then uses Mana Drain five times. And uh, Ashil has, uh, I don't know if it's like magic or agility or high uh, like level being high enough. Like Those Mana Drains almost always land. So. You can detect cheese and try to just take away all your MP so you can't keep using Tetrakarn. 
Now, on hard, it's a bit of a problem because uh, vendor prices are tripled, but this is normal mode, and we can just use the power of money. It so turns out that Tetracarn costs 45 MP, and using uh, some of those 13 chakra drops that Freedom bought... Oh, nice timing on New O'Clock here, too. Uh, we can just keep using Chakra Drops on Onko to permanently maintain Tetrakarn every single turn. Each Chakra Drop restores uh, 45 MP. Uh, we're good for MP. Yeah. Uh, nobody needs any. Uh, so yeah, the other nice thing though, we wanted to get here at New O'Clock. Uh, remember how normal mode, uh, ha we're taking half damage compared to hard mode. So we're reflecting half as much damage. And Asho has 8,000 HP, which is a lot. But with Dark Might, just do Dark Might with everyone on the first lap and then what you would do otherwise. Just get all the bonus turns. Onko does Dark Might. Orthrus has Dark Might. We can take uh, eight turns each turn cycle. We're going to get in two taunts using MC. And we can get in uh, Tarukajas with everybody, uh, particularly Karama. Uh, we can use our items as well. Bonk here, and then Secret Kaja Sek taunts. Us. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can use Secret Kaja to maybe deal with uh, the mana drain outcomes. But I think with Dark Might, you don't even have to worry about that. Yeah, so we can use uh, Dark Might, which Onkot and uh, Kurama have. Uh, yeah, we can just go Dark Might, Dark Might, Dark Might, and then whatever MC does, and then everyone does whatever they would do. Um, yeah, we can get four Tarakajas pretty quickly. So even if Ashio doesn't cooperate and likes to use Mana Drain a lot, or just only does a single target attack instead of Tempest, uh, we can add a lot of damage with all the Dark Might that we have. Oh, and he also does use Dekunda sometimes. He still has the plus four Tarukajas, so he can reflect a half decent amount of damage. And we're just gonna go around and around and around. Well, I guess it's a pretty simple fight. I guess we uh, can test, toss it back to the host. Yeah, we'll just be looping this. We're hoping to see him just use Tempest a bunch to repel lots of damage, and uh -huh. hopefully he doesn't use Dragon Eye. There we go. Yeah, so, get yeah. Him. yeah, feel free to. Uh, or rather. You have anything to <laughs> make plug? Him get or himself? Read? Yeah, okay, no problem. I've got a bunch of donations. We have got a donation from Rob Draven that says, well, looking at the future incentives and wait. The Final Fantasy 1 randomizer players aren't forced to fight the War Chicken yet? Let's correct that. Thank you so much. We have got a $50 donation from Anari that says, EDGR would definitely take down Gora Gora. Remember that there's donation incentives for the rest of the marathon ahead. There are fabulous prizes. Nami's fantastic. And also, we have this donation from Maddie Inc. Twenty dollars, and Maddie says, "SMT continues to rock. Looking forward to the rest. You have until the end of this run to get in for that prize pack, and it's gonna be a wild ride from here, everybody." I guess you could learn it over Dekaja, yeah. make the move list cleaner. <laughs> that was probably an attempt to change uh, either Dark Might or Needle Rush. We don't need Dark Might anymore for the rest of the run, but. The phase of Kagatsuchi no longer matters. There's never like, oh, we have to get here by new o'clock. Well, actually, uh, it, we're, we're going to get a diamond on our way out of the next place, but that's at yeah. 12 o'clock. A diamond, and then there will be a uh, bead of life we pick up as well later on, but that one's easy to set up just by spinning around outside the area. I, I don't think we need it because we got the bonus great chakra. I'm going to go for it still because better turn economy against Kagatsuchi. Oh, true. Because you can get the heal too. So we did it. We liberated all the Magatsuhi from the three guardians of Amala Temple. And then uh, Hashtag Null plays a nice diminished seventh chord for us and uh, descends this pyramid-shaped thing into a square-shaped hole so we can finally enter the main floating temple. I need to disagree he with him here. Invites us inside. Yeah, yeah. This is, um, is kind of where the reasons start to really come into being. This starts a trend of uh, our human uh, reason representatives uh, make a large sacrifice and uh, use all the Megatsuhi they've gathered to merge with an avatar from beyond. So, uh, what happened to Hijiri anyway? He got he got pulled into the Amala network, and we haven't seen him for a little while. I hope he's okay. Eh, he's probably fine. I bet he's just hanging out somewhere. Well, wait. Do we hope he's okay? He was gonna he was you know gonna betray us. He is saying like I'm the smartest guy. I'm gonna contend for the creation. So uh, yeah, hashtag Null has been saying. Uh, Hijiri was going to betray you, and he was, it was going to be you or me hung up here. He was going to sacrifice one of us. 
So I, I saved you, man. I sacrificed Tajiri first. So will you sacrifice him for the in the name of Musubi? And we're gonna we say, say no. no. <laughs> we're actually gonna just tell him to stop before, so he's not even gonna give us the option. Yeah, yeah. You can either you can either ask like, "What are you doing?" or "Stop this." Just stop this. Yeah, see, he's just hanging out. It's fine. Yeah, this this is kind of an interesting conversation because it's. I feel like it is not entirely clear if Hijiri was going to go that far and and sacrifice uh, Demi Fiend. What he what he says here is also kind of ambiguous. Like Hijiri is not like begging for mercy. He's not like put me down. I want to live. He's just like yeah, whatever I say is just gonna make it worse for me. So just do whatever you're gonna do. He's uh. Surprisingly chill about his imminent demise. You can learn a little more about Hijiri and the Labyrinth of Amala and some cutscenes in there, but uh, I guess we'll have to do Hard True Demon Ending another year, huh? Whee! We're already the longest run in the marathon. I did. <laughs> yeah, what's another five hours? <laughs> Might need a, a third member for the relay for that so we can do four plus four plus four hours. Except there's two completely different routes for Hard True Demon Ending, and I might be inventing a third. Uh, that'll be for HD. Uh, maybe it'll be a race. That would be really weird. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so Isamu oh, like here summons a summons a nameless god, but uh, because a nameless god wouldn't make any sense, he names it Noah, and uh, Noah takes the form of a uh, a giant legged whale, or a I think someone told me it's called a tardigrade or a water bear. Get a giant one of those. Maybe, maybe it's a manatee or a hippo. It's a moomin. Yeah. <laughs> Moomin! It's the critter from beyond. What do you think, Kalas? Isn't it cool? No one will be able to interfere with each other's lives anymore. Everyone will be happy. So yeah, despite being the last person to actually uh, establish a reason, uh, hashtag Noel ends up actually being the first person to summon their avatar. Oh, and the divines finally flew their way here. Just as she said, a reason has been conceived. We must hurry and report to Lady Chionki. What's what's Junkie up to anyway? Well, we'll figure it out pretty soon. So yeah, uh, we got to go back to Ginza and cash in on that ruby now. Yep. This is where the Megiddo Rock is gonna come in handy. Uh, I could probably chat for a while about the next area. I I was gonna write a Nocturne Safari guide for what kind of demons live in each area and what you have to watch out for. And uh, this Mifunashiro section would be uh, the one most worthy of strong words because. Uh, the high-level brute uh, Shiki Oji lives here, who has both Mahamaon and Mamaduon in its move set. That's both flavors of instant kill. The only thing you could do to deal with that would be uh, to learn anti-death early, fine, and then yeah, no. can't. yeah, I don't think we have, we're not going to get any bonus jades unless we beat Dekarabia. Well, I was checking to see if I had, like, by chance, gotten an extra amethyst so I could get the Nigimitama early. Oh, I see. And uh, Kelpie can drop jades as well, actually. So let's see, we're going in at full. I think we'll make it. Even if we, uh, you know, get back at falling seven and don't get the great chakra, we already got one as a present. Yeah, so, yeah, all we could do, we got the Geisha Magatama, we got the reward from Puzzle Boy. Thank you so much to the donators for giving us that piece of consistency. We are going to learn the anti-death passive skill later, though, for the final dungeon. Uh, we don't want to, we're, we're juggling eight really good moves. We can't we can't cram in anti-death just yet. And the only other way to play around Shiki Oji having both kinds of instant kill would be to spend way too much money on the Vimana Magatama. The first skill you learn on it is Endure, which is like same thing as second chance from Kingdom Hearts. If you would die, you go to one HP instead and pop the Endure. But the soonest you can learn Endure is level 51, and we're going to finish the run at level 48-ish. So, yeah, thanks Shiki Oji for making one inconsistent area in this speed run. Geese. Yeah, there Kong. we go. We're probably going to level up twice from the Seraphs with that nice uh, probably. 82 TNL. Might clear two skills on Geish, which is fine. Uh, nothing bad can happen if it shakes. It'll just heal you or your party. Uh, there's a magic mirror in this room. Oh, there they are. Shiki Oji. Stun needle. Okay. Or, or they... I think it's pretty rare for them to try an instant kill spell, but... The, the fact is that they're, you know, even in Obelisk, where there's so many different kinds of attacks coming at you, it's possible to cover almost everything and be mostly okay. 
The encounter in the last couple of minutes has been a little obnoxious, I won't lie. <laughs> if anyone's seen me rolling my eyes on camera, that's that's why it's me reacting to the encounter rate. Yeah, luckily it's normal mode and we're just like uh, left on the D-pad and X away from leaving. Fast retreat, passive skill, giving us that feels like 99% chance to run away. In all of our practice runs, we had a couple escape fails, but we've had zero so far in the entire run, which is honestly what I expect to see. I'm always just... Uh, <laughs> knock on wood. I hope this table's actually made of wood. The literal knock on wood. So yeah. yeah, saving again at Mifunashiro A because of Shiki Oji being a jerk. Yeah, I also the I have had this fight go poorly before with stun with a uh, oh yeah stasis, stasis blade. blade critting me. Yeah, so. I'll, I'll start talking about the next boss fight before us here. There's actually two options that you're allowed to choose. Um, if you were agreeing with Chunky and Gozu Tenno so far and disagreeing with the other reason representatives, okay, if it's new o'clock here, we should be good for yeah. Diamond on the way out. Uh, yeah, if you if you are disagreeing with the other reason representatives, then Chunky will think that you're worthy of Yosuga and will ask you. Uh, hey, I, I slaughtered all these mannequins, and now Fudomimi's the last one left. Uh, and like, help me kill him, and we can, you know, we can bring in the world of strong demons. And we can either agree with her, or say like, uh, I see your point, but I don't agree. <laughs> and uh, so, or if you know, we've been agreeing with uh, Hikawa so far, so she's gonna say, Ah, oh, you're you're a fool. You're not worthy of the reason of Yosuga. You're not needed anymore. Now perish. And then she'll summon three powerful angels, the Seraphs. So. If we fight Fudomimi, that locks you into, you can only get Yosuga or True Demon Endings at that point. Uh, Fudomimi is best dealt with taunts and Tetrakarn strats because he likes to use War Cry and physical attacks. But this is normal mode and we're reflecting half as much damage. It's no fun. So even though the Seraphs have resist magic and Fudomimi has resist physical, uh, we're going to uh, fight the Seraphs because we have to to get the Shijimo or Musubi endings that were uh, the viable options. Um, so yeah, the Seraphs are, it's kind of a complicated fight. There's three of them. They all have 3,000 HP and resist magic. Uh, in order, uh, Raphael will go first and either use Tetrakarn or Makarakarn or Stasis Blade. He also has Diarahan in his moveset. That's like heal all. That'll just heal 3,000 HP on one of the angels. So the old strat was to mana drain him down to zero to make sure there's no more shields and no potential healing. But I was not satisfied with this. This is normal mode. We're a mega powerful wizard. We can do better than this. Uh, Uriel will go second. Likes to use uh, Beast Eyes sometimes. Uh, Prominence, which is the strongest uh, random targeting fire spell in the game. Um, and Gabriel goes third. She likes to use uh, Maziodyne or Holy Wrath. Uh, this is why we have Null Expel on MC, just to take away the turn. Um, and uh, Raiji here will absorb the uh, Maziodyne. Here's some nice chords. Uh, C major, E minor, and A minor. I think that's what they are. No, it's E minor, B minor, A minor. Yeah, that's what they are. <laughs> so yeah, um, even though Raphael is throwing out either kinds of shields, we can still react and get in good damage. Uh, we can stack up our offensive buffs first or do a bit of both. Um, Max and I like doing first defensive first because they can do a lot of damage if they uh, if they opt to do so. Yeah. So if so, basically we get set up uh, ideally by like turn five or so. If Raphael uses Tetracarn, we'll just throw tornadoes at them. Once we have our buffs and debuffs maxed out, we still do about six hundred with MC's tornado. Uh, and if Makarkarn is up, uh, we use that strength and sense on Orthrus, so his stun claw actually does pretty respectable damage. Especially if we can get in some Tarukajas with Kurama. And also remember that Megiddo Rock that we just got from Rags Jewelry, that succubus that we fought under Tokyo Tower to give us a ruby to trade in for a Megiddo Rock. Almighty, it's gonna do full damage. It does about a thousand damage to all of them. And Tornado's random targets, it's gonna hit more than one. Even if Raphael uses the Arahan on one of them, the others still have a bunch of damage on them. I love it when they so. Makara Karn on top of Makara Karn, it's lovely. Like just making yeah. sure you, you knew that they don't do too much damage. Our goal here is going to be to kill uh, Raphael first, because he's the problem, putting up these double shields and has potential healing. I do need to heal here. Yeah, the Seraphs don't do a lot of damage, uh, especially because if we're like going aggressive and getting our uh, offensive abilities up. Okay, so here's Tetrakarn inviting us to use Tornado. Oh yeah, uh, Uriel can use Megidula sometimes, but we have Tsukukaja available. As long as there's one dodge, there you go. Their turn's over. Their turn's over. Safety. 
I am short one taunt. I can get that in on Arthur's the second turn. Yeah. Oh, that's still pretty good damage, though. Yeah, getting it in on the second lap. Here we go. Good old 2-4, two, 2-4 four, two, four turn order. Uh, we might be doomed to stop for a Mana Drain anyway, just because Mana Drain costs 2 and Tornado costs 25. So here comes Beast Eye. Gabriel's going to do something. Uh, oh, nice. That's annoying. Uh, who cares if it's Gabriel? Gabriel's the weakest Seraph by far. If she's left at the they end, it's going to be an easy time. Uh, no, their shield's down. Shield's down? Or did they? I think they did Tetrakarn. Well, I'll play it safe this turn. I have to drain anyway. Yeah, I guess. We could uh, stack up Tarukajo with uh, Kurama. So that Orthros' next physical will hit him pretty good. And yeah, we'll, we'll be ready for the next Makara Karn with that Megiddo Rock. I don't think Raiju got Tarukaja. I think that's a possibility. <laughs> You're on, on the right. same one. Sure, okay. whatever. Cool story, bro. And if someone dodges, it's fully shields down. We can do a mixed offense that includes uh, yeah, double Stun Claw, double Tornado. Yeah. There okay, the problem is gone. Uh, we could probably do it on uh, Gabriel because she's a. Oh, yeah, true. She has more health, All right? Yeah, you tend to get better damage overall if there's two targets up. Yeah, see, we got dubs on Gabriel and uh, singles this on Gabriel. here, but that doesn't really matter. I think. Oh, never mind. With all those Raku Kajos, they, they oh, can't yeah, even true. hurt you. True, true, true. I. That's targeting. fine. It's fine. We don't have enough HP for a second stun claw at this point. But Orthrus has absorbed fire. Oh wait, there's no prominence to absorb anymore. <laughs> nice. Or you can just the old, the old paw for lethal. Good job. Yeah. Now we're gonna level up our agility a little bit because you know this is normal mode. We don't need vitality. Oh baby, life or something. We have all the vitality we need because it's normal mode. Don't need Tarkaj on Karama anymore or Dark Might. Take your pick. I guess you get a cleaner move list getting rid of the active skill. Yep. Raiju doesn't need more experience. Uh, we're looking to get Karama leveled up enough to learn Wind Cutter. Um, Raiju didn't need the experience. Orthrus is going to learn um, War Cry eventually. Uh, Orthrus could probably die in a boss fight and still have enough experience. Oh, good call. I got to get hydrated too. Okay, you, you quickly explain what's happening while I chug. Yeah, so uh, here with Fudomimi and the uh, the sacrifice of Fudomimi and uh, most of the mannequins, Chiaki now has enough Magatsuhi to summon uh, to summon her god of choice, who is Ball Avatar, who will uh, represent the uh, the reason of Yosuga. Yep, a paragon of strength. Chiaki gets even prettier with a her her wacky arm gets replaced with a big beautiful butterfly wing. This very uh, yeah. dazzling cutscene. So, uh, and then she's just gonna fly off and uh, announces that uh, another reason is about to take place in Sanno. Uh, I think if you like walk toward the right edge of Amala Temple, like when you're in the Vortex world, it always explains what district of Tokyo you're in. And I think you can see that you're in Sanno if you go like out of your way to touch the right edge of that big uh, uh, hill. Uh, <laughs> I kind of had no idea where Sanno was, but. Having explored the world, there's actually a really far away train station on the Ginza map that has just kind of been locked for the entire game. So I thought, oh, Hikawa's on his way to the Diet Building. Maybe that's the road to get there. So that's where we're headed next. It's uh, it's going to be a long walk. And uh, we already did our jewel shopping. There's going to be nothing to do except go to Ginza and heal and walk there. I'll grab this great chakra. But... Oh, yeah. Oh, falling seven. What did we get? Got there. the diamond. There we go. We can trade that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We are. We're going to buy the Great Chakra. Yeah. yeah. Rags Jewelry with that. So I guess that's the only thing we're going to do on the way. Uh, I suppose we can hand it back to Kat, our host, if there's uh, any more messages. Hi. I would love to talk a little bit about some of the people who are supporting us behind the scenes. RPG Limit Break is grateful to LLK, a longtime contributor to GDQ marathons and the designer of our promo banners, attendee badges, and emotes. Check out her work at J-A-Z-A-A-B-O-O dot com. Another artist that deserves special thanks is the one who worked on our overlays, Oro, who can be found on Twitter at O-U-R-O-L-E-N. 
There's a lot of people who make RPG Limit Break look as slick as it does, and all of them deserve your love and support. Putting in the time. Thanks as well to our also tech team. Also donate for Yosuka. Uh, <laughs> thanks as well to the tech team with the featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And renaming you two Dante and Mothman was an adorable touch. I loved it. Yeah, our, our runners. All right. So coming up, uh, once we get to the tunnel, there is going to be another, uh, another fiend that you could opt to try to dodge. Uh, however, the, the way this works, and this is going to be Trumpeter, I'm just going to fight him for the sake of the marathon just to show him, show off the fight. Uh, it is actually worth fighting him even in the speedrun normally. Uh, basically how it works is the EX you get about 8,000 EXP for beating Trumpeter. Uh, if you beat Trumpeter, then you don't have to take any encounters in this next area, which is rather nice. Uh, the encounters in the next area aren't too bad, but they are a little annoying because there's a lot of magic resist. Uh, however, uh, if so, yeah, if you fight Trumpeter, you don't have to take encounters in the cave. If you dodge Trumpeter, it's a little bit faster, but you do have to take encounters and make up about 8k experience there. So, again, just because it's interesting to show off another boss fight, we will be fighting Trumpeter here today. But uh, just note that, you know, it's we would probably try to dodge him uh, yeah, in a PP attempt. It's, like, very slightly faster. Freedom gave up the skill Violet Flash on Karama earlier, which you would want to learn over Zanma. Uh, Violet Flash is a pretty powerful single target spell that does damage, but it's expel element. And this will do full damage even through uh, magic resist. Especially since a lot of the things that are weak, though, that do have magic resist, are weak to expel. Uh, both the uh, the Vitalas in, and the Kaiwans are both uh, instances of that. Yeah. And Loa, actually. Loa is. Oh, Loa is Loa, right? Yeah. Oh, we're going in a falling? Oh, oh okay, I'm full of clock. Yeah, full. Yeah, I, this this fight is really cool. This is a lot. It is faster to dodge, but it's way more interesting than just uh, wrecking stuff with Violet Flash and Tornado in the in the tunnel. So yeah, it's been a while since we've had a spooky skeleton boss. They're uh, kind of optional, but uh, <laughs> this one Trumpet is kind of funny because he's like, uh, "If you can beat me, last of the fiends." Like, huh? I haven't even fought Daisojo yet. What are you talking about? So. Yeah, Trumpeter oh. has 11,000 HP and is uh, a, definitely a spellcaster. Likes to attack with Mega Duel Down and uh, all the Dine tier spells. So we have good coverage here. We have Absorb Force on Karama and Absorb Fire on Mikami. We got Repel Elect on MC via Adama, which also provides a nice uh, plus eight vitality. And uh, Mikami is also here. Uh, not, f not so much for double null fire coverage, but uh, Tr Trumpeter has a very interesting gimmick that he will demonstrate on turn one. Um, he uses something called Holy Melody, which targets whoever has the lowest uh, current HP and restores their HP and MP fully. So if everyone goes in at full HP, he might just use it on himself and reveal that his max HP is 11,000. Oh, I, I forgot to do the thing. Uh, oops, it's like... I can't do it. Oh, well. I, I'm busy talking about Trumpeter. So... Wow. Yeah, here comes the Zingadine. Nice reflected 83 damage. Uh, Trumpeter likes to use Dekaja as well, but we're just going to debuff him a bunch. Um, so the other thing about Holy Melody is there's a counterpart uh, that he will use after the end of turn four called Evil Melody, which will target whoever has the lowest current percentage of HP and Almighty Instant Kill them. It's unavoidable. Can't be dodged. Uh, Tetraja doesn't even work. You're just dead. So we brought Orthrus here, who still has Stun Claw. Uh, we never actually explained that physical skills cost HP in this game. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, what? I think we're just at double Megidola own. Wow, sometimes you just get Megidola owned. Well, we had enough HP for everyone to survive. This happened last time, too. We got that uh, Bomb of Rising to bring Mikami back in. Yeah, so I think pass. Uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put Dekaja on the table here. Yeah, uh, that'll consume one of Trumpeter's turns. we got to heal who we have. We may still be able to set up some bait. Uh, can we... I'm going to a second taunt. I already did taunt. I already taunted him twice. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's two taunts on turn one. Okay, there we go. All right. This should buy us a window to try to revive Mikami. Uh, I believe this is the end of turn three. E this is turn three. Okay. So we got to... Having Mikami around is, is helpful. 
because uh, Mikami has the Recarm skill, which does the same thing as a Revival Bead. It'll uh, revive a dead demon who's in the stock with low HP, which we're going to use on uh, Orthrus to summon on turn 8 as the bait for Holy Melody. So instead of Trumpeter healing himself back to full, uh, we'll have just a full HP Orthrus again. Oh, nice range. Six. Let's go. All right, so this is turn 4? Yeah, okay. and Orthrus can just be the bait. I think we can just... Uh... Nice Kaishin. <laughs> yeah. We can just summon Mikami so that we have a third press turn going into turn five. Yeah, and then I can do a Medea just. You can do, so or, no, we can do Diorama on Kurama. Oh, yeah, sure. And a free tornado, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, tornado and is gonna be the way to go on both Kurama and Kalos. So here it comes Cower at the arrival of death! See you, Orthrus. He'll be back later. We're maybe a little behind on damage because of the shenanigans. Oh, wow, we would have got an extra turn, but Karama just sat there and absorbed it. Okay, here we go. Uh, Mikami can help heal as well. Uh, I like to do the Recarm on turn six, because it's basically like Tornado, Mikami, Tornado for these next three turns. So putting Recarm in the middle for some variety helps, or just when you have an opening. Oh, yeah, Trump really likes to use Makakaja a little bit too. Don't like that he did that. I think, our, I think we're fine. I should be fine. It's just... If he does it again. Could, could throw in a war cry for variety too. Yeah, if he does it again, I'm gonna war cry him. Okay, so Orthrus is ready to come back and be the bait. We still have a, oh yeah, we did a Rakukaja. You can use a Makakaja with Kurama potentially as well, but nah, I think just doing raw tornado is better. No, no dodges here. Kurama getting healed, that's nice. Ooh, okay. So this is turn seven. Again, we go uh, tornado, heal, tornado. I don't like how low I'm uh, Should be fine. That's fine, we'll just... As long as he doesn't use him to down again. Yeah. Yeah, only 60 damage. No dodges, though. Oh, that's bad. Uh-oh. Ooh, nice range! Okay, ooh. Uh, I think we go Media with Mikami. Uh, Trumpeter's first turn will be used on the Holy Melody. And so long as, uh, yeah, Orthos has like lower percentage. Oh, honestly, I should have just left not healed there and uh, let or him see. Use, yeah, use a bead on somebody and then Holy Melody heals who else is in there. Yeah, because Holy Melody would have gotten uh, would have gotten MC there. Now we're in trouble. Depends if it's, oh, here oh, we go. Okay, we'll we'll reflect that. Okay, now uh, we're good to go. Yeah, Mikami can keep us alive. Orthos can help with Stun Claw, I guess. Or, actually, I guess it's more impactful to go... Uh, I'm gonna have MC heal. Yeah, and MC's a way stronger healer. Kills. Yeah, like, passing to get in more tornadoes. Oh, wait, Karama's out of MP. All right, Orthrus, it's all you. Oh, nice, yeah. Orthrus is gonna absorb that. <laughs> all right, this should kill. He, he's at he's been at low health for a while, so yeah, this will definitely kill him. He's in that slump pose, so about 2,500 or less HP left. All right, well that was terrifying, but we made it out. Yeah, good job. Scout wow, that a, was intense. <laughs> yeah, scout is a talking skill, but we we were done recruiting a long time ago. Ooh, Jade, that is traded in for Mitamas at Rags Jewelry, and the Mitamas from the Compendium go for. Well, we'll be buying Nigi Mitama for 15,600 at a time, and Kushi Mitama costs 17,400. Yeah, Kamado for the part after. Uh, Ifri can show up uh, in the next part and uh, use prominence with fire boost. Uh, but it, I think on normal mode, we should be okay. Faster to just not have to open the menu again. Oh, right. <laughs> Quetzal is here with Stone Bite. Uh, resist physical might be nice, but I think the weak to ailments part does make uh, stone proc more likely. Uh, it scary. doesn't because stone is a death element, and so oh, yeah, it's not it's considered not an ailment. Yeah. Oops, that's not the thing I meant to use. There we go. There we go. Turn the lights on. Uh, we should probably go heal. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm going that. Right I, li now. I like to heal while on the road when possible, but the fact is Karama is out of MP, and uh, that cannot be helped. It would be kind of funny if MC could learn Makatora. That'd be a good combo with Mana Drain. Uh, or you could learn Mana Refill from Gay Smogatama. So yeah, oh yeah, we're, we're leveling Agility as well. Um, 
this is to prepare our comp. So I've talked about turn order a bit, right? Like, you know, getting the nice polarity of like 1313 or 2424. Well, we have a bit of a problem here. Karama is a birdman with something like 17 agility. Karama is extremely fast, and MC is extremely slow. So we still have this turn order of Karama first and MC fourth. So you can like count on your fingers yourself. I mean, like it's kind of hard to explain the press turn system in words, but when you see how it plays out on screen, it's kind of obvious, right? You can count on on your fingers. You know, you want Karama going first. You pass with whoever's second. Whoever's third consumes their turn. Now it's MC's turn. He uses Tornado. Now you have one head left for another Tornado from Karama. So that's only three Tornadoes per turn cycle. It would be so much better, right, if MC was third, because then you get one three, one three turn order. You get four Tornadoes per turn cycle. So the solution to this is our fourth party member is of course going to be Mizuchi. Just kidding, it's going to be Mothman in the final battle. But on the way there, <laughs> uh, we'll take advantage of Mizuchi. Uh, the and Mizuchi starts with Makakaja, although that's not really needed. I didn't need the, that. The important thing is actually um, when Mizuchi levels up once, Mizuchi learns Makarakarn, which we will need for the, the penultimate battle. Um, and so Mizuchi is a snake. I mentioned how snakes have low agility. Our stock Mizuchi will start with seven agility. And uh, we'll, use, we'll fuse a Mitama to it, uh, either Ara Mitama for Bright Might, which will increase agility by one, or the Kushi Mitama that we have on file that also has Bright Might. Um, so that'll give Mizuchi eight agility. So, and remember how I said agility ties are broken by MC. They're broken by whoever's higher up on the list of active characters. And you can't ever unsummon our main character. So he will always win an agility tie. So. Uh, the Magatama we'll prefer to use for the rest of the game is Jed, because it just gives plus six magic and no weaknesses at all. Uh, no, curse doesn't matter too much, but... Um, also, shoutouts to uh, the mistranslation of uh, Vitala's name, by the way. Yeah, Vitala is uh, Rakshasa instead. Yeah, it's Rakshasa in this game when it's supposed to be Vitala, and it's Vitala in the HD remaster, so they fixed that. It's yeah. just a, a funny little thing. I've heard it's like uh, they just put the wrong thing on a spreadsheet somewhere or something. Probably. So yeah, uh, Jed gives plus six magic, but also plus two vitality and plus two agility. So uh, our potential goal here, I mean, I like to have um, five agility going into the Mithra fight at the end of the diet building so that MC goes fourth and Mizuchi goes third. And we won't be doing that. Yeah, Freedom likes to do it a different way with MC second. He likes to crank up agility in time nice and ahead of schedule. And uh, that works out nicely, too. Uh, so yeah, we just have to get MC to base uh, base 7 agility. Or base 8, maybe. Uh, even I if go Mizuchi, for base 8. Yeah, because even if Mizuchi is a bit of a prankster and gains one point of agility on its one level up that it's allowed to get, uh, we'll still win the tie. You know, 9 agility versus 9 agility. Well, actually, we'll have 10. Like, it's, it's more than enough. Like I said, normal mode is pretty easy. We have more than enough vitality to survive whatever it can throw at us. We're, we have more HP than our demons, I think. Oh no, we're tied with our Karama, who's, uh, you know, who we sacrificed Minakata, our, our highest experience total demon, to get that high level Copa ahead of schedule. Uh, in fact, I did things differently in this route because I needed Copa. What, what the old route did before was when you try to run from Hellbiker, you keep Minakata all the way to Kabukicho Prison. You can take as many fights as you want in uh, Mantra HQ while you're doing your cutscenes, talking to Gozutenno on the roof, and then freeing Asamu from prison in the basement. And then you probably have a Minakata that's like level 20 with about 3,000 TNL, and you make a Copa that's level 22 with less than 500 experience to level up. So he instantly learns Makatora while in prison. So you'll be fine for MP while preparing for the big Mizuchi boss. Uh, we no, can turn I... it over to host for uh, for Hi. for a bit. Sure, I explained enough. I would love to take the reins. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about prizes. There are so many exciting prizes in this entire marathon. Of particular note during this segment is a really gorgeous SMT3 prize pack that Atlas donated for us. It includes a pin and a hat and a cute little Demi Fiend mug that I personally want very badly. And there's also a Persona 25th anniversary bag. The, that one's for if you donate at least $5 from now until the end of this run. Speaking of which, this run has been going great. It you really two has. are fantastic. My question is, about how long do people have to get their donations in before we close off that uh, prize? 
Well, <laughs> hey. <laughs> wow. Sometimes Dude, you're just good yeah. at the video game. I was going to say, uh, we have to. I think we have to go out right away. There's a mystical chest and diet building we got to hit at full o'clock. But uh, sure, we'll take a free plus one vitality. Extra three HP for our main character. Yeah, uh, in my practice runs, I kept getting, uh, like, uh, well, I practiced up to the end of the sisters and measured 440 for my split. I got a 421 while practicing here at the venue. But I think I turned the controls over to freedom at what, like 355? Like the timer said yep. uh, 351 flat at the end of Puzzle Boy, right? This yeah, it was run 342, should... 33, then 351. Unless diet building goes really poorly, this run should sub 8. I didn't look at the timer when I turned the controls over, but surely it's less than nine minutes just to walk to the end of Mifunashiro. So I, I got a sub 4 on my split. And freedom practiced uh, his section on his stream and kept getting sub 4 as well. So. I think we might come yeah. in under 8 o'clock. Uh, I can't Heck really... Yeah. I know by the end of diet building, there's a, a little under an hour left at that point. Uh, I'm not sure how long it'll take us to get through here. I think we might be on pace for sub 8, which is uh, honestly incredible for uh, doing Puzzle Boy for eight and a half minutes. I'll laugh uh, if we actually beat my PB in a, in a marathon run. Having... An, yeah, and, and the rematch versus Barrett. I am responsible for the single biggest mistake in this run. I had to fight Barrett a second time because I forgot to switch Magatama after my victory. Speaking you of two victory. You are absolute legends. <laughs> Genuinely. Thank you. So Thank you. You heard them. This run is probably going to be sub eight because you cannot slow these two down. So if you want that mug as bad as I do, get your donations in. Oh, nice dodge. I was about to say, rule number one of this fight is that Karama's not allowed to survive turn one, but uh, he actually did, so that's cool. Yeah, this is where Watchful comes in handy. So yeah, the diet building bosses have kind of silly AI. They don't have like a sequence. I think they just kind of have a big grab bag of random moves and can use like, this guy can use Beast Eye for some extra turns. He can use Dekunda. Uh, Cert's main thing is that he's extremely destructive. He is extremely powerful, uh, has 5,000 HP, uh, likes to use Tempest as we saw, so uh, He also taunt. has the strongest fire move in the game. And yeah, has Ragnarok. It's a single target fire spell that's extremely powerful. It will absolutely one-shot Karama no matter what we do. So uh, the plan for most of these bosses is kind of kill them before they kill you. Like, don't bother trying to set up for anything sustainable. Just just rush them down as fast as you can. We're going to use Taunt and Tetrakarn again to just reflect these Tempests out of them do it? a lot. Oh. Oh, he, can use Dekunda. he can use Dekunda into Dekunda because yeah. his AI is just weird. It's just perfectly random all the way around. Let's see. Okay, yeah, Monkey's kind of out of MP. A Soma Droplet would be convenient here. I should just kill him this turn. Or yeah. next turn. Either uh, way, he's dead. The like. Makakajos on Karama are pretty helpful here. Oh, okay. Another Tornado? Yeah, the Sukakajos can help our other demons. Oh, wow. Oh, that's unfortunate. Even Karama got in there. Oh, Monkey, no! no. Monkey. Well, he was out of MP anyway. Yeah. No more need for Tetrakarn. Okay, and now what's next? Uh, uh, Karama's probably dead. Wow, That's really. fine. Or yeah, now, with, with two, yeah, with two characters alive, we just go past tornado, past tornado. Having two characters alive is often better in that way. Like, because our demi fiend is slowest. Um, anyone who's played Digital Devil Saga knows that there's no way to make whoever goes third go twice. So, like, even dismissing a character can be good. But yeah, we got Shiranui, so we're immune to fire. Uh, we got Orthros with Absorb Fire, so the only thing that will kill us will be, uh, you know, a, a physical go. skill with all those uh, Tarukajas we gave him, but. Thanks to the Maga Kajas that Karama gave us, we just got there with nothing but Tornado. Uh, I forgot to res Karama. Oh well. No, it's it's fine. He's got he's got Watchful, so he'll probably level up enough from. Uh, well, I forgot to res him. Needle rush. So yeah, I would like it. Oh, yeah. Now remember, we're probably good for experience, and even if not, we have a pot of death and can just win a fight in Tower One. Yeah. Well, it's mostly him getting Fog Breath in time. In time for oh for for Mott, right? Yeah. Well, maybe we'll use our pot of death here then. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You should have. How much EXP does uh, Mata give? Mata gives eight thousand as well. Okay, so we're fine. As long as he doesn't die to Mata, we're fine. Yeah. Mata, the next boss, uh, again has absorbed physical and extremely low max HP to compensate for that. Uh, only has twenty five hundred. Uh, but he also goes first, just like Cert does. Uh, likes to use Hades Blast, which is a, a very strong attack all physical spell or, that we saw. We saw Albion use that and reflected uh, about 700 damage total when that happened. Yeah, a common theme in uh, a lot of SMT runs is that all of the fights that are uh, that have any level of like not being consistent are usually because we don't go first. It's true. 
Luckily, they put a terminal right beside all these bosses, so even if we game over, then, uh, you know, we just load and try again. I should point out we've had zero deaths for this whole run. We loaded once. Well, loaded for muscle drinks, too, but that doesn't count. But, you know, one Bareth do-over is, uh, like, pretty much the only mistake in the run. Uh, Any other mishaps were kind of beyond our control. <laughs> like I said, normal is uh, pretty comfy. This is, uh, this is the category that most people learn if they want to learn the game. Uh, I have some very verbose notes on speedrun.com that have directions through all the dungeons and explanations for many of the decisions, and I should probably... Uh, I might update them to include this uh, Hellbiker stuff, and, well, maybe not the Prey to start. That's like a... That's, that's so complicated that it's honestly not worth showing beginners. <laughs> it's, it's also <laughs> slower, so it's like you might as well. Yeah, yeah. It, it does lead to a more consistent uh, Karama because you add Makakaja later, so you just go, okay, I'll make Kopa with Dark Might and any Zio skill, and then add Makakaja, the hard-to-pick skill, later on. So it's nice to have, like, you know, to see, like, oh, this is the maximum outcome. This is the, the best possible uh, Kopa that I could have for the whole run. But if people are interested in learning the run, we uh, we do have a Discord server for uh, all SMT and Persona games together. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty active on there. I, I like to answer people's questions. I uh, there's a pinned message that has links to all the notes that I've written for this game. I've routed many categories. There's also shorter categories than normal any percent. Uh, Merciful any percent is sub four if you do it good enough. Merciful true demon ending is uh, about six and a quarter hours. Day Nava just routed a uh, hard new game plus true demon ending. Uh, the save file is just like a, a Steam save file and it's that's also on SRC. So if you have the PC version of HD, you can just download that and uh, try the run out for yourself. It's quite comfy. You just buy Matador insert and uh, sweep your way through the game. All right, up next we're gonna fight Mada. Uh, oh, don't forget the muscle drinks. Oh yeah. Did we did we say I, I healed terminal? already? It doesn't oh. matter. Okay, yeah, we'll we'll do it the uh, the fun way. Uh, Estoma's not active. I guess we could put one on Karama. Oh wait, we got rid of Makatora. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this this is how Mada just goes if if you're going in raw. So yeah, Mata goes first. Uh, we might just all get completely wiped out by Hades Blast. He might use Panic Voice, which is uh, very troublesome because anyone panicked is very likely to lose their turn. And that's especially bad if Onkot gets panicked because we need him to use Tetrakarn to keep us alive. If too many demons get panicked, then uh, we can't really pass to MC to use a Sacred Water to cure it. Okay, very good. We didn't get panicked on turn one, so now we can just start setting up. We could use that bonus Magic Mirror to block Panic Voice, I think. No way, we're too busy setting up. Mm -hmm. I don't even have notes for Mata. I just it's a, remember literally do the same thing as Cert. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna get ready with Taunt and Makakaja. He's got Absorb Physical, so Hades Blast won't reflect any damage. But uh, we should be setting up for a turn three kill. Uh, I don't even know if any dubs are necessary. Uh, Sukukaja is nice, so that uh, I already used a Suku, so I'll do a second Taunt and then hurt him here. Yeah, get a nice layup here. Sukakaja for turn three, so that cr oh never mind, he's probably toast next turn. Oh nice, nice absorb yeah, there, Orthrus. GG, we win. Just in case something weird happens, like it won't because he'll die in one hit. But yeah, yeah, this will be another 900. He's only got 2500 HP. So uh, see you, Mata. No muscle drinks needed. I guess we wasted uh, um, 1200 Maka on those. <laughs> yeah, we can use the muscle drinks again to. Uh, Put on poison and stun status. All right, now we don't need dirt, right? Yep. That'll be immune to panic. Monkey's leveling up. That's nice, but uh, Monkey will not see another fight anyway. Yeah, Adama is the good thing to march with through here. Uh, Queen Maeve can show up, uh, and if she's alone, she might use Dragon Eye and can use Maziodine multiple times. Uh, I've been killed by that before on hard mode. Uh, shouldn't be a big deal on normal, of course, especially with Adama to take away any extra turns. That's uh, actually the only dangerous thing down here. Uh, Cerberus can show up too, and Cerberus has uh, an extremely powerful physical skill called Iron Claw. Uh, it has a high crit chance and very high damage output, but is also extremely inaccurate. So getting hit by it is extra tilting because like two times out of three, you're just gonna dodge it. And yeah, the <laughs> The Diet Building is a very confusing place, just like any real Parliament building. <laughs> These guys have resist magic, so... Yeah, I'm gonna bring in my boy Baphomet. Yep. I'm just gonna trough out of here. Running away at full o'clock is less likely. 
Uh, I feel I feel fine re-explaining some things because I can see the sun has come up, so we got more than just Europe and the other Nighthawks watching us by now, I'm sure. I'm sure there's people tuning in in the morning to see our victory lap. We also have some morning donations if you have a minute. Absolutely. Sure, we're just wandering through here. I have got a $50 donation from Shiner's mom that says, pretty proud of what you're doing. No way. Thanks so much. That's that's the last thing I expected. Thank you so much, Mom. We've got $15 from Axis that says, I love the entire Megami Tensei series from the core games to the Persona series. I had to make at least a small donation during Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Good luck, have fun to the runners on the rest of their run. Thank you, thank you. And finally, I've got $20 from Rocket Tracer that says, SMT3 is one of my favorite RPGs. Can't wait for the true Demon End hard mode run. <laughs> well, uh, I am running that for really, really long a thon right before Christmas, actually. So we'll have uh, even more fun time being blasphemous. <laughs> so yeah, I got a, another fun boss to talk about here. Uh, well, actually, before that, we're going to do one quick fusion. Uh, we do not need Tetrakarn anymore for the rest of the run. Uh, we also don't need Archangel anymore. Um, it's just going to be high-level enemies for the rest of the game. We don't need a Stoma anymore. So we will combine our useless demons into useful Mizuchi. Um, mostly just picking uh, Rakunda that Archangel had for the entire game. Um, we are going to need a way to debuff the boss's defense, and Taunt is n not the most efficient because it raises their physical attack. So we're just going to go back to good old Rakunda for uh, the rest of the run. Well, just one more. Just two more fights here. There's Rakunda. That works. Easy. Yeah, and we got the uh, Kusi already made. We're attaching, I think we're going to attach Bright Might here because we can actually take advantage of that in the final battle. Uh, oh, wait, we no, we're, no, there's no point. We're not having Mizuchi. I'm just going to roll for Rakukaja just in case. Shouldn't come up, but uh, you never know. We could, oh, if our, if our Kusi had Zeo. Yeah. Uh, I'm of the opinion that it won't come up, but it's. Kind of fun to show off how hard it is to attach Rakukaja sometimes. Yeah. Friendly reminder, Rakukaja is five skill ranks higher than every other buff. There, there it is. Yeah, I guess Mizuchi is going to be in uh, the last fight of the Diet Building, and... It'll and be in through Ball Avatar, because we need Makara Karn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the main reason we need Mizuchi. Uh... That's that first skill Mizuchi learns. We need Makara Karn for the spell shield. But yeah, the next boss is probably the second most notorious in the entire game, other than Matador. I'm sure there, when HD came out, I, I saw like a viral video clip of uh, of Mott doing his thing, doing his famous thing. So the diet building bosses, actually Mithra is kind of well structured, but Mott is uh, perfectly random. And uh, one of the things Mott likes to do is Beast Eye to gain two more turns. And he can do this as much as he wants. <laughs> he can potentially take infinite turns. It's a, it's a true fact. And his favorite spell to attack with is also Megidolaon, that almighty microwave that uh, just hits everybody, no resistance or immunity to it. So what we're going to do is max out Tsukukaja and maintain Fog Breath to max out our evasion. The best way to break the conduit is to dodge, to take away those extra turns. Mott has another habit as well where uh, he likes to use Dekunda, especially if his magical attack is negative. Yeah, his AI isn't entirely random. The Beast Eye thing only happens if he doesn't have, uh, if he is not debuffed. So as long as we keep him debuffed, he won't be uh, won't be doing any Beast Eye shenanigans. The other thing about Mott is that Tornado will not work. Uh, a soul in the hallway warns us that like, I don't care if only one thing works, just try everything. Uh, he's got like absorbs and nulls and repels of all kinds for days. He has he something like 99% physical resist. Oh, we also have to find the statue that doesn't have a reflection to start the fight. Uh, yeah, if you attack him, you'll do like 15 damage and then he'll use Avenge and just do massive damage to you. Uh, the only thing that works is Elec and he's actually weak to it. So we brought this Raiju with Zionga and Elec boost just specifically for this fight. However, Raiju is kind of squishy and under leveled. We gave him Tsukukaja to help max out our evasion early on. Um, and that 240 HP is a bit squishy. Uh, we might do a bit of Rakukaja just to deal with the, the con Like, Warcry is not a great option. Not, I mean, MC can handle using spending 40 over and over. MC's just in charge of Warcry and Media, and that's about it. If we had any Mazio rocks left, maybe they could help, but... Well, I have that Megido rock still. 
Oh yeah, we didn't use it on the Seraphs. That'll do good damage later on. Yeah, Mott's got 3,500 HP, so it's uh, a bit of a long battle. This is probably uh, one of the more intense battles in the route, actually. This yeah. is also why I really wanted to make sure that Shiner gave uh, gave Copa an electric skill, because this fight is absolutely abysmal without uh, a second person with a luck. Yeah, it's true. Getting Chroma going first, having a pretty good magic stat, and high agility so he won't miss. Oh yeah, shock status makes sure you won't miss as well. Uh, if we got a bonus turn with Orthrus, yeah, Rakukaj is a good option. Just because, like, Dekunda and then Mega Duel alone. Oh yeah, and that Mazanda and hitting Raiju's weakness could be relevant. Yeah, if nothing else, Mod always will respect your buffs, so there's no reason not to just buff up as much as you can. Yeah, he doesn't have Dekaja. We can buff up our own side as much as we want, and it's pretty helpful. So yeah, and yeah, Raju being under leveled, uh, very Increase likely support. to miss uh, without fog uh, breath. I can't Oops. count. That's fine. <laughs> they made to reach. It's fine. Uh, might as well get our last Rock Kaja. No point in doing taunt as our last press turn. He might just clean it off with Dekunda. Yeah. All right. So the the fog breath is still on. We can just lead with Zio on yep. Kurama. Got a bonus turn with uh, Orthrus to go taunt. Yep. Zio taunt taunt Zianga. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, Mont does have Tempest, but with all the Sukukaja and Fog Breath that we maintain, it's most likely to just miss everybody. Ooh, 1100. Yeah, yep. go for that Mega Dorog this yep. turn. He's Doing so it. dead. Uh, just pass. Uh, right, and it's Orthrus, not MC. I was like, why don't I have access to my uh, items? <laughs> Orthrus has pause. He can't use items. Nicely done. That was insane. That was a super clean Mott fight. That was beautiful to look yeah, at. And that's Natural 8. Only mistake was the, the fifth Makakaja, but we had a lot of chatter going Keep on. Me, no. No, we still have... Uh, oh. Let's give it up. Because Hellfang appears at the bottom of the list. Yeah. There's, we're not going to be using physical skills with Orthrus anymore. We're still a, a awesome wizard. Still have a bunch of distuns. I got a whole bunch of gifts. Okay, we don't need a lot of MP for the, the last battle of the diet building. Uh, I'll just start talking about it right away. Um, it's a... Uh, Big lion guy with two uh, sticks called Mitra. Two sticks, two snakes. And uh, he's cuddling with a snake. Yeah. Very Mitra's cute. got a decent amount of HP. I keep thinking it's 3,500, but then it always seems like it takes more than that. It's about 5,000, I think. Yeah. Uh, the main gimmick with Mitra, Mitra only has oh one goodness. press turn, uh, but does have some nasty maneuvers. He can use Debilitate, which is a, a powerful debuff skill that lowers all of your stats one stage. Your, your physical and magical attack and defense and uh, accuracy evasion. Uh, that's pretty unlikely though. The main thing, he can also do like a normal attack and uh, Megidola sometimes. The main thing he's gonna do is Dragon Eye, Mamadoon, Mahamon, Mamadoon, Mahamon. So with the Tetraja Rock, we could just uh, block all that, but then we have to sit through all the animations. Uh, we don't have a demon with Tetraja to like reliably do it. Might not have any Tetraja Rocks left. No, I'm not a demon. Yeah, we're, we're going for a reason ending. We're not a demon. So that Baphomet we fused has repelled. Oh, MC is actually faster than uh, Raiju. Yeah, we cranked our agility pretty good. Yeah, so we got three demons with Null Death. Uh, we got Anathema for Null Death on MC. Uh, but Baphomet's Repel Death is going to end Mithra's entire turn if the Dragon Eye into, um, into Mamaduon happens. Yeah, here it comes. So... The other nice thing, uh, we made sure to avoid taking level ups with Anathema. The second skill on it is uh, Anti-Death, which is a passive that will um, increase your resistance to death-flavored instant kills. Combined with the reward of the Puzzle Boy minigame, the Geish Magatama, that just gives Null Expel with no weaknesses, we'll have the best possible uh, resistance to instant kills in the, the next dungeon. And yeah, as usual, it's going to be Tornado Go Burr, nice dubs. Um, we got... Makakaja on Baphomet and Mizuchi. They just naturally start with it. Raiju has Sukukaja just to keep our agility up, just in case debilitate lands, or if, uh, I guess Baphomet would help, but I think Baphomet just has Agi or Zon. Okay, nice dubs. We should kill him uh, here. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, one more Rakunda. Oh, they oh. reached. Oh. All right, this is lethal anyway. Yeah. GG. Mithra down, another 8,000 experience in the bank. And this is this is the only fight in the entire run that Kurama does not participate in. So that's 4,000 experience for Kurama. Is that enough? There we go, Wind Cutter over Zanma. Or Zio, your pick. <laughs> yeah, Wind Cutter is uh, very strong. It's it's way stronger than Zondine. It's, I think Ragnarok is the only stronger spell in the entire game, actually. I just love to do it, uh, it attacks a single target. 
and uh, is going to... Let's put it in perspective here. We're going to have uh, the highest magic stat we can on Kurama. Let's see, Rising 5. I'm going to have to spin Yeah, part. we got to spin right here. Uh, we have one more cutscene to watch in here, but it takes four cycles to walk there and back, so we either... We would, we're here at Rising 6. If we went there and back, it's Falling 6, so we got to spin around and open this right here. I can talk about what lays in store for us in the end game here. I can uh, hand it back to our host, Cat, once again. What is the app? 19. I would That's love to I take have. the helm. Yeah, go ahead. Let's see. We want to... Send out thanks to the people involved in our foreign language restreams. Our French restream can be found at twitch.tv slash lefrenchrestream and our Japanese stream at twitch.tv slash Japanese underscore restream. If those restreams can help you enjoy the marathon, go check them out and send them some love. Bonjour, comment ça va? <laughs> I'm Canadian, so I, can, I can say five words in French. <laughs> So yeah, the, uh, the mystical chest in there contained another magic incense. Combined with the magic incense I obtained about uh, four and a half hours ago. Um, yeah, I can talk about uh, Mitama mechanics a little more in depth. Uh, no, maybe a bit later. Let's, let's talk about the story here. The TLDR the guy, for probably. Mitamas is that you can buff up any stat to basically two times what, it's ba what your base stat is on that demon. So yeah. with it with a 19 uh, magic Karama, we'll end up with a 36 magic uh, Karama. 37. 37 magic. We could go to 38, but it's not worth the animation yeah. of watching the fusion one more time just for a single point. Magic kind of yeah. scales logarithmically. Yeah. So uh, we ideally Karama would have gotten to 20 or would have gotten up to 20 magic, so we could have max magic. But it's uh, whatever. 36 is close enough. Uh, after about 36 anyway, the magic formula makes you get less uh, power per level, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, that's pretty much the summary of it. So here we see uh, Hikawa has uh, basically sacrificing our teacher for uh, to summon uh, the god of Shijima, and we're just kind of going to let him do it. Uh, there's a boss fight here that you can fight if you get in Hikawa's way. It's Samael. It's like probably the hardest fight in the game that's required for the story, and it's uh, not, a, not a fun one, and we're siding with him anyway, so we're just going to let him do his thing. Might also, Aradia well. leaves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Aradia intervenes, and Hikawa's like, Oh, Aradia, wow, that's, that's where you were hiding. And then Aradia's like, uh, Actually, I'm going to peace. <laughs> so uh, the, the end result of uh, Aradia's impact on the story is letting our main character walk around with two more demons, giving us two more notches on the poke belt. <laughs> so yeah, this, this is a cool cutscene. The this, this spinning room finally stops spinning and then opens up, and uh, our impressionistic Hikawa ascends and merges with the gigantic lizard-like god, Araman, the god of the void. And that's not quite the last we'll see of our teacher, though. I love the, the little pose that Araman makes here. He's like telling a fishing story, like, it was this big. <laughs> Eternal prosperity is possible through my power alone. Again, he wants that reason of Shijima, the, the world of serenity resonating with the universe. Oh, and our teacher in her last breath gives us the pyramid, because apparently the, uh, the pyramid is actually the key to opening up the, uh, the end of the, the last dungeon, which is basically the trying ground for uh, all of the reasons where the, the reason representatives will wage war on each other to see who comes out victorious. And now we have some more walking, so now is a uh, awesome time for uh, turn the time over to the host for a bit. Yep. Oh, thanks. I want to remind everyone that we've got some fabulous prizes. I keep talking about the prize pack because I want a demi fiend mug real bad, and I keep talking about the Persona 25th anniversary bag because it's adorable. But there's also a grand prize for the run. Did I mention that? If you get a hundred in cumulative donations, which means you don't have to put them all in at the same time, you could win a PlayStation 5 with the Final Fantasy VII Remake and Tales of Arise, which sounds great, and I want that too. So get to work on your, uh, on your 100. Chip in a little bit. Give me something to read. Tell me how much you love Chiaki. Uh, I'll do the fusions first. Oh, okay. It doesn't really matter which order I do these in. Oh, I need to go to Ginza, though. Shoot. I have to get, uh, get oh, the Mitama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the diet building bosses also had some uh, guaranteed drops that are useful to us. 
uh, half a run time ago, I got a jade from the mystical chest in Big Mizuchi's room, which can be traded in for various Mitama rags jewelry. Uh, they need, there requires one other kind of gem though. Uh, in this case, it's uh, an amethyst for the Nigi Mitama we want. Um, we got the amethyst from Cert, I think. Yep. I can't remember what Mada gives right now. Also grab, uh, just because we have the extra, extra things, I'll grab one of those. Any other items I can get that might be useful? I yeah. can get this. No, we, oh. Save fine. one for Flamus. Oh, yeah, can we get oh, Flamus here? Chat has reminded... Oop. Sorry, gang. Okay. I'll double check. Uh, sorry, what was chat reminding us of? Oh, no, chat reminded me that a lot of the incentives for upcoming runs involve people singing, including a Bakami Tai sing-along at the end of Yakuza Like a Dragon. So, I mean... Oh, no coral. No come way. on, everybody. <laughs> How can this be? You were right. We could have got the Bomb of Rising. Oh, well, that's, it doesn't really matter. We shouldn't that's... even need the one that we... Like, the three that we have is probably two more than we need. That's pretty unlucky. Like, corals are usually drop all over the place. I killed, like... How many Asoras? They drop corals. I must have killed 15 or 20. They can also drop from Taraka and uh, a couple other places, I think. I think uh, Incubus and Assembly of Neolo drops them. All right. So now I'm going to just Mitama boost, uh, mostly boost up Karama to... Uh, yeah. We, we could have done our fusions in, right there in Ginza, uh, too. No, because I need to sell the uh, Blessed Fan. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's no junk shop in Ginza. <laughs> You can, there's only rags jewelry. You can only barter in gems. That yeah. was pure spite, by the way. <laughs> Heck, that Kodama specifically. I didn't just, like, forget I could run briefly. Nope. That was definitely not what happened. <laughs> hey, Freedom, can I play some Otomatone while you're uh, jamming all the Mitama fusions over and over? Uh, sure. I think I will try to play uh, the Velvet Room theme from the Persona games. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Hang on, I gotta find a note here. The the automaton is like very precise. Like the, the range on this thing is humongous. Like, and this is only one octave. I have like access to other octaves. Like, this is like the low frog mode, and we're not gonna do this one. That was no fun. So, uh, okay, it's it's a little tricky. I gotta hold it up to the the, the mouthpiece, but we can't really see the little little faces it makes. I'll I'll do my best here. It's so hard to be in tune. I give up. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know the piece that well. <laughs> it was great. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it's appropriate. We're we're in the Cathedral of Shadows. We're fusing all day. We're attaching exactly. Nikitama to Karama over and over and over. And we're probably gonna have enough money left at the end to get some uh, extra Kusi Mitamas too, just to have some bonus. Uh, HP. not with Mothman. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, we didn't get a free Flamus. We somehow got zero corals. That's so unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. So in order to fuse Mothman, it's actually quite convenient in this route. Uh, Mothman is in the Wilder family, and so is Raiju. Uh, and to upgrade Wilders, you need either a Quans or Flamus. But we don't have a Quans. We couldn't get one either. Uh, we would need two Aquamarines to get a Quans, and I would have had to fight some uh, Nekomata optional fights in the very beginning of Shibuya like in the first hour of the run, but we didn't do that. And we could make a Quans by fusing two snakes together, but oh, we don't have two snakes either, and that would just be way too expensive. We already have Flamus registered, so we'll just do that. Uh, yeah, so we'll get that leftover Raiju that we don't need anymore. Uh, by the way, Unicorn does not need it anymore either. Unicorn is just kind of our, our bench healer while we're climbing up the gigantic uh, tower of Kagetsuchi, the last dungeon in the game that is 666 floors tall. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we'll just use, we'll fuse Raiju with Flamus to rank up to the next thing in the Wilder family, which is Nue, right. that, uh, you know, that little tiger, yeti, seagull critter that we saw a few times in Ikebukuro Tunnel and in parts of Asakusa. 
Uh, and then we fuse uh, Nui with Flamus again to make Mothman. And uh, Flamus starts with Bright Might, which will actually be a useful skill to give Mothman. No, it won't. <laughs> oh, we're not going to dropkick God's Disco Ball? Probably not. It's a lot slower with um, auto memory. Speaking oh, yeah, you like doing auto memory. On. Oh, come on. Can we do one? <laughs> we got a dropkick. Might kick. do one, yeah. It's free damage. But it is... Uh, it's a lot slower, though. <laughs> it's like a free what? Like... 200, like 200 ish when uh, that, that final boss has 50,000 HP, I think. I don't actually know. But it's it's quite durable. It's it's a really fun final battle because you just get to cut loose and max out your buffs and debuffs and just just unleash as much damage as you can. Uh, we will need one more Nigimitama as well to teach Mothman Rakunda. Although. Wait, your Raiju has Rakunda! We can just pass Rakunda all the way up! We won't have to buy another Nigimitama! Oh, true, yeah. That's good news! That just saved us 15,000 Maka! Because we <laughs> we got lucky and included Rakunda with our Tsukukaja that we had to give to Raiju. This is the longest cutscene in the run right here. This would be where we would take another break, probably. <laughs> This is cool. Yeah. Chat, yes. by the way, loved your solo. Triangle. We got a lot of claps. Oh, thank you, you were referred to as the based automaton king. Um, <laughs> I like there was a complaint that too. you drove someone's cats crazy, but otherwise, <laughs> no, everybody's everybody's loving it. Skill issue. <laughs> Get good cats. All right. Some so cats let's... just don't appreciate art. Yeah, thanks. They don't like being in the Cathedral of Shadows. So yeah, what's happening here is uh, our teacher gave us the drained out Yahiro no Himarogi, which it's pyramid shaped and it turns out it fits in a bigger pyramid. And this connects with the remaining uh, Magasuhi in the Amala Temple and creates a ray that touches the, the moon, you know, the, the glowing Kagetsuchi in the center of the vortex world that Tokyo has become. And it has created a tower extending down from Kagetsuchi and touching the tip of Obelisk. Right? Remember this room that uh, Onizuka Flutter was in, our teacher? Now the, the tips have touched, and we now have a pathway leading to Kagetsuchi at last. All of the Reason representatives have merged with their avatars. They're now racing to the top of Kagetsuchi. Who's going to prevail? Who, which Reason is going to prevail? The, the Reason of Shijima, the world of Serenity? The reason of Musubi, the, the world of Solitude? Or the Reason of Yosuga, the... The world of uh, competition and struggle, where the strong rule. Or, uh, you know, the old the old lady and child are kind of hinting at, like, well, there may be another option that uh, shatters the order of creation itself. And that's kind of what uh, goes on in the true demon ending, where you go to the optional Labyrinth of Amala dungeon and pursue more of the spooky skeleton fiend bosses that we were fighting earlier and gather all the candlesticks and go through five tiers of uh, harrowing optional dungeon. And see Dante again. And possibly yeah. recruit Dante. Yeah, he shoots you. Yeah, he does. He does. He, yeah, he challenges you to survival horror Pac-Man. He also jump scares you if you're me and uh, learning the run. And <laughs> yep. That's one of the most viewed clips on my channel. It's just called Hi Dante. Cause, uh... Yeah, he's jump scared me before too. <laughs> if you think you know where Dante's going to be, because the movement's pretty consistent as far as like... Well. As long as you as long as you move the same way, he, he'll follow you. But sometimes he just doesn't follow you, and then you round a corner, and suddenly Dante. Yeah, you you think it's consistent until it's not. Oh, also, this is like my favorite area theme oh, in the yeah. game, this and so uh, unfortunately, it like plays for like five seconds. Oh, I, I gotta play this on Automaton while we're climbing up the tower. However much of it I know, anyway. But yeah, uh, unfortunately, the wind up to this song. Oh my goodness is uh takes so long that we actually get into tok before the song really yeah, starts you get into the tower right before the electric guitar lead comes in and just blows everyone away with a good old uh oh, I, I, yeah. never mind that's not how it goes at all <laughs> it takes even longer if you get encounters on the way there because that kind of resets the osd as well so a little unfortunate. No, it, no, it resumes where it was, but uh, it just takes a second to. Like the the music again. fades in and out nicely in the the original PlayStation yeah. Two version of this game. And it, HD is actually less good at like if you go like into Rags Jewelry or the Cathedral of Shadows by mistake and then go back in right away, the music fades back in where it was. But in HD, it just restarts. Yeah. Also worth noting, uh, when TOK showed up, it pushed Obelisk into the ground. That's the reason why Obelisk doesn't have a large terminal because. 
uh, the vast majority of it just became inaccessible. Yeah. Yeah, we came in at the ground, and here we are in, like, the, the ring room yeah, right this... where we fought the sisters. Yep. There's also a rear entrance where you can go down into a, kind of like a, a treasure pit room in Obelisk. There is a, a spyglass in there that could be sold for 50k, but it's too out of the way. There's a chakra elixir uh, once the tower has appeared here. Oh yeah, and Kagasuchi will tell us which reason we're getting here. I see a reason as tranquil as a still lake. Yeah, that means we're on Shijima. We're going to appear on the north side of this four-way elevator and just uh, mash the cross button to ride it up, and away we go. This is the one where I go left, right? Yeah, um... I, and hard any percent, uh, you go with Shijima because the Hikawa's loyal minion Samile joins you for free and is very good fusion material for my endgame attacking demon. So yeah, we go in this door and then, yeah, uh, and then up the stairs left. and then yep. to the left. Yep. That's all there is to it. Oh, I need to know. What's up, Barith? We're not going to fight you a third time. We're, uh, we're on your team now. Then uh, we go right a little bit. So yeah, we already have our uh, Geese Magatama on, which gives us Null Expel with no drawbacks, and our Anti-Death passive will uh, reduce our chance of being instant killed by something like Legion using Hellgaze or Mamadone. Uh, that, that flapping gray bird we saw, that was a Gur or a Garudu, uh, also paired up with Shadow. Both of them have a... Oh, that's an Agility Incense in the Yeah, I'm gonna, chest. I know it's just a beat, but I'm just going to burn step <laughs> so I can grab the Agility Incense. I'll throw it on MC, just because there's a chance Mothman ends up uh, being a little speedy. Yeah, Mothman starts with 8 agility. Mothman's not going to level up, but for sure we're faster now. Yeah. And hey, it marginally increases the chances that we'll go first, so might as well. It's, like, not super relevant at the small amount of agility that we have, but, you know, it makes me feel better about myself, especially when Floros shows up. Yeah. Floros, that red uh, tiger or leopard-looking dude, uh, uses the strongest physical skill in the game called Deathbound which uh, is max HP based and just hits random targets. So it can hit the same target twice. Uh, it, we should be fine on normal mode, but it's still really frightening. <laughs> I've still gotten one turned by it in, on normal mode because even though we do take half damage in normal mode, because we haven't been specking bit, we also have like half as much HP. So it, it does balance out a little bit at yeah. this point. We don't have passive skills like Life Gain or Endure either. Yeah, because normally we'd have in the 700s HP in a hard TDE run, whereas we have 366 yeah. here. And that's even with me picking up an extra Vid Incense for the lulls. Yeah, the, the Rising 2.8s got it anyway. That was that was legendary. That's a Chakra Pod in that cube, but you have to go in the other door to get that. And we got plenty of MP restoring items already. We got a bonus Great Chakra as a present from Kurama because he loves us and wants the run to succeed. We got the Bead of Life from uh, Hirakacho Tunnel that, uh, that I wouldn't get, but it's a marathon. We got every contingency mapped out here. We definitely have less than an hour to go. We are absolutely on pace for sub eight, so get the word out to uh, whoever goes next. Uh, right, the Ease Runners, you're commentating for them. Yep. We also have an interview afterwards as well, so that'll... Yeah, we do. Uh, the Nocturne Prizes are actually, like, on my six. I probably should have asked if I could, like, pick them up and show them off. Uh, by the time the run <laughs> ends, I think the those will be closed, but... May, well, I mean, we'll see them if we're doing the interview, but... Oh, yeah. But the cutoff will be, after, like, the run will already be over, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's what I'm saying. All right. So uh, we have Dancing Sheep here. <laughs> Dancing Gaudier. Sheep is... Uh, I both love and hate Tauti. Uh, <laughs> he has the most wonderful and amazing cutscene in uh, Raido 2, where Raido is forced to carry him on his back while he like <laughs> vacuum cleaners a, a giant orb out of the sky. It, it's wonderful, and he's like a big like he's <laughs> a big sheepy fluff ball. It's great. Uh, he's also terrifying because he has hell gaze which uh yeah is uh, insta kill and is not fun yeah we're relying on anti-death to save us from that and there, there's throw and that's where the expel comes in throw can use mahama own but also has prominence that uh, strongest random targeting fire spell we'll have to rely on orthrus randomly catching that before oh garudu will go first garudu's faster yeah garudu has a uh, mamadou own uh, what else? Guru has. I'm, I'm very familiar with what the Tower 1 enemies do because in my early days of routing hard any percent, I had to grind in Tower 1 and it was not fun. Uh, Guru has Venom Claw, Zondine, and Bolt Storm. Uh, Mizuchi's Elect Absorb will help with that. Uh, Zondine would just have to get targeted onto Kurama, I guess. I'm gonna skip the save since we're not fighting Armin. 
Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's a there's a, a small terminal here, the one A terminal. Uh, it would be a good safety save, but uh, Araman is on our team since we're on Chi demanding, so we just get to march right through. No need to save at one A. So we're <laughs> Chi demanding takes longer, yet we're secretly saving thirty seconds anyway. Well, more than that, I guess. We have to sit through like both elevator cutscenes, and it takes fifteen seconds to save the game. That's how I got my uh, 707 46 time. I skipped as many saves as I could. I still still had to save before doing any fusion though, because a fusion accident uh, would pretty much destroy the run because I would lose the materials. It would cost too much to buy them back from the compendium. Or, oh, I'm probably using a leveled up demon as one of the materials and whatever's in the compendium would just be stock and wouldn't have uh, the ability I learned on level up. All right, this is the most unintentionally hilarious scene in the game. You just like enter the room and you just see Aramin like grinning at you like, hi, how are you? And so he's basically just like, yo, what's up? Uh, I uh, kind of don't want to climb the tower. I just kind of want to chill here. So here, take my uh, take my gem that will get you to Kagatsuchi and uh, go forth and conquer. And we're like, okay, bet. Take my little six stone. Yeah, he's just here to see cheer you, you on. You gotta bring, yeah, Kagatsuchi instructs us, carry carry the three stones of treasure to the top. Cheap. And uh, each of the reason avatars is holding one of them. We have to get all three to get up there and meet Kagatsuchi at last and make him apologize for making me fight Barrett a second time. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that was on me. I, I just had to think of like something rueful to bring up. You're not gonna have a lot. This game's going great. Yeah, I, I guess I could. Uh, I wonder how much time we lost for the haunted controller with the too long extension cord. Sammy! Yay! All right, we're best friends with uh, Sammy, who's the best <laughs> flying snack. Yeah, Samile's got repel expel and repel death. Samile actually makes a really cute, like a rear kind of sound whenever whenever he uses a spell. Samile's so cute. I would. We have like a giant Piplup plushie on stream, and I've been saying we should have a Mothman plushie, but now I just remembered, oh, maybe we should have a Samile plushie. Why not both? Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I think it would be way too complicated, though, with like the, the six little wings and like the long, snaky body. Okay. Well, well here or in Tower 3? Uh, it'll right? be here. Okay. Because uh, this one's a bigger, bigger chunk of. No, I think the other one is a longer distance. Only one. Well, it's rising three. It'll work. Yeah, I was making sure uh, I was rising and not uh, falling before I used that. Wait, we could just buy one at Tower 3. We're going to Tower 3 anyway to fuse Mothman. Yeah, if I have the money for it. It's 400 Maka. We can sell our beads. Or we can sell the Luck Incense. That pays for it. Do I have a Luck Incense? Oh, uh, no, we didn't because I got used a Luck I no, think I got a life stone from oh, the yeah, chest. Got the, <laughs> the seven eights life stone. <laughs> That's right. We got the one and eight life stone after going, after going the wrong way. Okay. Well, we're on Shijima ending. We wanted uh, Musubi ending for speed reasons, because Armin. Uh, Armin's kind of like Bowyer from Super Mario RPG. He starts the fight just in this like meditating and lotus pose, because you know he wants the world of serenity and then just says, obey my laws or I shall strike you down, and then says, physical attacks are forbidden. And we're like, okay, and just start, you know, max our buffs and debuffs and then crush him with wind cutter and tornado. And then he gets mad and like goes like this and gets on all fours like a beast and then uses some more powerful attacks, but they still like don't hit very hard at all because it's normal mode and max buffs and debuffs is, you know, makes it pretty free. You can use Dekunda, but that's like the only thing that can go awry. It's pretty rare. You know, extremely free fight. However, we're on Shijima ending, and Armin is our ally instead, and so is Samile. Very cute Samile. Uh, we have to fight um, Noah. We have to fight uh, what hashtag Null turned into, that great big water bear. And uh, Noah is more like Magi Master from Final Fantasy VI. Um, you know, Noah starts out using an almighty type uh, physical attack, nice uh, which actually hits pretty hard, even on normal. Ooh. Oh! Thanks, Mizuchi, for the uh, no ice. Whenever I see Nyx, I have to have an opera off with yep. her. It's a, it's in my pride as a uh, as a professional singer to uh, opera yep. off with Nyx. You can get vibrato on this thing by wiggling your finger. That was I don't think that was quite the same note. But <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna fight Noah. Uh, 
uh, at first, like in phase one, it's just going to be uh, some red lightning bolts that uh, can hit pretty hard, but we can still get set up quickly in two turns and be fine. Uh, once we start doing damage to Noah, however, Noah will start using a move called Aurora, which uh, changes Noah's resistance in a cycling pattern. Um, in phase one, it'll change slowly and just you'll only take damage from ice, but once we're in phase two, he starts okay. using Aurora every turn. And uh, uh, it goes in a cycle. Uh, Noah will still attack with magic spells, which are extremely weak, oddly enough. Just like, you know, the, all the uh, Maragi Dine, Mabifu Dine, uh, Mazio Dine, and Mazan Dine, in that order. Uh, and Noah will repel all elements except the opposite of what he's attacking with. So, in order, we would have to attack with Ice, Fire, Force, Elec. And all of our eggs are in the Force Basket here with Kurama's Wind Cutter and MC's Tornado. Um, Orthrus does have Fire Breath and Fire Boost, but it's still not worth using them. Freedom tested this and found out. Wait, Kurama has Absorb Force, so you can just spend 13 MP to use Wind Cutter. It gets tossed back. Nothing happens because Kurama has Absorb Force. So we just sit through Noah's turns until we can do damage again with Force. It's... It's annoying and slow. You either spend over long preparing for Noah, or it's a slow fight because you can only attack. You're, you're kind of limited in your uh, offensive capabilities. So we also don't have taunt on MC anymore. We're relying on Mizuchi's Rakunda for lowering defense. But luckily, we have the perfect setup here. We can do everything super efficiently here. We have Fog Breath on Kurama to do a double sand attack, lower his accuracy and evasion. We got Rakukaja on Orthrus to max out our defense. We got Warcry on MC to uh, lower his physical and magical mm -hmm. attack two stages. Ooh, nice Mizuchi HP here, but uh, yeah. we'll have to get lucky. I'm gonna heal him. Okay. I have 11 One beads, of our beads. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't get those. They just piled up unintentionally from all the fights all right. along the way. I'll need a war cry. Yeah, we're, we're one war cry behind the script. I but, am uh, very glad that I did that. Oof. Yeah, no kidding. Noah is very upset. Wow. Right oh my goodness, sir. Well, we can start Makakaja. Yeah, so Warcry should be done by now, but we went off script a little bit to heal. Yeah, I should be fine we can Warcry that. first to like reduce the incoming damage. Yeah. Uh, the little critters, Mizuchi and Kurama, still have to do their, their normal buff and debuff skills one at a time. So one more turn of Two, this. We should be four. mostly done. Yeah, we can heal again, heal. I guess. And then four. Yeah, so the critters are done, but we need two more Makakajas with Kurama. So I guess we're just going to have another, like, Makakaja pass, uh, heal, pass, Makakaja, yeah. pass, nothing turn. Uh, I can use Sukukaja here just for fun. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, we don't want to damage Noah because that will s have him start using Aurora, and then we can only do damage with Mizuchi's Bufala, and that would be very slow. Uh, before he uses Aurora, he's just like a normal guy and can take damage from everything. In fact, uh, my hard true demon ending route that I run uh, uses physical attacks on the first turn to just do a huge burst of damage. Also, fun fact, this mode. is one of two bosses in the entire game that actually resists Almighty, the other yeah. being Lucifer, the uh, the secret final boss if you go for the uh, true demon ending. And yeah, auto memory is going to do its thing here. Instead of the old uh, wall up with our normal attacks, everyone's going to remember the last move they did. All right, so that pushes us out of phase one. We can actually just like put the controller down and have a little dance off. All right, so uh, the uh, the whale World with legs finished. is gonna grow a face with a hat. Hashtag Noel is back. Yeah. Oh, was resistance shifted. Yeah. 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 yeah, so here we're just auto memory. Karama's gonna bounce a wind cutter off himself to get the turnover with. Uh, any damage that we could do with our other party members is so negligible, we'd be better off just going through the loop again. Because we can kill him in two loops of... Uh, we can kill him in two loops of uh, force attacks, so it's really just get through the loops as fast as we can to, to do that. I love playing this song on keyboard. It's such a jam. in uh, C minor. Well, this is like the F minor part, modulating up a fourth, like do music. Uh, uh, a flat a little low, so yeah. I'm probably going to do a... Uh, instead of ending my turn immediately, I'm actually going to just chuck a drop on the seat real quick. Yeah. Mana Drain is considered an almighty type move, so it actually won't steal very much MP from Noah. 
And uh, the way auto memory works, if we left it on MC's turn, it doesn't remember how to use items, and MC would just do an attack. Which would be bad, because he repels this. Yeah. Another, another quirk of auto memory is that uh, if you change your party, everyone forgets their orders and thinks the last thing they did was a normal attack. Uh, but we're just going to head to the next fight with the same team. All right, I didn't get any double hits on the on the last cycle, so this might actually take three loops through. We'll see. Okay, no, never mind. He's slumping. We should be good. Yep. And that is a dead hippopotamus. Get him! That was pretty good. <laughs> we got more so than enough agility. I've got a donation. Oop. Oh, yeah, go ahead and read it. Oh, I was just going to say, I've got a $15 donation from Chaosix that just says, y'all are legends, and I could not agree more. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. All right, Noah down. And I feel like it didn't take much longer than Ariman would. Well, I guess phase two took longer with all the, you know, three quarters of the turns being duds. Yeah. Like I said, it's at it's most five minutes, and I think that five minutes was before we figured out that it's faster to just burn through Karama's turns, so. Yeah, I just use Karama to cycle turns faster. It's a bit scary because Noah can also use Dekunda, so, like, the longer the fight lasts, the more likely we are to see it. And it would be uh, kind of disruptive because we can't use Mana Drain on MC to get enough MP back to use Warcry. We'd probably have to use items. Have to do all four Rakundas with uh, Mizuchi again. Uh, well, Orthrus could help with Warcry, actually. Yeah, yeah, just use Orthrus for Warcry. Uh, you don't need Fog Breath again. It's just kind of like conveniently fits in there in the early turns. You don't need Fog Breath, especially if uh, the one Suku Kaja got in there. I don't even know what it's for. Like, well, the Suku Kaja or the Fog Breath? Yeah, like the. I, I can't think of a specific purpose. We have every element covered. Uh, it's because I'm pulling it from the, the strats for the Aramin fight where he uses a lot more Almighty and stuff that you want to be dodging. Yeah, I like it's fine. It, it fits in perfectly in the early turns while setting up, but I'm just thinking if recovering from Dekunda, I'm not even totally convinced you need it, especially because yeah. you, you do have time to do... Well, in this case, we kind of had the dud turn while setting up and was able to do some Sukukaja with Orthros. Uh, so if you have that, you're usually good. Uh, you know, Noah's spells are so weak that you probably don't need to dodge, and MC and Karama have such high magic that they're not going to miss for sure. Speaking of not missing, we're here. <gasps> Freedom. It's almost full o'clock. I'm now racking my brain to see if there is a viable sack fusion for Mothman to uh, add some extra levels. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't make any difference, and it would just crowd up the uh, the skills. It would, yeah, it would just, yeah, it means we'd have to spend longer trying to pass Rakunda. Yeah, so. Yeah, let's let's make sure we can afford Mothman first, then go shopping with our leftover budget for one float ball and whatever else we fancy. I should have enough. I had enough for another Flamus when I checked before going into TOK, and we since just got a bunch of money from Noah, so. Yeah, Rajin Flamus first. Uh, are we gonna pass Rakunda all the I'll way up? I'll just get it from Nigimitama. Okay, yeah. Oh yeah, we got 10,000 Maka for beating Noah. That'll pay for... Uh, yeah, we gotta buy Flamus again, and then buy Nigimitama. That'll be like 23k, I think. Uh, I'll be a little oh. short, but it's fine. Uh, we can go to the shop and sell something. Yeah, exactly. All right. There's Bright Mate. Mothman! Mothman! You all paid for we it. Got, Here we, gotta, he is. we gotta read what he says. <gasps> me, Mothman the Wilder. Me, eat everyone! Thank you, Mothman. Wink, wink. Very cool. Wink, 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 wink. He does the little hops. Okay, what can we sell? One of our, all our beads would get us uh, 2,500. Oh yeah, the Soma from White Temple. Yep. Uh, uh, we need... Just barely not enough. Uh, sell some beads. Just sell beads. We don't need the Soma. Or we need the Soma That's drop us more, theoretically. <laughs> the yeah, Nigimi Tama costs fifteen thousand six hundred. But yeah, we just without Mizuchi, we still need to get uh, a source of Rakunda, and Nigimi Tama starts with it. That was the plan all along. Yep, there you go. Analyzes. Uh, what's the other? I think trade. No, trade is what Sakimitama has. 
Persuade is uh, Nigimi Thomas' third skill, which is a passive skill that assists with negotiation, but Mothman is a wilder and doesn't know how to talk, so That's unfortunate. Mothman doesn't learn any talking skills. This is a fun encounter that I'm uh, going to definitely yeah. just refer you away from because, uh, yeah, no. Uh, the gummy worms there null all magic, so that's a big no. And Mod is level 92 and can use Negidola on, in random encounters as well. Yep, Mod is the highest level random encounter enemy in the game. I had a hard any percent run a long time ago where I was uh, a couple steps away from the 3B terminal and got an encounter with a couple of Mots and they just two of them used Megidola on and did 250 plus 250 damage to everyone and all my demons had only 400 like MC and all my demons only had 450 HP that's all you need to survive the final boss's strongest attack so it happened and I just went should have played around it should have drawn the out I mean what yep so coming up is a, a guy who exited the video game for a long time. A guy who just kind of turned around and walked off the edge of the stairs. Yep, it's ASL. <laughs> yeah, we, we dark mated him into Oblivion for sure. Oh yeah, yeah the other guy here used to be part of the Mantra. He kind of uh, fought for the world of strength in his own way. Yeah, so and now uh, he's a follower of Yosuga for real. We're going to do uh, two war cries on turn one. Uh, just because like some of his early attacks can hit a bit hard. Uh, he only has 8,000 HP. Oh, I uh, did a thing. <laughs> Baphomet is still here. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we'll just give up on one War Cry. It's only normal mode. So yeah, we'll do summon instead of War Cry. No big deal. Still have Makakaja as the fourth action. Yeah, yeah see, good. not very much damage even with only one War Cry. Okay, second Fog Breath just to really make sure we don't miss. So yeah. Uh, if Thor, after Thor takes 3,200 damage, uh, he begins phase two, which is uh, actually extremely dangerous. He'll use Dragon Eye, and then has two attack patterns from there, where he'll, he'll either use Dekaja, and then uh, Focus, and a bunch of physical attacks, or Dekunda, and lots of lightning spells. Thanks. Either one would be really bad. So, of course, we're going to do the same kind of thing we did to Dante 1, where we just lay up as close to, well, we don't even need to lay up that close. Uh, a single wind cutter from Karama is going to do more than enough damage. It's going to do about 2k. And then, yeah, 2500. Uh, checking my notes here. Yeah, that is full power. That's four Makakajas and two taunts. Yeah, Orthros yeah. does still have taunts, so we're able to uh, get him to minimum defense. And he's just we don't care if he has more physical attack. He's just toast right here. Like, we don't even need to roll any doubles on the tornado. Yeah, he's definitely toast right here. I guess my journey ends here. And I love Thor's yell uh, in this version. They redid his voice lines in HD. I think there's a, a lot of stock sound effects in this game. I swear that uh, a lot of demons, uh, they, they yell the same way Chunky Kong does. So uh, our, our name for, <laughs> for Chunky, <laughs> or Chiaki in her, her jeans outfit. Ended up working out. So yeah, now we're in Tower 3. Uh, this is the, the final stretch. Um, the because final of fast teleport maze. Yeah, thanks, Atlas. We couldn't, couldn't help but give us one more teleport maze for our troubles. They're following me. Yeah. I guess we could mana drain on the road. Or, I don't know. I think we just I have, have an extra great chakra. I'll just throw it right before. Yeah, exactly. We have enough MP items. We can just do whatever we want. We're we're swagging out of control here. We can we sold our soma droplets. We had five of them. We're we're just so unbelievably rich. Oh, we forgot to buy the float ball. Oh well, that's fine. <laughs> we'll move a little slower through the red stuff in the dark. Whatever. So yeah, um, we have fast retreat. We can just run from every encounter. Uh, there are like some high level things here and things that might be a little scary if it was hard mode. Main thing that bothers me is uh, Abaddon, the other guy who's kind of like a, a head in the floor, but green. Uh, actually evolves into Ashiel if you can get that tyrant on your team. Uh, Abaddon can use panic voice, but as long as it's, well, even if it hits Karama. I, I don't foresee a scenario where all four characters get panicked by panic voice. That sounds outrageously unlikely. And even if it happened, I guess, okay, I guess we're dizzy oh, for a turn, and then, oh, our Kurama has pretty good luck stat. Oh, there's the Absorb Elect on Mizuchi, and we still have uh, Repel Elect on uh, Kailas from, you know, using Adama to fight Thor 2. So yeah, this is where you'd use a float ball. 
but uh, you just kind of follow the red stuff in the dark to get to the elevator tile we need. Yeah, it yeah. just zigzags, so. Yeah, you just go right, left, right, left, and then straight ahead. You could keep following it and, and get lost, but from here you just go straight ahead. Yeah. Yep, mash X to ride, go up, and now we're in a place that's not dark anymore. Yeah, and we're out of the uh, out of the annoying part of this. So. Yeah. I actually did that without having to consult my notes at all, which I'm pretty proud of myself for, because I usually struggle with that bit. Now you, you got me as your Sherpa. Oh, don't go there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that'll, that's, a, that's a teleport pad that'll take you back. The hard part is just aiming south sometimes. Oh, shout-outs to Lilith. Lilith appears in the run after all. Yeah, that's that's probably the silliest transformation in the game. Remember Lilum from uh, an entire run ago that I used to fight Thor? If you can get MC to level 76, uh, when your Lilum levels up, she'll transform into level 80 Lilith. That's, uh, I guess that's how you scam the compendium, I guess. You just, like, buy, you know, like, register. Oh, yeah, you can register demons in the compendium. You can uh, update what's on record. And uh, uh, they'll be more expensive, but you could register a Lilum that's uh, max level and about to level up, and then, you know, get to level 76, win one fight, Lilum levels up, and now you got level 80 Lilith, use that as fusion material, and then just do it again. You're kinda, you can just keep having like a level 80 Lilith for the price of a, you know, a much cheaper Lilum, if you can just keep doing that. Oh, this encounter again. Yeah, yeah. Mock can use Miragidine and Mazondine too, but we have that covered. You know something really sad? What? Uh, we had this marathon run where we've been doing all the safety strats, took the time to fight, uh, took the time to, to do Puzzle Boy, and this is still probably gonna beat my PB. <laughs> oh, definitely. Because <laughs> my... My PB in this game is really bad. I don't run this category a ton. Uh, and I struggle with the first half of the game, as I mentioned. So I, like, did a ton of practice of the second half of this run for, for the marathon, but the uh, I haven't actually done a full run of any percent in a while. So. You're too busy maintaining top three times in Digital Devil Saga and Shin Megami Tensei 4 and uh, learning Dragon Quest XI and learning Final Fantasy X Cutscene Remover. And I don't know how good your uh, Strange Journey Redux time is, but... Uh, it's second place. There you go. <laughs> and here I am, just grinding Nocturne all day. And nothing else. All right, and Miasma. Yeah, and Miasma. Dice, and... I talked about this a while ago, where we had uh, a contingency plan in case Mothman was part of the run. This is our, our second last fight. We have the opportunity to um, learn one last meme skill over uh, either Mind's Eye or Fast Retreat or Void Death. You know, there's, it's just a short walk to the final area. It's pretty unlikely we get even one more encounter. So we could learn counter, which would just be funny and kind of useless, but uh, Miasma will teach us Void Ice. So even without with, with using Mothman instead of Mizuchi, we'll still have Void Ice for the final battle. Just so uh, we don't have to worry about dodging the final boss's mob if we die and that'll only do 40 damage. So yeah. Our friendship ends here, says Chionki. We must finally battle to prove who is truly strongest. So she's going to Beyblade on us? Or, uh... Yeah. This is uh, actually quite an interesting fight. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. All the reason representatives are hypocritical with, like, you know, Nash Tegnall, the Musubi rep, needing our help, and um, Aramin turning into a beast when things get uh, down to the chips. And here, uh, well, Avatar will summon friends if we take her health down past halfway. She has 13,000 HP, and if we do more than 6,000 damage, she'll summon... Oh, shoot. Uh... That's supposed to be Maka Kaja. Okay, well... I have an extra attack mirror, so... Uh, oh, yeah, the extra magic mirror. That's true. So, yeah, Bell's Bane is an interesting uh, curse-type attack that will turn the target into a fly, which uh, makes greatly... Takes them a lot, makes them take a lot more damage, and their damage output goes way down to like probably a fifth or a sixth, or maybe even worse. So we really do not want that to land on anybody. Luckily, Makarakarn repels it. Uh, so we're going to use uh, Mizuchi's Makarakarn three times. Mizuchi has enough MP to do this three times. The Magic Mirror we picked up in Amala Network 2 will cover the fourth one uh, as one of MC's actions. Uh, thankfully, we have an extra one, so we can take one extra turn to set up. So yeah. while we're setting up Makakaja for damage, uh, and getting, we're going to use Orthrus uh, Taunt as well, now that MC doesn't have it. Uh, and we'll do some of uh, Kurama's Wind Cutters to help set up. Uh, unlike Tornado, Wind Cutter is like very predictable. It's like very definite in terms of how much damage it does. We don't have to worry about double hits like with Tornado. We can uh, reliably set up 
less than 6,500 damage while uh, keeping shields up with magic mirror so we don't get turned into a fly. Uh, I'm going to leave it to freedom to count damage. And uh, I will say if we get the setup wrong and miss the OTK, it's it's reset worthy. It's because she summons two minions. She summons uh, like a marble colored version of Floros and Ose uh, called the Hallels. And they will immediately uh, cast Diarahan on Ball Avatar to heal her back to full HP. And uh, they have access to all the attack magic and they really like using Dekunda and Dekaja. It's an, if, even if you like try your hardest to win, it's such a difficult all-out scrap. It's, it's not even worth trying to win. It's just better to hit reset and resume from that 3C terminal we just saved at. So, okay, so we go for kill this turn. Okay. I haven't kept track of how much damage we have to do. It's a little less consistent because we have a 37 magic Karama instead of 40. Uh, Karama likes to gain agility when leveling up. If he gets magic one time, okay, clutch in her guts. That's pretty good. Do we need dubs? No, nice, no. we got it. OTK with one extra turn of setup. No big deal. All right. All right. And here we learn Void Ice. Uh, so we have... The uh, the reason why Mizuchi is so nice is because Mizuchi uh, covers two of the elements that uh, Kagetsuji can use, since Kagetsuji can use all the uh, elements. Nice random sapphire. Uh, so Mizuchi is really nice for that. Uh, unfortunately, Mothman basically just has the same affinities as Orthrus, except instead of being weak to ice, uh, he's weak to elect. Uh, so that means we have an open ice weakness and an open elect weakness. Uh, so we're going to give MC Void Ice there, so that's covered, and then we're going to use the Narukami Magatama on MC, which will give us a Void Elect. Uh, and then I believe Narukami makes you weak to fire. Weak to ice. No, weak to ice. weak to ice. So therefore there's going to be, ice is covered on MC, so there's not double ice weakness. Yeah. MC and we is have our, all elements covered. MC is our substitute Mizuchi, has a Void Ice and Void Elect instead of Absorb Elect. Okay. The final boss can use Dragon Eye and likes to, will either use a, an attack all, like just an eye laser that hits everybody, or you'll just like start using magic spells, which is kind of laughably weak. Um, so with the, uh, we got Absorb Force on Karama and Absorb Fire on Orthrus, and we'll just have to block Ice and Elec. That's the best we can do. Uh, it's pretty rare for that to happen. The final boss is usually pretty consistent. Uh, has a special move called Infinite Light, which uh, is an almighty attack that does a massive nice. amount of damage, but it's telegraphed by uh, you know Kagetsuchi saying something epic, just trying to assert, like, I'm God's tool of creation. I am destiny. I am the truth. And we're like, nah, you're just a, a disco ball with a funny face. Here we go. So I'm going to take the save just because I have died to Kagetsuchi before. It was, entirely, it was entirely my fault that I did, but, uh, you know, just... Better save than sorry, I don't want to have to fight Ball Avatar again. It's definitely possible. Uh, Kagetsuchi can use Dekunda as well. Um, yeah, Kagetsuchi has two press turns, and uh, Infinite Light, or, or Vast Light, the weaker version that we'll see in Phase 1. Um, you'll usually use it and just end his turn, but there's probably like a, feels like a 10% chance uh, where he'll just use that extra press turn to use Dekunda. Here's the second Great Chakra, and we still have the Bead of Life to heal in the middle of the fight. Usually I skip this uh, 3D save, but you know it's in the marathon. If we if we get supremely unlucky, we'll be ready to try again right away. Uh, this final battle, uh, we are gonna go over 7:30, but it, uh, does it take 10 minutes? 10 minutes seems like too much, hey? Yeah, it should be like seven at most. Seven yeah, that that sounds about right. It depends on if he can do it or not. A lot of it is like it takes a long time to stick these three stones of treasure in the in the pillars, and then. Then we have a little bit of mashing through dialogue, and then uh, yeah, phase one is pretty pretty simple, but kind of lengthy. There's one more hidden mechanic as well. Yeah, so Kagetsuchi's uh, interesting. He's the only thing in this entire game that actually has a defense stat of sorts, or any sort of damage reduction outside of just, like, straight up resisting something. Oh, I, I, yeah, I thought of something. You could use... Orthra still has Dark Might, I think. We didn't get rid of Dark Might, right? Uh, on not on Orthrus, no. We did get rid of it on Kurama. Yeah, uh, this fight is going to start at new o'clock. It forces new o'clock at the beginning. I do need Orthrus to do Raku Kajas, though. So. But Orthrus goes second. So, uh, hang on, let me think. So we go Fog Breath, uh, Dark Might, and then uh, War Cry, Rakunda. Oh, and then the other Fog Breath. Oh, okay, you're right. We'd have to pass with someone to get back to Orthrus. 
Okay, it would only be worth if we had two Dark Mites. But we got rid of the Dark Mite that Kurama has. Oh no, we're not going to do an extra 50 plus 50 damage with <laughs> no Rakundas, no Tarakajas. But yeah, there, there is like a hidden uh, defense stat in this boss fight. Kagatsuchi does take more damage in phase one on like the lower moon phases and will take less damage when it's full o'clock. Uh, Kagatsuchi also has a silly attack called phase <laughs> shift. Look at, the, uh, look at the layout. <gasps> it's Mothman. It's, it's Mothman. It's the boy. It's Mothman. The moth, the myth, the legend. The legend. All also, right. uh, is it just me, Shine, or is it getting pretty bright out? Oh, yeah. Man, we're yeah. really close to the source of Kagatsuchi's light. Like, yeah. I, I can't uh, handle this. We need to... Uh... There we go. Yeah, now I can Now I can see. Shield your eyes, gamers. You need them. <laughs> so, yeah. Here, the, the setup for this fight is going to be this the exact same as we did for Noah and Aram and... So... Fog Breath, Rakukanja, and then War Cry, and then Mothman is going to be our source of Raycundo. Look at him flap his wings majestically, yes. and now we're going out on memory. And make these make these beautiful moth noises. Uh oh. Yeah, see, covers that. Right, I am uh, admittedly oh, breathing. There we go. Yeah, I gotta make sure my mask is not tight, or these shades are gonna fog up. Luckily, we have auto memory, and that'll take care yeah. of everything for us. Who needs to see when you look cool? Isn't this interesting final boss music for an RPG? Usually, it's like, you know, choirs and like a massive string section and no. horns, maybe a bass guitar and some electric guitar leads. No, we just got some uh, 130 BPM house music. And yeah, we're waging war against disco here. One more turn of setup. And then on turn five, we can pretty much put the controller down. Yep. Uh, as long as we have more than uh, 110 HP, actually. <laughs> like we're gonna be able, to, there's gonna be a guaranteed vast light when it's full o'clock, but that's only gonna do 110 damage to everybody. So <laughs> we could just like tank the hit and then heal afterward. Hang on, where is it? A little more of that. Here comes phase shift to let us do more damage for yeah, no reason. Pretty much. Yeah, that's why it's weird. His defense gets lower as he gets further and further away from okay. uh, from full. Here comes the quake. We're probably gonna win before we Orthrus has a chance to slap him with dark might. All right, oh, now we now we all we need to see some dancing in the house here. Yeah, this is usually when I put my shades on. I might just get up and dance anyway. I can't not do it. <laughs> all right. Oh, sorry, Otamatone. All right, let's go. I went and played some dance games at uh, round one here. Oh, wait, what are we missing? Uh, I just did normal short time MCV to play here. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, we got to restore MC's MP. We can keep going. Oh, here we go. Dragon Eye. Let's jam. This is kind of the more annoying thing that he can do. I actually need him to stop doing that. There we go. I forgot playing GDR on a mask is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't had to do that in a year. All right, now we're recovered enough that I can just uh, chill. Ooh. 
Oh, the choir part has come in. You hear that? I am destiny. Oh, I'm out of tune. Where are we? Oh, get ready on time, by the way. Yeah, time's on the last hit. When you hear the same sound that it always makes when something dies. That little... Okay, we're getting close when Kagatsuchi's shaking. I think this guy has 50,000 HP. <laughs> oh, eye laser's coming. Got to dodge. Thanks, Fog Breath. That's time. Time! Woo! 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 <laughs> 7.35.04. Let's go. Yeah, that's, that's that actually beats my amazing. By like, yeah, like 15 minutes. <laughs> with, with Shijima ending, Puzzle Boy adding eight and a half minutes. Rematch versus Barreth. Everything went so well, though. Let's go. We got, oh, yeah. <laughs> Teamwork. Woo! We brought Nocturne to the biggest marathon stage we could. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Get yeah. a lot of these heroes, chat. <laughs> they did it. And say they it. looked cool doing it, if I may say so. <laughs> Pretty easy final boss, eh? You just press triangle and watch him die, pretty much. Yeah, that, that one turn got a little scary. The one <laughs> thing he can do that kills you is drag an eye into basic attack over and over again. So that yeah. got a little scary, but we uh, thankfully he decided to heal up Karama for us. So yeah, so uh, fun fact, uh, Hikawa is the only reason representative that actually survives his own ending. Uh, it's true. <laughs> because Isamu gets bodied by Chiaki in, in their ending in, uh, in Musubi, and then you have to in Yosuga. Uh, fight Chionki to see who's worthy of uh, of ascending to uh, to fighting Kagatsuchi. So uh, yeah, yeah, so Hikawa actually survives his ending, and we get a really cool rendition of the ending theme with organ in it, which is pretty neat. Yeah, the same the same light motif that occurs throughout Nocturne's soundtrack. This little melody with uh, non chord tones. <laughs> and Hikawa just says, "Mighty Creator, deliver the new world unto us." But, oh. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, and then the credits roll. They take a long time. So yeah. Yeah. I guess that'll do it for us. I think we'll take a quick break and uh, give an interview for Gulo 2, hey? Yeah, so thank you all for watching. <laughs> Thanks again to RPG Limit Break for letting Nocturne, uh, for letting Nocturne in, letting us rep the SMT speedrunning community. Shoutouts to everyone in the speedrunning community, all the Nocturne runners. There's so many people that I could name. Flutter, Pink Pajamas, Pink Pajamas is legend. Yeah. Mizushima, Tiger Sensei himself, the legend, uh, who's done so much for this game and so many SMT games. Uh, shout outs to, uh, to Champion Beef and Legrand who, uh, who couldn't make it, unfortunately, for due commentary. to various reasons, but who are also amazing. Legrand and Beef have both shown off excellent runs of this marathon before. Y'all know how great they are. Uh, if you're interested in running any of these games in the SMT series, you can find the link to the Discord in uh, on the SRC page for uh, for the entire Megami Tensei series. We'd love to help you out. Lots of very supportive people in there. Yeah, we got new runners. The HD remaster just came out last year. The game is more accessible than ever. You can buy it on Amazon. Atlas is just still selling PS2 copies. You can. We played the PlayStation 3 digital store version, and. Uh, yeah, HD versions on PS4, Switch, and Steam. We got new runners like uh, Toxic TD and Day Nava, and uh, many more to come, I hope. So this is a dream come true for me, guys. Shoutouts to <laughs> runners of this past, present, and future. You guys watching live on Twitch, uh, posting my emotes, Freedom's emotes. Day's got emotes for this that are animated too. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and shoutouts to you, everyone watching on YouTube and everywhere else, uh, VODs in the future and yet to come. So. I'm out of breath. Thanks again. <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely beautiful. I think you will agree. 
Sorry if I sound a little bit winded. I could not help but dance along. There are some aggressively good jams in that game, aren't there? Dang. Dang. What a run. What a run, everybody. I'm gonna be taking care of you for a little while while we get a set up for the next run. And of course, that exciting interview. Can't wait. In the meantime, remember that one in five Americans live with a mental health condition. We at RPG Limit Break are proud to be raising money for NAMI. NAMI stands for National Alliance on Mental Illness, a charity who works tirelessly toward cracking the code of mental illness through various means such as education, leadership, and increasing the availability of care. Please join RPG Limit Break in supporting such a worthy cause. And you've all just been fantastic, everybody. You got us Mothman. You got us Puzzle Boy. I couldn't be happier. Not only with how they did, but with how you guys did, too. We have got so many incentives coming up for the rest of the run. So don't give up now. Coming up next, we have East One Chronicles Plus, and there are two bid wars. There is one to choose the game artwork, and the complete edition is winning there with $25. And there's one to choose the soundtrack, and the 1987 chiptune version has got a handy lead. That's not all. There's still tons of excitement left for the rest of RPG Limit Break 2022. Can't wait. I would absolutely love, by the way, to get some love for these two staggering runners in our donations and in chat. Because that was, I'm, I'm still blown away. I'm going to be honest with you. Wow. Yes, chat, that's right. There is a Bakamitai incentive. There are actually multiple incentives to get people to sing in later runs. So, if you liked the musical stylings that you saw on display in this run, you're going to love Froobs. So, we have got a $20 for nation donation. We've got a $20 donation from Marinoris. Thank you so much. There was no comment, but we appreciate everything that you do. Oh yeah, you've got some you've got some choices ahead of you, chat. If you take a look at these incentives, there's it's a veritable buffet of exciting games, brilliant runners, and most importantly, a great cause. Oh, and prizes. Thank you, Mubot, for reminding me to talk about prizes. Coming up, starting in the Ease One Chronicles Plus run and right through Yakuza Like a Dragon, there's some really exciting uh, Pokemon prizes. We've got a Pokeball coaster set for a $20 minimum donation. For a $10 minimum donation, there's a Pokemon TCG set. There's a copy of Pokemon White, too. Ooh, Yakuza Iron On Patches. As an Iron On Patch aficionado, I might just enter. <laughs> Speaking of exciting things that you could be taking home, the awesome t-shirts are back for another year, courtesy of the Yeti. That's Y-E-T-E-E, -E -E, theyeti.com slash RPG Limit Break, and the Yeti are donating $5 from each shirt sold to NAMI. And it sounds like it's time for a Twitch ad, everybody, so sit tight. We'll be back in a minute.
I'm talking now. Do I sound all right? And we're back. All right, everyone, that's my time. I hope you all had as much fun with Nocturne as I did, and that you stick around for the delightful Amphilie, your next host. Bye bye. Hello everyone, my name is Amberly and I will be your host for this East One uh, Chronicles Plus run. Right now we are we're getting ready for an interview and we will be right back there with you. It looks like we are ready for that interview. We will have Ghoul02 interviewing Freedom Pulse and Shiner CCC. Over to you guys. How's it going, RPG Little Break? I'm here with the incredible SMT Nocturne Runners, Freedom Pulse and Shiner CCC. I just got to ask, I got to start off, how are you guys feeling? It's been eight hours of the greatest JRPG of all time, and <laughs> what, what's going through your head right now? You can start. I I gotta say, I, 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 first, I played this game for the first time when quarantine began in spring 2020, and uh, my, my range of emotion seems to have only shrunk since then, but even now, like, emotion is, is breaking through right now. It's, there's so much hype. I can't believe we have pulled this off. We have brought Nocturne to a physical speedrun stage. I've run the game lots of times for online marathons, like really, really long a thon, but here I am in another country presenting this great game to the world. Yeah, it's 
awesome. I'm <laughs> I'm really tired, but uh, it's it's awesome. I'm excited. It's been it's been a long journey getting getting this in and getting it ready for uh, for a marathon. But it paid off so well with uh, with that run. That was so much had so much fun during it, and we absolutely just slayed with the the time yeah. that we got. Yeah, I would so. say like even we crushed it. Deathless even on normal is you know an accomplishment in any SMT game. Like that's uh, that's so cool. Uh, you said you had like, uh, you know, it sounds like a pretty interesting journey. How did you guys get into SMT speedrunning? What what caused this? Well, like I said, uh, I, I've been speedrunning for a long time. Uh, my my taste is kind of varied and eclectic. I, I always said my main speed game was this NES uh, adventure platformer called Fazanadu, but I also dabbled in some RPGs. Uh, I learned I routed uh, Final Fantasy Legend and Etrian Odyssey way back in like 2010 in the speed demos archive days, but nothing much really went of that. It was kind of hard for me to get access to capture hardware. Um, I, I went on to, uh, to route Dragon Warrior 4 for NES as well. I'd say that's my main RPG speed game. And honestly, that's a way tougher and more unforgiving <laughs> than Nocturne. <laughs> People come to me and say, Shiner, how can you run Nocturne? This game is so difficult. It's so unforgiving and unpredictable. And I say, no, you, uh, Dragon Warrior 4 <laughs> prepared me better than anything ever could. And uh, yeah, getting back to Final Fantasy Legend, uh, that's also a monster collecting RPG where you can have monsters and eat the meat of fallen monsters, and they turn into different monsters. So uh, I played more of that than Pokemon, honestly. And I played Dragon Warrior Monsters uh, only like a year ago. Uh, so yeah, Final Fantasy Legend and Dragon Warrior 4 together, I think, prepared me for Nocturne. Yeah, and like I said, I played it during quarantine. My friend lent his copy to me. And uh, you know, of course, in quarantine, I wanted to play a game about the destruction of the world <laughs> and the creation of a new one. Uh, we, only, we only got one of those outcomes, but uh, it was, the, it was the perfect mood. By the time it was summer, I finished the game. Uh, my first playthrough was on hard mode. Uh, I finished Fourth. around level 88 after about 100 hours, got the True Demon ending, and uh, I went, okay, cool, let's check out the speedrun. I know hard True Demon, I'd, I'd known about Nocturne speedrunning uh, vaguely in the background. It's kind of like a legendary Everest of uh, RPG speedrunning where hard True Demon ending is uh, at least 13 hours long with uh, I mean, I didn't, I, I'd like seen glimpses of it, but didn't really know what was going on having not played the game. Um, but then I look at normal any percent and I see it's only eight hours long, the same length as Dragon Warrior 4. <laughs> and I go, oh, I can physically do this. And after, uh, <laughs> my first attempt was actually on dance pad and I told a funny story about that. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, uh, in the run. But yeah, a little, after a little bit of practice and a little bit of coaching from Pink Pajamas who uh, routed that, that category, um, I was already running it for a really, really long a thon and stuff. And uh, after a couple of attempts, I beat Pink Pajama's time and took world record and improved it a few more times. And I still have it. And I have routed other categories for Nocturne by now. And I think it's time to go improve normal any percent after this run. <laughs> so I'm just a guy pursuing like hard and eclectic RPGs like the Seventh Saga and Paladin's Quest. And Nocturne to me is in this upper echelon of, of great hidden gems in the RPG world. I think Freedom's origin story is completely different. I was say, what, what what brings you to uh, the wacky world of Nocturne speedrunning? Yeah, so for me, I've been interested in speedrunning since I was a kid and was always like interested in it. And then when I finally decided, like, oh, I want to start speedrunning, uh, I looked at a couple of games, uh, looked into like Metroid Fusion and a few other uh, other various games, but I do have problems with my wrist, so I just kind of naturally gravitated towards RPGs and. Uh, I happened to be on the RPG Limit Break YouTube page and had seen that recently that they had had the, the first uh, Shin Megami Tensei marathon. And in that run, there was, uh, there was a couple different uh, runs being showcased that were really interesting. Uh, Pink Pajamas did a DDS1 run. I hadn't seen DDS1 before, but... Yeah, Digital Devil Saga. I, yeah, Digital I Devil Saga. <laughs> I saw Digital Devil Saga 2 at the end of that marathon and thought it was the same game as Nocturne. I oh. thought I was going to be someone floating off the ground, moving in circles oh. in a, a weird hive. Yeah, so I saw that Digital Devil Saga one, and then I saw the like n in the middle or near the end of that marathon, there was the hard True Demon ending for Nocturne, and I'd played a little bit of Nocturne in high school. I got walled at Matador because, of course, I did. Of course. Uh, <laughs> and so I watched the run. I'm like, well, this is really cool. I like really want to learn Shin Megami Tensei runs, and so I actually watching that marathon made me buy both of the DDS games. I played through them casually, and I'm like, yo, I really want to play this. So I actually started running DDS one. That was the first like. Our, that was one of the first RPG speedruns that I really like. Fell in love with that and East One, which we're about to see. Right. Uh, yeah, you're commentating for that, right? Yes, I am. Heck so, yeah. really fell in love with that run. 
uh, and started learning other games that were similar length, trying to kind of work my way up. The goal was eventually to run Heart True Demon Ending, because that's kind of the goal that a lot of people have with Nocturne. Right. Uh, and so just kind of working my way up, doing like DDS1, SMT4, uh, 4A, et cetera. And, you know, eventually I picked up Nocturne Normal Any Percent and just kind of natural progression of things, started running it, wanted the sub-8, eventually got it. Uh, and kept running, kept running other games uh, as more of a priority, but I always tried to keep Nocturne kind of in a back pocket because it's a good game and like, it's one of those games that like you know if someone's speed running Nocturne, people are, you know people want to watch it because it's definitely such a beloved game in the series. So yeah, it's it's legendary. It's <laughs> it is maybe stereotypical to say it. It's a Dark Souls of RPGs, but it, mechanically it really is because you get to a terminal and save, and you're like your heart's racing like. Can I make it to the next one without dying? <laughs> You're really like limping from bonfire to bonfire. Yeah, no, terminal. It, it's, it's Dark Souls beats Pokemon in a way, for sure. Yeah, I always <laughs> describe the game as edgelord Pokemon, where your trainer <laughs> has to fight on the front line, and if he dies, that's how you get game over. So this run, it, it you know, it's an eight-hour ordeal for easy, you know, or for the, uh, the normal mode. Like, what, what, even like, how do you start running a game like this, or like learning it, rooting it? What, what brings you to it? What makes it work? Like, how do you get there? Uh, for me, the way that I learn a lot of runs, again, for me, a lot of it was like kind of working my way up, up there, running like, you know, four hour runs, five hour runs, kind of just to build comfort. Uh, also, part of it for me comes with like the learning process. I am not a router at all. Like, I can look at things and say, hmm, this could probably be better in here, here, here. But as far as like actually coming up with routes, I'd have, I just don't have the brain for it, which is fine. Uh, so, you know, I'm good at taking, you know, what other people had done. So when I started learning the run, Pink Pajamas had his notes out. And so I just took those and started learning the run. Actually, at the time I learned the run, I had never beaten Nocturne casually. So, <laughs> so my, my speed run learning was also like me actually experiencing the game for myself casually, which was, which was very interesting. Uh, but that was a lot of it. The way that I tend to learn runs is I just like learn them in chunks with the notes and then I like do like three or four practice runs and during each run I just try to do more of the run at once where like, you know, if I did it in four sittings the first time then try to do it in three the next time until eventually I do the full run in one sitting and have hopefully kind of worked up the, the endurance by that point to get through the whole thing. Yeah, for sure. You want familiarity with the game. You can learn like where your breaks are. Nocturne has lots of unskippable cutscenes. Uh, and if you have like a wireless turbo controller, that unlocks more options. Uh, you know, I I stream with webcam, but uh, I think before that, a lot of RPG runners stream without webcam. Uh, if you're learning, there's I don't think there's any shame in doing segmented runs. Nocturne has an in-game timer too. I don't think people consider it very reliable because like if you die, you have to load your save. That time's not going to count. Given, but uh, how frequent deaths can be in Nocturne, I think it kind of rounds up to the nearest minute too, but. You know, if, if all you can do is segmented because you don't have enough time, then, you know, just try to get good in-game times. There's, there's always, like, incremental steps you can do. And also, uh, I think I mentioned this, too, uh, there are also shorter categories than normal any percent. Uh, I think a long time ago, people talked about racing, like, Dante 1 percent, where you just get to Dante 1. On normal, it's about, like, two and a quarter hours. On hard, uh, you can do it in sub-3. Okay. So, wow. you know, you can get your featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series sticker. And the fun thing about that is... Uh, you could graph the route from any of the hard true demon ending routes or hard any percent, and all of these are viable so or almost, good to getting to Dante for So it's almost like a stepping stone. Like you could learn this, yeah. it's like a fun race category you can do with your friends or with other people, and then you can say, okay, cool, I, you know, I've gotten good at the first couple hours, let's practice the next couple hours. Makes yeah, sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I, I mentioned in the commentary earlier, uh, a lot of people learn normal any percent as a kind of stepping stone for hard true demon ending, if that's what they're interested in. Uh, maybe you could just skip straight to hard true demon ending, especially because there's two different routes with uh, their different advantages and disadvantages. Um, but uh, yeah, learning normal any percent is nice for just like navigation, like getting through the different areas. Right. I have a nice notes document on speedrun.com that has directions through the dungeons and justifications for all the strats that makes it easy to learn. However, I will also include the caveat. I always say, if you want good results in Nocturne, look at your display. Don't look at your notes. Like, <laughs> think about Nocturne. Like think, you know, and there's a lot of downtime when you're like walking to the next area. So you can, you know, while you have your directions, you just squint at your notes and go, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this on this boss. You you have it like in your head in advance that you don't want it to be your next press turn and you go, what do I do? And you have downtime. Uh, yeah, the like the the notes I brought here actually. Uh, Freedom brought a tablet and I brought a battery pack for the tablet in case it ran out of juice, but. 
yeah, I just I printed out actual notes on paper, and these are like my world record just, notes, and it's only hold on. Let me see. Only is there writing pages. on the back of one of these pages? Oh, I'll too? talk about that next. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these notes have like only half the fights in here. It's mostly just fusion recipes because that's what's hard to actually remember. Uh, only the fights that I think are harder to remember. Most of the information just lives in my head already because I've run this game so much, various categories that I've routed and uh, so many attempts. It's, the information is just there. This is just here to like refresh my memory. I'm going to focus on Nocturne and just do my thing. And even when we had some trouble versus Trumpeter, I you know, just you know, looked at the screen and thought, okay, we gotta do this, and we got through Trumpeter. And even when fighting Matador, I lost Shikigami really early. And then uh, phase two, a bunch of taunts happened and some nasty attacks, and I just, I didn't panic. I just did what I had to do. So this is what I mean. Like, look, look at the screen. Don't look at your notes. <laughs> and as for what's on the back here, I, I talked about the Puzzle Boy incentive. Uh, I don't think <laughs> we can get this on camera. Oh, maybe we can this time, because the lights aren't quite as bright. I, in the Puzzle Boy minigame, every movement you make makes a sound. So I determined that it is quite possible to learn Puzzle Boy blindfolded, the problem is that there's 20 stages and a oh lot of steps. Goodness. This is like, there was no way I was going to remember this humongous sequence like yeah, this. So, so if you, this is like <laughs> college ruled single spaced if you, like, you can't see it great on camera. It's, that is it's two pages. Like, I, I was never going to remember the whole sequence. So the next thing I started doing was like, oh, I need graph paper. I'll just draw like, the shapes <laughs> that you make with your movements. But there, there wasn't enough time for the yeah. week. So. My apologies. If I, if I come back to another physical marathon, maybe I'll have it ready by then. All righty. So I do believe uh, we're, this interview has been fantastic. I've had a blast. But we'd, what's, uh, I think you have a couple minutes left to get in for the uh, Nocturne prizes. We have some incredible stuff sent by our friends at Atlas West. We have the, uh, the Demi Fiend mug. We have the pin. We it's, have got a hat. The, it's got the Sanskrit symbols from the drum of Amala on it, from all the terminals we saved in. Yeah. Uh, we got the hat. We have a poster in here that I'm not going to take out because it's going to be uh, a little harder to get back in. But <laughs> some incredible prizes again. Thank you so much to all of our uh, donors for our prizes. And also just thank you again to all of you for donating and watching. Uh, this has been an incredible event so far, and I can't wait to see how much we you know What's up next? So I believe uh, up next we have Ease One. You're going to be commentating that, I believe. Yes. You excited for that? Yeah, I'm very excited for that. Uh, okay, uh, good. You get to talk more. I feel bad for talking <laughs> more than you. <laughs> so uh, I believe without any further ado, uh, we'll throw it over for that once they're set up. Thank you so much for that wonderful interview. And while we're setting up, I do have a few donations to go through here. We have $25 from Atma Weapon that says hello to everyone and thanks for that amazing SMT run and all the ones really. We also have a $30 donation from Bromhall V. Best of luck to the East Gang on the race. Excited to be able to see more than 21 seconds of the first East game. Go forth and conquer that DVD screensaver. We also have a $25 donation from Stoltheim. He says, we'll donate more if you don't die to the centipede. Thank you so much for that donation. Then Close donates $20. It's so important for everyone to have access to mental health services, and NAMI is doing great work to make that happen. Always happy to donate for such a wonderful cause. We also have a $100 donation from Hydrosol with no comment. And we also have $15 from the Altar Maven. Last donation here. I have a final petition, a proposal if I may. Your decision to make a donation for the Summon Showcase in Yakuza Like a Dragon, because such entertainment shouldn't be dismissed to tarnation. But may I make a summation? This entire marathon still has so much more to offer. Why not make it even better? Let's meet the incentives. As always, Cat Dragon bites the bad RNG. Meow.
Looks like we have a few more donations rolling in. We have Eck here with a $25 donation. Sue Cowboy with a $25 donation also, and Softcore Gamer with a $100 donation, all with no comments. Thank you guys so much for your donations and keep them coming. Hamilton donates $15 and says, thank you for giving RPG speedruns the spotlight. And while we're still setting up for this wonderful East Chronicles Plus run, I wanted to remind you that RPG Limit Break 2022 proudly supports the National Alliance on Mental Illness, <laughs> aka NAMI. To get involved in the fight against mental illness and the stigmas it can bring, reach out to NAMI via their state organizations or on Facebook, where they can be found as NAMI, N-A-M-I, or on Instagram and Twitter as at NAMI Communicate. It is not a weakness to need help. Please reach out if you think you need help. I also wanted to remind everyone that we have two incentives opens for this Yeast One Chronicles Plus run. You can donate to choose the game artwork or choose a soundtrack. I want to remind you guys that they'll be closing at the beginning of this run. So if you want to uh, move those or change them, be sure to get your donations in. I also wanted to give a big thanks to the people involved in our foreign language restreams. Our French restream can be found at twitch.tv slash the French restream and our Japanese stream at twitch.tv slash Japanese underscore restream. If those streams can help you enjoy the marathon, go ahead and check them out and send them some love. We also